Put your hands together for Kathy Griffin! Thank you so much! All right, if you see a camera, it's because, yes, I'm doing a f***ing reality show. I'm Kathy Griffin, outrageous potty mouth comedian. All right, I'm going after everybody. I'm going after Paltrow f***er. F***er. I'm definitely known for ripping on celebrities. So up comes Selma Hayek. Still can't speak English. No matter what I said, she would go like this. You're crazy. I am a D-list celebrity. I own it. I screwed my way to the middle. And I'm pretty comfortable here. I coined the phrase the D-list because I just think it's funny. And I think that Hollywood is very list obsessed. How's my hair? Living on the D-list is I have a job and I'm sort of a celebrity. But it's a job. It's my DVD. Because when you're on the D-list, you're not flying in the charter plane and I don't have a posse. But I do have a great group of people who support me. Most importantly is my husband, Matt. I love you. I love you. I was totally into her from the moment I saw her. She's the most fearless person I've ever met. And I have my assistant, Jessica, who I cannot live without. Kathy Griffin's office. When I tell people that I work okay. for Kathy Griffin, it's either who's that or does she suck? Will you find the paper towels? I can never find I paper towels. Think. Of course I wouldn't be anywhere without my crazy-ass parents. Oh, my God. Yeah. Yeah. And she is not a D. Yeah. I keep telling her, I don't yeah, want to yeah. hear this D list. Okay. Right from the D list to the A list. D to A. And Dennis and Tony are my best friends. My joke is that they're two of my best gays. He's like the cast of Bewitched now, drinking in the afternoon. Exactly. Thank God I have all these guys around me in the first place, because let me tell you, life on the D list, it's not always easy. Kathy up top. I spent half my time trying to get my name out there. Kathy Griffin is the funniest. It's Griffin, it's Griffin. And the other half trying to get my agents on the phone. Hey Steve, it's Kathy Griffin. I'm calling for Ruth Ann. They usually don't take the call. Can you tell her I called? I'm on my cell. Bye. That's life on the D list, but I am on a list, and that's the important thing. Okay, here's the thing. Get out of my way. You A-list boys, my Prada shoes are as good as yours. I work twice as hard to get half as far as you, cause I ain't no ass to kiss when you're living life on the D-list. Tonight I'm really excited because I'm doing what is really my favorite charity event of the year. It's called Best in Show, and it's kind of like a Miss America pageant, except it's drag queens. It is actually the paragon of drag shows. Well, I don't have my comedy notebook. Let me just bring it, let me just bring it in the car, and then you can read stuff to me. Do you know what it is? Uh, you okay, good. <laughs> Goodbye, doggies. Oh boy. There goes the guilt, seriously. Um, okay, so Matt, will you do me a favor and read me some of the topics from my comedy notebook? Yeah. Just start like at page one, because there's not that much in there right now. My comedy uh, notebook is what I use to write down my sets. Uh, but I mean, I don't write my stand-up the way most comics do. I don't really write it at all. I just write down like a few bullet points, like a few topics, and then I just improvise. It's much more conversational than like reciting a monologue. Uh, Brittany Federline. Ooh, that could be good. Olsen Twins. Amazing Race 5, or yeah, 5. The gay Cruise. Yeah, I might do that stuff. Oh, okay. So what do you think if I do Olsen Twins and then Gay Cruise? And then that's it. I think that's good. All right. Although you know I have a new fear with that. My fear is that I do the Mary-Kate chunk in my next special and then she dies. <laughs> that would be horrible. My plate is full. I've got to perform, I've got to judge, and I have to try to wrangle celebrities to come to my Toys for Tots event. Oh, sh**. What? we got to have pen and paper to try and get phone numbers for the Christmas party. Did you bring the camera? No. What? I, I want pictures uh... with famous people. I'm really looking forward to performing at Best in Show because I love gay audiences and they are good to me. You know that this... Do you like how I brought my purse like my mother? Prada. Anyway, I, I don't consider myself to be a political comedian, but it is, you know, our country is going through so much now that there's something that I feel like we do need to talk about as a community and a family, and by that I do mean the Olsen twins. Um, there'll be a picture every week, there's my Mary-Kate, 
82 pounds in a bunch of layers because she thinks her ass looks fat. And she's always walking down the street with the big Chanel sunglasses, a bottle of Jack Daniels, Siggy coming out of her mouth. She's always f the wrong guy, like, hey, get out of here. Like, that is my inner Olsen. That's my Olsen. And I always do really well with gay audiences. I, I find that a gay audience will just go there with you. They're not put off by something naughty or something dark, and they don't care if you use a naughty word. And they're really there to have fun. Okay, clap if you've ever been on a gay cruise. And also, you know, I'm into a lot of things that gay people are into. You know, I'm, I mean, if I'm gonna do 20 minutes on the Share Farewell Tour, they've actually been there. In fact, we sat together. It was actually my first time on a cruise of any kind. And so we go in, my husband Matt and I go in, and I said, well, you know, let's kind of walk around and we'll look at the ship and stuff. So we go to the photo gallery. <laughs> then I see this one, I will never forget. It's a guy sitting on a chair. He had to weigh at least 300 pounds, right? Yeah. He's bald, he's got the dog collar, he's got the leather shorts, he's got all kinds of like wrists and stuff, he's got the zipper mask like Pulp Fiction with the ball in his mouth, and the t-shirt that's stretched way too tight that says, I'm shy. <laughs> that's it for me, I wanna wait and watch like you do. Enjoy the show, thank you, I love you. Let's start introducing our judges. Please help me welcome the beautiful Marsha Cross. Miss Joanne Worley! Caroline Ray! Miss Kathy Griffin! After all the introductions, it was time for the actual charity part of the show. And all the celebrities start writing checks. So I said to Matt, I go, okay, this year I'm gonna get 500 bucks. I think that's good. So Matt took too long to give it to the drag queen. From Caroline, $2,000. Next thing you know, there's Caroline Ray with her hand out. Here's my thousand dollars or whatever. And I'm like, Sorry. and then I'm thinking, do I just scratch it out and write void? And I thought, no, 500 bucks is a lot. So yeah, I can't keep up. How much is enough? Ladies and gentlemen, judges, we are about to start the talent competition. It's easy for me to judge because I give each person a 10 on every category. Because here's the thing, I don't want to be too hard because let me tell you something, when the gays turn, it's ugly. So I'm just giving everybody a 10 and let them work it out. The winner is Miss Utah, Freedom Young! I love them! I basically recruit celebrities to come to this Toys for Tots event. You know, and I have it once a year. Once a year, I ask famous people to come to an event I'm hosting. So, you know, I pull out all the stops. I'll do whatever it takes. It's kind of a nightmare. All right, so we gotta do pictures. I know this is weird, but can I get a contact info for you? Yeah, yeah, so yeah. you know what I'm calling about since I like had the girl. Yeah. No, I'll give you. You can give me like my your oh. number or something. I'll give you. Where, I'll give you my phone. Yes, yeah, perfect. Okay. Okay, so will you remember Kathy Griffin Toys for Tots? Yeah, I went last year to the Toys for Tots. Okay. Hey, John. Can I? Will you give me your contact info? Yeah. I'm gonna invite you to a fundraiser I'm doing. Oh. Cool. For Toys for Tots. Toys for Tots. Do you like Tots? Tots? I love Tots. Good. I have two of my own. Marsha. Hey, Will you write down a contact number for you? Yes. It can be your assistant or something. I'm, I'm going to call you for a Toys for Tots fundraiser. Oh, yeah. Do you like Tots? I love Tots. <laughs> Most of the celebrities gave me their contact info. Although I think my favorite was Rachel Bilson from the OC who just gave me her publicist phone number. I was like, I get it, Rachel. I'm not supposed to call you at home. So did I, who else, did I miss anybody I should have gotten? I got Peter Gallagher, Marsha Cross, Rachel Bilson, John C. Riley. I don't even know who's gonna come from the people I tried to pin down tonight. I would say if I get even one of them, I'll be lucky. You know, it's a numbers game, what can I tell you? Coming up, that's something that would not happen to Nicole Kidman. That doesn't happen to Zellweger. My name's Jessica. I'm Kathy Griffin's personal assistant. I've been working for Kathy about six months and loving every minute of it. 
Jessica? Jessica? Hey, Jessica, it's Kathy. Um, it's like 1.20 in the morning. All right, so here's what I want you to do. Will you come um, pin those pants? Can you dodge it this weekend? And cancel it entirely. Call somebody from the event again. Will you get the black purse in my bedroom? Get me that gift bag, Jessica. All right, all right. <laughs> It's freezing. Okay. And I don't think that he's working in this part of the house. Oh, great. So many people think it would be the worst um, job to work as a personal assistant. Everyone thinks it's like bitch work. And it's, it's I mean, yes, it is, but it's fun for me. All right. All right, so what's going on? Okay. So would you like to go to this this evening, uh, Comedy Central? This evening? Like this evening, oh. evening, like 1030. I don't know if you have plans tonight. No. No. Okay. That sounds like a big bus fire. <laughs> yeah. If you're a celebrity, you have to have a personal assistant. Because you can't do all the stuff you're, you have to do in a day. Anyone who was at my level in any business would also have an assistant. But they probably wouldn't have to return their clothes to Bloomingdale's. But it's not like she's getting me hookers. Yes. I would say I was slightly <laughs> unlucky in love. You know I dated a midget. Yeah. So there's been, like, a bunch of bisexual guys, because, you know, I don't care about that. Then there's, like, a midget. And then there was the guy who lived in his van. And then, like, there were always, like, I was really into fixer-uppers, so there's all these guys where, like, I would try to, like, get them on their feet in some way or fix them up or whatever. And there was, like, the super, super gorgeous guy who would vomit every time we had a date. Vomit. Vomit. And I was like, um, I don't feel that good that you puke before our dates. And he'd be like, oh, I'm nervous. My relationship with Matt is phenomenal. I had kind of given up when I met him because I really craved a certain type of guy, and I thought, I f every guy in New York, Chicago, and LA. Yeah. I probably slept with your dad. You just don't know it. I love her sense of humor. I think she's got an amazing sense of humor, and we, I have a great time hanging out with her. There's not that many people that I could literally just hang out with for, you know, 24 hours a day. How do you just turn it off? Uh, yeah. He's so smart, you can talk to him about anything. I love that I can turn to him and say, you know, what is the capital of the Straits of Magellan? And he'll know. Which, does it have a capital? Do Straits have a capital? I don't even know that, but he would. I am an IT consultant. I set up computer networks for small businesses in Los Angeles. I have my own company, Moline Systems. And you're looking at the staff. Do you have anything? Well, you can't wear that. Do you have like a black jacket or anything? Yeah, I got a leather jacket. We gotta look fancy, man. Whoa. Fancy and spiritual. What is this thing, by the way? What we're going to tonight? It's a Kabbalah. Don't um, ask. Yeah, I know it's a Kabbalah. Party. Book signing party for yeah, what's for the book? The book that it's called the Red String Book. All right, you think I'm okay without hand makeup? Yeah. Or should I do hand makeup? No, you're fine. Okay. Um, are you gonna like button it first when you're walking down the? I don't know, Jess. I'm thinking, Matt, get away. I'm thinking. Okay. The thing is, it doesn't. I don't want to showcase the pants and the belt. I want to showcase the coat. I think I should pose like that. I think I should literally pose like that. Okay. <laughs> I know. Okay. I'm totally getting a free belt out of this. I can feel it. So tonight we're going to some bullshit Kabbalah event. And apparently Kabbalah is all about cause and effect. Or at least that's what I heard Madonna say on Oprah. All right, I think that's good. Oh, pen and paper okay. for party numbers. Okay. Make your own paper. And I'm going just to do the press line. I'll tell you right now. But you know, when you're on the D-list like me, you gotta just go and do press. Why are you here this evening? Are you a Kabbalah student? I'm not a Kabbalah student. I'm here um, because I was invited. I'll pretty much you know, go anywhere. And I do feel that my life is the anti-Nicole Kidman. My celebrity is the anti-Julia Roberts. So I often think it's funny to look at things in my life and imagine, how would this be for Nicole Kidman? Nicole Kidman would not go to the Kabbalah book release party. Nicole Kidman wouldn't go anywhere that I go. Yeah, that was totally a D-list event because Kathy, I think, was the biggest star there. And it was lacking any celebrities, and it was a big hubbub about nothing. How about celebrity friends of yours that are Kabbalah? So they're trying to get you into it, you know, come to the party. First of all, I love that you think I have a celebrity. <laughs> I don't have one. 
have any, and for obvious reasons. I can't even understand Madonna anymore. Her accent is much thicker than yours. There you go. And I think she's actually a member of the royal family at this point. She's so British. <laughs> she's, she's definitely not American anymore. You know the way Justin Timberlake is black now? That's how British Madonna is. <laughs> really funny that Madonna thinks she figured out the world better than the rest of us. That cracks me up. You ever hear Madonna on Oprah talking about Kabbalah? She's like, it's this religion where they prove to you that there's a cause and effect. And if I'm nice to someone, they could be nice back. And I'm like, you had to join a religion to not be an asshole? Like, that's what they teach you the golden rule in first grade. I went in and looked around, and there were just sort of a lot of like poser type of people in there. I, I mean, really, I didn't know what any of them did. Can I tie you down? Why not? Oh, right, of course. Of course. How many is it? Seven. Yes. All Thank right. you very much. I'm tied down. I'm tied down. Okay, and party. A woman wanted to tie me down, which her, was her cute way of saying she wanted to put a red cabal string on my wrist, which she did, and you can probably tell I've been really positive ever since. I was walking through the store with Matt and then this guy recognized me and he started to sort of dance with me which was sort of like okay fine wacky and then he physically flipped me around in a circle it was a complete revolution and I just wanted to kill him and I just was like that's something that would not happen to Nicole Kidman that doesn't happen to Zellweger so it's those moments that really make me go I'm on the D-list bye thanks so the Kabbalah party was a huge bust. I mean, there wasn't even anyone there I could invite to my Toys for Tots event. That could have been the worst event we've ever been to. That wasn't even D-list. It was just me. Yeah. <laughs> my wonderful, incredible, handsome husband has accidentally gained 100 pounds since we met. <laughs> Let's see, should I do meatballs or chicken? I should do chicken, right? It's better for me. We're giving it away here. Oh, like I give a sh Unless you want to go to Krispy Kreme, and I'm fine with that. It's all about you, making you happy. I spent the last year just eating like an insane person. I feel like the upper part of my body is kind of like swollen. I feel a little bit pregnant. Like, all right, enough, let's have the baby now. When we first met, he was training for a marathon, and he actually got me into running. So I knew that if he couldn't even go on a walk with me, that it was bad. So he's thinking about getting the gastric bypass surgery. If I get into the surgery, I think my life is going to change drastically because I spend so much time right now, like, thinking about food and where I'm going to eat next. And it's going to be a challenge to find something else to replace all that time and energy. Where's your red string, by the way? Where's my what? Your red string. I thought you... I had so much negative energy that my red string disintegrated. Coming up, what can I do to get back on Oprah? Do you think it'd be weird if I raped Matt? Welcome to the resort. This is my dream home. I love this house like it's a person. I fell in love with this house the night I saw it. This house is my mat. I love this house from the moment I started dating it. Yet I feel like it needs gay vision. So the minute we walked in for the first time, I said to Matt, I can't do this. I need a gay man to come in and make it all better. So um, my friend Tony introduced me to a fantastic designer named Mike. He's gonna do the house. He's gonna give it the gay vision it deserves. And he's also gonna live there while he's doing it, which is great. Most people can barely get their designers on the phone. So, so this wall won't be there, so that's So we're plan. gonna open this Remove. doorway from here to where? To about where the edge of this chair is. About, about, here? about four feet That's out. gonna be so Ooh. cool. He came over and he literally said, this house is so cool. Okay. I want a name for myself in LA. I'll do the house literally for free. Because I will do it yeah. for free. Because then I can take beautiful photographs and I can tell my LA clients I did the Kathy Griffin home and I can show them pictures of it. Mike just lives here now. I just lives in the spare room. It's pretty great. He's living there and redoing it while he's sleeping in his head. This actually is the first time that I've moved in and lived on a project. I don't normally move in with celebrities and live with them. <laughs> but, uh, but living here has been very, very helpful. Your vision is that it needs to be functional for 
for how you live and use it. Yeah, and the other thing is, you know, our last house was really funky, but I feel like this house should be sleek, sexy, modern, minimal. Yeah, I agree. Nothing cutesy, nothing early American, nothing Cape Cod. It's got to be sleek, sexy, and modern, like myself. We would do a tr treatment on here to make this look like it's just a big, solid chunk of metal. God, that sounds expensive, so, Mike. It sounds very expensive. Probably. Mike! <laughs> I want it for $2 or $2.50. Mike doesn't have that much time left to finish designing the entire house because the annual Toys for Tots fundraiser is coming up and he's got to be done. The time frame, as tight as it is, isn't as tight as the budget <laughs> that she gave me. And, and I had to, like, beat her up a little bit to get the budget I had. So, so she's looking for uh, anything that's, if, if not free, just about. You know, and, so, and that's very challenging. First of all, I really want a sectional that fits in here because the builder built this area for a baby grand piano. And, you know, Matt hasn't done like a concert it. in years. <laughs> I mean, you could actually build a custom sofa that follows the line of the room. That sounds expensive, Mike. It probably is, too. It all is. But what do you we'll think the odds out. are of that guy giving us a sofa? If you have a, a, a big giant budget, it's a lot easier to pull off, especially with, with short time frame. But th th that's not there. So we have to talk people into giving it to us for free. And that's challenging. Not everybody wants to build a big giant custom leather sofa for free. I don't know what Mike is used to working with because I've never hired a designer before, but the budget for the house is $100,000. And that's all in. So that seems like an awful lot of money to me. If I didn't have this house and certain other financial responsibilities, you know, I could probably do a few clubs a year and be okay. I, I can't work enough. I will do anything if you meet my quote. I'll do a snuff film if you meet my quote. Even though you can only do one. If you meet my quote, I'm there. What's my call time? So Jessica, Mike, and I are gonna sit down and meet with my publicist, Anna Marlia, and discuss the upcoming Christmas Toys for Tots event. It's a month before the big fundraiser. I was completely stressing out, and I just thought there's no way I'm gonna get ready for this fundraiser in time. Mike has been time. working tirelessly, and sometimes I'll just see him at three in the morning, just red-eyed, holding a swatch up, frozen. <laughs> so to be together by the time of a Christmas party. Yes. Oh, oh by the way, yeah. we're now literally referring to it as the fundraiser. The fundraiser, it's okay. Only, it's, we're not even using the word Christmas. Okay. It's the fundraiser. Let's talk about free shit we can get for the party. Okay. So last year we did we, last year we did Godiva. So Godiva should do us again, right? Please tell me you have some kind of an electronics hookup. Yeah. We want we need a big giant TV for free or next to free. Are you trying to get it for free or yeah? Gonna, okay, so for free, you don't yeah. wanna. All right, here's how you get your house done for almost free. You arrange for lots of press to be at a certain event, preferably a charity event. Celebrities come, press comes, possible free stuff or maybe deals on stuff. Next thing you know, you're raising a lot of money for charity and maybe you got a free end table. But we're looking for free. Right, got it. that's the key. Yeah, got it. she's got it. <laughs> is the key. We know, we know it's for free. Yeah. Now what about booze? What I really need is beer and wine. And I know they all want to give you papyrus rum and shit. Right. But I really need beer and wine. Okay. Let's see. So what else? What other free shit do we need? When it comes to free stuff for Kathy, there, there's no holds bar. <laughs> She's threatened my job a couple of times if I don't get her the free stuff. I love getting free stuff. And let me just say this. Yeah. Everyone does. And I like to get free stuff that I actually use. I'm very excited that I got this shirt for free, and I'm now wearing it for you. We just Where need to get names of celebrities that are going to show up. Well, did you get the names I sent you? Yeah, yeah, but are they confirmed? No. Okay. I find it very odd that Kathy has to call upon her celebrity friends um, and kind of beg them. Be like, you promise you'll show up? Because if you don't show up, this is all going downhill. I think the names you can definitely securely say are Lance Bass, Jamie Linda Scala, um, Shannon Elizabeth. Ready? Okay, we've got the um, Jenny McCarthy. Jenny McCarthy is for sure in. Caroline Ray. I think the meeting with the, with the publicist went really, really well. I'm just afraid we asked a lot of them. Like we kind of dumped tons of stuff. Then we were like hitting them up for free stuff and hookups. We don't typically do charity parties or or events like that. But when you work in publicity, you deal with a lot of different personalities and egos. And Kathy knows what she wants. 
and she conveys that to us, and there's no gray area. All right, thanks Bye, so thank much, you guys. See you soon. I know it's a lot of work, but I really, really appreciate it. Okay. Matt was expressing that he really felt out of control with his eating and his weight gain. I could tell he didn't feel well. I had gone from 200 pounds to 260 in about five years. And uh, I've had this whole pattern in my life where I'm just always either going up rapidly or going down rapidly. Kathy and I have a few friends who've had this gastric bypass operation and I just saw like their results from that and decided that would probably be the best thing to do. A lot of people that have the gastric bypass, they're just under the limit and Matt was one of those people. So I did research on it and found that I would have to get the 320 pounds just to qualify for the operation. Right now with clothes and shoes on, I weigh about 309 pounds. So to get to the qualifying weight at 320 pounds, I put on ankle weights that are five pounds each and I also have a two and a half pound weight in my pocket. I am going to my doctor who will be hopefully performing the gastric bypass on me. I have to make 320. Now, when I just weighed myself after adding the weights and everything, I weigh 323. So, as long as I don't get busted for having my weights, then I'll be fine. Chevy's is a cantina. It's in the valley, it's not pretentious. They have great chips and salsa. I usually meet Dennis and Tony at Chevy. Oh, so <laughs> we, we, we took the liberty the of ordering Diet Coke. Pitcher? Yeah. Pitcher Diet Pepsi. Oh, and sweet. And the fresh fish is... Um, Don't shiny. even bother. Don't yeah. even bother. None <laughs> of us here are having fresh anything. <laughs> well, it's going to be fresh, but it's fresh not going to be as low fat as fish. <laughs> yeah. Dennis and Tony are my best friends. And my joke is that they're two of my best gays. I just love those guys. They're, they're just smart and fun and funny. We have a great rapport and we can just crack each other up all day. Jesus. I ordered a little booze. Yeah, a little sneaky peek. Kathy, oh. I work with children, I drink. You are like the Desperate Housewives. <laughs> it's like an onion. There are so many layers to her levels of her gay circles of friends. We're the core of the onion. I don't even know what, we're the very center. We're her main gays. Now, it's, I have an unveiling. That's right, you told me we were gonna do yeah. that. I coined the phrase my gays because I hang out with so many gay guys that I just started calling them my gays. It's really gotten to the point where Matt and I barely know any straight people. I just identify with gay people. I was that girl that went to the prom with the gay guy. My prom date is now a choreographer at Disney World. The gays love Kathy because she says things that no one else will say. Was and I think like there's something also, she really relates to the outsider in people. What can I do to get back on Oprah? Do you think it'd be weird if I raped Matt? That's unusual. And then we can find out what's happening in the suburbs. Yeah. And Oprah can go, that's you the key. never know. See, that's the key. And then, you, then she can say, the on this raping, day, people will right. admit it. Some man won't get raped by his wife today. Because of Kathy's bravery. Right. Buy her new DVD. I love Oprah, and she is ridiculous. I mean, I love the show. I watch it every day. I mean, every day. And yet, I can't help but make fun of her because she thinks she's Jesus. What about the clip package? Where, like, they show Matt, like, cupping his ass, like, ow, oh, why'd you have to hurt me? <laughs> yeah. And they show me smoking. Yeah, well, you shouldn't address that way, you whore. Up next, well, my parents are coming over today, and that's always fun. Matt and I are thinking of getting a Cambodian crack baby. <laughs> I had my final weigh-in to get my faster bypass operation. Verdict is that I passed the, uh, the test, but she was a little incredulous because I was in there two and maybe two weeks and two days ago, and I gained, according to their weight, 11 pounds since then, which is pretty fast. I mean, I'll be disappointed about if, if I don't get approved because it'll put off the inevitable. That's what I feel like. I feel like I'm gonna get it no matter what, so it's just a matter of when I'm gonna get it now. Well, whenever my parents come over, it's really great because they're like a TV show. You open the door and then they're on. Hello, hello, uh, hello. Uh, so what are you, Hi, how you doing? Hi. And they're really funny and they're these great characters. All right, what kind of bin do you want? 
I'll have a little bit of white bin. All right. Well, I think she has done fabulous. Yeah. Considering coming yeah. out here, no ties, no anything. I think she's done wonderful. My parents don't think I'm D-list, and they don't like when I joke that I'm on the D-list. I think she's a B. I'll tell B. you right now. Well, on see, I... national television, I'm saying B. Well, Matt and I are thinking of getting a Cambodian crack baby. <laughs> Just to give back to the community. Yeah, I thought you were a, t a Thai crack baby. Uh, Maybe Thai baby, I'm not sure. Yeah. Well, why don't, They're you, all the same. why don't you wait just a little bit? Yeah. Because their new baby's going to come along right. pretty soon. Maybe from Somalian. Uh, Iraqi or something. Well, soon we're going to have a Iraqi baby. Oh. Yeah. Be be baby, baby. Daddy's parents are great. They're really great characters, first of all. They've got this amazing relationship with each other where they're just like, they're like yin and yang or something. Oh, we got something for you from the gift bag. Oh, I... We're going to uh, go through all the gift bags. They well, give you that size bag and yes, everything? Oh, it's my exciting. God. A gift bag is something that you get when you go to an event and you're a celebrity, and it's their way of saying, thanks for coming. They can act like they're giving it to you because they're grateful or whatever, but really, it's a marketing tool. It's a cereal dispenser. It's a thing you do, it, give, it, it does sense. Uh, this is a head massage. Oh. You know what, Matt, I'm gonna keep these. I think I would really wear them. Yeah. I'm trying to convince everybody I bought this. <laughs> Throat lozenges. Oh! This could be for you two, uh -oh. since you're clearly battling Alzheimer's. What a genius oh, it's mind. It's a motivational <laughs> DVD, <laughs> and it's, it's to get you to think better. It's a great oh. march, activating your brilliance. Oh! Yeah, and yours could stand a little activating. Mine, Holy Toledo. Mine needs a lot. This what about Gary and the uh, pickup lines? Oh, Gary. Yes. Movie Famous too. movie pickup lines. Yes. Viper telephone. Do you think Johnny would like it? He loves cars. Regifting is just what it says. It's when you get a gift and for whatever reason you don't need it or you don't want it, and then you regift it to someone else. Everyone in Hollywood does it. I like that. What's the size of these tops. I what? could wear a top like that uh, when I was eight years old. Oh, mother. Well, you were tiny one time. Well, Dad, she's tiny now. <laughs> oh, she's tiny now. Yeah. Yeah, she's a yeah, big fat yeah. cow. I always forget. Like me. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like me. Oh, uh, yes, yes, like yeah, you, honey. Yes, Ken. No, I was supposed to say not like you. Oh. I oh. just said I'm a big fat ass, and you yeah. went, yes, Kathy. Oh. oh. Believe it or not, for all her, her brashness yeah, yeah. and all yeah. her bravado yeah. and everything. Kathy is very, very thin oh, skin. She's tender as she's, can And be she's like very that. easy oh, hurt to very easy. hurt. Very easy. Yeah. People like that usually are. I kind of got to start to get ready anyway. Yeah. So, right. But if you, feel, if you feel that you need to clean up in here, don't let me stop you. Oh, I feel very, I bit. feel very compelled. Not that it's your mess, clean but uh, that's me. And here's a oh, diet coke. Me. I can't wait to clean up. Okay, pants. Um, these are these are comfy, actually. Right. I'm getting ready because Stephen, the sofa guy, is coming, who's a friend of Mike's, and I must impress him. And I want him to think that this house is fabulous in California airy and worthy of an excellent custom-made sectional sofa at cost. <gasps> like the fireplaces. to do whatever it took to get that sofa. Hey, Mike. I think we should do fountains. What do you think? Yeah. OK. Yeah. All right, Captain, just be yourself. Yeah. Trying to get a sectional. I'm Jessica. I'm Steven. Nice to meet you. you. Come on in. When it comes to getting free stuff for the house, for redecorating, which we're trying to do right now, I'm just sort of the one that makes the appointments so she can attack Hi. the uh, the businessman or whoever the representative is for whatever company she's trying to get free stuff from. Good. Great. It's cool, isn't it? Great. It's beautiful. <laughs> All right, Steven. Come on. Great. Huh? Oh, my God. Isn't it awesome? Yeah. All right, well, let me let me talk about what we can do for each other. Let's talk turkey, shall we? Okay. What are you giving me? He's, a, he's afraid. <laughs> he's like, Mike, you said we weren't going to have this discussion. Oh, we're having it. You should be afraid and a little nervous. If I were you, I'd pee now. I think I'm a great negotiator because I have a set limit, and that's it. 
And that's how you win a negotiation. First, I'm going to give you some sexy pictures of myself. Oh, wonderful. No, the reason I gave you, I brought my press packet is because the last house, which was less than half the size, that was extensively away, covered. Sir. And so I just wanted to show you some the, the coverage I got. So this is a woman's day piece. Here's Us Weekly. People Magazine has a huge readership. And you know, we're going to go for Oprah. You know, I was on Oprah in December. Yeah. And we'll go for Oprah. And that's huge. That's the Holy Grail. Oprah's it's huge. It's the Holy Grail. I showed him um, press pieces of the last house that I had. So I was able to say, look, in the last house, I was in People Magazine and Us Weekly and Woman's Day and we're going to do at least this much for this house and probably more. Okay, good to meet you. We'll, really get, we'll be in touch. Yeah, thanks okay. a lot for your time coming right. out on yeah. short you notice. Stephen won't commit to anything and that's bullshit. So I want a price, I want it on paper. But since he's Mike's friend, I'm going to let Mike sort of handle it. Well, I don't think that the sofa guy, Stephen, he wasn't prepared. He wasn't quite ready for Kathy's negotiating skills. <laughs> she caught him off guard and he was squirming. <laughs> but uh, I think he got out of it, actually. I don't think she's done with him. All right, bye, Stephen. Bye. Thanks. Bye. Thank you. All right, Kathy, I have to ask questions. Yeah, I know. Have you replied to all your emails? I was just working my way through them. The John Wayne Cancer Institute is a great organization, and I get many requests to do charity functions. So I got the script, and the script voice announcer announces you at 8, and, it, and your line is saying, thanks, um, I'm delighted to serve as your host for the ABC's Winter Wonder, Wonderland 2004 gala. And I'm not getting paid for this, right? Mm -hmm. All right. <laughs> Well, no, no. Let me just look. All right. Good evening, everyone, and welcome. The Associates for Breast and Prostate Cancer Studies really want to thank you for coming tonight. I'm delighted to serve as your host for the ABC Winter Wonderland 2004 Gala. Just know that during all this, it's going to be like, can I have another roll? Mm -hmm. Where's the butter? Right. So Patrick Wayne intros Alyssa Milano. Warren Beatty will be receiving an award, too. Oh, sweet. Warren Beatty is a uh, State liberal. liberal. Okay. So... Warren Beatty is part of our lives. It's true. I can't wake up without him. <laughs> um, he's like oxygen to me. When I meet celebrities, okay. I'm, I have my own issues I'm bringing to the table. Either I, I idolize them and I'm hoping they're going to be cool or I can't stand them and they surprise me and they're great or, you know, but I, I'm just such a, like a celebrity file. I, I'm a fan of pretty much everybody I make fun of. I did the fundraiser because, um, I just do a lot of that stuff. And um, I regretted it the minute I accepted it because I knew it wasn't my crowd. But anyway, they're gonna give an award to Warren Beatty, so that should be fun. I could maybe meet him. I don't think the majority of these people know who I am at all. I said, let's go see. Let's go greet people at the reception and see how many of them stop and say, oh, well, you're right here, or anything like that. Hi, I'm Kathy Griffin, I'm hosting tonight. Enjoy the show. Hi, Kathy Griffin, I'm hosting tonight. Kathy Griffin, I'm hosting tonight. Hi, nice. To hi, how are you? I'm Lauren Bernie Hello, so I please go and bid, bid high, bid high. This is how I know this crowd is not my people and does not know who I am at all, because they literally think I'm the greeter. You know, if this was a gay bar, they'd all know me. Matt and I stood there and greeted people, and just one after another, they just kind of looked at me and just went on their way to the silent auction. And the silent auction was deafening compared to the reception I got. Welcome. Doctor. That's my new thing. What? To call them all doctor. Doctor. Good to see you, doctor. Chief of surgery. There was a lot of, you know, furs and older rich Beverly Hills ladies and older doctors and, you know, very stuffy kind of foo-foo crowd. Hello. We're, we're trying to guess your name. I Kathy, Kathy Griffin. Griffin. She's yes. Gifford. <laughs> Griffin. But I've met Kathy Lee Gifford. And she is a nightmare. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. <laughs> Keep in mind, a lot of people think that I'm either Vicki Lewis from News Radio or Kathy Lee Gifford. So it's really hard to nail down my public image when people on the street say to me, How's Regis? <laughs> Publicist to come tell me if I can have a picture with him. I don't want to miss him. 
It's really interesting to me to always see what celebrities are like. Even if I just see them for a few seconds, I just love to get some kind of impression. Okay, so here's the deal. So we have to bum rush him as soon as he gets off stage. Okay. You better have that camera ready. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, please give a warm welcome to your host for this evening, Kathy Griffin. To be in front of like a bunch of wealthy Beverly Hills, you know, um, altruistic black tie types, and doing my stand up is, is always a disaster. Who wants to hear a Brooke Shields story? Oh gosh. I remember the time she walked in and told me how tall she was. 6'1. She lies and says 6 feet. And I bombed. I knew it. I knew going in. Knew I was going to bomb. I just thought, you know what? Put on a nice dress and put a smile on your face and try to move the evening along. <laughs> When Warren Beatty was on stage getting his award, I was basically not even in the wings. I was pretty much at the other end of the stage, ready to bum rush him to get a photo. She knew that if she was going to walk away with one thing that night, it would not be her dignity. It would be a picture with Warren Beatty. May I get a quick photo? Yes. Thank you so much. I'm doing the candid one where we're talking like we're very old friends. Yes, I feel that we are. <laughs> Supposed to be in this. All right. What is it? Here. Hi. How are you? Here we go. Here we go. That's good. <laughs> oh, I love yes. these. This is my Christmas like card. I hope you're okay really? with that. Really? I'm, I'm happy with it. And uh... but that went really well. And he was very, you know, you accommodating. Picture. We got a good picture. But but did you get one of us candidly talking? Uh, oh, let me well, see. Let me see. No, the problem was that the light was shining from right behind you guys. So I'll show you where you're at. That was terrible. And you're hidden by the doctor. Oh, that killed that doctor. I didn't get one good picture of me and Warren Beatty alone. We can crop everybody else out. Oh, we're cropping. I wasn't totally satisfied with my picture with Warren Beatty. Uh, I think he was, but I wasn't. I thought about inviting Warren to my Toys for Tots event, but I didn't have the balls. I really seriously wasn't leaving until I got a picture with Warren Beatty. All right, now it's time to party. I know, you are partying out, you nutballs. Right. Bombing is a horrible, horrible feeling. Yeah, check one, two. Like if you're bombing in the first five minutes, you're probably not gonna get them back. And one really bad habit I have is sometimes when I'm bombing really bad, I won't wanna get off the stage because I'll keep thinking I can get them back. While they're getting set up for the band, I would like to tell you a story about my first Hollywood party. Um, I had not met Gary Coleman, but I was excited to be invited to his house, and I walked in one night. I was so nervous. I was so young. I was in my early 40s, and I thought, if I could just realize a dream, and um, I f***ed him. Okay, next we have a performance. Oh, ouch. And then I made a very poor judgment on a certain Gary Coleman joke. I believe I said I f***ed him. And that really went over like a lead balloon. And then I... That was awful. You told me to try a naughty joke. No, I didn't. Yes, you did. I said get up there and just say what's on the cards. Not... Oh, God. I don't want to go back and say goodnight after my foul mouth joke bombed. Bombed. I thought they were looser, like they were in the mood to hear the F1 Now you might once. as well go just finish digging your own grave. Just go in there and tell them all. You could all suck it. <laughs> so this night was kind of a disaster, although it was a very typical gig for me because this is not my crowd, very stuffy. We haven't partied like that since Manilow 94. <laughs> not since we saw Def Leppard. That was really fun. Previously on My Life on the D-List. Mike! 
My annual Toys for Tots fundraiser is coming up, and my designer, Mike, doesn't have that much time left to finish designing the entire house. That sounds expensive, Mike. I want it for $2 or $2.50. Thankfully, I've got my wonderful assistant, Jessica, working her ass off to help out with it. Jessica? Jessica? Hey, Jessica. It's like 1.20 in the morning. Everyone thinks it's like bitch work, but it's fun for me. Meanwhile, in the midst of all this, the love of my life, Matt, has decided he wants to get gastric bypass surgery. I feel a little bit pregnant. Like, all right, enough. Let's have the baby now. Oh, my God. Yeah. And my crazy parents are too drunk to care. Ah. Uh. Okay, here's the thing. Get out of my way, you A-list boys. My Prada shoes are as good as yours. Every year I have a Christmas party and sometimes famous people come and then I thought why am I having this party for nothing? I'm not having one more party unless press covers it. So, so here's the scam. What you have to do is you have to have a party but have some kind of a bullshit charity tie-in, right? Then you get celebrities and press. And then I thought what can people really bring? Toys for tots. Right? Everybody can buy a toy. Everybody likes tots. So, so whenever you're doing these charity events, the charities always press you. Who do you got? Who do you got? Who do you got? Because the more celebrities you have, the more press they get, the better it is for the charity. And it really is for the children. <laughs> Here's what's stressful. Since Matt and I have only been here for a few months, the house has to be really designed from the ground up, and there's no way we're gonna get it together before the big fundraiser for Toys for Tots. There's no way. We can rip one of these down with a saw. My designer, Mike, lives here now. I just lived in the spare room. Mike is doing all of the work for free in exchange for all the publicity the house will get him, and it's pretty great. Mike is the perfect house guest. All he needs is like 40 to 43 beers a day. He doesn't eat that much. It's quiet. You give him a few beers and you're gonna get your house redone. The Toys for Tots party is a very large event, very well publicized, lots of press, and that's important to Kathy. So the house has to be perfect and it has to be done in time for that party. The fundraiser is seven days away and I really had to go furniture shopping with Mike. The deal is I want to use Mike's know-how and his connections and my quasi-celebrity to get some quasi-deals. Is this your employee here? No, this is my client. The security guard thought I was Mike's assistant, which, you know, happens sometimes. They can't all think I'm Kathy Lee Gifford. We're gonna go to Trevor Nevitz, the sofa company that's making the custom sofa for Kathy, and Kathy will do whatever it takes to get this sofa for free or next to free. All right, what I haven't told you is that this sofa is not for me. I have an aunt who's an invalid, and she has a lot of illnesses, none of which I can name right now, but they're very serious. And her dying wish is that I get a really beautiful sofa for free. And yeah, no. Because I, I have sure. three words for you. I, key, uh. Steven, the sofa guy, is working me. All right, I thought maybe I could get the sofa for free. So I had him to the house a couple of weeks ago to talk about it. He's not having it. Let's talk turkey, shall we? <laughs> Mike, you said we weren't going to have this discussion. No, we're having it. <laughs> now I'm trying again to see the best deal I can get. Um, so do you have any idea good. what the cost is? For a sectional of this sectional magnitude? Of this magnitude would probably retail for like 20 grand. All together. Do you want to be in the Suddenly Susan reunion show or not? Yes. It, it'll, it'll, be, it'll be very fair. I think it'll be very, it'll work out. All right, what do you got? Let me show you. <coughs> so submit Eric, the Eric, I just saw the price. So if the entire unit is 3,000, then the bottom must be 300 it. or 350. No, 229.99. <laughs> I'm not above a floor sample. I, you know, I, I see a scratch, I look the other way. I like when it has a red tag on it with something scratched out and then another price and then that's scratched out and then there's the final price. We got a really wheel and deal because I love this store. It's me, Kathy Griffin, your favorite Seinfeld guest star. Here's the thing. Yeah. I need a lot of things in the store for free. I need you to just put on a truck in the back. We'll discuss it later. Send it over to the house. Can you just pick a room? <laughs> okay, Bob. 
Thank you so much for everything. Can, Can I get a picture her? of you and I? Of course. The last picture about I got me. was me and OJ. We're take a picture. Can I just at least have one leather desk? Would I have him for free end table? Yes. When's my witch trial? So how did everything go today? Okay. First of all, I'm a nervous wreck. I have a lot of anxiety about the sectional. I'm just afraid that he's going to call and go, well, we love you so much that we're going to give you a $20,000 sofa for $17,000. The bottom line is this. We're not getting any deals on furniture, and the party's going to be a failure. What time is your, are you leaving for the flight tomorrow? Okay, our flight is at 935, so um, since it's rush hour, I probably won't leave at 835. I'll probably leave at like 815. I'm going to do a celebrity poker charity fundraising event in Portland, Oregon. I'm not even sure what charity this poker tournament is going to benefit, but I don't care because I'm a giver. Okay, that's my crime. Okay. I'm nervous that when we go to Portland mm -hmm. and we leave the painters here, that they're going to jerk off on our bed. They did that already today. Gross. Hi, Hi. Kathy. So Chris. nice to meet you. So what are you getting important so far, Kat? I don't know. Ricky Lake was panicking so much on the, the descent. Yeah, that was nerve-wracking. So funny. I mean, the flight was fine. But... Well, the flight's fine, but it's bad when there's one passenger in an eight-person plane going, this is not good. It's a metaphor. Now, you know that's a symbol of God's covenant. Or there's a big gay event. Well, it definitely doesn't look like a normal embassy suites. Right. I'll give them that much. Oops. Okay. This way. Who's got the royal suite? I don't know. Lake? Kevin f***ing Klein. <laughs> if Lake has it, I'm... I'm, we're spending the night in her room. So you know that I'm literally the only celebrity who's not playing for charity. Right. Literally the only one. Why don't you make up a charity? I am, but Toys you better tots. back me up. Toys for Tots fundraiser. No, that's a real one. I don't want them to get no, mad. No, but then you have the fundraiser and you're paying for it. Wait a minute. So it's not really like... What it, okay, here's what it is. The Kathy and Matt. The money I'm getting paid tonight... I apply to the money that I will be out of pocket for for the Toys for Tots fundraiser, which I will. I'll be out of pocket a lot. I don't know. What? Why aren't you playing for somebody? Because I need the money, Matt. That's oh, we, why. We gotta get a sofa. <laughs> After you, my beautiful princess. What? That's me. All right, so I'm with Kathy Griffin. We are live at Over Restaurant in Northwest Portland. As the people playing tonight is comedian Kathy Griffin. Yeah. So what do you know about poker? That it's this year's golf. That it's hot. That when Ben Affleck plays, he ends up in rehab. And that's where I come in. I want the exciting game. I'm all in, Ron. I'm all in. That, that's great. Now, I gotta go win a big poker tournament. I'll talk to you later. Instead of having some sort of, you know, hospitality room for the celebrities, we just lined up in the kitchen. That's that's pretty D-list. I want to get on the celebrity realty circuit. I want to see everybody's house. I do. I do it all the time. I have the guy. I have the guy for you. I went to Madonna's The celebrity house. realty circuit? Yeah. Where you can look at other celebrity houses and act like you might buy it? Ben Affleck came to my house. He saw my house. I want to go to Britney's house. You do? Yes. It's not for sale. She's got to be selling something somewhere. <laughs> Come on. Where are we? How far are we going? Just through the kitchen into the right. Oh, Kathy Griffin! like this crazy dealer who was like, I don't know if it was like a little Alzheimer's or what, but anyway, he couldn't keep track of money or cards. And when you're a dealer, you're supposed to be able to do those two things. Stop. Wait. He wins this money, he's got kids. Luckily, Annie Duke, the professional poker coach, came over and she was like screaming at him. Chop the pot. Split it up between these two hands. Chop the pot. It was really funny to see her just throw down with him. I thought she was going to hit him. And everyone was just like, oh, I guess it's for charity. I was not surprised I lost in poker. I'm a terrible poker player. But I really do have fun doing it. And I played for the charity. I don't know what charity. I don't remember, and I'm not sure I knew then. But I, I think it helped children and sick people. Sick children. 
and maybe lonely people. I don't remember what it was, but I'm all for it. All right, so here's the deal. I am admitting that I'm gonna sleep in my makeup. My hair and makeup girl does like professional makeup. It's very expensive. Since she couldn't be here and I wanna look, you know, like I have makeup on tomorrow, I have a whole system where I'm going to preserve my makeup. So I'll brush my teeth and gently dab my makeup and then I lay a towel out on the pillow and I lay down and then I just sleep like this all night and then I just wake up tomorrow and then I'm good to go. And the other thing that's key is that Matt brought his CPAP, which is an anti-snoring machine, which kind of looks like he's snorkeling, but it's the secret to our happy marriage. It's worth it, it's great, but he doesn't snore anymore. So what's going on with Ray Romano? Well, he called and he wants you to do- A big part in his show? No, he wants you <laughs> to do- He um... called me personally? Well, his assistant called. Well, that's, that's personal. Yeah. The biggest challenge in throwing the Toys for Tots fundraiser is just getting the celebrities to attend. But that's key because if I can get famous people here, then you get the press coverage, then that helps the charity, and then everybody wins. He wants you to do some stand-up for a children's AIDS foundation, I think, in March. All right, this is bull****. <laughs> I'm doing a trade. Okay. I'm serious. I'm not doing his event unless he does mine. This is bull****. I'm sick of doing everybody else's event and they can't show up at mine. Once a year, I call famous people. Once a year. All right, what am I supposed to do? Um, his assistant gave me his dressing room number. Oh, crap. I have to <laughs> deal with him. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, I gotta be strong. Please don't let him answer. <laughs> oh, machine. Thank God. Hey Ray, it's Kathy Griffin, how are you? Um, I got your uh, request that I would do the uh, CAF event in March, and I'm happy to, but here's the deal. If you don't come to my event, I'm not gonna do yours in March. Yeah, I'm drawing a line in the sand, Ray. Had it. Okay, bye. I'm having a lot of press here, so I don't wanna have the most press I've ever had here, and then the fewest celebrities. So I'm really openly nervous about it. Coming up. Right now I'm in the gift room of the Billboard Awards and this is one of my favorite things to do in the whole world. Do you want to kiss me? Because you're looking at me like you want to kiss me and that's inappropriate. Hi Skinny. Oh, listen oh my to gosh. You. Listen to you. So great to see you. South Beach, you know. Oh, well, we swear by it here in this house. Matt's mom and dad are here, which means the party prep is officially underway. Matt's mom makes all the food from scratch. It's a lot of work. My mom every year takes a great amount of pride and does a really good job of doing the food at the party. And Kathy loves the fact that she can just turn over like one segment of the, the party to my mom. Matt's dad is the theologian, philosopher, you know, so he's always going on about Jesus this and Jesus that. Luckily, he lets us make fun of him for it, though, which is my kind of Jesus. This will be my sixth Christmas party that I've done for Kathy. And, I mean, this is pretty much the usual stuff that I bring. A nutmeg zester, your sanding, sugar, you know, all these kinds of things. Look, I love Judy, but she's here to work, and she knows it. Nobody stays at the resort for free. I have to hit the gym, and so Jessica will get you whatever you want. Uh -huh. Oh, hi, Bobby. Oh. How are you? <laughs> Let's go. Focus on fitness. I'm focused. I told you, no more naps while you're working out. All right. I do want to say that Bobby does work me so hard that sometimes I think he just gave me a roofie and beat me up. Ready for the big party? Oh, God. Everyone's bringing people. Do you have to bring your friends? Um, Everyone I know is bringing people I've never even met. And okay. now we're up to 400 people. Are you serious? Yeah. <laughs> I, will, I don't know your friends. We have 400 people coming. I guess you're wondering why I'm not a little dinner. Because as much as I use my gym equipment, I use I my right hand more to put donuts in so my face. You know to... All right? I know what you're getting at. Whew. My eating habits are terrible. I don't like fruits and vegetables. I kind of like meat. I like doughy things, fried things, and sugar things. That's what I like. And dips. I like things with dipping sauces. And glazed, things that are glazed. Or have frosting in some way, or some sort of a layered, something layered with other things inside that are sugary. Also, I like butter. I like things that rise. Cakey, cupcakey, donuty. I like bread and stuff is good. 
I like breaded bread. Lance is here. This is the best pizza place, I'm telling you. Tonight's game night. I love game night. Um, I'm having a few friends over. We're just gonna play just dumb games and talk and laugh. Your former neighbor, rock provocateur, Marilyn Manson. Manson. Yes. Okay, uh, a Bill Murray movie, Blank Day. Groundhog Day. Yes. Yeah! Ah! We got way too much pizza. By the way, Christie Alley is a solid maybe for the Toys for Tots party. Fantastic. A solid oh, fantastic. maybe. Fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. And then there's really good weird people like Forrest Whitaker. Now, do you want me to invite the usual gays? Or are we so all yeah. the celebrities that you don't want my gays? I think you should invite your normal posse because they're all, all nice guys. They're the most A list you're going to get. <laughs> Can you request one gay marine? Whenever you have a Toys for Tots event, they send Marines, which is great. Everybody's happy. The gays love them, everybody loves them. The Marines can write their own ticket at this party, all right? They can go <laughs> home with gay guys, they can go home with women, they can take their shirts off. I, everybody wants them, is the bottom line. The Marines, for God's sake. Just we won't ask, we won't we tell. We won't ask, we won't <laughs> tell, just one. Kathy, uh, it's Ray Romano. The guy you're blackmailing, I'll come by with a slinky with some scam thing that you're doing. You said 15 minutes. Can you cut it to 12? Come by and uh, we'll take a picture and I'll have some shrimp and then I'll go and that'll be fine. Well, I guess I owe him big time. A few weeks ago, I got results back from one of the tests I was taking to prepare for the gastric bypass, and the results came back that I had gastritis, which is an irritation of the stomach lining. And I just decided not to have the gastric bypass because the problem was not the size of my stomach, but rather my crazy eating, and that was more important to work on than the, getting the operation. We'll see what happens. I'm really getting nervous about way too many people. It's a big party. And here I am running into people at diners saying, right. what's your dress again? I don't want to be late. Here's going to be late. Dress. And then go, oh, I felt terrible. I told you that old dress. Judy brought her personal gay, who I thought was fantastic. My name is Robert. I'm a friend of Judy's. And I come from Atlanta. And I'm up here to help with the party. What's the dinner plan? I want to tell you something. This is not orange enough. What is that, tuna? <laughs> Which I was hoping that to kind of get it out before you saw it, because I know how you feel. You don't like tuna, do you? I do. I do oh, like tuna do? fish, yeah. Oh, okay. But I don't like celery in there, Judy. That ruins everything. Oh. There's a nice bowl in there. I just want to grab that. It's on the top of the shelf. Not, I don't love it. Put this in the bathroom. I want to see it in the bathroom right now. Kathy was telling us where everything should go. But if you look at this house, it's a pretty sweet house. And me fixing computers didn't pay for any of it. So she can tell me where the sofa goes, and I'll gladly put it in place. I need a good chunk of money for hair and makeup. And some kind of stylist money, like a 1000 bucks, so I have a f***ing outfit to wear. And per diem. Give me a goddamn per diem for once. Ridiculous. Whenever I have something happening at home that I really need to be there for, I get that last minute call for a job. So I now have to go to Vegas and do a pre-tape piece for the Billboard Awards, and I'm freaking out because I can't believe that I have to go now right before the party. Mike, I don't mean to be cold, but I'd rather you cut your hand open than cut oh, that sofa. Know that. So <laughs> I get the deal. <laughs> Stephen gave me a great deal, and I can't tell you what the deal was, because that was our deal, as I wasn't to discuss our deal with you. Would you mind moving these, or do you want me to lose my mind? Can you just move them just, like, over there or something? How's the heart? Does it fit? Yeah. Do you have to tweak it a little? You guys, should we maybe just move this out of the way? Kathy was driving us a little bit crazy, but I knew the potential for far greater insanity was there. So I think it was best for everybody to have her go to Las Vegas. I 
Yeah. Um, do you think I need to leave checks? Uh, you should, maybe. Should I leave you one? Just sign one. Okay. Yeah. I'm trusting you. You're on camera, Jessica. I don't want to see Mac Cosmetics. <laughs> That's five hundred dollars. <laughs> Laura, I know this is um, simple manual labor, but you know what I would love she could do? If right. she could just help clean and straighten. Okay. Like, so many people are going to be here. I would love it if you could really do the shoes like Nordstrom and make them all match. Oh, okay. you, know, you know what I'm saying. Yeah. So everything it looks insanely sleeping with the enemy, color-coded, perfection. Bye, guys. See if you can possibly carry on without me. Matt? He's out here, Kathy. Oh, okay. Were you yelling for me? Yeah. What's up? I feel bad that I'm leaving you. <laughs> You do? Are you sure you're okay with me going? I'm pretty upset. I'm pretty broken up about it. <laughs> I'm doing a pre-tape for the Billboard Music Awards, and it's a sketch that they wrote. Hey, how you doing? Where I run into a fake Kathy Griffin in the gift room, and we're fighting over who's gonna get what from the gift bag. And I'm not leaving this gig without the real gift bag. So it's a joke that's going to become real. I'm so glad you're here. Oh, I'm thrilled. I'm getting a gift bag, right, Zach? Oh, yeah. I'm not f around. What do you got, girls? Better make me look good or I'm not wearing it. Okay. Don't act surprised. If it makes you look fat, I'm not wearing it. The bit's over. Where's Nicole? Nicole, uh, Nicole Parker. Did you run by Kathy? I'm just so glad you're not a guy in drag. Because I was like, who is it? Some guy? A girl? A girl's doing me? What? Is she pretty? Howdy! There it is. There it is. What's up? Very nice. Very nice. Well, let's walk through this a little bit. Okay. okay. Action! Hi, I'm Kathy Griffin, and I am here in the VIP Celebrity Gift Room. Who the hell are you? I'm Kathy Griffin. I'm Kathy Griffin. No, you're Andy Dick in a wig. Ouch! I think I just dissed myself. As we were doing the sketch, like, I would do a heightened version of myself, and okay. she had a wig like my hair, and we had the same outfit, and I loved it. Thank you all. Thank you. All right, let's go shopping. Hi, how are you? Nice so nice to meet you. you. These are beautiful. Right now I'm in the gift room of the Billboard Awards, and this is one of my favorite things to do in the whole world. I am getting a gift bag that is stellar. Okay, you go from table to table, and everyone's really nice, and they give you things, and then you're photographed with them. <laughs> and um, the, I like you in that part, too. Because I heard a lot of celebrities don't really want to be photographed with the items, but I feel like that's what I'm here for. I'm here to work. What do you got, Tiger? Anyone who has to color their hair or has damaged hair. That's me! A hair repair product. Yeah. Actually, uh, what we've done with it is, uh, you know how you can only color your hair or, uh, you know, uh -huh. maybe a couple times a month with that, having some problems with it? I hate that. Well, what you can do with this is actually we've done it six times in one day and the hair's in better shape at the end of the day do you than kiss before it started. Because you're looking at me like you want to kiss me and that's inappropriate. I'm hosting a huge Toys for Tots event on Thursday. Okay. Entertainment Tonight, Channel 7, Star okay. Magazine, okay. Ring a Bell. Might have heard of them. Okay. There you yeah. go. You know what? Help. You're in Marina Del Rey. Yes. Um, Stop can by. you supply beer for 500 people? I know this might seem silly, but I have to, I need hangers so bad, I'm actually stealing them to, to send them home. Well, I'm exhausted because I've had a long day here in Vegas. I had a lot of fun doing my sketch for the Billboard Awards, but I'm nervous about, are celebrities gonna come? Are people RSVPing? Are more drag queens gonna show up than you can shake a stick at? There's a million things on my mind. All of them are things that Matt has to deal with. Whenever you're ready to be interviewed. Son of a bitch. Get off the tub. Jesus Christ! I'm gonna check on Kathy's flight right now. Alright. I forgot about Nicole, the makeup artist, that she was coming in at 525. And someone needs to pick her up. I'll pick her up at the airport. Are you sure? Yeah. Okay, well what about Kathy? Are you gonna be able to get her? Yeah. I'm going to go both check them. on their flight right now. Okay. Hello? Are you guys ready now? Yeah, I'm ready to go. All right. Now I'm going to come around this line. All right, we'll see you in a second. Oh, there they are. 
Do you want to drive, Kathy? Yeah. Okay. I need to move the seat up. Okay, I'll do it. All right. Oh, come here. What? It's very good to see you. Oh, Matt. Oh. I have such profound control issues that I could almost puke unless I'm driving. I need to drive the car across the board. I need to drive the car. I need to drive the car. Okay? It's a metaphor. I'm not, I'm not denying it. So give us all the gossip. Who's doing what in the house? And who is doing a good job and who's not Everybody's doing a good job? Everybody's just kind of standing around. What do you mean? Oh my God! What? The lights! What do you, what? Wow! There's good stuff that happened? That looks cool. Oh no. <gasps> no! Wow! <gasps> No! Look at the chair! I think Kathy and Matt are very happy with, with the way the house came out. Everything in the house just, it just flowed. It, it came out great. <sighs> Captain, I was away on a big trip. Oh, everything is perfect. Oh, man. It's so nice. I can't believe I live here. The house looks so great and i want in style to cover it and maybe i can't be in a couture dress but damn it the house is good enough even though i'm on the d list i now have the ultimate a list house which is fantastic wait what do you do with the oats i take three tablespoons of this yeah i put it into a pan i add a little bit of water and make a patty out of it and then i cook it and that makes you poop? Yeah, that's the only thing. I want one. You want one of these? I would kill for a good BM. All right. Since I, I decided that. not to have the gastric bypass surgery, so I've been eating healthier, and I feel like I'm losing weight as quickly as I would with a gastric bypass, and I have no surgery that I need to get, and things have been working out pretty well. Do you find what that once you, you eat have? some food, you want more food? No, I'm, I'm on a strict diet. Oh, God. You look way thinner. You also look like you work in a gas station. I'm all about the quick fix. So if there was some operation I could have that would make it so that, you know, I could stop myself from eating eight Krispy Kremes, I would get it in a heartbeat. But Matt's more sensible. And so he just started to eat better to feel better. So he's really glad that he's not going to get the operation. I'm already on my last belt loop. Matt, don't talk when I'm cleaning the kitchen. You know I like to Does it distract you? We had to do a Costco run with Matt and his mom, Judy, who knows Costco back and forth, by the way. Do you want me being charged with checking things off? I have big control issues, and she has control issues. And what I realized the thing to do is let her have control. I have a production schedule. We have X amount of things that need to be accomplished. You check them off as you do them. And then, then it's done. You go get another card and just finish the dry goods. That's a good idea. That's a great idea. When we went to Costco, my mom went with a grocery list, which was exactly what she needed to get the party catered. Kathy wanted the cakes and pies. Oh, sure. Help yourself. I know. It's addictive, too. Oh, so good. Thank you. Are they ready yet? Nice. For Dali's finest ravioli, spinach, and mozzarella. And they're eight. Hey, hey, back off. I've been here the whole time. $8.59. Um, this is for my mother. Can you see those vultures? I'm trying to get my ravioli. Have some decorum. Careful, easy, easy. It's the best part. Gentle. 
The eggs seem are probably gonna hold up. Matt, well. if there's one thing smushed, it's coming out of my hide. <laughs> oh wow! <laughs> it's all about saving those cakes. In my fridge right now, there's a Pillsbury pop can of cinnamon rolls, and they have the little thing of icing. Right, you pop it, you put them in the pie tin. I can barely focus right now on what you're saying, because they're in there and I'm just thinking how good they taste. And also Matt made me those crappy steamed vegetables or whatever the hell that shit was, which are not as good as cinnamon rolls. I guarantee you there's no way that Nicole Kidman has this battle every day. I fight this every day. Every single day I want to crack open a can of Pillsbury cinnamon rolls and eat them in private while watching Oprah. I know Nicole Kidman and Cameron Diaz don't have that. And that's why I hate them. I'm getting ready for my Toys for Tots fundraiser, which is tonight. Whenever you're ready to be interviewed. Well, can they come in here while I'm getting yeah, made up? Or is that weird? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Entertainment Tonight is coming early to cover like party prep and me getting ready and all that stuff. So I have to let go and trust because every time I don't get involved and I let go, things get done better than if I run around and pull people out of what they're doing. Let's just do bangs real fast and then we'll do lips. <laughs> yeah, you got it. Okay. <laughs> Uh, I don't think my bangs look right. Hi. Hi, How are you? I'm Dennis from ET. Hi, Dennis. Pleased to meet you. So nice to meet you. Hey, guys. How you doing? How strange is it you're being followed by cameras like 24 hours a day now? Look, I'm like Anna Nicole, all right? I'm not taking a crap in the morning unless someone films it. I saw a gift bag downstairs, too. Do celebrities need gift bags? Celebrities have to have gift bags so they don't get up in the morning. So we have awesome gift bags, perhaps containing my own new DVD called Allegedly. And there. Dude, what was that? Oh, this is weird. <laughs> that just popped in. How did this? This must have fallen out of one of the gift bags. Yeah, see, it suddenly it's here. What? That's me. What a funny lady with DVDs to sell. I also did a quick little interview with your assistant, who seems to be going a little oh, crazy today. Oh, my poor assistant Jessica is so great, and she is just frazzled. She started the day weighing 95 pounds, and now she's 84. So she looks like Mary Kate at this point. She's so stressed out. Well, let me go yell at her. <laughs> We're working up to the last second. My poor husband is running around covered in sweat. Without him, I would just be on the floor right there, maybe in a pool of my own urine crying. Do you get nervous having like some of these stars coming in the house? They might break something. <clears throat> I'm nervous that Patricia Heaton might steal a vase. I'm afraid that Ray Romano might um, knock over a glass of wine. And I am definitely not letting Joan Rivers near my shoe wall. <laughs> there, I said it. <laughs> oh, son Jesus. of a bitch. Get off the tub. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> Although that's a good angle for me. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I, things, things are probably going better than I think they are. We need help icing all the beer. I don't know if the martini mix is here, do you? How is this house going to be ready in two hours? Coming up. Get up and clean some cups. <laughs> yeah. Jesus yeah. Christ, every time I look at Cutie Pie, he's no... I told her I was going to get in trouble. Yeah, yeah go and clean some <laughs> Quit talking to him. You can <laughs> him later. Did you turn the switch off over there? Can I throw away your piece of wood? Did you find light bulbs for those lamps? I already put them in. Oh, they're in? I just want everything to go perfect for tonight, and this being messy is not perfect, so. Hi. They said you want us to do something like Yeah, I need you and Dad to do the guest book. So if I can plop Dad in one of those cool white chairs downstairs, oh, be fine. and we'll bring you some wine. But it's not like a wedding where I want them to write, great party. No, no. I actually want their, no, no, I, Mom, I want their email information. Can All you right. follow direction or not? I know. Because there are 10 people in line waiting to take the job. job. Waiting for my job. Yes. I understand. I found the ideal job for my parents. Greeters at the guest book. They can be seated the whole time. We just bring them food and booze, keep them fed and drunk the whole night. This one goes with the, with the orange and not the silver jacket. Hi, happy holidays. This is for, um, I'm hoping to give this to a nice young lesbian. Hi. 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 How are you doing? Cheers. Hello. Hi. Gentlemen, welcome. Welcome, come on in. Come on in, you gotta go get dressed? All right, Tiger, get in there. 
Last year, the Marines came. They were so much fun. This year, I thought, well, it's going to make the party better if the Marines can do certain things. If they can handle the SUNY Triangle, I think they can handle a Toys for Tots party. Let me show you where the restrooms are. There's three down here. Okay. Yeah, there's one. Let me show you another one. Now, is that a lap pool or just a pretty pool? No, it's just, it's can they go in the there? lazy river. There's another one here. Okay, so you guys, will you direct people to these restrooms now that you know where they are? What are we gonna do about the Marines? What do you mean? I went up to a forum, they're like, oh, where's the bathroom? And I said, well, let me show you so you can show other people. I go, Could you, would you help direct people to the bathrooms? And they just looked at me like this. If you hear, happen to overhear someone saying they're looking for a restroom. They thought the insurgents were bad. <laughs> oh, bye. All right. Now, Mag, you know, before the customers Just come. Just a tad, yes. I want to be careful because I don't want to, uh, anything odd to happen. Aren't you working the party? Well, get up and clean some cups. <laughs> yeah, Jesus Christ, you. every time I look at Cutie Pie, he's no. I told hey, her I was going to hey, get in trouble. Hey, yeah, go clean some <laughs> <laughs> Quit talking to him. You can <laughs> him later. Why are they moving this one? This is the one that they need to move. All right, good, because I have people yelling in my ear. Mom, are people using the coat check? But I don't know who's a guest yeah. and who's a worker. Well, just tell people to check their coats down here. So nobody knows there's a coat check room. Well, we have we told them, but well, why are you sometimes they people? forget, or we forget. <gasps> what the hell do I do? <laughs> Love it. I love your it house so much. Fantastic. I love this house like it's Listen, a person. I'm Patty Heaton's <laughs> I assistant. I'm Patty Heaton's Is assistant. Is Patty coming? You know what? She got stuck in a meeting with Mel Gibson. God damn it. Oh no. Yeah, I was at like six o'clock tonight. I know. Call I know. Her and tell her to come and I'm hoping minutes. she I'm hoping she still shows up. You know that goddamn Did stem you tell her those gift bags? That... Sign in in your email, even though right. she probably yeah. has it. She's we have to do a good job, Mister. You yeah. know. Kathy would be very angry with yeah. us. We won't get any food, you know that. There were a couple people at the party that really came for publicity, which is funny to me because normally that's what I do. I'm Jillian. I'm yeah, on this real life. Stairs. No, I'm not on this real life. I'm the Biggest Loser. One of them was the trainer from the Biggest Loser, who was really like up my ass and in my face. And finally, I just had to turn to her and just say, "I'm so sorry, but." Do I know you? And then she's like, I'm the trainer from The Biggest Loser. And I was like, oh, you're bigger than the Pope. Let me stop everything. <laughs> um, oh my God, Kathy, your house. I almost feel like um, Paris Hilton. Yeah. But not as filled with crabs. No. <laughs> I tried my best. I swear to God. I just want to say that I, I want to be open about the resentment that I have, that Patty Heaton's assistant came and Patty didn't come. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. Hey, we got to stop the wine pretty soon, girls. Hey, uh, hey, anybody want a chocolate or? It really has, I tried it last night and it really had a bite and I thought, oh geez, I put too much hot mustard in it. Too much hot mustard. Outstanding. You don't need to be hosed down. Talking about gorgeous. Hi! How are you? Thank you so much. Chance loves directors, it turns out. How weird is that? Right. I'd say the party was a huge success. I think it's the smell of balls and panning hops. You know what? Who doesn't like that? Who doesn't? Yeah. There's so many celebrities here. I'm afraid, like, either I've slept with them or... Tell me about it. And don't get this one started. One more thing. Andy! Did you meet uh, Mike yet? The designer? Yeah. yeah. Let me please do a little, <laughs> little move like that because the, the digs ain't so bad. They look pretty good. Thanks. Thanks so much. It's nice to meet you. You too. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. Are you in the show too? Is there a cap? You guys? Crazy characters? No. <laughs> I've known Ron for a long time. I f***ed him one time and I still have a bruise on my back. What do you need, boys? Just a big one. Okay. Oh, do you have a mic on? No. no. Oh, I have to go take a picture. 
make sure the Marines. Sorry, Dad. Oh, that also. And please, you guys, focus. Focus on your job. So I just think it's very Hollywood that in LA the Marines are here to mingle. You know, that sh might fly in Najaf, but here you gotta work. You gotta do some real work. All right, there. All right. Oh, come on, that's a keeper. You can take that to Djibouti. Wow. Some of these kids are gonna get killed for these toys. They're gonna get shot for this. Shit. Jesus. So far, so good, but I'm still a little stressed because Ray Romano hasn't arrived yet, and he's my big name. He's my A lister. The press all wants to talk to him. Thank God we came here. We need some shampoo. <laughs> Well, the party's almost over, and Ray Romano still hasn't shown up, and I am more nervous than Anna Nicole without her trim spot. What? Nothing. I was just saying hi. If you're driving a Honda Passport, it needs to be moved. Now, do you and your husband do romantic things here? I mean, do you like to have candlelight dinners? Like back door? <laughs> Loving that sort of thing. <laughs> that dog's seen it all. Uh, yeah, we do. We have, we have um, you know, we have cozy time. So there are right. stairs right here. What about this? This is great. See, my friend Mark brought his, yeah. his almost better than sex cake. It's not worth it. Okay. No, I can't cook on it. Yeah. Ray Romano's here. I love to order. Oh, I can order all day. Oh, Ray Romano's here. Okay, let's go. <laughs> Mr. Romano. Hey. I understand you're to be here, what, 10 minutes? Yes. Is that oh, the deal? Oh, come on. Oh, now don't think around and leave early. We have another charity. Oh, oh here we go. Oh, yeah, no, yeah. Sorry. There are three Johns on this floor, and she's only allowing the powder room upstairs. Nobody goes into the master bath, so. All right, well, anything. I wouldn't, I wouldn't even think weird. of that. If you yeah. want to walk yeah. through, yeah. oh, here she is. Have you met my parents? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, I met them. They insulted me already. I, <laughs> I was going to say, what is this a real world pay? <laughs> I think making fun of people pays off. <laughs> All right, let's go look at the pool area. This is the pool? Yeah. God, I hope Forrest Whitaker shows up fast. <laughs> it was really huge when Ray Romano showed up. He lived up to his end of the bargain. He's a big star. All the media people that were there loved it. It was great. All right, I'm heading downstairs. Yeah, I'm going to walk right. you down. You have to admit that in 15 minutes, this party packed a wallet. <laughs> All right, thank you, everybody. Thanks. Bye. Bye, Ray, you. thanks. All right, again, I'll see you soon. Yeah. I'll see you in March. I'll be there. You only got to do 15 minutes. We have a deal. We're even. We have a deal. All right, I'll see you. Mother, your shift isn't over yet. What? Wonderful. I totally tried to hook up with every fag at the party. No one will have me in my hot. vagina. I know. I don't want my vagina. <sighs> Can't get people to leave. <laughs> All right, how are we gonna get these people out of here? Uh, go put on your pajamas, literally. Okay. And take it out. I'm doing it. Okay. But I don't want the queens to be like, girl, I love a woman who can get comfortable. <laughs> For me, a highlight of the party is looking around at that moment where it's at its peak, and there's camera crews, and there's famous people, and there's my old friends, and there's great food, and it happened. It came off. People are actually having fun. Party's over. Get the out, everybody. You did such an awesome job. Thank you. Are you hungry? Starving. Okay, come on. <laughs>
don't know if I'm supposed to talk black or maybe I should just talk Puerto Rican. Like, I don't know <laughs> what I'm supposed to do. And I'm looking around, and what's the first thing you do when white people do that? You look at the black people. Are you? My first DVD is coming out, and it's called Allegedly. I called it that because I love that title, and also I had to, for legal reasons. So I'm going on a promotional tour to New York, Los Angeles, and Las Vegas. I'm ready to do whatever it takes to sell that DVD. Today, Jessica and I are in Las Vegas. I'm here to do a radio tour and it's part of the Radio Music Awards, which I'm not presenting at, or hosting. You know, you talk to a million DJs in one day, and I'm pimping my DVD, and trying to get the word out there. Live backstage with the Radio Music Awards, we are in Las Vegas, and Kathy Griffin, it's all about her DVD. Now, Kathy Griffin, I am such a fan of you. Stop. A radio tour is really unusual, and they're actually really taxing, believe it or not, because you have all these DJs from around the country, and they're in different rooms. There's literally like an adult contemporary room, the urban room, classic rock, and you go to as many DJs as you can, and you just push whatever you're pushing. It's a really weird, kind of fun environment. So, allegedly, you're yeah. ripping on Hollywood's hottest stars. I'm ripping, I'm taking down Hollywood, I'm telling it the way I see it. Right. Um, I'm like the Dr. Phil of stand-up. Although, Dr. Phil is full of crap too, because that big fat ass <laughs> needs to lose a few pounds before he writes any more diet books. So, can I pick this up yet? It's available everywhere where DVDs are sold, but my goal is to beat the Bill Clinton book sales. Because <laughs> I understand he did pretty well. Yes, he did. I think I can take him. <laughs> Allegedly, it's scandalous. I take everybody down. It's not for children. Nice. It's barely for adults. Nice. Speaking of children? I don't like kids. I think they're selfish. <laughs> I don't know if you've ever met a baby, but they're super selfish. <laughs> it's all me, me, me. I love you. You're funny. You're Thank hilarious. You. Kathy Griffin is with It's Griffin. Griffin. Oh, my God. How D-list is that? <laughs> I don't think Kathy's a D-list celebrity, but I think it's fun to pretend like she is because it makes it funny. Where do I go rock really? next? I was kind of one of the biggest names there, which is always a bad sign. I mean, look at the list. I mean, their names might as well begin with the letter D. Okay, it might as well have been Davio, Delk Dogan, Dorden Dyke. <laughs> You said Griffin. It's Griffin. Griffin. I, you're lying. I think the radio tour was a success. We talked to a lot of people. Everyone wanted to keep the DVDs, and everyone was like, oh, is this mine? I'm like, no, go buy it. The DJs like me because I have a lot of things to say about a lot of people. Then the DJs like to go, oh, whoa, oh, we're with Kathy Griffin, and she has trouble with the capital T. We'll be right back. Kathy Griffin, thank you so much for coming thank by. You. It's Appreciate always a pleasure, always thank a pleasure. You. this, maybe I can go be one of those people that goes to the Beverly Garland Holiday Inn with like Lieutenant Uhuru from Star Trek and signs things. Whatever it takes. I gotta move product. So before starting the radio tour, I checked into my room just to settle in. When I got back to my room later, I opened the door and there, to my surprise, was MC Light. The great MC Light stuffing my face, see? <laughs> yeah, I had a room. But so did MC Light, we had the same room. The most humiliating part was, number one, I don't even get my own room. And number two, my sweatpants and my dirty underwear were on the hook in the bathroom. Ew, for all of us. Next stop on my DVD tour is New York City. I've dragged my husband, Matt, to come with me. I'm going on the John McEnroe show, the local WB News, and I'm gonna do my first DVD signing ever. And right now, I'm going to The View to see the ladies. How are you? Good to see you. Good to see you. Hi, good to see you again. One of the funniest things Thank you. Okay, 
So here's the real coup. It's amazing that I get to be on The View because in my DVD, allegedly, I tell a story about getting into a fight with Barbara Walters here at The View. Here's the Barbara Walters deal. Okay, so I go on. I said, my fiance and I are going to have some sort of a charity tie-in where we will have people donate to a charity in lieu of giving us gifts. Then she goes, a charity wedding? Oh dear, that's what Michael Douglas and Catherine Zeta-Jones are doing. Totally stealing my thunder, right? So I just turned around and I said, well, I go, our, Barbara, our wedding is a little different because ours isn't shotgun. So, <laughs> and Barbara Walters goes like this, really snotty. She goes, well, this isn't either. Like that, with that cadence, like very like, you know, um, I know you are, but what am I? Or, you know, I thought she was gonna say, you're not the boss of me. So I was like, I couldn't believe it. I'm sitting there on the view and Barbara's throwing down with me. I'm like, bring it, bitch. <laughs> I think it's a really funny story, but um, I did not think I would ever be able to be on The View again. But when I did my pre-interview, my segment producer oh. said, we saw your DVD. Wait, are you going over stuff I did on the show or stuff I did in the DVD? And I said, did the girls see it? And she said, no. And I said, oh, okay. And she goes, let's keep it that way. We just won't tell Barbara. We don't need to. Perfect. Oh, sweet. I feel like I won, because I get to go on The View and promote my new DVD. And they don't even know that there's a whole story on the DVD about Barbara Walters that Barbara may not appreciate. The View wouldn't give me clips of my appearance, but you know what, this is my reality show. And here's my reality. Star Jones treated me like she was gonna catch Kathy, which apparently is a very rare and terminal disease. Star dislikes me because she thinks I'm, you know, naughty. Or I don't know, she thinks I crossed the line. She kind of acting like, Oh, you're so mean, and I don't want any part of it. And then, finally, she physically moved down the couch to be farther away from me. And then at one point, she just turned to me and she goes, I'm not gonna talk to you anymore, talk to Joy. I hate Star Jones. She treats Kathy poorly, and that really makes me angry. I don't like anybody treating Kathy poorly. Mario Cantone was there as well. Even Mario couldn't help but notice Star not even inching her way down the couch, but pretty much leaping to the other end. Please don't no, it's hilarious. I was like over here. <laughs> she literally, first of all, Hasselbeck treats me like I'm, I'm contagious. She's always like, bye bye, good to see ya. Like, I'm like, you're not gonna catch evil. I give them shit all the time. Oh my god, we're on camera. I'm doing a reality show. You are? Am I on it? Am I reality? You are now. Am I reality? Can I have your number? I have no, you I have have no contact what, number You can have whatever. You. you can have my number. Okay. I don't have a posse, you know. I, I come here alone. Where's your I'm crew? here alone. I don't do crew. What? I'm here alone. All right, I think there's a in here. I this took my the husband friggin' man. subway. That's how I got here. <laughs> I'm gonna give you my phone number. Okay. And I'm, you're gonna come see me. Yes. Mario is very, very funny and very talented. So the D list can also be for adorable. <sighs> Miss Beehive's here. Here's another one. <laughs> Listen, she was so. She was hilarious. <laughs> hilarious. Stop. Because, wait, let me kiss her. Mm -hmm. yeah, what's this? Oh, you tell it's the literally, show. it's my reality show. You've never seen my son. Oh. Maybe okay. in Just like, like this. Little <laughs> Joy, <laughs> can't you on. act like you're talking to us? Your husband? Yeah, yeah. Matt. Yeah. Yeah, nice to meet you. Do you like, like being married day. to her? She's, She's hilarious. And smart. She's funny. And pretty. And pretty. And everything. She's got yeah. it all. And uh, and still ovulating, I presume. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, we, oh, well, we hate kids, though. You do? Yeah. yeah, so we're in agreement that we hate children we don't want to have any. I and we love know it, that. And we know it. That's the best yeah. thing. All right, I have to go. Good all right, you. it was great to see you. You shouldn't have kids. Thank you for laughing at my mean jokes. Good for you. the only one who gets us. I love. I know she is. Well, because she's like us, that's why. I'll, I'll see you soon. Hopefully. It's great Call to me see and you. come. I'll I would get you love to. In an instant, all, right? all right, I would love to. Meet you. Bye, crew. Bye, crew. All right. Cute crew. Have a Bye. <laughs> see you later. Coming up, <laughs> you were kind of a bastard, frankly. No. Yeah, saying, you were. This isn't. She don't believe this. Today, I'm heading to New Jersey, which is universally recognized as a D-list state. We're on our way to the John McEnroe show, which is really one of the ultimate D-list shows because it literally doesn't have a rating. The ratings are 0.0. .0. You know, I have some DVDs to move and I can possibly sell up to five DVDs by doing this appearance. I'm gonna call my agent and I'm sure today's the day she's gonna take the call. <laughs> hey, it's Kathy Griffin, is Ruth Annan? Okay. I'm on my cell. Okay, thanks, bye. Carol. I thought this was it. I fall for it every time. Well, what's the excuse to that? There's no, they don't bother with excuses uh. anymore. 
So it's bad enough that I'm in a car going to Jersey to do the McEnroe show, but then I can't even get my agent on the phone to complain about it. It doesn't matter what I wanted to say because they didn't take my call. Again. <laughs> How are you? Do you remember me? How could I forget? Do you know where we met even? You we worked together. Show. You mean on the show? Right? Yes. Of course. Suddenly, Susan. How was I? You were kind of a bastard, frankly. No. Yeah, you were. No. no. You had, you were irritated because you thought the day was taking too long, and you had plane tickets in your pocket that you wouldn't even take out for the scene. And every time they'd say back to one, you'd go no, like this. No, 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 this isn't true. Don't believe this. I thought your acting was stellar, but I did not think it was appropriate for you to keep tapping your plane tickets. No, okay, I'll be back. I just have to get ready. I look forward to seeing you in My a few pleasure. <laughs> okay, my first guest is one of the top comedians working today. She's made a career out of making fun of celebrities. Here's hoping she takes it easy on me. Please welcome Kathy Griffin. Take it easy. I'm not gonna take it easy on you because you are a fascinating person. But thank you. You're a dichotomy. John and I met one time before. He doesn't remember it. What I happened? do remember. I you was don't on your show. I, I remember because I was on Suddenly Susan. You were so horrible and you were so rude. And I was so excited to meet you and you crushed my dream. You cr you're a dream crusher, John. You mean I was nice, actually. <laughs> you were cordial, which I understand is like a really big deal for you. And so, because this is what no, happened. Wait, no, wait, he was, <laughs> go like, ooh, and don't agree with him, okay? <laughs> when I see her on these shows, it's. it's it's just like watching her do her job. I mean, it's it's what she is. She's really good at it and funny. And but I keep on thinking, why doesn't she have a show as opposed to anybody else? Everyone, go out and buy. Allegedly, stay here, Kathy. You're gonna. Okay. I hope you're gonna stay with us, right? We'll be right back okay. with more. <laughs> Kathy Griffin. <laughs> Kathy Griffin. Of course, it was a D-list moment when John McEnroe called me Kathy Griffin when I was on the show on the air with a card in front of him with my name and bio. That was horrible. Hey, Jessica, it's Kathy. Um, it's a quarter to five New York time, and I was wondering if you could call Joan's assistant and just make sure that we're still on for dinner tonight. I love seeing Joan Rivers every time I go to New York because I just love her, and she's a mentor of mine. She's very, very funny. I met Kathy when I was doing uh, Brooke Shields' show, and we bonded immediately. Let's hit the road. She calls every time she's in New York, or almost every time, which is wonderful, because I love her. And I try to call her almost every time I'm in L.A. Hi, darling! Hello, hello. Good to see you. So sorry, you look lovely. So sorry to keep you waiting. I insisted on walking, and I it's underestimated. Well, Tommy! Hi, Tommy. Tommy. But is New York the best? It's perfect. Year? The weather is perfect. Oh, it's, this is glorious. I know. You're so lucky. You're I so know. Lucky. And we saw you on The View this morning. What'd you think? I thought you were wonderful. I kind of stick with Joy and then I'm well, good. Well, Joy gets it. Yeah. And you move on from there. Right. Of course, that's great. <laughs> you were, we're going inside and that's fun, yes. fun, 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 fun. Okay. Well, well, honey, let me put it. Hold on, let me put on the coat. So I have a, at yes. least I have a fur coat. Put your coat on. I hope nobody's going to shoot me with a paint gun. I'm not in there. Okay. If you don't have a fur coat, you don't get seated in the right section. <laughs> All right. But when the finger bowls come, don't drink. All right. <laughs> Yep. She's the queen of New York. She knows all the places, she knows all the restaurants, she gets us the best table. It's always fun. So today my DVD promotional tour continues. The only problem is I have to get up at the crack of dawn. Right now I'm getting ready to go on the local WB News. I'm definitely exhausted, but I'm very excited to be working at all. So that usurps my exhaustion. I'm not a morning person. I can't tell you how much I'm not a morning person. So my world is turned upside down. It's, when's the sleepy time? <laughs> Matt? Yeah? Um, do you know what time we have to be there? You arrive at 7.10, you go on the air at 7.40. Oh, okay. I'll leave in like 10 minutes. Matt, are you watching so you can do this later? <laughs> That's my dream. So Matt just does, learns hair and makeup. We can teach him. Oh. So if I learn hair and makeup, I can expand the business a little bit. 
Oh, oh really? <laughs> now, what do you want? Your own line? Yeah. You What's your makeup line called? Matt Factor. Matt, Matt Factor. Factor. I think Matt is so funny, and he has a dry wit, and that's what I love. So when he says stuff like he's gonna start his own makeup line called Matt Factor, I just he just gets me every time. All right, thank you, ladies. I like going to a lot of stuff with Kathy because one thing is she needs somebody to kind of watch her back. What building is it? 220, right? And it makes me happy to do that because then I know that the woman that I love is safe and protected. Hi. So what do you think about doing this? What do you think about you just name any celebrity you feel like and then I'll riff on them? Gwyneth, Tommy Lee, The Bachelor, and Renee Zellweger. Speaking of Tommy Lee, you know what's interesting? He came in a couple weeks ago. Right. I thought he was really nice. <laughs> it's weird because you expect these hardcore rock ones. Right. Like not to be nice, and he actually kind of seems. But sweet, don't you but feel like he, he like very, really has, feel, looks like ten miles of bad road at this point? Yes. Like I, what I saw him, I thought insecure. he's very like lost. He's like mm -hmm. kind of a lost puppy. Who beats his wife? That I didn't. <laughs> that is surprising. That's the that. only thing. convicted and went to jail for it. What do I know? <laughs> All right, I'll see you in a minute. Okay. okay. This is a nice room, isn't it? Do you think room. Tommy Lee put his fist through that? I think he broke it with his big. C oh, Matt. You look so proud of yourself right now. That was a good one. <laughs> yeah, I'm not going to leave you hanging. She is a raven-haired comedian who has a long resume of roles on big and small screens. Now, Kathy Griffin is revealing the secrets of the stars in her new DVD, Allegedly. And she is here with us this morning. Welcome back. All right, now you uh, are so funny and you, you make no bones about dishing on, on certain celebrities. And yes. I, let's get right to it because yeah. Tommy Lee, I know he came in here. He okay. has a tell-all book. What's your take wow, on him? he's a mess. He is a wreck. I saw Tommy Lee at an award show two weeks ago. I got crabs from looking at him. I'm not kidding. <laughs> I looked at him and I was like, F Tommy, get out of here. Please get the DVD because honestly, it's like my Jerry Springer too hot for TV girls gone wild version of material. So she's going to be signing copies of her DVD allegedly this afternoon from one to three at the Suncoast Inn store at the Manhattan Mall. So check her out and she'll be really cool too. When we're in New York, Matt and I love going to Norma's for breakfast. May I have the eggs Benedict? Yeah, with the um, the eggs, a little hard, yeah. And can I have a side of your french fries, the shoestring french fries? I'm gonna have the fresh, chunky, and sweetest fruit. And can I just get two scrambled eggs? So Matt, he's on this diet that is crazy. I mean, I tried to do it for one day. I'm not kidding, I ended up at Krispy Kreme. Like, I went into some sort of crazy, like, drugstore cowboy sugar withdrawal. I don't know how he's doing it. I feel way better. I mean, I was eating six times a day, just really crappy food. I'm a little nervous he might kill me in my sleep. Like, if I was on a diet like that, I would kill someone in their sleep. Sometimes I'll see him staring at my food. Like, I'll be having, like, a piece of bun cake or something from Starbucks, and he'll just be like this. And then I'll be like, are you okay? And he'll, he'll, he'll just come out of a trance like that. Will you sign a DVD for me? Not unless you buy it. I did buy one. You did? Yeah. Where's your DVD coming? I pre-ordered it. I don't know. It should be, maybe it'll be there when we get back. Like that. Quit petting my hair. You're ruining it. I'll fix it later. <laughs> I love him more than I thought it was possible to even love a person at all. So I don't just love him. I don't just love him a lot. I love him so much, I think he might have to get a restraining order. <laughs> okay, you ready to hit the hay? I mean the road and the hay. <laughs> so we're now going to Suncoast Record Store in the Manhattan Mall to do a DVD signing, my first one ever. How you doing? I, I'm nervous. Why? I think it'll be good. Can I tell you all my fears? What, no, if I, what if nobody else is there? <laughs> They're expecting 300 to 500 people to attend. I've never had a signing of any kind, and um, I'm pretty sure four people are coming. Hey, that's me. Hey, just give me 
a moment to enjoy this. <laughs> Who's next of my thousands of fans? I never said no one's going to come. I knew someone would come. Someone named Matt. <laughs> Get me closer, come on. I think that I'm the biggest fan of Kathy Kerfman there is. So I was I was more than happy to jump in line and get get the signed DVD. Hi, how are you? Nice to meet you. Hey Jimmy, nice to meet I you. you yesterday. You were so funny. Wow, well, you know those girls gave me a run for my money. Star Jones, she was she's crazy. She literally had to move. She did not did not want to catch whatever I had. Yeah, Thanks, Jimmy. This. All the best. I hope you like it. I will. Keep an open mind. Thank you very much. Hi, how are you? Hi, how are you? Nice to meet you. How it's a you? pleasure. I'm so glad you came. I'm well, glad I'm... anyone came, I'll be honest. So, so what are you getting? Are you buying the DVD? I'm buying the DVD. I'm yes. buying four. Four? Mm -hmm. Get if, this man whatever you want. And if you could get this man a drink. Ryan, shake my hand. Thank you. You my really dear. made my day. Good luck Seriously. with everything. Thank well, you, you so made my much. day too. Appreciate I'm glad it. you're here. Tell me other insignia right, people right. you've had. We haven't had one in a long time. The last person we had was Dee Snyder. <laughs> <laughs> How do you get the car? I'm sorry. No, it's all right. I heard a little bit. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> uh, yeah, he was the last Mr. Sunny. Did Dee Snyder have more people in it? No, no, no. God, no. there's a line around the block, wasn't there? No, 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 no. Everybody, I gotta go. I can't, everybody, I'm sorry. <laughs> All right, I'm only one person. I cannot live like this. I have a private life, too. <laughs> My DVD signing was a success. Well, Thank not you. really. Coming up, it was awful. And I wasn't like welling up slightly. I literally had like the snot coming out of my nose, tears coming down my face, and I kept wiping them. And I'm thinking, I barely know Jay Leno. Jessica. How's your trip? Hi. It was, it was fun. <laughs> there were weird moments, I'm not gonna lie. I bet. But it was fun. Does it feel good or no? I don't, I'm worried about being too um, poofy, curly with the big collar. I'm getting ready to go do The Tonight Show with Jay Leno, and I'm very excited. Are you gonna comb him out? It was a really hard show for me to get on. For once, I wasn't a fallout. Because on many, many shows, I am the person they call when Soleil Moon Fry can't make it. So this was a real live appearance that I was booked for in advance. I was on the TiVo Guide. I was very excited. Do me a favor, put together my outfit. Which top are you wearing, the black top? Are I wish wearing... I have on. Okay. And then do the jacket. Okay. Do the boots. Okay. Um, will you do some, some socks under the boots, like black socks? You know how I wear those really thin, yeah. almost like pantyhose? Mm -hmm. Is that it? Yeah, and then we'll, I'll just put the jewelry on. Okay. Kathy was excited to do The Tonight Show because it was to promote the DVD, and um, there's a lot of hype leading up to it, so she was pretty stoked to be on it. I love going on all talk shows. If I could be a professional talk show guest, that's what I would be. I love watching them, I love being on them, I love getting to know the host. The whole atmosphere was really fun. Hello? Oh, hey Steve, how are you? So what's going on? Oh. Well, can't anybody from UTA come see me? I'm on The Tonight Show. Is someone really gonna come, Steve, or are you just gonna send one of your like frat buddies? Right on. All right, so when is Ruth Ann back? Is she back Monday? All right, I'll be here. Okay, bye. Thanks, you too. Bye. She's off. My agent's off for about seven or eight days. I was disappointed that my agent Ruth Ann wasn't coming because I just thought it would have been a nice gesture and a show of support. And you know, sometimes I get really nervous before something like that and you want your agent there. Do you have the DVD? Yeah. Huh? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. You gotta pull me out.
next guest, a terrific comedian. She has a new, very funny DVD of her show, allegedly, comes out November 30th. Uh, please welcome Kathy Griffith. I had literally one of the most bizarre, humiliating experiences today I've ever had, which was I went on The Tonight Show, everything was going great, and the, at the very end of my segment, Jay made a couple of jokes that literally almost had me crying on the show, and I'm not even kidding. Well, they were about how ugly I am, basically. So the bit that I had for The Tonight Show was I had um, my own pictures that I have with celebrities from the American Music Awards. And the last one was I had a picture of myself with Carmen Electra. And my joke was, here's Carmen Electra, and she's always calling me for beauty tips. And then Jay just said, oh, it looks like a before and after picture. And then he said, no, no, it's just that, you know, you're the girl when you go to the bar and the good looking girl has a friend. And he just was going on and on. The joke being, I'm the ugly girl from the bar. And so at the end of the show, Jay's turning to me and he's like, are you mad at me? Are you mad at me? And I said, yeah, I, I'm, I'm mad. I feel that was a cheap shot. And it got weirder because then when I was leaving, the limo was parking in Jay Leno's car and then he called me over. And I swear to God, before he called me over, I was literally, my mantra was this, don't look at me, don't see me, don't look at me. I mean, he apologized, but, you know, it was just a really cheap shot. And it's not... You know, he was like, oh, well, you know, comics, you give and you take. And when the guys come on, and I said, I know, but it's because I'm not a guy. I said, I walked back in the dressing room, and literally every woman in there was like, oh, that was a little weird. It was awful. And I wasn't, like, welling up slightly. I literally had, like, the snot coming out of my nose, tears coming down my face, and I kept wiping them. And I'm thinking, I barely know Jay Leno. My gut reaction is, yeah, like, screw him, but it's more like... There's nothing we can do about him. How does, let's see what I can do to make Kathy feel better. I said, I'm not the ugly girl in a bar that you have to be drunk to go home with. Well, you're very pretty. What? Yeah. All right. So, I'm completely traumatized because part of me wants to put it in my act right away because it's so bizarre, but I have to think about it. It might even be too weird for me. So what shows can you do now? Oh, I'm down to like... The View. Maybe. Howard. Yeah. So that's all you got. Maybe Macaron will take off. I'm already banned from Ellen Letterman, live with Regis and Kelly, because they think my act is too mean. It's just typical. I, I don't know if it's the kiss of death for a comic to be banned from Leno, but it's not good. I mean, I'm really racking up a list of shows that I'm not invited back to. And The Tonight Show was never supposed to be on that list. I would rather that my agent, Ruth Ann, had been there with me, definitely. Because that's one thing they're supposed to provide is support. I'm pretty sure that if she'd been there, she would have been in my corner. <laughs> so I'll laugh later, but right now, I'm literally too freaked out at my own behavior. Like, I'm holding a mirror up to myself going, you're a freak, cut it out. Quit acting. You cried in front of Jay Leno, you barely know him. And I'm going, I know. And she's going, I'm a mirror of you. Don't yell at me. And I'm saying, I'm, no, I'm trying to say I hear what you're saying. And then the mirror's going, seriously, you're, calm down, you weirdo. Oh, so weird. Coming up. Dad, you broke it, Dad. Dad. You better buy another one. I'm deeply in love with you, but $15.99, no. Well, how much do you think it should be? Two bucks? Oh, well. <laughs> After my whole Jay Leno disaster experience, I um, will wallow in it for a while and I will relive it in my head 50 million times and make it worse, but I'm moving on. I'm gonna sell DVDs, I'm on to the next promotional thing, and that's the important thing. What time are you going to the record thing tonight? I have to be in the car at 6.30 for sure. Today I'm a little nervous because I'm doing a DVD signing at Virgin on Sunset. It's a big, high-profile music store. So I'm gonna make my mom and dad come. And I don't care that my dad's on a walker. He can stand for a few minutes in line and pretend like he doesn't know me and buy a DVD. Tonight you don't want us going around in line and all that crap, do you? 
<laughs> Here's what I think you should do. First, you want to be there right at 7 as if you've been anxiously awaiting. Oh, yeah. Oh, I can't wait. Kathy Griffin. Griffin. The funny thing is my parents have the same about my, my, my career now as they always were, which is they're supportive, but they always think I'm doing everything wrong. Did you listen to me on Howard this week? No. No, we, we I didn't know. That again. I knew you were on, but I never knew. Did we... you watch me on The View? Yes. Yes, we did. Yes. Oh, good. Yes, we yes, did. Yes, we take yes. it. So you watch me on The View, but you won't listen to me on Howard. Well, Howard is like 6 a.m. Who the hell's up at 6 a.m.? Yeah. People who care about their daughters. Well, that's, that, that, that's a fine line. <laughs> <laughs> mm-hmm. My favorite thing is how my mom thinks I'm very funny, but my act would be better if I didn't say anything about celebrities. That's my entire act. So other than that, everything's fine. Well, how many are you going to buy? Well, yeah. we've heard Jesus. your... Jesus! We've heard well, your... We had, once in a while, don't we, we, They're 15 bucks! We already have a tape. No, you don't. Why do you keep saying that? It's not even out on tape. Oh. Can't you at least <laughs> buy, each buy one? Yeah, all right. Each buy I one? Suppose we can. That's fifteen oh ninety-five. Oh my that's, God! That's, that's, like, that's thirty-two bucks. Yeah, spend fifteen bucks less on me for Christmas this year. Yeah. <laughs> worried about a repeat of the New York turnout, which was 10 to 12 people. So I was really nervous that nobody would come to the Virgin store on Sunset. Who's up? Hi. What can I do for you, doll? You, you're amazing. What? Hi. Can you sign that? Of course. <laughs> huh, with well, the wink? The wink was a nice touch, I thought. Yeah. Greg, will you stop? You got the damn I'm picture. Sorry. I'm teasing you. Hey, she got another customer. And I'm actually going to come through a second time. You're buying so two? Security, I'm going to buy a third one, actually. A third but, one? Yeah. Three, you get a hand job. Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is great. Hey. Hi. Believe it or not, I just came over to buy this, and it turns out you were here. So. You did? Yeah. Get out of so here. So there you go. You Pretty bought cool. two? Yeah, well, once for my mom. Wow. Your mom? Yeah. Does your mom like pussy jokes? <laughs> Remember the bathing suits with the big pineapple covering your peach? <laughs> Here's the thing. You know where my pussy you don't need to draw a picture of a pineapple on it. It's right there where it's always been. Why don't you have an arrow that says party time? Oh, Kathy! I've always admired your work. You're Ma, cut so the crap. Funny. <laughs> well, I heard you talking on the line. I can't. You saying it was too You can hear that. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. It's for Gary? Yeah. All right. You don't want to see it yourself? I'll see it, but I mean now. Well, who's this one for, Gary? Gary. And then how many did you get? Two. So you have Gary and John. And John. This is this is gifts. Just sign it. Well, total to strangers are my, more than you. My, to my wonderful brother, Gary. Now, you know you can't return these. <laughs> Once I write on it, you can't get the money oh, back. Oh, my gosh. Oh, dear. Daddy's parents are great. I can't stop laughing whenever they're around just because they're such funny characters. My dad has a really dark, sarcastic sense of humor and he really doesn't care about offending people and now he's really playing the old man card like oh you can't blame me i'm just an old guy yeah. several people are behind me by the way <laughs> yeah i'm waiting patiently yeah dad you broke it dad you better buy another one. Oh, <laughs> this is for i think jm did you sign one for gary yes all right what about joyce dad uh, make a jam you have other children. Yes, I mean, that means I have to buy another one. Yeah, I'm deeply in love with you, but fifteen ninety nine, no. Well, how much do you think it should be? Two bucks? I was in the three ninety nine, four ninety nine area. Yes. <laughs> Not yet. All right. This is the opening day rush. Oh uh, uh, yes. Yeah. At the end of the Virgin signing, <laughs> I was a little lonely. I sold more in Los Angeles, I don't know the number, because you know, when you're dealing with big numbers like that, I let the accountants worry about it. But I know it's somewhere in the tens. Yeah. You made a fortune today. A right. fortune. Yeah. All right, we'll see you, hon. All right, Mom. Okay. Goodbye, my biggest fans. <laughs> that's true, we that's are. Weird. She sold more copies than she did by sitting at home, so I guess that's a success. So right now I'm headed back to the East Coast. I have a one-nighter in Morristown, New Jersey. And I kind of usually wait till about the last minute to prepare for the show because it takes me about four seconds to get an hour together. I can't believe these comedians that can't come up with 20 minutes. I am still saying hello after 20 minutes. I mean, that, it baffles me. All right, so what should my new topics be? I want to talk about um, Brad and Jen. Oh, you should talk about China on... Um... 
this real life. Yeah. This is my comedy notebook. The way that I do my act is I just write bullet points. Like, I don't write jokes. I don't really write my act at all. It's just very improvisational, and I just write the bullet points. So like that, easily in 90 minutes of material. We've met a few people over the years who I think are geniuses. Jerry Seinfeld and Howard Stern. And uh, both those guys have said that Kathy is the funniest um, off-the-cuff comedian they've ever met to just come up with an entire, like, two-hour act right on the spot. And that is the sign of, like, somebody who's really talented. Hey, Maddie. Yeah? We have to go over your sales strategy for the DVDs. Okay. Matt has been made my director of sales for the DVD. He's going to sell them in the lobby. Okay, I'm going to be a gay guy, and this is one of my DVDs. Well, you got to Okay. <laughs> okay, ready? Mm-hmm. Hello. How, how much are the DVDs? $20. You want one? How did you turn gay? Well, I'm trying to fit in with my, uh, my clientele. Okay. Um, I don't know. Is it scandalous? Completely. Isn't she great? Isn't she her. yummy? All right. So what's your goal tonight? 100. And what do you have for, like, changing money and stuff? Nothing. What do you mean? What do you mean? What do I mean? Nothing. Where's your cigar box or whatever? You're just going to have money. Have a pocket, you don't have a pocket, Matt. Matt does drive me crazy sometimes. Because I could tell he, not, he did not put any thought into his sales pitch. What if I use a trash can? This is no planning at all on your part. I, to... I'm trying to, I'm completely in denial that I'm actually going to sit there and sell DVDs at your show. And what's, what's my pay for this? I'm going to blow you. Okay, Matt? <laughs> Sweet. Tonight, I'm performing in Morristown, New Jersey at a very nice theater, and Matt is going to attempt to sell my DVDs. I was not prepared, and somehow I just thought that I could just bring DVDs without any kind of signage or any kind of preparation, and then I would just magically sell them all. No, JP, no, we are not using a piece of paper. Now, there's got to be a piece of cardboard in this entire theater. All right, so we just need a big piece of cardboard that we can write $20. It's the back of the no smoking sign, Matt. Is he prepared for this job? No, he's not prepared for this job. All right, who's got nice handwriting? You can't believe I didn't buy a stencil kit. No, I don't. He didn't have it together. He just didn't have a plan. Are you supposed to be selling right now? Yeah, I'm waiting for the sign. You know, I'm going to go sit there and then... Just sit there and... Okay. I'll bring you the sign. I mean, I'm not saying he had to be a Barker to carousel, but he could have at least had a crayon sign that said $20, for God's sake, and a roll of scotch tape. because I want to know how Matt's doing selling the DVD out there. I mean, I'm picturing everything from he's just by himself looking at the scores on his cell phone, or he has, like, a bunch of people and he's all flustered. You're not on it? You look uh, like you should be on it. She talks about me on it. She does? Yeah. Hi, how are you? Her husband. You are? Mm -hmm. Really? Yeah. I don't think she's married. It's right on I have my insurance, yeah. my car insurance card. You do? It. All right. Look, you're proving that you're like I, I you're married to this beautiful woman. Beautiful, she's hilarious. She's so funny. Oh my one. god, she's so beautiful and she's so funny. You should buy a DVD. It's problem. only twenty dollars. Do you take credit cards? No, unfortunately, I don't. Sorry. Wow. You, you can get it online though. Online. Wow. And there you go. I will shop online. And There's your app. Dot net. I don't know who else. Oh, but you can also get it on Amazon and you all that get stuff too. I don't think that she bought the DVD online, but when she sees this and knows how I feel about her, then she's gonna buy one. And now, ladies and gentlemen, here she is, the one and only Kathy Griffin. Hello, hello, oh my gosh, hello, Morristown, New Jersey. It is such a pleasure to be here. Okay, so I'm really, really obsessed with Clay Aiken. I think he's such a phenomenon, right? Like, it's so, it's just, I mean, he's a really sweet guy and he's a great singer. It's just comical to me that he's trying to act for one second like he's straight. Like, he's so beyond, he has broken the gay ceiling. We can only see him as a speck. He's gone so beyond the gay stratosphere. Even the guys on Queer Eye are like that fag. I mean, he is like beyond... 
beyond the beyond. And I love when he gives interviews and he's like, I just can't find the right girl. With a dick. So, allegedly, allegedly, I have no proof. Um, so the best part is, my husband Matt, I'm making him um, sell DVDs to the lobby. So you have to buy a DVD just to get a little bit of Matt, because this is literally his nightmare. Her act is her life and vice versa, so... It's good to know I write in the, enough to make it in there, I guess. Thank you, good night, you guys are awesome! Oh, thank you. Are you really happy with huh? I am. You are? I'll tell her we thought the show was really great. I will. Are you Matt? I am. Can I have your autograph? Okay, I don't have the pen or anything. <laughs> I don't I'm not really prepared for that. Yeah, here, here. All right. You got that one I can't get her autograph, get yours. Awesome. Kathy announced that I would be selling the DVDs out in the lobby after the performance, and people's opinion of me changed a little bit, and uh, I, I even signed an autograph. Nice to meet you. How are you? Oh, wow. Great. I hear they're excellent. And we sold 33, which I think is pretty good. Because, I mean, I don't know. We never sold one before, so. What? I signed two autographs. What? We sold 33. We sold, we sold 20 in the rush of people leaving. Plus, I'm a huge star now. Let's go. Oh, my God. Everybody. Just... Matt is out of control. There's no living with him. He's totally unapproachable. He signed two autographs, and he hasn't been the same since. Matt was a bust at selling the DVDs. He just didn't sell very many. It led to his firing later that evening. Yeah, we got a lot of work. In the end, I think the tour was actually really, really great. Of course, I wish I could say, oh, I sold 50,000 DVDs, but I think I sold more than if I hadn't done it. You know, it definitely helped. We're in this together. Let's go get pizza. All right. on My Life on the D-List. I'm gonna have the fresh, chunky, and sweetest fruit. My husband, Matt, put himself on this new crazy-ass food plan, and he's starting to look a little like Laura Flynn Boyle. You look way thinner. My parents are supportive, they're there for me, but they always think I'm doing everything wrong. I'm deeply in love with you, but $15.99, no. Dennis and Tony are my best friends, and we can just crack each other up all day. Jesus. Kathy, oh. I work with children, I drink. Now me, while I do bad mouth celebrities in my act, I'm always very cordial to them in person. You were kind of a bastard, frankly. No. Yeah, you were. Okay, here's the thing. Get out of my way, you A-list boys. My Prada shoes are as good as yours. I work twice as hard to get half as far as you. Cause I ain't no ass to kiss when you live a life on the D. A brow lift once twice a year um, where they just take my eyebrows and put them on a totally different part of my head um, and after that I look weeks younger okay so so I'm gonna go get Botox then I have a big meeting at the e-channel because um, I want to get a gig doing the red carpet for the Grammys with Star Jones how are you Kathy um you look very nice what's with the so suit are you going to a wedding after this? Once in a while, I wear a suit. You look like a spend about every, every chance I get on television, I'm going to wear a suit. Because you know what? I'm in scrubs all the time, so I got to do You look very nice. You look good, too. I love your hair. It looks great. Thank you. So let's take a look, okay? Okay. So I want to do basically my whole forehead. Okay. You know, so I don't have this right. many lines. So, so raise up for me. Here's my deal on plastic surgery. I am not a proponent of it. I think it's disgusting. I think it's vain. I think it's telling. And it's obviously for people that are insecure. And that's why I do it. Because I'm all those things. Now, relax the frown. Little sting. Jesus, that hurts. Yeah? I was well, afraid you know, to yell, but maybe, I thought you'd poke me in the eye and freeze my eye open. One small Am small I hemorrhaging? Thing. No, you're not bleeding at all. Here's what I found about facial expressions. I found I don't really need them that much. You know, I'm a big talker, I'm very verbal. I don't really need to show facial expressions that much. Like, watch, I can't really frown, you ready? That's it, I'm done. So I have this meeting, 
And the main goal of the meeting is that I have to convince them I'm not going to be mean to celebrities, which I'm not. The point is I wouldn't be the way I am on stage on the red carpet. I think I have a 50-50 shot at the job. I don't think it's in the bag, but I also don't think um, that I have no chance. Hi. Hi, Kathy Griffin, this is Ted Harbert. Have a seat. It'll just be a minute. Okay, cool. Thanks. I'm a nervous wreck about this meeting because I'm meeting with Ted Harbert, who's the head of E, and I think he thinks I'm this loose cannon. So I have to prove that I'm not going to mess with their like celebrity friendly vibe on the red carpet. Also, I need the exposure, I need the money. Basically, I really want this job. Thank you. So I get up there and there's seven people. It's me and seven people. Bye-bye. And um, Ted Harbert was very much acting like, I have the job, we want to just tell you how it's going to go down, and our concern is that you're funny, but you're not too mean. Because he was like leading up, leading up, and I go, so you're scared of me. I just reiterated that my whole thing is not being mean to people. It's making fun of them or teasing them, but certainly not to someone's face. So I like to work behind the back. So I get home and there's already a message from E telling me I got the job. So I'm gonna do the red carpet on Sunday. I'm so excited. I can't believe they got back to me so fast. I guess with five days till the Grammys, I was starting to look pretty good. So I'm gonna call my publicist and tell them the good news. So I have a few things to discuss with you ladies, a few issues. Let's get to the E thing first and foremost. Ted Harbert said we want her to do the Grammys. So I think that's really cool. That's great, Kat. I think it's I think it's pretty great too. Be sure that your agent negotiates in a stylist for you. Did you see me on the worst dress list? No. I was on the worst dress list in Us Weekly. It was I was a red carpet disaster. You know that's even more reason to go to E with that you need a stylist. Oh. For you. Right. I all I know is that was one of the best like pictures of me ever in a magazine. So I was thrilled. I have been on every worst dress list possible. It's actually worse not to be on the, the list at all than to be worse dressed. Like, I would rather be on the worst dress list than not be in the magazine at all. Because that's fun, I open up the star and there I am, hey, I'm unexplainable, I tell my friends, we laugh about it, maybe Xerox a couple copies. But not being in the tabloids at all, that's what hurts. And I'm the only person who's gonna admit that, I just, I want some credit for that. You're not gonna get that admission from Kirstie Alley and Oprah, but they feel that way too. Let me tell you something, the day that Oprah opens a tabloid and she's not in it, that's when everybody around her is fired. My joy in getting the Grammy job was short-lived because I realized if I'm gonna be on the red carpet, I have to look, you know, somewhat presentable. Maybe even hot. So my publicists are coming over for an emergency meeting to help me figure out my look for the day. Hi, girls. Hi. Hi, how are you? Oh, your house is so warm Great. today. Yeah. I know, it was freezing out, wasn't it? Because Hi. your house is really cold. Yeah, I know, but I, we, we got, got the fireplaces fire. blazing, yeah. Great. we got the heat on. Very cozy. Mm -hmm. Let's okay. talk about E. You need something amazing. It's a big deal, and nobody gets it but you guys. Well, it's a huge deal. deal. And then, once again, the stylist thing is just really important to me. With just five days to go before the Grammys, the pressure is definitely on. So we started calling stylists all over town to try to see who could deal with my real body. Hi, Jeff. This is Jessica for Kathy Griffin. Stephanie, this is Ann Gorola. Hey, Zach. It's Kathy Griffin. We're in crisis. I'm looking for Ann Cook. I'm calling you because I'm a little crazy, in a panic like right now. I'm sitting here with my client, Kathy Griffin. Do you know Kathy? I have many issues and requirements. What about Dolce and Gabbana? Don't even think about a miniskirt or hot pants or culottes or Daisy Dukes. We kind of want something with a little more cachet. I have to wear a bra and don't even talk to me about strapless. Here's the deal. I'm wearing a bra. My boobs are real and sometimes they can bounce off my knees and sometimes we play hacky sack. That's just my thing. I'm not wearing a short skirt because I'm a short-legged woman and I still think that somewhere in my family there's dwarfism. I need the fit and I need a big giant name. So, so I don't look like the person who has to keep saying the designer no one's heard of. I would like to thank the Levi Strauss Company. I'd like company. to thank the Gap. I'd like to thank <laughs> Limited Express for this lovely fuchsia shirt. <laughs> All right, I'll talk to you later. A lot of people just assume we're never going to put you on a best dress list. You're a comedian. You don't care about how you look. And that's really not true. I think for Kathy, she definitely cares about how she looks. And I think people assume she doesn't, but she does. All right. Thanks, girls. Thank you. So we left messages for a handful of well-known stylists around town. And because it's so last minute, I'll be lucky to hear back from even one of them. 
I want Thank to, you. I can't wait to hear what you find. Well, it'll be something wonderful. Bye. It'll be great. Working on getting the dress because it's all about the dress. And the dress has to be perfect and it has to fit, which is very difficult. Because, you know, by Hollywood standards, I'm literally a gigantic fat cow. Because I'm a size six, which is not acceptable. You're supposed to be an O or a child size 6X. I was going to try to lose 10 pounds in five days. But then I saw these mini tacos at the grocery store, and they're bean and cheese, and they're pretty good. But my trainer says that when I crave foods like this, I should have carrots, because they give you the sweet and the crunchy. To which I say, bullshit, this is crunchy. Not a fucking carrot. With calls to every stylist in town, I finally got connected to this supposedly big time guy named Jeffrey. And the whole idea was, this is like the Uber stylist. He has the connections. Hi, so Jeffrey. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. How, How are you? Who are you? I'm blessed. Thank you. I'm Wesley Smith. I'm manager, bodyguard, attorney, all the above. Oh my God. It's very Hollywood with the stylist as a manager. How are you? I can't get my agent on the phone. I, I really admire you actually showing up. And so here's, here's the deal. Um, I have a bomb to drop. I don't know if you know this, but I need the outfit in two days. Oh. I hope you have some connections. What's two days? All right, so the Grammys are Sunday 13th. Okay. And then Friday I go to Chicago. I have a one-nighter in Chicago. And mm -hmm. then I travel back the morning of the Grammys. Okay. So basically we have two days to do fittings. Yes. Let's not waste our time, shall okay. we, gentlemen? Right. What are the, what are We're the not doing anything where I can't wear a real bra. And don't talk to me strapless. What size are your boobs? 34D, 34C. Your boobs are average. Continue. And here's my other thing. I'm always on the worst dress list. Always. I, I know. Always. I was so. a big part of it is because I'm a comic, mm -hmm. so we can't put me anything too wacky. I'm going to stick to your requirements if you stick to mine, which is you have to trust me. And the other thing is I want to be age appropriate. Mm -hmm. I don't want to try to right. look like Lindsay Lohan. Absolutely. Don't worry about it. You know. It's all good. Right. Well, the, the goal is to make Lindsay Lohan want to look like you. Oh, she's dying to. I think she's mentioned <laughs> it in several interviews. But, um. You know, well, I'm, I'm, well, before you continue, I have to see you. I have to see your body. Okay. Okay, cool. Fine. Well, right, let's go right. look at my body. Okay, cool. I want to see that. It's going to be a treat. Yes. Okay. Right. So, tell me who else you've dressed. Jill Scott, Eve, Monica, Mandy Moore, So, Tyrese. Mandy Moore is literally the only white person you know besides me. Is but that's kind because of here, me. I mean, really, to me, you do have, you are built like a black woman. Yeah. Yeah, you have this, you have this, right. and then you have this, and this. You know what? You look like not Mother of the Bride, but a uh, um, bridesmaid. Which, to me, that's a little matronly to mm. me. Well, today I um, saw Kathy with no clothes on, which was interesting. The objective is really to try to get her on that, um, that best dress list for a change. But I really want to soften Kathy up a lot because she's a little hard-edged, so... I mean, I'm just trying to make her look more like a girl. It's kind of challenging with the, cho you know, Charlize Theron's in the, of the world and the Holly Berry's of the world, you know. All right, good. I'm going to let you guys go. I'm really okay. sorry to keep you waiting. Thank you, I no look problem. forward to seeing you again. You. Thank you so much. Make me look fierce. Uh-huh, I will. Yeah, Great to meet, you. Nice to meet you. Good luck taking care of this one. Uh, he's you got your hands full. Exactly. The bodyguard <laughs> job alone. You know? It's going to yeah. keep you booked. <laughs> All right, guys. Take care. Bye. See you next time. See you Thanks. Uh, Jeffrey, the stylist, uh, is a nightmare, frankly. Captain, you're all I got. So, once again, as a size six, I'm a challenge. I'm a short, chubby, fat cow. Coming up... You don't want to be like a big pain in the ass. I'll take them all down. Oh, oh you don't want to be... All right, there, there you go. No, no, no. no. So the Grammys are just days away, and after being yes. ripped to shreds by Jeffrey the Stylist last night, my trainer Bobby is coming over to whip me into shape. He's going to make my body look like Nicole Kidman's by noon. So Bobby, here's what happened. All right. So the stylist came over last night, um, who may have been of the bitchy gay persuasion. Oh no. And he told me, with, like within the first five minutes, he said that I have the body of a black woman. He also said that we're not dealing with Uma Thurman or Charlize Theron here. What? Did you That's know this right. person at all? No, he was highly recommended. It's just such an unpleasant way to live your life <laughs> when you have just people just shaking your arm fat and saying, well, you're not toned. And I felt like going, yes, I am. This is the most toned I've ever been in my whole life. So I want you to know that I was so depressed after he left that I had a half a pound of brownies for dessert. I mean, dinner. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. 
<laughs> it's okay, because for dessert I had low-fat Pringles. So it all evened out. No. They still have it on. Sock. Hold it here. It's burning. After my workout, I called the guys at E to vent Ooh. about how annoyed I was at Jeffrey's crappy attitude. I mean, this guy was literally saying like, well, we're not dealing with Uma Thurman here. And so I just don't need that like the day of the gig when I'm trying to be fun and funny. There's no way I can deal with the diva thing when I'm working. It makes it just harder for me to do my job. So I said, I have to have Judith there. She's a friend, but she's also a great customer. She's got to be there with me on Grammy day. You know, I want Judith to be there if a button pops off or if someone spills coffee on my dress and you know what I mean? Oh, maybe there's some open, but we don't know. This is open. Pinot Grigio, followed by some more Pinot Grigio. Get the glasses. Oh, oh, hey. Yeah. Hey, Kathy, you're driving me to drink. See, now you made it. All these what happened? How did this get here? It's four o'clock. What? No, no, it's five. Oh, it's four. I thought it was five. Do you want I to put it back then? No. No, it looked like no. five. It just had that. I, I could tell about five. <laughs> so anyway, the story is that he asked me to do the Grammys and the Oscars. Oh, yeah. Yeah. What does your mother say to all this? No, I think that's great. But you don't, you don't want to be, you don't want to be like a big pain in the ass. I'll take them all down. I don't give yeah. a no. You don't want to be there. there you no, go. no, 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 no. It's fun. People yeah. like the idea you're doing that. Yeah. And, <clears throat> you know, but you don't want to get down and dirty. But I'm controversial, Mother. Yeah, but, you can, but you're, so far, you're good controversial. Yeah. Just don't carry it any further. Yeah, yeah. Don't I want this, you to work. Don't quit the job. And I do want you to work. But you, you want your yeah. friends in the business, too. Can I make one request? Please. Don't make fun of any dick Iraqis. Jokes. One dick joke no, after another. No, no, none of that. Iraqi, don't make fun of George Bush. Yeah. No, no dope jokes. Mom, I'm no sorry, did you just use the word dope? No. Because I think it's 1972. Well, all right, yeah. what do you use then? I don't know. Yeah, reefer, we, I think, or, or something whatever. like that. Yeah. And no, <laughs> and, and yeah. no. Dad, what are you, a good Woodstock? <laughs> <laughs> and no, no hooker jokes. So no dope jokes, no hooker jokes, no political jokes. No. What do I got? Just funny jokes, just talking about Oh, how nice you're it is funny. to see you. Oh, you got no, the darlingest you're child. Funny. And a, you're oh, funny, you're yeah. funny. You're not funny without that. Yeah, no, I'm not. My parents support my career tremendously and constantly criticize it. Like, my parents have never come over and done anything really unexpected. Like, wow, my mom supported all of my decisions. Like, that's never happened. Well, right. we're going to sit for a little while. We're going to okay. sit. Yeah. And well, so whatever the bottle is. We'll, we'll just finish the one bottle. That's it. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> okay. All right. Bye, you guys. All right. We'll see ya. Kathy, don't take any crap from those people. <laughs> I won't. I don't care if you never work again. <laughs> so I'm here at one of LA's most talked about and exclusive eateries, Chevy's, to meet with my guys, Dennis and Tony. I'm pretty psyched because I've got some great news for them. Okay, I have a lot of news. Number one, now you know I'm doing the Grammys. Yes. And the Oscars. What? Thank God. But wait, so are you. Yeah. What? I got you each 1,500 bucks. Right. To come up with, help me come up with more questions. I'm able to hire Dennis and Tony for this e-job to help me come up with crazy, insane, funny questions. It's so much fun to just do this with friends. That's um, amazing. Well, someone's gonna do the flashcards, and I'm not even kidding, because they're like flashcards, just like. Yeah. Oh, in front of the camera. Uh huh. Okay. Do you think the restaurant's called Chevy's or Chevy's? <laughs> Right? When's the last time you ate at Red Lobster? <laughs> what do you order at the Olive Garden? Yeah. It can mm -hmm. be a lot more disease, a lot more disease oriented also. Mm -hmm. Who else do you think has hepatitis C? <laughs> if you forget to thank God, does he call you the next day? Can we talk about your vagina or is that off? Perfect. Thank you so much. My vagina. I imagine your vagina looked like Audrey too from the Little Shop of Horrors. Yeah. The big plant with like the big mouth right. with the teeth in it and just wreaking havoc on the whole city. Uh, are you proud of yourself? <laughs> <laughs> he, couldn't, he couldn't even be bothered to take our order. I know. We're not going to eat now. 
Because he was so freaked out by I imagine your vagina looked like, and then he was just gone. He's like, vagina. And the chips are running low, and now you've really done it. Oh, I haven't told you about something else. There's the stylist, Jeffrey. He could. He literally told me in the first five minutes, I look matronly, and I look like a bridesmaid. Secondly, nice to meet you too. it's going to be a challenge to dress me because I'm so short. Did You're you like, talk well, to the hand at any point? <laughs> I like looked at the elbow once, but right. I never actually talked to the All hand. Right. I'd love to be six feet tall and not eat. That would be great, but I can't. Although, I think when they come out with a leg stretching operation, I would for sure get that. Like something medieval where I'm just like on something where somebody cranks it. You give me enough Vicodin, I'm good to go. A little nitrous maybe? It's a party. Yeah? Come here, you have to see this. Have you seen this email from Jeffrey? No. Okay, you ready? Mm-hmm. Me letting you have your own stylist is as likely as you not wearing a bra. It won't happen, I'm sorry. Oh, sh So Jeffrey's bailing on me, is the bottom line. Um, okay, so I need you to call him and tell him, sorry, goodbye, have a nice life. And then call Judith and beg her to get me a dress by tonight. All right. I wanted Jeffrey to find me an outfit, fine, but I don't want him to dress me on Grammy day. I want my friend and stylist Judith. She's been dressing me since the Sunday Susan days, but Jeffrey's not having it. The thing is when you're the subordinate, you don't call the shots. So it was just funny to me that he was like, this is how it's done and this is how I work. And I'm like, well then go work that way with someone else who can put up with your shit. With Jeffrey out of the picture and time running out, I called Judith and I begged her and I just said, you just have to be my stylist and that's all there is to it. Thank God she said yes because tonight is the last chance for her to do a fitting for a dress for me because tomorrow Matt and I fly to Chicago. I get the call from Jessica and then Kathy gets on the phone. She says, you gotta do this, you gotta do this, you can't say no. Judith is really, really great. She did Suddenly Susan and she did my clothes and Brooke Shields clothes, and she's just easy going and fun to work with. Are you dressing, Captain? Yeah, something. Oh, something cute. Sweet. <laughs> You're gonna make it all better. All right, so what do you got? Hmm? This way? Okay. okay. Luckily, Judith came in and saved the day, and but, she's here with a big rack of clothes at like 10 at night or whatever. You wanna try this one? Oh, this is, you've been naughty. This, this is, is like, like a skirt for your tits? Yeah. Look at how trendy I am. Sarah Jessica Parker is going to be livid that I scooped her on this dress. <laughs> this yeah. is Montatelier. His name is Allie. Judith turned out the dress. So she gets some guy named Allie Rahimi. And sure enough, she has this really cool, really expensive $4,000 dress that fits me and my boobs. Okay, hold on. Let me show Matt. Matt, I want you to come look at this dress. I think it's really pretty. Matt. Matt. God damn it, get up here and look at this dress. Beautiful. Who do I look like? A princess. Sarah Jessica Parker. And Princess Sarah Jessica Parker. But hotter. <laughs> totally hotter. You think this is too cocktail-y for the Grammys? I'm spellbound by your bosom. All right, get out of here. You're not helping me one bit. I'm gonna put All you're doing is making jokes and trying to prove what a big man you are. But what if there's, like, what if the bra's poking out or what if there's something? I can do that. Okay. Judith, you're the best. <laughs> Coming up, my big brother John is hosting a big homecoming party for me. Everywhere I look, cheese platters, some dips, everything but relatives. It's Friday morning of Grammy weekend, and instead of prepping for the big show like I should be doing, I'm actually in my hometown of Chicago doing a live show that I was booked to do months ago. It's gonna be stressful but fun because my big brother John is hosting a big homecoming party for me, and I'm gonna see all the relatives. All right, so Jim, we'll see you at 10 to seven. Thank, Thank you. you. Ah. What time are we supposed to be out there? We only have an hour. I think we should go a little late. Sounds good to like me. Like 15 minutes late. <laughs> I know you're in a big hurry to see all my relatives and spend as much time with them as possible. Did you bring your sign and stuff? I didn't bring the DVDs. Oh, God. 
We arrived today. The show at it's, it's Skokie is tomorrow night, and as director of sales for Kathy Griffin Enterprises, I was uh, charged with selling the DVDs, so I forgot the DVDs. I forgot the sign that says $20. So Jessica's FedExing the DVDs to us here at the hotel. Yeah, Matt accidentally forgot to bring the DVDs, um, so I had to fire him as director of sales again. And then I had to do that thing where I had to go crawling back and rehire him because I realized that no one else could do it. And so he has not brought his signs, and he doesn't have a wacky hat or anything. Kathy? Wacky hat? What does that have to do with my DVD? The wacky hat. You said I don't have a wacky hat. You're supposed to have a wacky hat with, like, my name on it or something. You look like a crazy gay lunch lady. It's a wacky hat. And I'm the ass. I don't think so. Let's go. Um, we're gonna go to my brother John's house, and uh, we're gonna have a little relative party, very casual. Oh, there's my brother's house. That's it, right? Yeah. Tonight isn't really the Griffin drinking crowd. But my parents will make up for that next time I see them. Don't worry. It's going to be bottoms up, the bottom of a box of wine. Why don't you wear, like, Hollywood, Hollywood uh, sunglasses or something? <laughs> Darling! Hollywood. With a cigarette holder? Darling! I do so miss the little people. My brother John is really sweet. I'm really close with him. Are we the first ones here? here? Oh, yes, you are. Oh, yeah. Are we the last ones here? Good to see you. <laughs> Get the neighbors coming over. We're short, you know, guests. You're just cold calling people? <laughs> just oh act, my like, God. act like you're related to them. He and his wife Jennifer have two kids, Claire and JP. And, you know, I think they're living the dream. I think they have a great life and they're very fun to hang out with. You know, we see them holidays and stuff, so it should be fun. Oh. Everywhere I look, cheese platters, some dips. Everything but relatives. Who here are you most surprised to see tonight? <laughs> I know. Oh Somebody my god, Aunt Irene, I can't believe you kids. made it. Oh, see you. I thought somebody was at the door. Sorry. That was pitiful. pitiful. Let's be honest. I wish that there could be a split screen so that you could see my big homecoming party and then like Charlize Theron's when she goes home. And I'm sure there would be like a parade and floats and fireworks and the fire marshal would come because it's so crowded. Um, at mine, it was my cousin Mo and her daughter. First and last guest. Yeah. Come on, let's yuck it up. Yeah, it's party time. People are just over oh me. That's the bottom line. When I was on Sunday Susan, the first time I came home, it was like, woo, whistles, bells, parade. And now they're just over it. Let's go in the other room and swear. Okay. <laughs> Jen, is the food here? All right. Well, you guys, should we dig in? Matt's well, about to faint. Oh, is it really? Yes. Oh, God. I'm going to lay down. Oh, yeah, I guess we could. Well, Matt lost 73 pounds. Wow. 73 nice. pounds. In five days. You look very svelte. What is this? This is good. Oh, God. What's that stuff you're into, that Japanese thing, Yogi-Yo or whatever? Yogi-Yo. Yeah. It's a card game. Oh, it is? I thought it was a video game. There are video games of it, but then you have to play a card game in the video game. That sounds complicated. Now, do you trade them with people? Sometimes you can trade. Sometimes you bat, like, duel. That's what they call it. But... So you're gambling? No. It sounds like you're illegally gambling. No, it's not gambling. All right. Sounds like gambling to me. My niece and nephew, Claire and JP, are just great because, you know, I've never really been around people that were babies and then got older. Now I can actually talk to them. Yeah. Claire, no more TV. Why not, Johnny? Oh. What happened? You guys got caught watching porn? <laughs> Typical. Now you're both grounded. Let's eavesdrop. On, on the Claire. phone. Let's eavesdrop on Claire doing uh, I am. Internet messaging. Oh, God. I know she's, like, hooking up with, like, 72-year-old perverts Claire. who say they're 15-year-old girls and want to be her friend. No. It's like some old guy going, do you like Barbies? Me too. Claire. Meet me at the Walgreens with your pants off. So who are you looking forward to uh, talking to at the Grammys? Well, the E! Channel wanted to hear my questions, and I said no today. They're like, okay, we need to get a copy of your questions, and I go, no, no. And they're like, well, this is, a, you know, we'll have, we'll have to deal with it at some point. I go, no, I'm not going to give you my questions because you're just going to have me water them all down. Kathy is no funnier today than she was 15 or 20 years ago. 
But what she used to do all the time, especially as she got into her teenage years, she'd come out of the uh, you know, shower and have like a towel wrapped around her. And I'd be sitting in my room, you know, reading a comic book, and she'd do this thing like, you know, uh, Johnny. I'm like, yeah, what? You know, like, Johnny, don't peek. I'm like, oh, God, that's disgusting. <laughs> so it was one of her little tricks. So. I'll right. see you guys tomorrow. All right, we'll okay. see you. Right. Have fun tomorrow. Bye, everyone. Best Thank you. Best Friday ever. All right. <laughs> Bye, guys. This doesn't happen when Zellweger goes home. The turnout was, you know, it was a little low. Coming up. Okay, let's go. I think it's the calm before the storm right now. I like how your goal was to get me fired today. The Grammys are tomorrow, but first, I have a show to do in front of my hometown crowd, so I'm excited about that. I wake up with kind of a feeling of dread because I have to do a show tonight, and then I get excited, and then I get nervous. And then I look forward to the show being over and having my hamburger. Now, what should I talk about? What's been breaking in the news the last couple days? Um, you got yes. Camilla Parker Bowles and Prince Charles, anything there? That's kind of funny. And didn't he say he wanted to be her tampon one time on a tape? That's awesome. But what if there were pictures of Camilla that were like really sick f up pictures, like with like one has like a cat up her ass, like really not uh -oh. like the normal like posing with her ass sticking out. Like yeah. what if there's pictures of several objects up her ass, like a lampshade or? All right, you know what? What if I um, read them some of my questions for tomorrow? Tonight's show is the night before the Grammys, so the show is a perfect opportunity to run stuff by the audience and see which questions work and which don't. Do you remember any of the questions we rejected, like the hepatitis one? What about, can you name five guys that Lindsay Lohan hasn't blown? We gotta go. You ready? I'm gonna conveniently forget my DVDs. The FedEx of the two boxes of DVDs had arrived. So despite my passive aggressive attempts to get out of selling DVDs tonight, I will be selling DVDs. It is sold out. Yes! Where did you come from? Where, where, where was your show? Just, I was um, in L.A., and then I go back to L.A. tomorrow for the Grammys. You know I have a 6 a.m. flight. A 6 a.m. Yes. flight? Yes. Right, good to see you. While Kathy was backstage getting ready for the show, I was setting up for the DVD stand. It was really cool to see how many of Kathy's family and old friends came out to see her. Places for Kathy Griffin, please. We are at places. Give it up for the hilarious Kathy Griffin. Hello, hello, Skokie. I'm from here. I'm from Oak Park. And yes! Yeah, I'm from Oak Park. I went to Oak Park High. And uh, then I moved out there to Hollywood, you know. And uh, I have kelp every day for lunch. Okay, so I gotta tell you about the last time I was here. I go to my high school reunion, and it was a shit storm. First of all, I don't understand people that loved high school. Oh, I wish I could go back. It was the far best year. What the f Where kind of person are you? <laughs> if you loved high school, you must have been one of the mean ass who tortured me. That's the only way. Like, all right. Oh, you guys are having a good night. So guess what I'm doing tomorrow? I'm doing the red carpet for the Grammys. And I just stayed up all night writing funny questions. Well, some things are just better with gay people. You know what I mean? Like, I don't know, like if you're gonna watch Miss America, don't deal with straight people. It's a waste of time. <laughs> I brought notes because I wanted to read you some of the questions that I had planned. Because <laughs> who's Liller, Kim or John? Why do you keep staring at my rack? Were you able to score tickets for the Ashley Simpson farewell tour? glad I thought to practice my Grammy questions on them because I thought if I was in the audience I would think that was really cool to go wow we're hearing these and she's gonna be telling America in 24 hours and we get to hear them first. Besides Pam Anderson who else here do you think has hepatitis C? <laughs> Oh, 
That was a great show. I mean, I mean, was it was great. She had, she had so much new stuff. Yeah, a lot she of got me stuff. to that point where I can't breathe and yeah. my eyes are watering. You sit here. Okay. Come by DVDs. Thank you. Hello, I've waited forever to see you and it was so worth it. Oh, I'm so glad. <laughs> Did your dress really get home in the way? I loved your dress. I thought it was, it was cute. Busted. Matt, would you sign our DVD? Come on, Maddie, sign it. Yeah, sure. I have that handwriting. Man. Awesome. <laughs> Are we going to sell out? Woo! There he is. Another good bag. <laughs> okay, you've really gone too far this time. No, you're my favorite. Oh. You don't understand. I brought 10 people tonight. We were so I do have a super fan. All right, what did you go and do? Okay. And he's the ideal super fan. He brought me, a, like, a huge bag this time. Like, candles and mints and a uh, fun book. So I really scored. Yeah. Will you leave my outgoing message on my vo voicemail? Hi, this is Kathy Griffin. If you've called Philip, you've called the right guy. That's right. <laughs> He's got it all. And I should know, I'm with him right now. <laughs> and I'm still sore. Leave a message. That's the best. It's a little naughty. That's so you might only be able to use it for like two my days. My mother will love it. You know, a gay super fan is, that's what you want. You know, you're not going to get, like, the bearded, like, freaky homeless guy that wants to kill you. Just a really well-groomed gay guy that brings you a nice scented candle. Bye, girls. Bye. Thanks. It's Chicago, baby. My town. Tonight was a huge success. Come on, we sold out 50 DVDs. I, I don't even think the Rolling Stones have ever sold that many. Tomorrow's Grammy time. Go time. So we're back home from Chicago after no sleep on the plane. Now I'm super nervous because I have to focus on the Grammys and they're just hours away. She's got two hours to meet with her writer, Eric Friedman, and Dennis and Tony, Judith, the stylist, Cynthia and Scott to do hair and makeup. It's gonna be a little bit crazy. I think it's the calm before the storm right now. All right, so, I, so Sin, I have a little um, glue left on my lids from last night. What time do we have to be here? I'm in the car at 1.30, period. Are the blind boys of Alabama really blind, or are they just faking it to in votes? Okay, well, maybe not. Okay. <laughs> I think the dress came out I love amazing. It. I'm just, I'm worried it's a little dressy for this event. Why do you keep staring at my rack? Funny, Bill Clinton is nominated for Best Spoken Word Album. Do you think George Bush will ever be nominated in that category? I think it's good. Okay. I like it. I've written a lot of stuff for Kathy in the past, and she called me up and asked if I would help her write some jokes for the red carpet, and I said, that sounds awesome, and I love working with her. There's no one better, like, quick. Like, it's just awesome. All right, guys, what do you got? What do you like? What don't you like? Um, do you think Britney lip syncs when she has sex with Kevin? <laughs> oh, that's great. Oh, I love that. Can you take over for me for a few minutes? I should just slip me his room key. So I said, I said, I don't think she'll do it. What's up with Jesus? <laughs> We're always running late no matter what. It kills me. But there's the hair and the makeup. And Judith is sewing something and the boys are doing jokes and you know, every time I need to talk to, to them, it seems like Cindy's doing my lipstick and I can't talk and it's definitely stressful. It's only a test. This is what I've always wanted somebody to say. Um, does the carpet match your drapes? <laughs> is my snatch the same color as Star Snap? No. <laughs> I like how your goal is to get me fired today. Like, nothing makes you guys laugh more than me getting fired. Because I know they'd write some <laughs> of flashcards and I would just look and read them. Jesus is a fag. Oh, <laughs> Care to comment? I mean, oh, <laughs> this is not a test. They you Kathy back. Griffin has been removed from the air. This is not a test. It's really great when you can suggest an idea to her and she can, and you can see the light bulb go and she's like, yeah, that's something that I can really run with it's exciting <laughs> it's because it, you because it's you you think of the most irreverent funny things you could ask and then you have someone that's willing to do it right and has access right. and is getting paid i have successfully sewed you in <gasps> this is it that's it okay let's go oh my god Talk to you later. Okay, nice to meet you. All right, offend as many people as possible.
We're gonna try our best. I have a lot of anxieties because it's two hours of live airtime, and it's also a really heightened situation for the people I'll be talking to. So I'm gonna be a nervous wreck. Let's go. Start the party, Prince and rubber. I'm not asking to be the new darling of the red carpet. I just don't want to get canned. So we just left the house and we're already running late for the Grammys. I'm totally stressed, but as long as we don't hit any traffic, we should make it just in time. It's seamless right there. Come on. They're I mean, all pissed because I'm not going to stand in these for two and a half hours. That's crazy. If I ever one, per one more person do fashion, it's pain. It's not. Pain is pain. <laughs> Fashion's dumb. So I'm nervous that I have to go to the bathroom. But of course I'm nervous that there's going to be some weird thing where like just that moment, I just didn't see it coming and I get the shits or whatever. So <laughs> I don't know if you've talked to my mom about the shits, but at the Griffins, there's a lot of anxiety about getting the shits. And somehow that's, sometimes that's how we get the shits. So I'm nervous that I'm just going to get the shits all of a sudden. Although believe me, there's days I wish I had them. How can this freeway be crowded? So what time do you have to be then? 2.30. Seriously? Yeah, what time is it? 2.13. Well, I really have to do red carpet at 2.30. I knew I was in trouble when we got on the freeway and it was a parking lot. It wasn't, it's 2.15 and we're gonna be there in 20 minutes. It was, it's 2.15, oh my God, we're not moving. And even with no traffic, it would be 20 minutes away. I feel like the driver doesn't have any idea. He doesn't have any idea where he is. Do you think we should try an alternate route? Yes. The best part though is the limo driver who doesn't know where the Staples Center is which you could probably see from my fucking balcony. He did not have a clue about any alternate side street routes, which is key in LA. So, oh, it was so infuriating. Oh, there it is, I can see it. Little? Oh, no problem. Tell we can't even see the red carpet. We pulled up at the Staples Center on completely the opposite corner of where we were supposed to be. Kathy was like so stressed out. And, you know, this is a big deal. This is a big shot for her. It was, uh, it was really, really stressful. Okay, we're behind a car where they're just getting out, so we just gotta get out. Well, I mean, we'll walk, we just don't know where to go. I mean, I really need to just get out and walk if we're really gonna be late. So Dave, what's happening down at your end of the green carpet? Yeah, it's beautiful down Is here. Is he We've covering for her? Great time. <laughs> oh, and uh, Kathy Griffin will be here very shortly. For She's good to, to see her run running from the limo, <laughs> like, oh. Oh, the, on the other side of the building, is my understanding. The whole other side, thank you. Yep. Green carpet now. I know. Hi. Where's the celebrities? Where's the red carpet? <laughs> you don't know? Okay, thanks, girls. Why, why? Why won't Kathy Griffin be here shortly? Why isn't she here now? I know, I'm a little nervous. <laughs> is she not ready? <laughs> yes, I'm going to have you talk to Kathy for a second. Hold on. Janice, this is f***ing I'm freaking the f*** out. Oh my god! Yeah. She's 12 minutes late. She's literally, they've been on the air for 12 minutes. Oh, oh Jesus. 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 No, cocktail dress, sleeveless. Well, they're coming to get us. Well, they haven't even left yet. That's me. Okay. Thanks. We appreciate it. Thank you, MC Hammer. Now let's, let's go to Kathy Griffin. But you know what? I need a little salt to go with this pepper, and there is nobody saltier than Kathy Griffin, who is standing by. by the yeah. Okay, she Jay, looks good. You yeah. Where were you? I was stuck in traffic, and I'm not okay, even Okay, yeah, likely story, Miss Thing. Oh, you my know God. me. I was having an affair with Kanye West. <laughs> Everybody wants a piece of it. They tell me that my first guest is going to be former Attorney General Janet Reno. And I cannot wait to hear about when her CD drops. <laughs> There's the first joke that Star didn't get. Yeah. I'm here with Modest Mouse. Watch the guy in the brown suit look at her tits. Besides my rack. <laughs> yeah, that's right, I saw you looking at it. Uh, <laughs> I have a question for you. Who's your boo? Me. You're your own boo? <laughs> yes, the black guy. Who's your boo? Um, can you take over for a minute? Usher just slip me his room key. to know what she might say. That's a weird sensation. Kanye, <laughs> what is, what's your favorite dish when you go to the Olive Garden? <laughs> That's such a dumb question. Blind boys, come here. Blind boys, come here. All right. How do you feel, guys? Do you feel it's unfair that you guys have four and Lindsay Lohan has none? <laughs> You're blind. <laughs> you but I don't get 
they really are, are they? Well, clearly, yeah. three, three of them are. This is all weird and crazy. I just met Anita Baker. I know. I was just, I was just looking at Anita Baker. Actually, this is RZA. Hi, RZA. I'm Kim Desanti. <laughs> this is Kathy Griffin signing off from the red carpet. Enjoy the Grammys. Yay, Kathy Griffin! Well, I think it, I think it went well, but it really went interview, interview by interview. Like the worst part. What? The Blind Boys of Alabama. Oh, God. I didn't know that you didn't know. I didn't know that they were blind. I thought it was a bit. Oh. That was the it best was part was, she said, she said, hey, Blind Boys. <laughs> I kept saying, come here, Blind Boys of Alabama. And then, of course, I'm thinking, well, I'm not going to ask them things like, who's hotter? Right. I was looking for all the questions. I was like, what can we ask? Stop looking at my rack doesn't really apply. Oh, God. <laughs> Do you have everything? My dignity. Kathy, what are you doing in your dress? I can't believe this crazy weekend is finally over. And you know what? I got to make fun of celebrities in front of a worldwide audience. So it was all worth it. Just another adventure in my life as the ultimate D-lister. Previously on My Life on the D-list. Kathy Griffin, I'm hosting tonight. Enjoy the show. The celebrity world is ridiculous. I see it as my job to make fun of it. I'm like the Dr. Phil of stand-up. Although, Dr. Phil is full of crap, too, because that big fat ass <laughs> needs to lose a few pounds. My husband, Matt, totally eggs me on. Now, what should I talk about? Camilla Parker Bowles. Didn't he say he wanted to be her tampon one time? <laughs> no one gets it more than my main gaze, Dennis and Tony. Is my snatch the same color as star snatch? No. <laughs> Nothing makes you guys laugh more than me getting fired. My parents support my act, but they also think it's 5 o'clock somewhere all the time. How did this get here? It's 4 o'clock! Oh, it's 4. I thought it was 5. And if any celebrities have a problem, they have to deal with my assistant, Jessica. Good luck to them. Okay, here's the thing. Get out of my way, you A-list boys. My Prada shoes are as good as yours. Uh, call to participate in the VH1 Fashion Awards, right? So I said, you know, I'm thinking, you know, am I getting an award? You know, no. Am I presenting? No. Oh, although they did want me to present an award to Renee Zellweger for best, like, red carpet dresses of the year or whatever. Then they said that Renee Zellweger said she didn't want me to give her the award. <laughs> yeah, celebrities love me. So anyway, I say whatever that sweaty, puffy cocor wants, she should get. <laughs> All right, are you ready? Can you, can you concentrate or you're drunk already? Not quite. Okay. Yeah. My parents are visiting, and it's key that I have plenty of wine on hand because I have a bomb to drop. All right, so anyway, Jessica gets a call from Renee Zellweger's assistant. Oh. They want her. No! Oh, I, all right. So what? you think Renee Zellweger is calling me to get to Jessica and not me? Well, I don't know. I, well, all right, what, what's the deal? Wow. Okay, no, so anyway, she said, um, Renee Zellweger call, you know, called, and she wants to send Kathy some flowers. Oh. So, so I'm thinking, oh, sh you know, what did oh. I say? And so. <laughs> well, you didn't say anything about her, which she said was cute about her dress. She almost fits into a size kid's oh, yeah. sex. So okay. Cute. So. So anyway, I have been on pins and needles, and the flowers are supposed to come literally any minute. Right. So know, I don't know what the note's going to say. I don't know if it's like, die, bitch, or oh, keep them laughing. No, or what? she wouldn't say She wouldn't that. do that. I get a lot of celebrities when they meet me, their reaction is, uh-oh, look out, clear the room. And also some celebrities just do leave the room. That's a fact. In droves. And they should. If they do something crazy, then I might talk about it in my act. I can't resist. I can't help it. But you know what I said in my DVD? What? I said she she looked like a sweaty puffy cocoa. Oh my! God. I'd have somebody else open the flowers. I wouldn't open the flowers. I probably shouldn't say this, but the only thing I do wish she would do, I, I wish she would name names sometimes. Yes. I keep telling her, can't you say a certain star? Yeah. Or she's blonde, but you never give the name. She doesn't know yeah. the art of the little yeah. white lies. Yeah. It's something I think she should kind of work on. So far, she's been patient with us. <laughs> well, with all our. I think so. <laughs> Oh, 
Hi. Can I get you to bring them all the way up? Because they look really, Jesus. All right. Are you ready? Will you mind putting them here? Thanks. Holy. Oh, wow. Are these the flowers? Oh, Kathy Griffin, spelled wrong. Oh, no. Warmest wishes, Renee Zellweger. You're kidding. Oh, they're gorgeous. I know. Now, where are they I mean, This is hundreds of dollars. I'm not kidding. Wow. Do red roses, dark red roses, mean anything? Is there anything? I think there's some anthrax in there. I really oh, know. I think so, too. I think there's something. The powdery substance. I think there's something very sinister about this. I do, too. Very sinister. Very sinister. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Do you know any And also, are these not the color of menstrual blood? I don't know. How do I know? It's possible. I don't know. These are absolutely beautiful. And she signed this personally, Mom, because if the florist would have done it, they would have printed it. So this is her, oh like... Oh, my God. Hey, Renee, you're okay. Well, she's Shh. not out of my act just because of this. Well, what's going to take to get out of your act? She's got to buy me a car. Oh, no. A oh, brand new car. Oh, my God. When you're a comic and you're on the D-list, you got to do whatever it takes to work. That means you're on the road a lot. I'm turning more tricks than a hooker at the Republican National Convention. Right now I'm headed to Vegas and I'm doing a little part in a movie called Vegas Baby. And um, I'm doing it because, uh, well, frankly, because they met my quote. Oh, what are you? In this movie, I'm playing a she Elvis and I got to wear the white jumpsuit, fine. But I talked them out of the Elvis wig because I don't know if you saw Divas Live and God knows I love my share. But let's face it, that Elvis wig didn't do her any favors. I'm looking forward to doing this movie. I think it'll be fun. And sure, there's a part of me that wishes I was co-starring with Renee Zellweger. And maybe I will someday. That is, if my agent ever takes my call. I'm going to call my agent because I know today's the day she's going to take the call. I can feel it. Hey, um, it's Kathy Griffin for Ruth Ann. I really need to have a conversation with her. So ask her to please give me a call. I'm working here in Las Vegas, and so I'm either at the Paris Hotel or on myself. Thanks, bye. I have a theory that even gigantic stars are abused by their agents. Like, I guarantee you, they're all such f that I'm sure the biggest stars in the world, you know, like get put on hold. Hi, this is Kathy Griffin. I'm calling for the guy who called me. Stephen Benedictum. Okay. That's a fake name, Stephen Benedictum. So even when I'm on my way to work, I'm working. So now I have to do a phone interview with the Houston Press to promote an upcoming show I'm doing in Houston in order to sell more tickets. I always gotta sell more tickets. Steve? Yes? This is Kathy Griffin, did you call me? Oh, uh, yeah, uh, <laughs> yeah, I called you earlier today. Uh, to Steve, you, you sound like you're on drugs. Show. Steve, you sound like you're on drugs. Steve? Hello? Can you hear me or not? Yeah, there you go. Yeah. All right, you sound like you're on drugs. Uh, well. <laughs> he really sounded like he was high or something, or on a sedative, or on Trip Spa. Who is the most overrated celebrity out there? You know, the one who's just fooling America. Oh, wow. Um. Jesus. <laughs> I'm going to go with Jesus. I, uh, you know, I, I don't think he was that great. I think some of his teaching, teachings can be divisive. You know, he's a little culty. Also, people want to find Jesus normally, like when they're on death row. People that didn't even know who Jesus was, and all of a sudden he's their best buddy. Well, you just gave me everything I needed. Thank yes, I, I'm sh I know that the Houston uh, demographic is really going to enjoy that. Yeah, oh yeah. Well, thanks a lot. Okay, thanks, Steve. I appreciate it. Thanks a lot. Bye. Bye-bye. I blame you. What? I can't believe I turned to you because I know that there's like some actor or actress that we've been talking about is super overrated. Why'd you and look I turned at me? to you and said, who have we been saying is Jesus. overrated? And then you went, Jesus. Yeah, he's totally overrated. Uh, we're over on the set. Stepping up. Oh. Okay. Hello. How can it stink so bad if the door's open? Wait a minute, hold on. Is there a gift bag? So I get to be in this movie with my good friend Jonathan Bennett, and uh, he's a teen heartthrob. He's the uh, hottie from Mean Girls. He was also on All My Children, cheaper by the dozen, too. 
Anyway, uh, I really like him. We get along great, so I think it'll be fun. No. So what have you been doing all this time in Vegas? We went to the Crazy Horse last night. That was insane. What? Yeah. The strip club? To, yeah, you have to go. Okay, let's talk about what strip clubs are. Yes. They're places for incest survivors to go and get a job because Daddy touched them in a bad place when they were four, <laughs> and they didn't know any better. You think? Yeah, I know. But they have all that money. Oh yeah, they're so. You I think love they're that. really gonna? They're cry. the ones that are in control. <laughs> I like when guys are like, "Oh no, the stripper's the one in control." Yeah, strippers have a lot of control. <laughs> a lot of strippers have gone on to become Congress people and president and senators because they have so much control. <laughs> Did you put dollars in the G-strings? No. They didn't. No, I didn't. Because we... we well, we you're had, not that kind of guy. No, we had you're the... You're like, how dare you? We had the private booth, so we didn't have to, like, actually put the dollar... Like, was that a lap dance? Yes. I, we, Are I, you, like, I, having snacks at the same time? Are you having, like... Drinks, yes. Like, chicken tenders and stuff? Well, no, not chicken tenders. Well, men are pathetic to begin with, so there's the let's just start there. But then and then they want to put like a dollar in her G-string just the way Daddy used to. I mean, come on, fellas. Please tell me Why you talked about her college classes. Because I know you were like, what's your major? Hi. Hi. Makeup's ready for you. Okay. Hi. I gotta go. I can't listen to your problems all day. <sighs> Kathy. I've got a very busy schedule. <laughs> all right. She says everything that you think in your head. And then it's one of those things where you have to check who's in the room to see if that's okay that she said it. And then even if they are in the room, if for some reason it's still excused because of the way she says it. That's what I like about her. Do you have anything less yellow? This feel orangey? Feels, I don't know. It's a funky mm -hmm. color. In the movie, Kathy's playing a spaghetti wrestling Elvis impersonator and she has to pull out a shotgun which should be interesting because Kathy is completely freaked out by guns we're getting ready to do the gun test with Kathy are you ready let's give it a good hard one there you go that's not so bad do you want to put the bullet yeah. thing in are you ready are you ready to fire yeah what do I do push 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 the actual slug in now a little harder until you hear crack a lock there you go now okay. the same thing now turn it over Rack it once, and then um, and then make sure that no one's in the side there. Okay, fire in the hole, one half load. That's bullshit. <laughs> I'm not doing that. I'm not doing that. I'm not doing that one. That's bullshit. <laughs> it's a fire in your hole. Well, I don't like guns at all. I don't think they should be legal, and I don't think there's a real purpose for them. I think they're for sport and for killing people, or both. Amy, come in, Mark. What's the first line? <laughs> in the scene I'm doing, a group of guys jumps into my truck filled with spaghetti, and when they get out, I rob them blind. Get out of the truck. Empty your pockets. Fill this bag. Now! <laughs> when you're on the D-list, you do everything from a voiceover to a satellite tour to a Glad Bags commercial to little parts in movies. It's everything. A true way to describe my philosophy is doing whatever it takes. And not because I want to, because I have to. You know, I hope this movie turns out great. It'd be nice if it actually came out, because I'm often in movies that don't technically come out in a theater. Coming up, here's the question. We're not friends of Star Jones. We're, We're just not. Fans of her. We and just does she really have that much pull on E? Come on, it's Star Jones. Matt and I are on the road to Houston, Texas, where I'm doing a club there. And uh, you know, I gotta be a little careful, because Renee Zellweger's from Houston. It's Zellweger country, basically. And I, I can't even think about mentioning her. They're gonna hog tie me and roll me in the parking lot. Whatever that means, when they roll you. Does that mean people beat you up and then they just kind of roll you around? Like a nut log? Doesn't sound that bad. What are you doing? I'm getting up. I had to make the donuts. <laughs> You're making donuts? Mm -hmm. Wow, thanks. That's oh, what you nice. Look at my bangs. <laughs> Come on.
Here's the deal, I'm on the road all the time. And it's fine, I love doing stand-up, you know, helps my career, all that stuff. But one thing that's kind of a downside is the club owners always make you do the wacky morning zoo radio shows, which can be a nightmare. I just want to say last week I did a show and the DJs were called El Jefe and the Dove. Good morning, it's Rod Ryan. Kathy Griffin in the studio, uh, improv tonight. And don't bring the kids, remember, cussing and bad I love cussing. Badness. Dirty time. Yeah. yeah. I, got, I got a question. Exactly. Hair or bear? Oh. Um, I like hair. I'm natural that way. I think bear is weird. You mean that guys, right? No, you. Oh, okay. Girls. But yeah. I think bear on a girl is weird. Like, if you want to have sex with a 12-year-old boy, do it. Completely. Don't bother me, because yeah. I'm going to get a rash. The bear, the bear. <laughs> <laughs> I can speak freely. I can speak. What happened? What happened? No one's coming to the improv now? Thank you so much for coming in. Thanks so much. Thank you. We'll take a short break. It's 94.5 The Buzz. It's 7.51 right now, mostly sunny in a high of 62 today. It is comedian Kathy Griffin. Yay! Welcome back Yay! to the Ryan Show. Come see me at the Improv this weekend. Yeah, and she's, she's it's a fun, good show. Okay, let's get to the goods here. Okay. We're not friends of Star Jones. We're, We're just not. Fans not. Of her. We and, just, and I just think she's the most annoying person in the world. Does she wield that much power? I mean, come on, but does she really have that much pull on E? Come on, it's Star Jones. Uh, I would love to say things about Star Jones, because everybody asks, and not positive questions, but I can't, even though I have opinions. But honestly, what do they expect me to do? Say, yeah, I, I hope someone kills her. It's 827, <laughs> we gotta play a little song here real quick. Have you had to go to any like radio stations like yeah. in the middle of like nowhere? Here's the thing, when I'm up early in the morning, which I don't like to do, and I do as little as possible, one of the things that I think of is, hey, there's one thing that's good about getting up really early. It's not jogging or greeting the day, it's that that's when they make donuts. So I remembered that Houston had this great donut chain called Shipley's, and they're like much more mom and pop and old school than like Krispy Kreme and stuff. And once I got that idea in my head, that was it. That was, I had to have those donuts, I had to. They're very good. Okay, I don't feel well. What happened? That's too much. My donut ceiling is too high. So I eat donuts, and the way I know how to stop and when to stop is when I almost puke. You gotta back this up. I know. I'm busting, I'm busting my own table. Ready? Bye, thank you, you guys. Bye. Kathy Rigby is in town. Thank you so much, Alex. I appreciate it. <laughs> Let's go take a nap. Yes. What's going on? My beautiful wife. Oh, I'm a little tired as well. Well, you got uh, plans. <gasps> it's our anniversary. That's right. Oh, that's right. So where'd you get me? It was our anniversary, and it was great to be celebrating, you know, four years of being married to her. And, uh, you know, it didn't matter. We were on the road. So you think my show should be me screaming at all of Texas? I would a pay, woman by myself up I there. I would pay for my ticket then. Just going, f*** you, bush lovers. I would, Ow, my eye. I would pay for the ticket then. Well, maybe that'll be your anniversary present. Maybe just for one show, I'll just get up there and just let them have it, baby. That's sweet. Good. How was your day? Good. Are the phones ringing? Yes, they were. Good. 
Oh, I like. There's a big difference between a Houston and LA audience. You know, Houston is a city where it's a real good old boy cowboy mentality, and I, you know, have been called little lady, which I'm not saying is a pejorative. I'm just saying you don't. Nobody calls you little lady in New York and LA. I'm like um, Louise and Thelma and Louise, where I just don't want to go to Texas, and I'm just scared of Texas and bad things that happen in Texas. So tonight, I'm gonna try to do probably like my most mainstream stuff. Put your hands together for the hilarious Kathy Griffin. Hello, hello, hi. Thank, oh my God. I love Houston. I love coming here. It's my third time here in the last couple of years. And there's a certain restaurant that I wanted to talk to you about. Um, it's pretty upscale, so I'm not sure a lot of you can afford to go there. But um, have you guys ever heard of this really good restaurant called Shipley's? Yeah. I got a reservation. I know somebody. And I went there today for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. And Here's the thing, I, you know, the food is excellent there, but I really go for the ambiance, I really do. I, I really like the clientele because where else can you get a nice warm fritter and then maybe someone is peeing himself next to you? Thank you very much, you guys have been great. Thank you, I really appreciate it. All right, I played a little safe. I didn't mention Zellweger in Houston, but that's just because I was in Houston. She's not out of the act yet, nor is she out of the woods. There's no better feeling on the planet, I really mean this, than being done with your show. Because you kind of feel like you can go back to your life and you can relax. So after the show was finished in Houston, when we got to go back to the hotel, it was just heaven. Because I knew it would just be the two of us and we could do whatever we wanted. We could watch TV, we could make love, we could have Tres Leches cake. It was just great. <gasps> what? Rose petals? Wow. What happened? Oh my god. It's so incredible. Thank you. You're welcome. Happy anniversary. Oh, Matt. Oh, Kathy. <laughs> Coming up. I'm gonna wants. just I'm gonna try she to say something. Tony, right. she's ruined my life. So I what can't I'm gonna sleep, do... I can't think straight, I'm going crazy. So... Wow. I'm back home in LA, and I should be happy, but I'm not. Zellweger is driving me crazy. I don't know what to do. I have to meet Dennis and Tony and talk out with them. How is oh, hey. hey. What's wrong? Oh, no. I have something. I don't think I should say it's news as much as information wrapped in a riddle. Here's the thing. We're through the looking glass, people. OK. Why? All right. I don't know. I'm don't tell me your agent took your call. No. Oh, okay. Please. <laughs> All right, so I don't even know where to start, so I'm just going to lay it on you. All right. Okay, you ready? Hold on. Now, there's no chips here. Are you sure you can do this now? Where the f*** are the chips? <laughs> I mean, there, all right. Well. Okay, you ready? Yeah. Well, I had lunch with the boys to discuss my conundrum about Zellweger. I wanted to hear their feelings, if they thought it was kind of like a warning type of a gift, or maybe she's just a huge fan. Now, are they gaudy or just like... This wild explosion of expensive red flowers. Does that play deep flowers. in the heart of Texas or anything? <laughs> flowers arriving unexpectedly from Renee Zellweger is so terrifying for a number of reasons. It's like a modern day Rubik's Cube. Like, I don't even, I can't make heads or tails of it. It's, everything's a clue. I, it's like, we need to get Angela Lansbury on the case. Right. Do you think that this means she has a sense of humor or a big dick? Yeah, both. We think it's so funny that she says all the stuff that we all want to say. But, like, you never really think about there being repercussions. Tony, she's ruined my life. So <laughs> I can't I'm gonna sleep. Do... I can't think straight. I'm going crazy. So I'm going to just, I'm going to try to say something. Right. She's trying to kill you with kindness. Right. Maybe she's just like, I'm going to just and send you, you some lovely flowers <laughs> and not even say, please take me out of the act. But I'm just going to suggest that the mean lady go away. <laughs> wow. 
I think she's, of course, thrilled to get flowers from Renee Zellweger. Who doesn't want to get flowers, let alone from an Oscar winner? But I think there's also a big, healthy dose of suspicion. Like, what does this mean? Is there a bomb in the box? Do I hear ticking? Or, you know, so I think she's thrilled and also a little bit like, you know, waiting for the other shoe to drop. I'm scared. I'm fr frightened. I'm definitely frightened. But here's what I'm putting on the table for Zellweger. She can take her or leave it. I'm going to take out sweaty, puffy cocoa because right. I'm a human being and I have feelings. <laughs> but <laughs> plus you've already got somebody there's a million other girls that can, you can apply that exactly. to exactly uh, but right. I you're gonna take it out you're just gonna change it to someone else's name alright I'll switch it up okay um no but I I don't think I don't think I can go to the next step which is taking her out of the act completely I don't feel good about it I don't feel right about it I really feel that it is a slippery slope and that she can't be for sale that said knowing her as I do She's for sale. I love that you turn it into an insult. You must really <laughs> think I'm stupid. That I could be bought off that easily, you bitch. Like she sent you flowers and now it's like, f <laughs> you. I don't know if I'm gonna take Zellweger out of my act. I mean, the whole thing with the note could be a whole new chunk in my act. Here's the thing, I am for sale. Well, I wanna be for sale, but then I do enjoy that first amendment. I'd like to be for sale at the right price. I don't want to be the like 40% off weekend sale at Macy's. I want to be full price. Maybe then I'm for sale. I always think I'm for sale. I get the check and then just when I want to cash it, I can't keep that person out of my act. So please celebrities, keep sending me things and I'm going to try, but it's really difficult. Yeah, yeah. People are getting dressed up. Like black tie dressed up? My makeup artist Cynthia is coming over tonight to make me up for a ladies' home journal event that I'll be attending. I think this is just really cool. It's really fun. All right. And the right. That's a good, good idea. All right. If I didn't have Cynthia to do my makeup, I would look like one of the children of the corn. Did I leave you with a lipsticks last time? I believe I did. You did? Yeah, and a lip pencil. What I'm doing here is I'm, I am doing something I pride myself on, which is I am getting my makeup done today on a Sunday. I can't afford to have it done again tomorrow, and I don't want to get up that early. So tonight, when I come home, I'm going to take a neck down shower. So I get in the shower, and I point the water just, and I keep my face out of the way, I put my hair in the shower cap, and I just, I'm scrubbing like this, and looking away like it's a bad thing, and then I get out, and I call myself, ah, and then I lay down. And then I keep, I sleep with makeup. I can keep makeup on for like up to four days. If it's professionally done well enough. I think you should know I can put my pants on. That's good. Totally by myself. Uh, Although I do like it when you watch me and clap. All right, so hold on. Don't honk, I'm gonna be here for a minute. When you're on the D list, you know, you don't get a lot of awards, but I got one. The Ladies Home Journal named me and also 37 other women as one of the funniest women of 2005. So I'm going to go. There's going to be free press. I'm going to work it. I might get a gift bag. I'm there. Who's ready for Griffin ready for you? Second row. Who's ready for Griffin? We're ready. Perfect. Who are some of the funny ladies that you love? I love all the ladies that they've honored. I love Fran Drescher. I love Joan and Melissa Rivers. I love Reba McIntyre. I'm, I'm excited to meet some of these women I haven't met before. So I'm excited really? to meet people. I like to meet people. And then judge them. <laughs> I'm excited to meet everybody. I'm working the D-list. I'm a biter and scratcher, and I always want the next job, the more money, the bigger house. Lately, I've had days where I don't have time to go to the bathroom. So I'm wearing a colostomy bag right now. Mm -hmm. And a catheter. It's just easier. And do you have any... I, 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 first of all, I thought I was the only one that was going to show up. I'm not kidding. Because I was like, come on, who's going to go to a ladies' home journal party? Come back here. Then... Talk about this award. I know that this, you said yeah. this is something you've waited all your life for. Yes, yeah, so I'm one of the funny ladies that you love of 2005. And I, um, you know, it's one of those things I prayed on. I got out my crystals. I'm kidding. I don't even believe in God, and I think crystals are bullshit. But you know what? I'm getting a nice gift bag, and that's the important thing. I thought there was going to just be a ladies' home journal photography inside a cocktail party, but um, there was a real red carpet. I want to do friends pose. Well, you know it's key to not be photographed alone. I learned that from cameraman. And so, you know, if I do a picture by myself, there's like a small chance it could end up somewhere, like the Glad Newsletter. But once I get Drescher and McIntyre, then maybe it's going to end up somewhere, like in Touch Magazine. 
or if she's leaving, I'm leaving. So I did the press line, and then I went inside for my big moment. Come on, Kathy Griffin! Now, now, I have to say, I have to say, Kathy Griffin, one of Ladies Home Journal's funny ladies we love in 2005, is a woman who civilians most love and celebrities most fear. such an honor for me because after 20 years in the modeling industry, to finally be recognized for my hobby is so fulfilling. And I also am so excited to be in Ladies Home Journal and not the Inquirer Worst Dress List for once. I can't even tell you. This is an honor and I thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Kathy. And now I have my Ladies Home Journal, one of the 38 Funniest Women of 2005 award. You don't come across those every day unless you're one of the 38 other women who do. Congratulations, ladies. So I'm going to write Renee Zelliger back, and I have a couple of ideas, but I'm going to run them by Jessica first. Because I can't be responsible for writing something I think is funny, and Renee Zellweger thinks is heinous. Okay. So here's the deal. I am um, ready emotionally to send Zellweger back her note. So um, I was thinking I had a couple options. One is, dear Renee, don't think you can buy me off that cheap bitch. <laughs> Love, Kathy Griffin. Okay. What's your other option? Do you think she'll know that's a joke? Um, the bitch is too much. A little bit. Okay. <laughs> what am I, Paris Hilton? My bitch. My bitch. Okay, so, um, dear Renee. Okay. Um, two. See, she wrote two. Maybe I should write two Renee. Okay, two Renee. I sold the flowers you got me, <laughs> and even at half price, they were $260. Now I can buy my Oxy. No. Love, Kathy. Uh, here's the one I think is, is really, truly innocuous, but maybe a little bit light. Okay. Dear Renee, um, thank you so much for the flowers. They're beautiful. Uh, oh my God, I've never gotten flowers this nice from a guy I didn't f love. <laughs> Kathy Griffin. <laughs> All right, good. where's my fancy card? Uh, we have one here. It's personalized. Look at that. It screams money. There you All right. <laughs> I have to get her address. You know Tony wanted me to write, my d*** still bigger than yours. <laughs> All right. Why am I not surprised? All right. I'm gonna go with the deer. Okay. All right. I'm reaching out to the A-list community. All right. I think the note was good, because it was funny, but not you know mean or anything. But I still haven't decided if I'm gonna take her out of the act. I mean, she's not a staple in the act, but I like to have my options open. I'm gonna do Kathy G, like we're really good friends. There you go. All right, there you go. And I'll get the address and send it up. Her home address? No, it's a business address. <laughs> Well, don't give her mine either. All right. All right. Come on, Captain. Here, come with me, Missy. Coming up. What is the latest Hollywood gossip? Well, the latest gossip for me is Renee Zellweger is somehow Asian. I don't know what's happened to her face, but she's Asian. <laughs> Life on the D list is never dull. Whether I'm hustling to try to get publicity or book my next job, my work is never done. And this week is no different. Oh my God, the salon's open? Jessica, don't forget you need to bake a cake tonight. What? Well, you do it all. There's nothing Jessica can't do. <laughs> You're getting a very romantic haircut. Mm. She's giving Matt a haircut. She knows the job is anything and everything. Well, Jessica, I guess I'll just carry the suit to my car myself since you're sitting around Oh my God. <laughs> Are you all right? Oh. That's a lot for you to carry. Oh, my arm hurts. <laughs> Um, all right, I'll see you guys later. Okay, bye. Bye. So right now, I'm on my way to USC to do their campus TV show called Trojan Vision. I know it sounds like a condom, but let's face it, I've been banned from several of the network talk shows because they think I'm a little naughty. And uh, I say thank God for Trojan Vision. Right, Sam, where do we go? And their vision. Where do we go? Who's you? Oh, I'm Elizabeth. I'm Hi. the executive producer. How are you? Good to meet you. I'm hey, Mac. Mac. And you know me, Sam. Yes. <laughs> all right, come on. Thanks. <laughs> can I swear on the show? No. No. I can't? No. You can say... Can I say ass? Yeah, you yes. can say ass. Okay. 
Spend yeah, okay. Joe, where do you want me here? Um, right there. Okay. Great. And if you can back up to that pillow, because sometimes this couch sags a lot. Hello and welcome to See You at USC. I am your host, Joe Horton, and I am very glad to have comedian, red carpet interviewer, all-around Hollywood maven, right. Kathy Griffin with me. Thanks very much for being here. Thank you very much, Joe. And I couldn't help but notice in your intro, you used the word heck. And I would really appreciate it if you didn't cuss around. I am sorry. I don't appreciate sorry. your potty mouth. I'm a lady, Joe. <laughs> we are a very liberal society here. What is the latest Hollywood gossip? Well, the latest gossip for me is Renee Zellweger is somehow Asian. I don't know what's happened to her face, but she's Asian. It's kind of puffy, it's is that puffy, what you're saying? puffy, and she, maybe she's pan-Asian. I don't know if she's full-blown Asian. <laughs> but um, she's very thin, and she's changed nationalities. Well, well, Which is also trendy, like when Madonna turned Very British. trendy, yes. Right. I'm going to be Sumatran. <laughs> very hot right now. <laughs> very hot right now. Yeah. I know it's going to get me in trouble when I talk about celebrities, but on the other hand, I'm not making stuff up. That's not my thing, you know? I'm usually relating my own experience with the person, or it's an impression based on something that's very public. You know, a lot of my experiences in the celebrity world are just funny to me and hopefully funny to others because I'm very much an outsider looking in. And I think that's what people relate to. You know, I'm like invited to the party, but I'm not in the VIP room. Thanks very much for watching tonight and see you later. Oh, back into traffic. Joe did his research more than most television shows. I mean, usually you do a television show and then look up like an old bio on the internet and then go, so I understand your favorite restaurant is Cinnabon. And I think, wow, I remember saying that eight years ago. You know, I thought it was a big catch, and then he said Tom Hanks is coming in next week. So there you go. I'm on the D list at Trojan Vision. Bye, right, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, right. Chance the dog. He's Chance. He's Chance. Hello, Chance. So the situation with Zellweger is eating at me like a cancer, which reminds me. Also, our dog Chance has cancer. So Matt and I have to go to the doggy chemo center and Chance has to get his chemo. It's very sad because we're obsessed dog people. We love those dogs more than most people, certainly more than our own families. Oh. Chance uh, was diagnosed with lymphoma and uh, if we go through chemo, which we decided to do, um, it's basically like a six month long process. They go into remission and then it comes back again. So how is Chance feeling? He's just like a puppy. We're so scared it's going to come right back. Well, statistically, you have three to four months. Before it comes back? Yeah. So with people, it's the same thing where they give them chemo, but it's not the kind of chemo where, like, the hair falls out and they're vomiting and stuff? It is. It's a higher dose. So if you or I weighed the same as Chance, we would get a higher dose of chemotherapy. I do. I weigh less than Chance. <laughs> Good for you. Okay. So okay, what's, what do we do right now? Right now, the nurses are going to come in and get blood work. Okay. okay. All right. All right. Thanks. Thanks. First. All right. Hopefully soon. <gasps> Chancy. If we could get him on the blanket. Mm -hmm. My chance. There you go. Yeah. You're halfway on the blanket. Yeah. Have you purchased one of my DVDs yet? I have not. I haven't seen them. You know what I tell people, honestly? Amazon. Because really? a lot of the stores, they don't carry it, or they ran out, or they don't, they don't get the orders or whatever, but I always just tell everybody, go on Amazon, go have it in two days or whatever. That's true. You're a good boy, Chance. He did what? Is he done? Oh, he's done. Chance! He's done. Now it's a waiting up. game to see when it comes back, because like, oh, they said it definitely will come back. Comes to $498. <sighs> well, for that, I'd like a pap smear. So let's go, sweetheart. We're getting in the stirrups. I got my money's worth. Hi, welcome. Nice to meet you. How are you? Good. A couple friends of mine um, pitched an idea to me about doing an article for the New York Times about what it's like to be on the worst dress list and how I actually kind of get a kick out of it. So we wrote the article and they said the New York Times liked it so much that they had to get a photographer over here very last minute, which is fine with me because you know what? Any press is good press, even if it's about how horribly I dress. So I just came up with a couple of ideas that might be kind of funny. So the most important thing, Cynthia's hair and makeup, the most important thing is to get an angle that is high and flattering. Okay. So nothing Please. from down here, nothing even from level. That's why I'm loving Laying this idea. Good. Laying down, putting a bunch there, of ball gowns on top of me oh, and just being like, 
Maybe yeah. we can even do like two different shoes. Yep. Okay, let's stage it. Okay. You touch me up and then you get ready yeah. to shoot. I'll get you know you have a really shoot. limited time and I apologize. One thing that's amusing to me is just all the ways that my life is the polar opposite of Nicole Kidman or Charlize Theron or Renee Zellweger. I'm pretty sure Nicole Kidman isn't <laughs> staging the photo herself and taking clothes out of the closet and throwing them on herself because she, do she doesn't want her tummy bulge to show. I'm pretty sure that doesn't happen. I still like the tiara. Are you in with that? Yeah, let's keep it. Okay, keep it's a little crooked it. though. And maybe we can let's have- Let's crooked. Yeah, with actually messy hair is coming. Okay. Yeah. Also, Nicole Kidman doesn't take funny pictures. So Nicole Kidman isn't going, well, what's the funniest setup? Like I do. And I'm pretty sure that Nicole Kidman's husband isn't holding the light. Nice. Matt, you're on lights now? Matt is the everything <laughs> sort of man. Matt standing there just popping his gum, holding a light, I thought was classic. Let's see. Yeah, yeah, you, yeah a well, just a little, yeah, angle it. So you want it as flat to Kathy as you can. Like, mimic her face. There you okay. go. Right? So then it's real pretty. Excellent. <laughs> Good. I hope the photo turns out okay. I think I think it's gonna be a funny picture. You're very quick. You're good. <laughs> All right, um, Matt will buzz you out. As Stephanie left, I begged her for airbrushing. Now it's a newspaper photo, so they don't. But I thought I'd just give it a shot. Maybe a star, baby. All right. Well, I hope you're pleased. Is there any chance you would even reach out to them slightly, or? Uh, I can. Yeah, no. <laughs> Matt and I are here in Long Beach, California today. Thank you, Ms. Goodman. Thanks. I'm doing two shows tonight at a venue called The Vault 350. I don't know the venue very well, but I think it's mostly a music venue, which makes me nervous because I don't know if I'm just going to be under a mirror ball. I don't know. What about the whole thing with Zellweger and the flowers? Oh, yeah. So you're saying it's in? No question. Oh, yeah. Matt helps me with everything. He, he usually comes with me when he can. Sometimes he'll help me with deciding what material I should do. The problem is Matt always wants me to do material I'm gonna get in trouble for, because that just cracks him up. But when I get in trouble, he kind of is like, what, I didn't tell you to say it. Honestly, I'm not sure what I'm gonna talk about with Renee Zellweger. Something like that, I might not decide until 20 minutes into the set. She got me. I'm nervous. Now I'm afraid she's like sending people out to see me every time we do stand up to see what I'm gonna say. She owns you now. She owns me. Give it up for the hilarious Kathy Griffin. Hello, Long Beach gays. And a few straight people who are dragged here. Hello. Okay, here we go. So my assistant calls me and she says, I just got a call from Renee Zellweger's assistant. And immediately I'm like, what did I say? Because I'm thinking, I said something up, and she's pissed, and I'm in trouble. Because, and, and here's the bad thing. Like, without, with, in two seconds, I thought of, like, seven heinous things I've said about her. <laughs> heinous, heinous, horrible things. I may have referred to her at one point as a sweaty, puffy coco. <laughs> but I, that's all I'm saying, allegedly. And so, and she's very thin, she's very thin, and I may have said in an interview in People Magazine that I thought Renee Zellweger was so thin that she looked like the lost Olsen triplet. <laughs> and I may have said that she hasn't eaten since Chicago. <laughs> All right, so I'm like, oh, sh So I said, well, what does she want? And they go, she wants your address, she wants to send you something. I know. I'm thinking like the Unabomber and because I'll go to that dark place so easily. And I go, well, what is she sending? And she goes, the assistant said she's sending flowers. I go, flowers? So then sure enough, two days later, the most elaborate, beautiful, gigantic bouquet of like wild exotic roses that you've ever seen in your life. Roses that were like colors I've never even seen. Crazy Willy Wonka magical roses. 
oh, wait. So then I, the florist has left the florist card, right? And I'm thinking, she spent a buck on these roses. So I immediately call the florist, and I'm determined to know how much they were, right? So I said, yeah, hi, this is Kathy Griffin. Um, Miss Zellweger's flowers are so beautiful. I wanted to maybe send them to my mother in a couple of days. I was wondering how much they were. 520 bucks. I know. I have to tell you, now I'm like afraid of what's coming next. You know, like what, what's going to happen after, let's say she hears about this performance, a car. I mean, she'll stop at nothing. But my friends were teasing, they were teasing me and they're like, she f with your head. And I go, what are you saying? And my friend Tony goes, I'm saying Zellweger one, Griffin zero. <laughs> Damn you, Zellweger! Damn you to hell! Thank you, you guys. You're fantastic. I appreciate it so much. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Have fun. I did throw in a little Renee Zellweger, which I feel was, was an homage and in many ways an apology. I could never stop relating my life experiences in my act because that's what I do. I'm not a joke writer. I don't do high concept stuff. I just tell stuff that happened to me and hope it's funny. Previously on My Life on the D-List. That's bullshit. I'm not doing that. My husband Matt really loves me. Matt, you're on lights now? He'll do just about anything for me. You look very hot. My parents are supportive, and yet, according to them, everything I do is a colossal career mistake. That he asked me to do the Grammys and the Oscars. Yeah, I mean... What does your mother say to all this? No hooker jokes. Mom, no dope jokes, no hooker jokes, no political jokes. No. What do I got? For my Grammy gig, my gays, Dennis and Tony, came up with really safe material for me. What's up with Jesus? I like how your goal is to get me fired today. <laughs> Jesus is a fag. Oh, <laughs> Okay, here's the thing. Get out of my way! You A-list boys, my Prada shoes are as good as yours. Yeah. I work twice as hard to get half as far as you, cause I ain't no ass to kiss yes, when you're living life on the D-list. So I've been doing the red carpet for the E! Channel and it's been so much fun, except I've been doing nothing but getting in trouble. All right, so here's what happened. Kanye West comes up. You know who he is, right? He's like that hip hop guy and he had 10 Grammy nominations. So we started and I said, Josh Groban's super hit, You Raise Me Up. Do you think he wrote that about his, you know? Um, <laughs> then he just got really freaked out and insecure because I think he was just like, no woman is going to get one over on me. So then he opens his jacket and he starts like grinding against me. Did anybody see that? It was really weird. I was like, get off of me, a perp. Then I said three words that I never like to say, which are back to you, star. Oh, Let's do treadmill. Come on, Tom. Treadmill? Okay. <laughs> Get out of here! I can take your whole God damn it! I'm really excited because I got the gig on E to do the Oscars, so I'm working my ass off to get an A-list body. What are you doing today? I'm going to therapy, much needed. Then That's I'm going to go try on my Oscar dress. Whose dress is it? Ali Rahimi, who did my Grammy yeah. dress, which is a big hit. Excellent. Good. Let's Woo! Around. The Oscar gig is a big deal for me, but E Channel thinks I was still a little too scandalous. Like when I asked Quentin Tarantino who he thought was most likely to snort blow off their Grammy, which I still think is harmless. So I don't get to be on the actual red carpet. Let me tell you what they're gonna do. Star Jones is gonna be down on the red carpet interviewing the A-listers like Tom Cruise and Johnny Depp. So I won't be here, or here, or here. I'm up on this thing called the Media Bridge, which is where the other maybe not so popular cable channels get to cover the Oscars. It's the nosebleed seats. Let's just say if I ever fell off the Media Bridge, I'd be dead. Oh, I'll still be making fun of the stars, just not to their faces. I do not want to hear one more word of bitching from that goddamn Hillary Swank about how hard she worked out. But here's the deal, it's the Oscars. So millions of people are going to be watching me. It's a really big deal and I don't want to blow it. Who's oh. that? That was really fun. That was actually really fun. All right, say hi to Dennis and I'll talk to you guys later. Okay, I'm really nervous because the Oscars are Sunday, and unlike, you know, Nicole Kidman, I'm not getting courted by the top designers. So, luckily, the guy who did my Grammy dress has agreed to design an Oscar dress just for me, so I feel very fancy. Now, it's a loner, 
you know, it's not like I get to keep it. Let me get Ali for you. Feel free okay. to look around. I'd love to. Right How could I not? The Monatelier experience is a special ladies dressing dream come true. So it's a really beautiful shop. How are you? There's Ali, the designer, and he comes out and makes you feel like a goddess. Really what I want you to do is to try a few things on that you like. Okay. We'll talk about some colors, we'll talk about some cuts. My Grammy dress was an Ali Rahimi design and I loved it. So I'm hoping I'm gonna have the same success with my Oscar dress that I think would be really pretty. I can right. do it in a variety of different colors. Okay. The fabric is very, very soft. Um, I don't know if you want to go with this much train. You know, probably not. It's too impractical when I'm okay. working. I can shorten it and we can adjust those things okay. as you need. I really, I know you tried this on, um, the color of it you really liked. And I'd like to see this back on you. So we'll see. You should see this on you. Okay. Okay. What makes me nervous about the ones you've chosen is these fabrics are light. They show every little right. bulge. Nicole Kidman is a hanger with a head. I think That's why designers love her. That's why she wears clothes so beautifully, because so do hangers. Okay? Hangers also aren't showing any cellulite. They're not showing any bulges. They're hangers. She just has a head. So now, like I want to call Judith. Do you know for sure if she's coming? Uh, I, you know, I didn't speak to her today, but... Judith is so great. She did the wardrobe for Suddenly Susan, and I am lost without her. Where's Judith? Why, Why can't I have this dress? Um, you can. Look how pretty. You can. Can't wear a bra with it, though. So, oh, well, now I don't feel so well. Let me talk well, to her about it. <laughs> Miss, please, talk to your friend. <laughs> Judith knows that I need a bra with straps. I don't want my boobs bouncing all over, like basketballs. I control where they are. Not a fashion designer. Hi. I was so afraid you weren't coming, Jay. I, I, I was a wreck. Excuse me. I was on the freeway. It's a mess. <gasps> Look at this. I Aren't they gorgeous? You want, you want to put it on no. You got it. I don't think it's, it's uh, fancy enough. All right, this is beautiful. All right, should I just start throwing stuff on? Yes. Okay. All right, so these I think are the only curtains. My boobs are crooked. I can't help it. Show me the bad part. <laughs> Do something to them. May I? It is a little bit big. Because I'm so darn tiny, Ali. And it's weird because I just eat donuts all day. <laughs> I got to go on that same diet. I see, you're not crooked. Uh, Judith, yeah. step in. But yeah. no, wait a minute. This that, is what that, I pay you the that, million bucks for. That <laughs> All the way to I'm where the belt. I'm not I know, I know. You hear me? We know that. We know that. Ali, I, I know you I understand that, that. even though you're years, acting like you I didn't hear it. <laughs> I'm sorry, what did you say? I said I'm wearing a bra, and that is it. I'm trying to do the model kick like they do on America's Next Top Model. Which I still think I have a shot at, by the way. <laughs> Anyone's watching. It's too big for her. What do you think? I think I'm going to take a hit for the feathers. I tried on all these great dresses, but they weren't all necessarily great for me or great for the Oscars, but then there was one in the window that really caught my eye. Oh, you're doing it. You were, I'm getting in this dress, you hear me? You're in. <laughs> oh, come on! I can't even breathe! That's how much I love this dress. Uh, well, that's what's well, great about it. I want to vomit! It's so tight. <laughs> The problem with that dress was the corset was a little too loose and it wasn't supporting my boobs. So that's where Judith goes into action. Would it be so terrible to put some straps in it? This dress, yes. Oh my God. Cannot wear a bra with this. I'm wearing a bra with it. <laughs> <laughs> the only way I think to put a strap on this would be to make it a halter, which is taking this chiffon fabric, ruche it and have it go around the edge of the neck. Cause I really can't oh. see this with a strap that goes down in the back. That's a, that's but a halter, idea. let me bring mm -hmm. you the fabric. Okay. The Oscars are really the, the icing on the cake. As a designer, I, I want to really pull out all the stops and make the most beautiful, <laughs> wonderful fitting gown. I can't believe you're gonna make the whole dress all over again. Probably. Well, if it's going, to be, it's going to be right. You're probably right about that, but. <laughs> the insane part. <laughs> Well, I feel bad that I made Ali redesign the dress entirely, but you know, I had to have it. I said, I'm sorry. I know that isn't your vision, but it's their vision. These guys. Well, what do you think? Do we go with this one or? I like this one best. You do? Yeah. It's such a classic look. There's yeah. no way you could end up on any bad list in town. I think it's very sassy looking. I love it. Let's take it. <laughs> Didn't get her out of her bra, which is what I was trying to do, but oh, we're going to build a gown around the bra. So the, the bra is actually going to be the feature. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Ali only has a couple days to make my Oscar dress, so I'm counting on him to come through for me. Bye-bye. Bye. And this is our final runway show. This is our big finale. There's nothing more fun than models.
My friends and I are obsessed with reality TV, and we watch them all. Amazing Race, Nick and Jessica, Survivor. So tonight we're going to watch the finale of Project Runway. How long have you guys been watching this? About three hours now? <laughs> it's hard out. for Matt, as a runway model, to watch other amateur mm -hmm. runway so, models. watch these fat asses. Matt, yeah. 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 they're 15-year-old girls. <laughs> That'll be you on the red carpet. <laughs> I should see if I can get literally like the worst Project Runway outfits. And just be like, what? <laughs> One of you is about to be named the winner of Project Runway. So who had the best collection, everyone? I'm going with Wendy. Wendy? You out. Oh, bye, Wendy. Her collection was so good. Jay? It's got to be Jay. Congratulations. You are the winner of Project Runway. Uh, He's the next great American designer. What? That's nutty. <laughs> Sorry. I really love my reality stars. Like the last bachelor sounded like an old Jewish woman. He'd be like, I just want to find someone who's fun. I want a girl to have a nice time with. And Jay is such a goofball. I'd like to know what he's really like. I, I hope he would love my Oscar dress. So Kath, what did he say today? Did, was today the conference call? Oh, yes. Boy. It's crazy. No Actor one's wise. up on my bridge. That's what's hard about so this. So you don't even get to talk it's to any It's me actors? by myself. I'm like doing almost like tiny monologues. Like they'll they'll just be in my earpiece going like, okay, Kathy, we're coming to you in 15 seconds for 13 seconds. Well, what's the <laughs> point of you even being there then? They uh, want I, they want humor. Uh, there's a point. Right. No, I know, but I'm disappointed that you're not down there. I, mean, I know because that's people. what they liked about the last two times I did is they liked the question part, you know, obviously. But and I'll, it would be so much more fun to ask the silly questions to really big stars. Like, it would be just great to ask Meryl Streep what she eats at the Olive Garden. <laughs> you know, the message is pretty clear. I am not fit for the red carpet. I'm not talking to Zellweger. I'm not talking to Jude Law. I'm not allowed to go near anybody. And I'm just there by myself. Coming up later. Stop, 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 stop. You have my credentials right, Amanda? Gonna, you don't have my credentials? Where did that end up? I don't know. One of the perks of doing the Oscar red carpet is I get to go to these things called Oscar gift suites. We're gonna get a lot of shit. You're gonna be weighed down. That's where they give a bunch of free stuff to celebrities. Because if celebrities wear it, then America buys it. And this one, I get to bring along the guys. They each get a bag, so everybody take a bag. Maddie. Thank you. All right, let's do it. Where do we go first? Jewelry. Okay. Purses. Oh, wow. What beautiful work. Can I put one on you? Yeah. So what these vendors do is they give away free products just to have them photographed with celebrities. All right, you want to do a picture? Is anybody here you want to do a picture? They may not care about a picture with me. I mean, maybe they say, oh, Kathy Griffin used our lipstick. Who cares? But let me tell you something. If, if, if Matt murders me tomorrow and it's on E! True Hollywood Story, they're all going to want that Kathy Griffin lipstick picture before her husband killed her. This is medical grade aloe vera. Do you have any Hi. funny aloe vera stories that you'd like to share with Tom? <laughs> I put some in my vagina. Well? By mistake. And? If I had to go to the hospital, it burned. Uh. Oh. you want to try them on? No, I want to take them. them. I don't even need to try them on. I love getting free stuff. Everyone does. I guarantee you that Nicole Kidman and Hilary Swank are at least as excited about their Oscar gift bags as they are about their actual Oscars. Those girls get Gucci, Prada, Manolo Blahniks. Is it vitamins? Yeah. Me, I'm just happy to get anything I can for free. All right, Tony, you're next. So here's the sunglass deal. I got sunglasses, which was nice. And then Tony sat down and Tony had a connection with the sunglass guy. Thank you. You think these are the ones? Yeah. I think it's low. Yeah. All right, Dennis. I think it's low. All right, thank you so much. What was your name? Brian. Brian, you're so sweet. I actually thought he might blow him for a minute. Thank you. Do you like the way they look on my face? Yes, yeah, so let me answer that. Okay. And the thank last person I'm going to bug you for is my husband. He's going to be on the red carpet with me on Sunday. So then Matt walks up to the booth, and they decide to take a break. Oh, yeah. What happened? Uh, they're going to shut down for a few minutes, and then I'll come back later on. No, 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 no. No, come back. No, no. I think at that point, I could tell Matt was on the verge of a fit. And I think I was, like, putting my hand on his shoulder saying, oh, he's shy, but also like sunglasses. Sorry, guys. Right. It makes you only want the product more. I'm sorry about that. Like, I was just trying to move it along. Because I could tell Matt was just wanted to leave. Does it matter? I'm just sick of this. 
Yeah. We're not. I know, but I'm. At, well, it should be for them because I'm. It's, I have. It's okay. You're making me stressed out because you're acting so crazy. No. I'm trying to get you stuff, and then if you don't want it, I know, we can but just I'm fine just going people. door to door. But there's all there, there's all this extra weirdness. What do you want me to do? The Silver Spoon was not my best day because you'd think like, okay, I'm getting iPods and I'm getting cell phones. So when I got there and found out that it wasn't all this amazing stuff, I kind of pitched a little fit because I wasn't gonna get the, uh, the new Nokia phone, I guess. Now we're in the booze room. Oh yeah. Boys, booze, and gambling. So after we got all of our free stuff, we moved to the party room. Hi, beautiful. Hi, what's up? I always love running into Jonathan Bennett. Oh, nobody's gonna know, baby. It's not even on your breath. What are you doing? You don't know. You're like my mother. Drunk. It's not my fault. There was a wine testing. You are a And we get to taste all these different wines. They're great. Taste this. It's really good. I don't drink, and I'm not gonna start now. You're not fooling anyone. I was really excited to run into Lance. We're just big dorks together. All right, I'll talk to you later. Where's the vodka? I hear the vodka is amazing. I don't drink it unfortunately. But luckily I have a family. I don't die too. I've never had a drink in my life. I come from a family, or shall I say, my friend has a family of alcoholics. There you go. So much. This is wonderful. Honey, I need to get two more bottles of vodka. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't here. <laughs> oh, come on. They were there for the taking. Yeah, we're done. Yeah, yeah we're, we're done. done. We're done. We, got all, we, got all the boys. we are done. In the end, we all got big bags of stuff for free. Did I mention it was free? So my Oscar gig on Sunday is different because I won't be asking the celebrities the silly questions. So Dennis and Tony and I have to come up with bits for me to do all by myself up on the media bridge. All right, so Dennis, what do you got? This is proppy, but hear me out. It may not work. If you have binoculars and you're like, oh, it looks like Halle Berry's going for her lip gloss. Okay, and good, a very nice application. And Joaquin Phoenix is playing with something in his pocket. Mm -hmm. Maybe a roll of Rolades. Dennis is a professional writer. He writes for lots of celebrity magazines, and Tony is just plain funny. But I admit, we have to kind of rein each other in because the E Channel thought it was way too controversial at the Grammys. Do you think Britney lip syncs when she has sex with Kevin? <laughs> <laughs> they don't get me. Oh, let's make fun of Passion of the Christ. Let's we haven't do done, it. We haven't done any Mel Gibson. Well, first of all, I don't know why he got that nomination because he looks terrible. Terrible. Right. Yeah. His makeup was all smudged. So, and sweaty. first of all, I think the Academy is way it. off. Well, yeah. I mean, when you have a wonderful picture like the Aviator. Who am I to judge? And then you have someone hanging off a cross. Yeah. Sweaty, Who am I to looking... judge? But I think he looks. Is it me or was there terrible. blood in that one scene? Sean I don't think right. that Kathy ever has gone too far that I've seen. We they told you the idea about the, the red carpet poses. Leanna Nicole is like that crazy. <laughs> so. But we like, if we, we could just think of the best ones. The Tara so, Reed. Yeah. <laughs> the last one is the Courtney Love. And you literally just drop right out of the frame. You go, oh. and then, of course, the Courtney Love, and you're, and you're gone. And the camera stays up, okay. and you're just gone. <laughs> and then it's like, back to you, Stop. You know what I mean? Oh. After we write our jokes, we'll decide which jokes are best for me to stay on the red carpet. And of course, by the red carpet, I mean the media bridge at the Oscars. The Oscars are just three days away, and as usual, I have an out-of-town gig that I booked months ago. So now I have to rush off to New York and do the Laugh Factory. Yeah, you're... It's like so weird, like one minute they're like, no comps. When I got to my hotel, I found out the show wasn't even sold out. So I do not want to have an empty house in New York City. So they better get some asses in those seats over at the Laugh Factory. Are you ready? Thank yeah. You. Okay. Purse. Where is it? Here it is. Okay, I'm ready. All right. Okay. Yes, thanks. Kathy hadn't performed in New York City for probably four years before going to the Laugh Factory. There's LA and there's New York, and those are the big entertainment capitals of the world. And 
you never know who's going to be at a show, and it's just always important to have a good turnout. Hi, uh, I'm Kathy's husband, Matt. Right. It's good to see you. Is there anybody who's having any problems with the guest list or anything? A couple people on Kathy's guest list have gone on. Isn't that I can't right? thank you. Is it full? Uh, it's beautiful. Jesus, give me the light. I gotta go. Okay. All right, you guys ready for Kathy? Did the intro start? Are you kidding me? Kathy Griffin, everybody. Where is it? <laughs> I want a big round of applause for the hilarious Kathy Griffin, everybody! Oh, shit. Help me, help me, help me. Right. Help me. Straight. <laughs> Where do I go? Where do I... <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I couldn't find my way onto the stage, technically, but I'm so excited to be here. Thank you so much for coming. First of all, let me start with the Grammys. I have been a special correspondent, that's what they call me at E, because they don't even want to say co-host, with the main correspondent, Star Jones. I love you. And I thank you. Okay, Mr. Brittany has somehow gotten his ass on the cover of details. <laughs> And by the way, could Brittany have picked a worse loser on the planet? It's like she searched the solar system for the biggest loser that would suck her dry of her money, and she found him. And he's not even that hot, right? Like, he kind of has little love handles, and he's always, like, golfing and shit. What the f Get a job. No, but I just think it's so funny that, like, celebrities, they're, like, in a fame bubble. Like, why didn't someone tell Julia Roberts, don't name those kids those horrible names? No kid wants to be named, what is it, Hazel? Hazel and Phineas? Here's my predictions. Hazel is gonna get into porn at like 15. 15. Cause she's gonna want to need like validation that she's sexy, right? And her porn name is gonna be like Naughty Myrtle, you know? <laughs> Phineas, already gay. Already gay. It's inevitable. It's inevitable. He's on the pride float the minute he can walk. Thank you, good night. Thank you guys, it's been great. big hit at the Laugh Factory. I got a standing ovation for God's sake. It was great. It was a great audience. The Big Apple, that's my town. My new town. I used to be Uncasville, Connecticut. <gasps> what? Uh, what? Well, jump in. Is Time anyone a Project Runway fan by any chance? Uh, absolutely. <laughs> Yay. We spotted him. Oh, How are you? Nice to meet you. I was so excited to hear that Jay, the winner of Project Runway, was in the audience. So I like Wendy a lot more than most people. I didn't think she should have won, but I'm just saying. Do you have a cataract? I have I have this thing called epithelial cells in my right eye. I have some, I had some damage from a LASIK surgery. Oh, Lord. and I'm going blind in my right eye. From Enough about me. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> I can only see you from my left eye, but you're very handsome. I'm over here. No, but. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, Kathy, hey, I want your inner style to come out when I watch you on these award shows. I don't have an inner style, I don't have an style. I see you in these, like, <laughs> these I'm things. I'm trying to get through the day. Oh. What about my Grammy dress? None. You should what? wear green. Don't wear green. Ever? No. Why? They always say... Grammy was no. black. No. F*** you. Yeah, they always say, um... You look green. Who's that? Green um, no, they just put redheads in green, and it's, it's the Hey, worst. make me something. Blue. Send me some sketches. Oh. I found it to be really unpleasant and kind of annoying. Yeah. And I just really wanted to say, stop telling me how crappy I look all the time. Have you looked in the mirror? Ouch. Snap. Sure. I gotta yeah, go, but call me. You have my yeah. number, right? Yeah. Yeah, all Your right. Your assistant's number. Yeah, you can't have the purse. I'm too famous. Let's face it. I rock New York. I just hope I kick some ass at the Oscars. Coming up. <laughs> there you go. Hi, boys. Somebody's propeller was going round and round. <laughs> you know, I've been humiliated worse than Are you ready for your fitting? Yes. So I'm really excited because today I'm getting fitted for my Oscar dress. Good to see you. Yeah, you too. We're not in the dress yet, but oh, oh my god! Gorgeous. I know. I love it on you. So let's. We'll get her in the dress and we'll try some pieces. I think the corset could be tighter. We're gonna put. Well, I can't. I can't pull it tighter right now. Make it happen, Ali. Just do it. 
Because right now I look like a fat cow. You do not. And I want to look like I have anorexia nervosa and I need to be hospitalized. Yes. That's how thin I want to look. Like I'm on my way to rehab. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> Me too. I would much rather be anorexic than bulimic. Who wouldn't? Although, wait a minute, hold on. I just thought of something. When you're anorexic, you don't get to eat the food. But being bulimic is disgusting. So what? But bulimia, bulimia, like it turns your teeth yellow and your hair falls out. My hair is my fortune. But anorexia, I don't think you desire the food, so you don't miss it. Okay, I'm going anorexic. Look at that, for God's sake. I look like Halle Berry's thinner white cousin. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what the dress cost, but I asked I Judith, like and she thought it wholesaled for four thousand, so maybe it retails for eight. I don't know. It was a loner, so you know, I wear it, I give it back. So she's all yours. She's gorgeous. Okay. Oh, gorgeous. Okay. <laughs> Holy <laughs> balls. <laughs> Thirty-six G's. That's for the pendant. I'm not gonna go to the bathroom. That's for the pendant. That's not for both. The coral's 50000 Holy crap. And then, Ish. I hope you're going to come with me. I am. As a security guard. I am. And that's not my side. <laughs> so, Erica Courtney is a very fancy jewelry designer. And she's loaned me stuff before, but this time, she actually came to the fitting with me. So I felt very A-list and very fancy. Breathing. Look at this. Yeah. Oh, I love that. Beautiful. I love the color here. Mm -hmm. that's, that's good, too. Let's do that one. Jesus Christ! <laughs> Hang it off the cross! More is better always. Yeah. I'm actually afraid to I'm lose something even right now. I'm gonna fancy you up. Like the dress. That's my vote. See, I think that's kind of glamorous. Yeah, I like this. I thought Kathy looked great in that dress. She was stunning, and I said if it was in white, it would be my wedding dress. You know, I think this is like a once in a lifetime experience. Nobody does it. I know. That's it's why I thought insane. it'd be so much fun for me. I know. Yeah. I want to renew my wedding vows right now. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Gorgeous. Love Gorgeous. It. Fabulous. The star always has like some gigantic crazy rock like this, so yeah. I'm always going to be understated next to her anyway, so. Yeah. No matter what. Yeah. Having the fitting with Ali and Erica and Judith, I felt very fancy. I know that I looked like four times better than Julia Roberts ever has. Poor thing. I know everything's going to be perfect on Sunday. It's going to be gorgeous on you. Good. We'll see Please Sunday. be watching. Of course. Thank you, Charlie. Bye. We'll Thank you. There are Star Jones billboards, and they're just her face and very expensive drop earrings. And there's a quote from her that says something like, no wedding talk, I promise. And I want my own billboard. I think it should be a very beautiful, extremely airbrushed photo of me. And the quote should be, suck it. Because that's my inner thought bubble. Purse. So today is the Oscars. Dennis is stopping by to help me refine some of my bits. And with Tony out of town, he's going to need some help. So luckily, Eric, my other writer, is meeting us there. Hey there. Got the right in front of me. It's only a few hours before I go live on air, and I'm so nervous. Do you use your purse? Yeah, my regular black purse. Usually I just get ready here at the house, but on Oscar day, the E-Channel people wouldn't let me. They wanted me near the venue. Maybe because I was a little late for the Grammys. I really need to just get out and walk if we're really going to be late. This is such bull Where's the celebrities? Where's the red carpet? I'm freaking the out. So they rented a suite for me at the uh, Hollywood Roosevelt. Everybody ready? Yep. Dennis, look at that. <laughs> I wrote another quick hit for you, but I need some funny names. So, like, I'm really upset my Blackberry was stolen and hacked into, and now my f celebrity friends are furious. Darva Conger, Coolio. Oh, I well, love Well, I it. cool them down. You watch this top China. five. China. I mean, yeah. they're going to get everybody. Where's your suit and everything? In the closet. I forgot it. And I'm the ass. Judith has my cufflinks. What? Yeah. Matt, you always mumble when you're embarrassed. Judith has your cow phone? I, I didn't forget anything. So we did everything we needed. We went right to the Roosevelt Hotel. I had this whole plan to starve myself two days before so I could fit my dress. How'd it go? OK, so yesterday, the first thing I had was an entire pizza from California Pizza Kitchen. Right. And then I was like, OK, I'm not, I'm not getting any more. And then I had five Ghirardelli chocolate squares with caramel inside and three quarters of a can of Pringles. What I admire is that you didn't have the whole can. Pringles, That's called you, progress. You've got to eat them all. Right. The 
Roosevelt is up there on the left-hand side, right in Hollywood. Well, Matt and I walked into this beautiful two-story suite. Oh my God, love this room. Oh, this is great. I feel like I should call my parents or somebody should come to this room for the day. Oh, yeah. I was thinking about it, seriously. Yeah, Matt, you know should I call your folks? I, I was like, I gotta call my parents. I'm a block from the Oscars and they can literally see the red carpet, free room service, get them on the horn. Hey, it's Matt and Kathy. Hello? Hi. Hey, Dad, will you put Mom on for a second? Uh, Mom, grab the phone. You put money or what? Hello? No, it's not money, Dad. So, hey, Mom, guess what? I have some really exciting news. What? Um, I have this amazing suite at the Roosevelt Hotel, and it, yeah. has, a, it has a view of the red carpet. Oh. So, do you and Dad want to come and hang out here? We don't have to dress up or anything. No. Oh, okay. It's real relaxing. You're just going to sit here and watch TV, so don't, it's not like a stressful thing. Uh, can I take a nap? Yeah, you can take a nap. Yeah, there's a room upstairs. All right, yeah. sounds great. All right, we'll see you. John, right, we'll see you. Okay, John. bye. Hey, guys. <laughs> Sin, I'm kind of wondering if we should have sprayed me before we even did hair. We're going to go do body paint. So what you need to do is gently put all the hair up, because she's going to need to spray me all the way to my neck. Okay, so I use body paint. Most of the actresses do. So I had to go on the roof because it's, you know, it's like hairspray. It's stinky. It's real, baby. Well, there is this privacy. Uh, it's totally here. private. Opposed to this entire office there. Let's just wait just in case. <laughs> All right, so there's a whole process. Cynthia puts makeup on and then she has the spray makeup, but it's all about the sexy spray. I'm self-conscious because my arms are really, really white and freckly. I like to make them darker and also it makes them a little better. I need that stuff before I go to the beach. Mm-hmm. I'm so sorry. I need Cynthia. You know people in there, right? I, I don't know. No. I can't tell if they're actually looking out the window at you. I don't care. What bill? I got a camera on me, for Christ's sake. What do I care about a few people? <laughs> you know, I've been humiliated worse than this. Thank you. Me too. I have hockey players. I think I can take this. That is so funny. I was just out there and I thought, nobody's gonna look. I'm only gonna be out here for like 15 minutes. Nobody's gonna look. And I look up and there's a chopper. <laughs> there you go. What? You're not making it out, you're here. Hi, boys. He's coming back and it's the only thing. Because he can't believe it. He's like, wait a minute. I, hold on. <laughs> there's something really weird going on. There was a helicopter circling above and I think the pilot was doing something inappropriate with his stick. You know what I'm getting at. I know. I didn't know I was on a landing strip. Mm-hmm. This joystick. Oh, yeah, the ignition. Uh-huh. Somebody's propeller was going round and round. Somebody wanted to come in for a landing. Mm-hmm. If you still had celebrities on censor, I'd finally have a shot at it. <laughs> but no. I thought that tan spray was so effective that I looked like an extra from Hotel Rwanda. That's how good it was. I don't want to. Can we start the run through? I'm gonna stand here and I'll hold the card here. Hey everybody, I'm Kathy Griffin. I'm here up on the tower and I am a nervous wreck. Like Paris Hilton, my sidekick was stolen at a nightclub last night. I'm always out clubbing. Your reasons for being on the bridge are not very good. Right. Kathy is great. I, I love working with Kathy and, and we've just been riffing the past couple days and now it's almost time. Bianca Cole. <laughs> right. Laura Linney, and we're in kind of a fight because she has such a potty mouth. All right, it's F word this and F word that. Since I'll be on the media bridge, I won't be talking to any celebrities, but it's still great exposure, so I have to nail these jokes. Julia, <laughs> yes, I know the kids are gifted. Bye-bye. <laughs> oh. So we feel good. I think we've got a lot. Just obviously in the back of the joke box, just put so too much stuff we'll never have time for. Okay. Right. Just because, you know, just so there isn't that Grammy moment of like, oh, we've run through everything. Okay. I mean, is it crazy to think of putting a piece like here no. and then brushing it back? Or I don't know if that's yeah, just I can the do style. It. Sure. I, can, I can just, I can, I can adjust it because I have two pieces right here. This one goes right here and this one goes right here. I had fake hair for the Oscars. I think I actually had Kirstie Alley's leftover pieces. That's pretty D-list. Oh, oh, I know. Oh, Kath, that, that's a knockout outfit. Thanks, Dad. My yeah. parents are always more than happy to give me a critique, although they're actually much nicer now. <laughs> you look very sweet. 
I look like I shared Jessica Parker's teenage daughter. Yes. Oh. Yeah. Right? There's so, a whole mini bar you guys can empty. Wouldn't be the first well, we time. We didn't come over here to drink. I come right over, away. I come over here to watch golf. Dad, you can't take a nap. <laughs> I didn't say I was. I may. I'm Mom said, well, no, because Eric and Dennis are going to be communicating via walkie-talkie. There's a bed in there that he can go in there anytime after you get ready. Well, what about what, watching me? Yeah, you're not on until 3 o'clock. Well, I guess right. you can get a nap in. Of work to put on. They were pushing in my rib cage really hard, and I was like inhaling, and I, I was like, break them, break them. I gotta get in the dress. Just break one. And I got in. Yeah, uh-huh. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah. I love it. Hey, what are you ready? Yeah. Okay. All right. I don't know. I hope Amanda has Kathy? Yes? How, how long do you think so? Oh. Stop, 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 stop. Yeah, yeah. Oh, the... Gorgeous. Okay, you ready? Yeah. Wow. yeah. So, yeah. You have my credentials, she's, right, Amanda? Gonna, or... You don't have my credentials? Okay. Yeah. So, yeah. We you need... have my credentials, she's, right, Amanda? Gonna... Or... You don't have my credentials? Okay. Yeah. I only have my yesterday's one. That's the one that's fine. I don't have my yesterday credential. No. Where did that end up? I don't know. It's probably at home. That was my credential for today? Everyone kept saying they were only good for yesterday. I had a Wrangler, and she gave me my rehearsal credential, and then I took it home, and I thought it was my rehearsal day credential. Because a lot of times it's a different one for show day, and it wasn't, and then it was show day, and I didn't have my credential. It was a shit storm. Coming up. Oh, God, Jews, am I getting armpit stains already? There's got to be a way. I cannot be the only person who He's going to call me back. Yeah. Right. Matt, where is that credential? I remember we, but where we put it in something. It doesn't matter. We can't get there and then come back. And I know. It, so. Oh God, Jews, am I getting armpit stains already? I'm nervous now. No, I don't. Oh, see God, anything. what do I do? Get her, Thanks, get her some yeah. powder puffs or something. Oh, headache. Oh. Was anything? it a purse we put it in? I See, I just had like all those passes. I mean, I, I knew, but I should have got it. But. To be truthful, I had the credential in my hand the day before. So when it comes to losing the, the credential, I probably had a lot to do with it. Well, let's walk down there because we're going to go anyway. So Amanda said she did not have my credential. She thought I had it. So she started calling her boss in a panic. And I was like, let's just go. Let's get in the elevator. Let's get down there. We're going to figure it out. Because there's no way that I'm the only person on air who forgot their credential. They must have some way of handling it. They what saying, is there any way we can send somebody to the house? Right now. What? Without a credential. There's gotta be a way. I cannot be the only person who He's forgot. gonna call me back. I mean, I'm not signing in like an attendee. So I don't think anyone's gonna check my name. When we were at the Grammys, nobody checked. Yeah, I'm in there. We were all right. We're going to the lobby? Yes. Oh my God. Okay. Um, I don't think that's okay. Okay. Cynthia. Cynthia's got to be with her. Well, Cynthia has to be with Somebody me. Somebody has to get off in the crew or something. I'll get off. Okay. No, 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 honey. You were fine. Yeah. Yeah. Let's go down. That's good. Okay. You guys need to be with me. Amanda, they're not going to go anywhere without a credential, you know? Well, what am I going to do? We know we're just trying to get downstairs so we can figure it out from there instead of the room. So what are they saying? I'm going to go home? He's he's talking to Josh. I don't even know where it is at home. I know, the only person who can find it is me. But... I was actually thinking, am I just not going to go on the air at all? What are they going to do, put a blow-up doll? Hey, you should walk the red carpet. I was going crazy. I couldn't even believe this was happening. First, I was late to the Grammys. Then, I lose my Oscar credential. I mean, this could really screw me. He might never hire me again. So okay, I think so you should go without way. me, and I think I should go home and try something, oh, unless you can over. get it resolved. Okay. I agree. I just need to hire you to get there and back. I do. That's the okay. easiest thing. It's totally easy. Okay. We just have to stay put right here. Well, call Mikkel, uh, what's her name? Jane Mikkel? Yeah. I don't call I have his number. Okay, call. 
Matt came up with the idea to call our friend Mikkel. She's a member of the Academy. He wanted to see if she could maybe pull any strings. We were stopping at nothing. Let's, Kathy, let's just attempt it. Yeah. Okay. I mean, like, what's the worst thing? Why not, right? Right. Hey, Mikkel, it's Matt Moline. How are you doing? Good. I'm with Kathy, and we're... Um, in crisis? We're actually walking down an alleyway right now, but <laughs> there's a little emergency, which is Kathy forgot her credentials. Yeah. We're going to make it through. Stay in the alley. Let's let's keep trying to get through anyway. Yeah, just keep going. Okay, right. Go. Yeah, this is my cell. Kathy, he wants you, please, to stop. Okay, cool. If, uh, Leslie Unger, she's with the Academy. If she sees us trying to All get right, through, then he's going to get in trouble and really penalized. So then we get to this alley area where the e-channel people say you can't go any further, even if you can BS your way through, because then we'll get in trouble. It'll reflect poorly on us. It's just so I have weird no idea where it is. What? The badge. Yeah. I, I remember you putting it in something. What badge did I have with me? You had it yesterday. Remember, because I was like, purse. oh, I don't need to wear it anymore. What purse did I have? That's why your purse. That you didn't bring that, did you? Or did is you? Is your black purse upstairs? Isn't that what you had yesterday? Kathy, call the hotel. I'll okay. run back. Should so I leave my phone here in case Mikkel walkie. calls? Can you walk you, Dennis? Oh, yeah, there you go. I ask him. So You're look asking in her to black, purse. black purse. Where is it? Upstairs? I don't even know it where it is. is. It's downstairs, I believe. Can you find Kathy's black pocketbook? Purse. purse. Big purse. Big purse. Oh, okay. Uh, I'm going to go on you. I, I think it's downstairs. I think I brought yeah, it down. Okay. Behind I upstairs. don't remember. There was this tense moment where Eric couldn't hear Dennis. You have to go to the truck front. Okay. Right through here. Oh, hold on. Let's just wait to see if Dennis can find it in the first. Got it. It's in here. Oh my God. I was so relieved. I was about 30 seconds away from just sitting in a pool on my own urine and crying. I feel like I just want some kind of challenge or game show or something crazy like that, like I've just saved the day. I gotta say, I don't know why they left me in charge of the most important thing. Did you come for that? Yes. Thank okay. you. Okay, okay. I'm too famous to be in charge of such things. I blame Jessica. I really do. So I finally get my Oscar credential, and now I can go to the red carpet. Oh, wait. I mean, the media bridge. A place where I can do no harm. Oh my god, here we go! <laughs> my dress is Mon Atelier Woo! by Ali Rahimi. And the jewels are the wonderful Erica Courtney. Okay. I think they turned it out. I think tonight is the night that I'm off the worst dress list. Wish me luck. Oh, Kathy the was the, the most beautiful I've ever seen her, with the exception of our wedding date. <laughs> Look, we've all seen how the beautiful actresses stand there and pose. There's the Anna Nicole. <laughs> yeah. yeah. The Mandy Moore. <laughs> and my favorite, the Courtney Love. <laughs> Back to you, sir. Oh, <laughs> she never knows if I'm a bear and so I feel love. She would kill her. Oh, my God. It was a great feeling watching Kathy at the Oscars. It was cool to be around somebody who's so good at something, and I was really proud to just to be with her that day. Well, that's it for me. I'm Kathy Griffin. Enjoy the Oscars, everyone. That's it. Wow. Well, it was good. It was good. It was very I'm proud. good. I'm proud. I'm proud. You were on a lot of You're right. But I wasn't was offensive great. enough. I wanted to be edgier. No. I thought my stuff went pretty well. It was uh, great, Kathy. Yeah. You look beautiful. Yeah. Great job. Yeah. 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 But... I did stick to all the restrictions that he put on me, and I don't think I did as well as if I could say things a little bit more shocking, because I really want to be that water cooler talk. Well, Renee Zellweger, I learned this pose from her. One here, arm is bad, the other one this. Really? I don't know yeah, why I'm practicing my pose, because yeah, nobody wanted to take my picture. So I'm leaving, and I go by the paparazzi, and not all the photographers <laughs> wanted to take my picture. It was so embarrassing, I was like this. Yeah. And no one's taking my picture. I'm standing there and standing. Oh, Finally, oh, one oh. woman goes, I'll do it. Oh, my God. <laughs> Photographers there. Oh, but I don't care. I thought that dress was beautiful and I felt like queen for a day. Uh, 
Uh, do you need help out of the dress before I leave you? Like, well, maybe. Okay, Cinderella on, is. It's closed for business. I spent the evening watching the Oscars on TV in the hotel room with Matt, my mom and dad. I wouldn't change a thing. It was so much fun. I wouldn't want to be anywhere else. Cheeseburger medium for my dad. Okay. Fries, and they better be hot or they're going back. And also, I wasn't invited to any parties. Okay, fine. <laughs> because my stand-up might not be popular with certain A-listers. I'm gonna be so politically incorrect, you might get sued just for being in the audience. <laughs> Celebrities are ridiculous, and I got the balls to call them out on it. Okay, fine. I'm on the D-list. And you know what? All I care about is making the audience laugh. So as long as the audience is laughing, everybody else can suck it. Ladies and gentlemen, here's Kathy Put away your bike, get in, extinguish your joints, you're on television. You're all part of season two. I'm Kathy Griffin, outrageous, foul mouth comedian. I'm kind of a whistleblower for Hollywood. We all thought Tom Cruise is just this great guy, great. He's a fucking nut job. Who thinks he's from Mars? You'll never hear a straight guy say, I want to fuck Celine Dion. We all know that Hollywood is list obsessed. And sure, I would love to be on the A list, but I'm not that nuts. <laughs> I live on the D-list, which has its own set of humiliations. Oh, D, D. Woo! Bad girl! Bad girl, Bob Bob! Since last season, my life's been in the crapper. I filed for divorce. Would you like to hit me? Because you're talking to me like you'd like to hit me. But Matt and I have reconciled. In fact, he loves me so much, he's doing my hair. You know, every time he does this, I have to blow him. Every time. And while Matt's in my life, nothing is ever really certain. So we're taking it day by day. And if the breakup wasn't hard enough, our dog Captain got killed. She was hit by a car. And Matt and I loved her like she was our baby. Eventually, we adopted a new dog, Pom Pom, who promptly rewarded us by chewing our sofa. It's a $20,000 sofa. The final blow came when I got fired from the E Channel. They said that the red carpet is a puzzle and that I don't fit into that puzzle. F that puzzle. Thankfully, my parents are very supportive. Go, girl. No. Go, girl, go! Even when they're hammered, which is most of the time. I'll defend you with my fist. And of course, there's still my trusty assistant, Jessica, who I get to order around. Jessica? Jessica! I'm coming! Even though I have to pay her. But no matter what's happening in my personal life, I'm just a working stiff. I'll do anything for a laugh. Come on, star's not normal, finally. I even go do stand-up in Iraq. Oh, shit, I'm coming! My vagina. <laughs> At least the soldiers are a captive audience. Now, can't we have a war in like St. Lucia or someplace nice next time? What the? F <laughs> I think I found my new demographic. Guys in a war zone. If one more guy calls me ma'am, I'm gonna shoot him with his own gun. So life on the D list might be looking up after all. I'm keeping my fingers crossed. Okay, here's the thing. Get out of my way, you A list boys. Ladies and gentlemen, she has been on countless talk shows, and she's the only guest on The Howard Stern Show to have real breasts. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the hilarious Kathy Griffin. Hello. Hello. The vice president shot someone last weekend. I mean, what is going on? You know, maybe you didn't like Al Gore's beard, but he never shot anyone. Okay, oh, by the way, yeah, Matt and I have reconciled. Okay, say anybody cares. He's here tonight. We're still gonna get divorced because we think that like the divorce brought us closer. So now we kind of think we're like Pammy and Tommy Lee. Like, we're like, wild Hollywood couple. Who wants to swing? We'll swing. I want to see if there's any, like, Kathy Griffin autographed picture, what that goes for. All right, well, okay, I'll put in Kathy Griffin. You know, there's nothing I like more than raising money for charity. It's the right thing to do. And also gets me in the press. A-listers like Julia Roberts can raise a ton of money for charity, auctioning off their memorabilia. So I decided to go online and see how much money my stuff raised. 
Hold on. Suddenly Susan Cast signed Brooke Shields' Kathy Griffin photo. $34.99. Six bucks shipping and handling. Well, wait, has anyone bid on it? Nope. Nobody wants a signed picture of the Suddenly Susan cast? There's no bidding worth? Nope. Let's face it, when you're on the D list, nobody wants your stuff. If you want to raise money for charity, you got to do something outlandish. So I came up with the idea of auctioning off a weekend here at the house with me. That's got to go for a good buck, right? So I decided to give the proceeds to a charity called V Day, which prevents violence against women and girls. V-Day was created as an outgrowth of Eve Ensler's award-winning play, The Vagina Monologues, working globally to stop violence against women and girls. All I know is it's about vaginas, and it helps vaginas. So what am I going to write to get the people to go, to get excited? I think you're, all you're going to need to do is describe the weekend. Who has ever given their fans a chance to stay at their house for the weekend? Nobody. So I'm going to call it a slumber party, because they will be staying overnight. Now, is there any chance that they're going to help out around the house? Yeah, can I make them work? You're going to be on security. Oh, okay. So what we came up with was the Kathy Griffin charity auction for V-Day slumber party. And people have 10 days to go on and bid on it. Like, can you even imagine Julia Roberts auctioning off a weekend at her house with her? Never! Never, never. Of course I'm afraid that I'll put this auction up on eBay and it'll go for like $12. Or the worst is nobody will hear about it. So that's why it was really important to me to do talk shows, do radio shows, whatever. The first step on my eBay tour is the Jimmy Kimmel Show, and hopefully I can talk about it long enough to get people interested. Hey, Ken. Hey. Uh, I, uh, I have a, a rough outline for tonight's oh, right. uh, segment. Okay. What's the plan? Why didn't I see you on the red carpet last night? Uh, at I got the, canned. Uh, got canned. Um, why were you fired from me? And then you can take that ball and run with it anyway. Here's the thing. I'm terrified we're not going to have time for the charity, and that's like the only reason I'm here. So um, is there any reason I, I, we can't I mean, lead off with the charity? Because they can't be like a, a tail line at the end. Like no, it's, well, We have to really um, talk about it. it. It's an eight-and-a-half-minute segment. If you start to get uh, uptight, you know, Jimmy, you can immediately, okay. you can... Oh, Jimmy, I gotta tell you about this. Yeah. And introduce it. And that's the show. And, and I'll be on the other side of this door if you need anything. Okay. I have to say it. I mean, I have to, and I have to describe it in detail. I can't just say, like, yeah, go on eBay. Good night, everybody. All right. Okay. Light, light, light. Oh. oh yes. Yeah. That's the look I want. Two <laughs> minutes. Okay. Please welcome Kathy Griffin. Hello, Kathy. Hi, Jimmy. How are you? Just great, thanks. Tell me about this auction that you are, uh, <laughs> this is a charity auction. Okay, I want some props, and here's the thing. When you're on the D-list, you gotta work a little harder, uh -huh. okay? and. I decided to auction off for a charity, and the charity is called V-Day, and they are an organization that works to present violence against women and girls. To I present know you. it or prevent, prevent it? it? Did oh. I say present? Yeah, yeah, because... It's <laughs> terrible. Know, they're doing a variety no, show prevent. about that? Oh, to prevent it, okay. That's better. No, it's to prevent violence. It's called V-Day. Oh, uh -huh. crap. It's for vaginas. <laughs> you get the picture. I do, Okay, yeah. so I am auctioning off a weekend at my house. Come on, you can live with yeah. me for the weekend. With, now, you will be in the house. I, yeah. You will be in the house. I'm going to be there, Matt's going to be there. And, um, and you come and you spend the weekend at my house. Any stranger who any gives stranger. the money can come stay right. in your home with yeah. you. And what kind of people do you think you're going to attract for this? Gay hustlers. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if somebody were to get it, could they give it to someone else? Is it transferable? Like, if I were to put up, let's say I Wait gather together $20,000, and I okay. get, like, two of the most insane homeless people I can find <laughs> to come live in your house. Would that, is that against the rules or no? Anything for my vagina organization. Anything for your... <laughs> if it helps one vagina, it is worth it. You're pro-vagina. Because mine is exhausted. So if you can just help <laughs> a different vagina. Well, I hope you get a lot of money. The day after Kimmel, I checked the eBay auction and it was at like $7,000. Right away, less than 24 hours. So I'm off to Charlottesville, Virginia on my mini tour of the red states and I'm looking for my red state Republican. By that I mean gay guy. He's gonna bid on my blue state vagina charity. All right, crazier things have happened. 
It feels great to be in Jefferson County. I will be cussing a lot this evening and spreading a lot of negativity and fun. So don't bring the kids. Am I under arrest? Man, <laughs> I just like, wow! <laughs> Matt, you are a guy, buddy. That's all I got to say. No one ever says that. You're the first person to ever say to that. Thank you so much. I'm Kathy. So nice to I'm meet Tim you. I'm Kathy. I'm the chief Tim. of police. On behalf of the citizens of Charlottesville and my department. What? You know what? To make sure that you get to the Paramount safe and sound tonight, yeah. we'd like to come back and give you an escort. And I would like to do it. What? Let's do that. My lovely bride and I are going to be at the show tonight, so. Fantastic. I'll bring my Lamarck police car and bring we'll, an uh, open mind as well. I will. I, I you come know my show's not it's not for I, children. I know that, and okay. I'm your biggest fan. Oh, believe me, fantastic. I know. Fantastic. You're not afraid of a little swearing. Is what you're trying to absolutely tell me. not. I was excited to get a police escort, but I was also giddy that someone has a crush on me and is really obsessively in love with me. <laughs> is how I see it. Thank you very much. I get many emails, uh, lovely emails, saying, oh, I wasn't feeling well, and then I watched one of your specials, and it's the first time I laughed. And so I got one from a woman who said, my friend has very bad degenerative rheumatoid arthritis, and she loves you, and if Kathy could ever visit her, or if we could even say hello at the show, that would be wonderful. She doesn't walk well, always makes herself available to anyone having problems and needing a kind ear. And I know it would mean the world to her if she was able to meet you for even a second. I'm doing it because it's because I'm a giver and also to get some free press. Because I like to help people and be on television. I'm a helping television whore. All right. Let's go meet us a fan. And also get a little local news coverage while we're at it. Tell me, you guys are going to surprise someone locally, if I have the correct, right? I'm going to surprise someone who wrote me an email and said that she had a friend who was a fan of mine and now has very bad degenerative rheumatoid arthritis. Oh, what are you feeling on doing? Well, I'm just going to say hello and I'm going to hug her. And then I'm going to knock her to the ground, see how bad that arthritis really is. <laughs> Oh, Thank you thanks. so much. Can I have a picture with you because I of actually course. am a huge fan of your show oh, and I thanks. tried to like remain as professional as possible <laughs> as I did that. I was like, right. okay, thanks. If there was no press, I wouldn't visit her. Who was shitting? I mean, you know, I might sign something. She gotta be pretty sick to get Griffin. Excuse me. Are you Prakash? Praise? <laughs> Hello, I'm Kathy Griffin. I know. Hi, Kathy Griffin. Oh my goodness. It's so nice to meet you. I got your email. I love you. Well, thank you. <laughs> oh, goodness. We even brought the news. Philip, oh, come here. Wait, so, so, this is you, you, how are you? I'm just, how are you doing? Hi, how are you? Good, good. You, you're very calm. Well, I, is this a little shocking? I'm very excited. I just, I just adore her. She's such a doll. So what, why is she so funny? Don't let me stop you. Mm -hmm. Just yeah, pretend, you're, pretend okay. she's not even there. Yes, tell me wonderful things tell about me. myself. It's, it's not just that she's funny. She's got such a fantastic spirit. I really mean it. I thought you were going to say wreck. No. I thought you were going to say, it's just that her butt is so tight and her rack, well, but whatever, course. with your spirit. Of course. Get a load yes. of this one. <laughs> now, should we do pictures, too? Oh, yeah. So, now, will you take them? Yeah. Frame, you get in here. Thank you. All right. You get in the middle. Well, you want to do both? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's do Come on. Yeah. Why not? You can always cut her out of it later. <laughs> I've done that with Brooke Shields many times. Go ahead. I'm still a little stunned, so I'm in the direction. One, two, three. Bye. I think she was faking it just to meet you. You think they're going like this? Well, it wasn't exactly Chris Rock, but pulled <laughs> off another one. I'm going to do the same thing with my mom and see if I can get Debbie Reynolds to come to the house. <gasps> Jesus Christ, it's Debbie Reynolds. Holy <laughs> shit. Johnny, get the goddamn walker and get in here. Oh, Debbie, I just adore you. All right, man. How would you like it? Curly. <laughs> Matt has been doing my hair now um, on the road for a few months. <laughs> Never uh, questioned your manhood. This is really easy, <laughs> and everybody who 
makes you have a big a gift, deal. Matt. No, it's easy. No, you have a gift that you're denying. I think I think I'm pretty certain that I'm straight. One of my clients owns a salon and he's a straight guy. So I know that there are one or two other straight guys out there in the world who do uh, hair. This is as straight as it can get. You know, every time he does this, I have to blow him. Every time. Every time. My secret to doing a great head of hair is that I really don't care. Oh, Jesus. Oh, yeah, it's scary. <laughs> I can tally up that afternoon's fantasy football scores in my head while I'm curling her hair and watching TV and still do it really well. Matt just burns it. <laughs> he just burns it till it's done. You yeah, had no idea it was this exciting. Let go. Coming up, I'm red hot in the red states. I want to speak to my attorney. They're my favorite. <laughs> So it's my first stand-up gig in my mini tour of the Red States, and I insisted on a police escort to protect me and my blue state ass. You weren't kidding. Yeah, ma'am, not at all. Did yeah. I tell you or what? You're sure I'm not getting arrested? <laughs> Look, I paid 40 bucks for these seats. You, you gotta go on first, then we'll talk about that uh, part. Yeah, I might get arrested first. We can think of something during the show. You got a motorcycle up there for you, you can just climb aboard, there's a helmet <laughs> right on the horse. I am not ruining my hair. <laughs> I don't care about the law. All right, we'll see you there. Okay. Okay, see thanks, see Tim. You. Here's the deal. He's in love with me. I know. I'm He's in love with me, and tonight we swing. Key party. I'm going to get a glass bowl. All right. Well, who do I get? The wife, I guess. The bride? All right, let's see what we got. Thank you. I want to speak to my attorney. <laughs> I want to apologize right now to the Republicans, the conservatives that are here, because I'm, I know I'm always on their shit list. My mom and I always get into arguments because my mom is very conservative and she lo she actually doesn't like W. Yeah, yeah, whatever. <laughs> get a load of these two. You better not be gay. You better not be gay because I'm not having that shit from the gays. I don't get the log cabin gays for one second. I don't get it. Makes no sense. Sorry, I know I'm upsetting you guys, but live for Christ. I know you won. You already won, goddammit. You got the White House, the House, the Senate, the Supreme Court. Let me bitch for five minutes. I'm one person. Um, oh, you know who my mom loves? My mom calls Bill O'Reilly her boyfriend. I know, I know. Oh, Kathleen, you're so hard on my Bill. Why don't you go easy on my boyfriend? Thank you, you guys have been an awesome audience. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Good night, thank you. Can you go down, down and then I'm gonna grab some people. Awesome, thank you. Oh my God, incredible. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Oh, you're my favorite. <laughs> You know what's I got great? another one too, so I can be able yeah. to. Yeah. I have a group of about 20 gay guys that have stayed to see you. Sounds good. Kathy? Yes? Darling! Are you getting Dr. May? Yay! Look at the props, look at the props. Come on, come on. I saw it. you, I saw you on your first season, and I went online immediately. Oh, thank and then, God, somebody did. Please! Of say, course! Please say, I'll give your pap smear and a mammogram and a brain MRI in just five minutes or flat. So. Oh my God! Dr. Hong, pap me! Right, you got it. All right. Dr. Woo! Oh, Dr. I need a Sharpie. A Sharpie. I don't have one. Man. I don't have oh, one. A Sharpie. I don't have one. What the hell is a Sharpie? Sharpie? God damn it. Oh, you're mad! Sharpie. There he is. Oh, I'm so proud of you for losing weight all by a diet and exercise. Stat. I'm so impressed Stat. by that. We got it set. Oh, good, good, good. Okay. I don't know what happened back there, but something <laughs> flew. <laughs> Kathy Dr. Griffin, you're my favorite comedian of all time. You know that, but everyone loves you. Pat me, yes! Oh, jeez, jeez. Oh. If only someone had a camera. You're so nice to do this. It's my pleasure. And baby, your new hair is hot. You like it? It's so hot. I like the soft curls. It's my new look. So. You look great. <laughs> you are so sexy, baby. Oh, please. And look at your shoes. You don't wear those shoes on stage, do you? Oh, honey, they're killing me. I didn't even notice. It's all about the height. What size are you? What? Like seven. Oh, I can't wear them. Oh, well. Rock <laughs> trout. Thank you. Oh, you look hot, baby. Thank, Thank you, you so much. The doctor is in. 
If you ever need a pap, come over here to Sherlyn's house. Dr. Holmes. All right. Hi, you guys. Hi, guys. Hi. Thanks for coming, you guys. Thank you so much. Thank you. I love it. It's nice. Oh, thank you so much. Bye, guys. Thanks. Bye. Bye. Oh, this drive is going to take forever without the police escort. <laughs> this is ridiculous. So tonight I'm having some friends over to hang out. Everybody wants to hear about the eBay weekend. So you know that I have auctioned off a weekend um, with myself. So. Why in your house? <laughs> I know. Okay, well, I um, decided that if I was going to do like a celebrity auction item, <laughs> so usually it goes for about a buck fifty-two. <laughs> so I thought I had to ratchet it up, and so I'm auctioning off an entire weekend here at the house with me. Because <laughs> you love having strangers in your house. Yes, strangers. <laughs> oh, and I'm making my parents um, sleep in the guest room, <laughs> so they'll be the first to go. If there's like a midnight stab. I know, but are you going to have like a security? No one's going to be better security than my parents. <laughs> First of all, my dad's gonna be walking around like with his balls hanging out of his boxers <laughs> without his hearing aid. <laughs> what was your name? Clyde? Francine? Oh Christ, I gotta pee. So that is the best security ever. You and I will just be in our bed with guns like this, sleeping like this. <laughs> what happened? What happened? Uh, anyway, here are my two responses where they can write into eBay and like ha ask a question because it's so expensive. Um, okay, only people who are wanting to punish themselves consider bidding on this. I would rather spend the weekend at the dentist getting root canals and fillings. Is this some kind of sick joke? I would bid high to see Kathy's mouth tape shut for a weekend. Good luck. <laughs> well, that's one man's opinion. I don't care how much bitchy hate mail I get, long as I get to raise the money for vaginas. The money that the vaginas so sorely need. No pun intended. And you know what? The bidding is already over 10K, so everybody can suck it. Bye. 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 Next stop on my vagina tour is a visit to the Tyra Banks show. Only I'm nervous because Tyra's pissed about something I said about her in my act. All right, now, now let me be honest with you because originally I heard that Tyra wants to confront me about things I've said in my act. That cannot be true. I used to do this thing in my act where I did an impression of Tyra during the elimination ceremony of, yes, and it would, I think I said something like she turned from white lady Tyra to ghetto Tyra in one sentence. And I sort of did an impression of her, but, but that's it. I really am nervous. I don't want to go on the show and have Tyra like confront me and then the audience applauds at everything she says and they boo me. Like, I, you know, I don't need to be doing that. All right. Yeah. Bye. That was a really long pre interview for a very short interview. I know. Why is he so paranoid? He kept telling me I was paranoid. Oh. He was like, why are you so paranoid? Do you always get this paranoid? Oh. And I'm like, you're making me paranoid. <laughs> so the more the Tyra producer told me I was being paranoid, the more I realized I should be. Tyra's not taking me down without a fight. I'm going to rally the troops. And by the troops, I mean my senile parents. Do you have any, like, um, square to seven up or anything like that? Oh, this is rich. I'll have water. We don't have wine uh, no. before a certain we time. We didn't come over here to just drink uh, <laughs> just for your mother? Yeah. All right. I know. Mom's never seen that. Yeah. It's, it's not a Chardonnay water. So we're going to Tyra. Right. And I just want to make sure that she doesn't want to, like, confront me on, like, why are you so mean and say bad things about celebrities in your act? Mm -hmm. And they're going to show a clip of me talking about her in my act. Oh, yeah, I know. You do that thing where she gets down. She's very uh, ladylike, and then yeah. she gets real down and... <laughs> real down and dirty. Well, that's cute. No. She, but that's the way she is. So she that's shouldn't right. be offended by that. Mm. All right, so here's the plan. It's her persona. If it gets ugly or, like, sh if she does anything like, you know, well, how can you say bad things about these poor celebrities just trying to make a living, and the audience is like, yeah, boo. <laughs> then number one, you have to contradict that. So then when I say something... Where, about, where are we going to be? You're in the audience. In the audience. Well, we can't yell from the audience. Yes, you can. Oh, my God. <clears throat> I wasn't planning on that. Well? Oh. Oh. No, I don't want one on right oh. now. Uh, oh, jeez, God. No, it doesn't you can't have a fight or anything. Well, I don't. I, I don't, don't she, fight in public. <laughs> I only fight well, at, at our age, who the hell are we gonna lick? You're not gonna provoke her. I don't, I don't know. know. My mom always wants to turn on me. Okay, always. So the whole conversation was just me saying, "No, mom, whose side are you on if anything gets ugly?" And she goes, "Tyra's." Oh Christ! I mean yours. 
I mean, I just constantly have to remind her that she's my mother. And then dad just can't hear anything because of his hearing aids. Huh? What? And then there's like a sandwich falling out of his mouth. You know the drill. That's all, right. all you have to do. You just have to be pitiful. Oh. Old. Oh, well, that's easy. Yeah. Vulnerable. Yeah. for us. Yeah. And dad, like dad, what if, she, what if dad grabs the left arm? Who's left arm? Like dad goes into coronary rest, right? Oh, jeez. Well, no, it's not, not going to happen. Oh. At least not. I hope not. That poor woman, her I, father is having a heart attack right in front of her. Coming up, I have my showdown with Tyra. Well, I found out so. that you were talking about me in one of your acts. She was talking about me, y'all. So today I'm off to the Tyra show. Now I'm very nervous, but my parents have their minds on other things. Well, the champagne? Yeah. Do you want me to crack it, it up? It out. Oh, I look at it, yeah, but what kind is it? J. Roger. Oh, very nice. You know you get to keep yeah. it. You do? Yeah. Oh, fabulous. Hey, a few glasses of that. Oh yeah. boy, I'll defend you with my fists even if anybody says Bare anything. knuckle fighting? There's a big fight then. Now you know that when I come out on the catwalk, I want mom to yell, you you go girl. You Let's go practice. Girl. You go girl. Let's practice. Ladies and gentlemen, Kathy Griffin. Go girl. Yeah. Go girl, go. Is it all right to say it twice? Just, yeah, whatever you want. Go, go, girl. Oh, hello. D-Day for V-Day. It's all about raising money for vaginas. Tyra can ambush me all she wants. I don't care. Long as going on this show pushes a bidding over 15000 I want to bring out the self-proclaimed queen of the D-List, Kathy Griffin. Jingle, jiggle, jiggle. I like to pop it. Now, <laughs> you have a trick for saving on hair and makeup costs. So, you know, like when you're in the D-list, it's not like my makeup people travel with me or any of that crap, yeah. you know? And so if I have a gig the next day, I might have my makeup professionally done and then sleep in it. But wait, wait, wait. I take, first I take the neck down shower, so I'm not dirty. I do this too. What? Yes! I've taken so much heat for this. Oh my God, no. Kathy, I did it. I did a three-dayer. This yeah. is how you shower. Let's do the shower. Okay. You, right, you do it like this. And let's but, show them how we sleep. Oh, you sleep like this. <laughs> <laughs> and then the alarm goes off and you go like this. <laughs> right? But you know what the really trick is? To put the powder on before you go to bed. Powder it again, like set it. Note to self. <laughs> <laughs> and then you're, you're like auctioning like yourself off on eBay? Yes. I'm auctioning, come live with me for a weekend. So you're gonna, it, what if it's so, somebody crazy? What if they're like, are you gonna like do a crazy, background check on them or crazier something? Crazier than my parents. I mean, come on, <laughs> who are here by the way? Where are my mom and dad? Oh, mom and daddy. There they are. Well, I found out that you were talking about me in one of your acts. What? Me, what? You were talking about me. Ha, me? Ever yes, make a joke were. about a celebrity? She was talking about me, y'all. Do we have a clip? Of course we have a clip. Roll it. Don't you love when Oprah goes from normal Oprah to ghetto Oprah in one second? <laughs> right? Although, you know who is the queen of that? Is Tyra Banks from America's Next Top Model. Oh, yeah. Tyra is like this. Robin, you have excellent bone structure. But girl, you got to use the gadon gadon. <laughs> About. Come on, Tyra. I have no idea what Kathy's talking about. <laughs> I have no idea. But we gotta take a break, and when we do, we're gonna come back and we're gonna be talking about a lot of stuff, okay, girl? Hey, Pa. Hi, Dolly. Hey, Pa. What'd you think? I thought it was great. Yeah, yeah. I, they did. Oh, it went great. Yeah, I, yeah. She played And on. she was great. Yeah, she was wonderful. Yeah. She was darling. Yeah. <laughs> yes, you really brought the gold. Good shoes. Good shoes, though. What? Yeah. She, that could not have been better. Like, she what if I become you, a friend of the show? You. Tyra Banks and Kathy Griffin are a classic comedy couple. 
Okay, we're gonna do buddy cop films. Um, we're gonna do a lesbo porn, right? Green, grainy, like the Paris Hilton tape. Uh, we're gonna go on the road and do our vaudeville act and write a book. I've invited designer Mike to come over today because I have a bomb to drop. <sighs> this is an emotional time for me and I'm gonna try not to burst into tears. First of all, hold me. I don't know if I can get through this without you, Mike. In fact, I know I can't. So good, I'm not gonna tell you anything. Just walk around the room. Just... Okay. Will you move the vases? <laughs> oh. Yeah, it's bad. Wow. I know. It's, um, remember that was custom leather. I know! <laughs> it's a $20,000 sofa. 25. Chance. And it wasn't him. It wasn't Matt. <laughs> Mike had the sofa custom made for this room and the new puppy Pom Pom ate it. She's hiding, I swear she knows we're talking about her. She knows. Oh, she's right out there. Pom Pom! Is she chewing the railing? Probably. Oh, she ran. <laughs> she actually went around the corner. Sit. Good girl. Why are you giving her treat? I'm training her. Stay. Good girl. What does that have to do with her eating the I'm sofa? I'm training, te teaching her discipline, and then when she learns discipline, she'll decide on her own not to chew. Pom pom. We gave you chew toys, and it was not the sofa. He's petting her while he chastises her. Oh, I wasn't supposed to. <laughs> oh, bye, pom pom. Maybe we. <laughs> Whatever's good for you. She's like, oh, I'd love a lounge chair to she chew. She can smell your anger. I'm, I'm, I can smell my anger. <laughs> Jessica, I can't believe I have to put these Diet Cokes in the fridge by myself. I have... You know what hurts my arm? I think I threw my shoulder Ow! <laughs> I hurt my butt bouncing it against the door. I've never worked for another celebrity, so I don't know if I have it really good or really bad, but I've been told by other people that I have it really, really great. Jessica? Yeah. She loves to scream my name across the house just for no good reason. Just be like, Jessica! Jessica! I'm coming! It's always a dire emergency for her. Like, she needs a glass of water. Okay, so what's going on? I got an email from Mike Nielsen. It felt weird when, when the whole divorce thing was happening, and it, I was like one of the last ones to know. They did such a good job at keeping me not involved into it, but then, you know, I found out, and I was shocked. And the next day, it was in the papers. The hard times that she's had with Captain dying and the divorce with Matt and reconciling and back and forth, back and forth. You know, I've tried to be a good friend and be there for her and, and vice versa. She's, she's a good pal. It's been a rough year for Matt and me. Our dog Captain was hit by a car and today we're gonna spread the ashes in her favorite dog park. Pop -pop. Pop -pop. But I think it's actually brought us closer. I want to say that we are gathered here today to remember our beloved first dog, Captain, who died tragically in a car accident, who was hit by a car, and that I loved her very much. I just want to say that I kept all my promises to Captain. I promised that I would be real nice to her and that I would love her, and I did. Pour some out now, or? Yeah. It's gonna be a disaster. I know. Just go for it. If it gets on me, I don't care. All right. Bye, Captain. We love you. Oh. <laughs> Sorry, Pom Pom. <laughs> we love you, Captain. You're a good girl. I'm honored by Louisville, and the city goes wild. Uh, we want to proclaim today mm -hmm. Kathy Griffin Day. So the Tyra show went great. But the question is, did my appearance spark a bidding war for the charity online? I want to look at the, the eBay thing, but I'm scared to look. Oh my god! It's a 20,000. Did you know this? Mm -hmm. I just looked downstairs. $20,000, is this real though? It's shocking to me that, that somebody would um, offer that much. And it's, of course, fun and flattering and all that stuff. But I, uh, I'm gonna check it obsessively. The next stop on my Red State mini tour is Louisville, Kentucky. 
All right, maybe those people there love W a little more than I do, but damn it, some of them must love me. Because today they're giving me the key to the city. Okay, let's unpack. <laughs> did you already unpack? Yeah. You did? Oh no, I wish I could have helped. What would you do? What would be the first thing you would be doing? I would criticize the way you were unpacking. Well, that doesn't and sound like And I would very say, that's not how you hang that shirt. Oh, it would be so much fun. I'm straight. <laughs> it hasn't changed one bit. It oh, it would be so much fun. It hasn't changed one bit. It, why would you, if you wanted this, for real, why would you yeah. bid now? All you're going to do is drive up the price. So you want to wait until the last second. This is going to jump like crazy. All right. On the last day. Okay, now should I dress nice for the key to the city? Yeah. I'm getting the key to the city of Louisville. And I don't know what I'm going to open with it, but it's going to be a big gay door. And all the gay is going to get in or get out. It's, I'm opening the closet and everyone's coming out of it. It's gonna be real embarrassing. Nobody's gonna be there, and I'm just gonna be standing around. Well, will you take my favorite? And I pretend like you're a fan. I don't have a camera. We'll just go like this. <laughs> Miss Griffin. <laughs> With my hands. <laughs> Miss, yes. <laughs> I'm gonna make some proclamations. I'm gonna let the prisoners free, and I'm gonna pardon someone on death row. City ceremony, and I don't feel appropriate even using the word ceremony. I'm gonna say debacle. Um, you know, there weren't even 10 people. I was joking that there were gonna be tens of people. I wish. There were a handful of people. Nine people who worked at City Hall and one gay guy. I'm, I'm, I'm not a city official, but I'm a huge fan. I, I love you. You showed up? And I'm a gay man, and I just yes. I love you. Oh, thank God, you made it. <laughs> yes. Thank God. I'm the one. Oh, thank Here God. I am. <laughs> Let's watch Project Runway together later. Oh, Ten o'clock. Right, what do I do? What happens? Deputy Mayor Rick John Stone. How do I get through the crowd? Please, people. <laughs> I'm just one person. Please, no autographs or photos. I want to have a private life. Hi, Deputy Mayor. How are you doing? Kathy, nice to meet you. Rick Johnson, you, Deputy Mayor. Do you feel city. the excitement? Uh, yeah, I yeah. actually do. Where's the real mayor? I mean, no insult, but he couldn't make it? Well, it, it was this or had to go to the dentist, so he's gone. <laughs> Good. This would never happen to Nicole Kidman. <laughs> now, what are you doing about the crowd control? Uh, I don't feel I'm safe here. I'm trying to liven them up. <laughs> yeah. Uh, we want to proclaim today here in Louisville, Kentucky, mm -hmm. Kathy Griffin Day, and... I know you're excited about that. I put it in a, uh, I put it in a special plaque here. So I will cherish on behalf this. Of the city. Thank uh, you. We'd like to make this your day. Matt, take a picture. We also have a very special uh, thing. I have a regular seal. A, yeah. A metro seal. You okay. have a seal that on the bottom of that has a key to the city. So I'm going to put this on your lapel. That's it. Very, no, not Where's yet. Where's the We're big, like, three-foot key and a big check? They're very, very special, very unique, and if anybody else wants one, I, I got them for 99 cents. So. What? I thought I was the only one that had it. Uh, we have some other special gifts. Metro Louisville t-shirt. Now, this is what I'm talking about. The ceremony was moving. It was touching. It was long. It took at least seven minutes to Nice mug signed by the mayor himself, even though he's not here, uh, with our logo. Is that it? Right of junk. do this in a crowd this size, but I want you to know I'm going to meet each and every one of you personally. <laughs> this is such a delish moment that I wish I could call Reese Witherspoon, and I don't have her number, and just say to her, this is what I'm talking about, Reese, when I talk about you being on the A and me being on the D. Bye, you guys. Bye. Bye. See ya. Bye. Thanks. talking shit about the president. Yeah, that's right. My 
vagina is blue, all right? That's how far to the left I am. I'm not even a Democrat anymore. I'm so fucking far to the left, I'm a Sandinista, okay? I'm actually for, like, uh, gun control during gay marriages. <laughs> I check the eBay auction several times a day. I'm giddy with anticipation because everyone's saying, you know, the last hour is where it really happened. So who knows what it could go for? Two and a half minutes. It's gotta be an upscale gay guy, right? You nervous? Yes. 90 seconds. I would be shocked if it was a straight guy. Shocked. 30 seconds. I'll bid. Last chance to bid. I don't know what straight guys do. I, I could call him a homo. That's it. Congratulations, Juan. 28 G's for V-Day. That's great. 28 G's is a hell of a lot of money. But, you know, if anybody's got the uh, disposable income, it's my gaze. When can I find out where he lives and talk to him and all that? Hopefully, really quickly. Like, as soon as the auction ends, I'm sure Juan, if he really wants it, is sitting there and, like, sending an email right away. Matt, the eBay winner is coming, and I'm working really hard to get the house ready. Hey, Matt. Yeah? Someone broke the toilet seat. Matt? Yeah? Do you want to put away the toaster? Or do you want to live like an animal? I'm really looking forward to the eBay winner coming for the weekend. And um, I want to make it a great, great weekend for them. It's a little, little weird for me, just somebody we've never met who only knows Kathy through television and, and her stand-up is now going to be in the house and stuff. So that's a little weird, and I'm a little nervous about that. No, Matt's worried it's going to be a gay guy who's going to drive him insane. Um, because it's really funny. Like, certain types of gay guys make Matt just freeze. Like, he gets along with gay guys really well, but every so often just a really, like, aggressive gay guy will just, like, freak him out. You know, like, oh, my God, you're so lucky to be married to that bitch. Hey, Matt. Yeah? Well, let's clean up the kitchen. All right. Even though eBay hasn't told us who the winner is yet, Matt and I still have a lot of work to do to get the house ready. All right, now I want everything tidy, because it's probably a gay guy who wants everything to be perfect. And I'm also a gay guy who wants everything to be perfect. I'm not going to be myself. I'm going to be way nicer than I normally am, and I'm going to be more accommodating and giving. I'm going to be a complete false version of myself. Toilet seat up! Hey, Matt. Yeah? Someone broke the toilet seat. Matt? Matt? Yeah? Do you want to put away the toaster? Or do you want to live like an animal? Maddie, oh my god. All right, this is all a disaster. It's a travesty. First of all, you have to somehow move that bed and then be able to plug those lights in. Oh. And then this is hideous. So I don't know who put a heater here, but that looks terrible. Is this where you guys are going to be up all night talking about gay stuff? Yeah. What if I filled this bowl with water and put the tops of the roses floating in it? Okay. That's pretty gay. Come on, people. All right, let's get some gayer magazines and then we should be good. The house is ready and eBay still hasn't even told me who the winner is coming this weekend. It's making me crazy. Do you have emails? Yeah. Okay. So. All right, so, Kathy, bad news. A winning bid is 28000 from Juan from Puerto Rico. That night, Juan contacts Kathy's eBay posting. Sorry I didn't read the auction in its entirety. Please allow the second place bidder to have the trip. Thanks, Juan. So the winning bid was 28000 That person didn't want to do it. And then eBay just had to go down the line a million times. Bidder number eight, the pregnant lady, Amy, Amy's doctor says she can't travel for medical reasons. Bidder number 10 at $5,500. Expresses interest to eBay but never follows up. Bidder number 40, 4025 40? So I guess you can just go bid on eBay and bid whatever you want and then just not have the cash. I think they should all go to jail. In fact, I think it should be the one strike law. One strike, you're out. They should all go to prison forever. Word goes out to remaining bidders that auction is still on. Oh, my God. That wouldn't happen to Nicole Kidman. You know, somebody would probably have bid like $2 million to spend the weekend with Nicole Kidman, and they would show. Like, there wouldn't be people going, yeah, look, Nicole, um, I thought about it, and not that exciting. I don't want to go. This sucks. How did this happen? This is so humiliating. Oh! Next, 
on My Life on the D-List. This is Michael. He won an auction to come spend the weekend here. I am going to go perform in Iraq. Right now, that country is so nuts. Yeah. That's why they need a laugh more than ever. So I came up with this idea called Lose 10 Pounds with Kathy, and now I have to lose 10 pounds in 40 days. The winner also gives one hand job to Mr. Blackman after this. I crossed the line. I did. I crossed it. That's why I got fired from the red carpet. F***ing Seacrest. All right. Previously on My Life on the D-List. Happy? Yes. Darling! Are you a man? The D-List has its own set of humiliations. You're like auctioning like yourself off on eBay? Yes. Why well, in your house? Because <laughs> you love having strangers in your house. Yes. I'll sort of have A-list moments. Oh my god! The winning bid was 28000 but they always end up going through the alphabet and ending up at D. Kathy, bad news. That person didn't want to do it. Bidder number eight can't travel for medical reasons. Bidder number 40. 40? 25. They should all go to prison forever. This sucks. How did this happen? Okay, here's the thing. Get out of my way, you A-list boys. Katrina turned me into a strong black woman. Because I hate this president and this administration so much. I can't even see straight. Yeah, yeah, go ahead and boo me. I don't give a shit. F it! I'm doing a lot more political material in my act just because the world is in a state that it wasn't in 10 years ago. And oh, and by the way, I just want to say in about three weeks, I'm going to Iraq to perform. So for all the conservatives that want to judge me, I don't like, she's too left. Uh, I'm going to be in Tikrit in three weeks. Where the f*** are you going to be? <laughs> Absolutely, you can support the troops and not support the war. I firmly believe that the administration threw all these kids under the bus and doesn't care about any of them. So when I got the opportunity to go and perform for the troops in Iraq, of course I was thrilled. Right away, I started thinking, all right, how am I gonna get them laughing? Hi, it's Kathy Griffin for Captain Jesse. Yep. I have questions for you. Cause I'm really nervous about my material and what the guys will know and what they won't know. Now the guys know who Dr. Phil is, right? Oh yeah, yeah. Okay, so I can make fun of Dr. Phil? Yeah. How much time have you spent over there yourself? Um, about uh, 15 months total, over three trips. Oh, that's gotta suck. Uh, it was not the most fun thing to do, but I was stationed in uh, 29 Palms up in the desert north of Palm Springs, so it was being one desert or being the other desert. So. <laughs> one just has more gay guys. Yeah, yeah. Jesse, you, don't be afraid to laugh at one gay joke. I'm not gonna like start my show by saying where my gays at or anything. That might not be a good idea. Okay. If they're smart, they won't answer. If they're stupid, they deserve to get caught, so. Uh, Jesse, you know it's 2006. Yes, but I can think of the people to make fun of easily. It's just what you can use to, uh, to get them. Like, what do you mean? Who do you want to make fun of? Um, the intelligence guys. Oh, I'm Jesse, how could you? They've had such a bad eight years. Now, what do you think the Iraqis are most familiar with of my work? Hmm. I'm trying to think. They all, fortunately, they all have satellite TV over there, so. Jesse, I'm kidding. <laughs> Jesse, don't come to any of my shows. You're a nightmare audience. You haven't laughed at one hilarious thing I've said. I've, I've been giggling here. It's just not uh, loud enough to get over the phone. Now, Matt and I can sleep together, right? Um, in Iraq, probably not. Well, for what it's worth, my husband hasn't touched me since our wedding night. And that's great to know, but they <laughs> don't believe. Everyone tells them that, and they don't believe it, so. Oh, gosh. Jesse, you keep me young. My mind is on a rock, but I'm in the middle of a humiliating D-list debacle. My eBay charity auction turned into a disaster when the bidders started dropping like flies. At the last second, though, some guy from Cleveland bid $5,000. Down from $28,000. He's coming for the weekend, and I'm going to take him to a big red carpet event. Hope he's not a psycho. Hi. Oh my god. Hi. Are you Michael? Yes. Hi, come on So nice to meet you. Thank you so much for doing this. This is so nice of you. You need some new stairs. This is Chance. Hi there, Come please. on in. I want you to get the full effect. Okay. Come in. Wow. Wait, don't leave without seeing my picture with Oprah. That's the first thing I grab in a fire. This Hi. is Matt. Hi. Nice to meet you. This or is Michael. Michael. Nice to meet you. Michael. He's nice from Cleveland. You. Welcome to the house and congratulations and thanks. Did you bring a suit? Uh, no. 
Not a suit, black dress pants and black shirt, tie. Oh shit. You know we're going to a black tie event tonight? No. You don't? I know, I know a red carpet event. Yes. And she said dress nice. Do you know your sizes? No, not at all. I haven't Michael. been to any funerals. <laughs> Nobody's died. <laughs> Tonight is going to be like going to a fun funeral. Okay. Not right. only did he not have a suit, he acted like it was an insane request to say, oh, do you have a suit? And he kept saying, why would I have a suit unless I was going to a funeral? Mom, Dad? Yeah. This is Michael. Now he's going to be in the big bed with you guys. Oh, really? So he's in the middle. Who, well, Michael? Yeah. Oh, yeah. That'll be interesting, Michael. Won't it? <laughs> so, I'm very nervous, I think. You know, it's like, oh, what do I say? What do I say? What if I say something wrong? But it's going good so far. It looks like a real nice like, young man. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah. very nice. Well, where'd he get the dough? I don't know where he got the dough. <laughs> well, I'd quiz him. It's nobody's business. <laughs> what does your father do? <laughs> Who's got that kind of money? Yeah. Oh, God, will you stop with the money? <laughs> so I'm going to have um, Judith as my stylist, and she's going to iron your shirt. Oh. Okay. So get out your shirt and pants. All right. We're going to press, we're going to iron, we're going to get all ready. They're supposed to be there at six? I don't know, but okay. Oh, wow. Well. Wow. Well, I'm very excited because I'm presenting at the Costume Designers Ball. It's this huge event where Angelica Houston is hosting it. When I lived in Oak Park, Illinois, my mind would blow at the idea of like coming to Hollywood and going to a red carpet event and seeing movie stars. Nicole Kidman! Pardon? Nicole Kidman. Yeah, I yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. But I hope I see some other celebrities too. I'm really gonna try to hunt down Jerry Hallowell, Ginger Spice from the Spice Girls. Ooh, that's Hi, pretty. That's pretty. Have a good time, Michael. So you know you're gonna have to step on it because I'm late. Okay. And it's my fault, but now you have to pay, Carrie. Okay. <laughs> Is the red carpet still going full strong? Yes. Good. Yes, it is. Okay, she said good. So, Michael, I'm not sure how this is going to work, but I'm going to work my ass off to get you every autograph and picture I can. Okay, great. <laughs> so, you know, when you're on the D-list, you never want to arrive at the same time as a big star. So I'm hoping whoever that is goes through. Okay. Otherwise, they're going to knock me down. Oh, shizzy. What is it? Lonnie <laughs> Anderson. Oh, yes. my God, is it her? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Get the camera. Oh, my God. It's in the Hollywood. When we went to the red carpet, I really made a point of grabbing him so he could do it with me. And that was kind of fun, because he was like, had his hand around my waist and smiling. Like about halfway through, he was kind of like, oh, enough already. Kathy, big smile this way. Is that Angie Harmon, honey? You know who Angie Harmon is? She's a big star, just be excited. This is Michael, he won the auction to live with me for a weekend. He's spending the weekend with me at my house. Wait, Jason, come here. You get to, <laughs> you get to experience. the auction item on eBay. You're talking about me like I'm a $2 whore. This, this, how can you not know who Angie Herman is? No. She doesn't what even look she familiar. In? What was she in? Uh, Law and Order Legend. I never watched that show. Oh, Very nice. You movie. are looking so glam. It's the new <laughs> Get Me Off the Worst Dress List meme. <laughs> well, I, it's such a good I can't color. be in this, right? I can't be on the Worst Dress List. No, no way. I, uh, are you still here? Yeah, we reconciled. Oh, you there. Did. oh, good for you. I thought I saw him. Keep your fingers crossed. All right, good. I know I am. Congratulations on everything. Is that Jane Seymour, the most romantic woman in the world? And there's Brenda Strong from Desperate Housewives. All right. Her name is Kelly Rutherford. The one in the white dress next. No idea. I thought they were fantastic celebrities there. Michael knew almost none of them. All right, when she comes over, act like you're a big fan. Just say I'm, just say I'm a big fan. To everybody you meet. How free? Hi. Ooh, you look, look beautiful. Really? Hi, Jane, how are you? <laughs> May I get a picture? Sure. This is Michael, and he won an auction to be here this weekend. Here we go. Thank you so much. Oh, you're welcome. Oscar nominee Joe Dillon. Get in there. Can I snag you for one more picture for Michael? Okay. Here, let's put him in between you and Ian. Michael, just go stand and be, just smile. <laughs> They don't need to know the Thank you. I'm going to come up to you every 17 minutes. Ouch. I got so served by Jane Seymour. Well, you're not romantic I enough like, doing the same conversation as you. I go like this. I go, I'm going to come up to you every 17 minutes for a picture. And she goes, now I want to do it. Let's go sit down at our table. Okay. 
Oh, <laughs> I almost split my dress. Ladies and gentlemen, please take your seats. The show is about to... I'm presenting best costume for a commercial. So then I started asking Matt what bits I should do. I want to think of something good to say. You know, this is an opportunity. I should, I should do something funnier. I shouldn't just read the teleprompter. Just tell him no matter what you do on stage, just go with it. No matter what I do during my little intro, go with it. Ladies and gentlemen, one of Star Trek's most beloved stars, Jerry Ryan. I think I'm next. Bob, for your incredible artistic vision, the Costume Designers Guild bestows on you the Spotlight Award for time. How are you? Here's your Thank you. It's beautiful, isn't it, David? It's such a wonderful job. Luckily, there's plenty of gay guys. Lena Savoya, Sosi Abrahanian. Holy shit. <sighs> Wrap it up. The big holdup was that the guy before me got an award and his acceptance speech was, no joke, at least 20 minutes. I've come to a more kind of mature understanding that the He's world. reading his journal. <laughs> Today for lunch I had a salami sandwich. Is it true? For those of you that would like to hear the rest of Bob Blackman's speech, he's going to deliver tomorrow at the Gospel Brunch at the House of Blues. There are three seatings. He promises to finish by Tuesday. Now look, tonight we're giving away many awards. We're honoring a lot of amazing artists. But I'm gonna go off book. I'm gonna tell you, I think that there was a show that was overlooked. Someone did the costume design for a brilliant show called Being Bobby Brown. And they deserve a goddamn award. Do you think it was easy dressing Whitney Houston every day? Hell to the no. Somebody had to take traces of crack cocaine out of her tank top. Damn it, somebody worked hard and for what? So you stop. myself off on eBay for a charity. I'm not even kidding. And so someone bid to come live with me for a weekend, and this was the big event that they got to come to. And I want you to give a hand for the guy who won because he bid $60,000. $60,000. wanted to make it special for him, so I thought, well, they're not gonna clap for five grand. I mean, most of these people spend that, you know, on their pool boy. And the statue, and the winner also gives one hand job to Mr. Blackman after this. <laughs> Just as a th I pushed the line, I crossed the line. I did, I crossed it. I lost you, I had you, I lost you, come back. I'm so sorry. Every time, every year I do it. All right, this is why I got fired from the red carpet. That's why. Now you know. F***ing <laughs> Seacrest. And, and the winner is Christopher Lawrence for Capital One Fighting Club! Top that. That was great. <laughs> Don't even look at me, because I'm already ashamed of myself. Don't... <laughs> you shouldn't be ashamed. I made a hand job joke about the guy from Star Trek. I've left quite a mess for you to clean up. Let's like, go do press and see if I can apologize. Yeah, come on, let's do it. Okay. <laughs> Richard, how are you? Good to see you. I want to interview your date. Oh, he's at the table. <laughs> so how did that 20-year-old guy there get uh, $60,000? I guess he has, dis you know the case, they have disposable income. Oh, <laughs> so do you want to talk to Michael? Okay. Yes. I don't know what I'm going to do when the LA Times says, how did you get the 60 grand to donate? That's why I want to get out of here. I think I should get out of here before they ask him. Because you know Michael's going to rat me out. He's going to say it was 5000 <laughs> All right, there's something I should tell you. Yes. He didn't donate 60000 he donated 5000 5, Yeah. I told him so you can be honest. Oh, okay. About the 60 Gs. Oh. This is Rich. He's from the LA Times. So has it been worth the money? Yeah, of course. And take a bow and a big... Uh, uh, I can't believe she did that. Coming. No, I did not know. <laughs> Come on, let's get out while the getting's good. Coming up. Don't leave the door open. You're like nudists. I think we can make this happen now. Don't cruise online, Michael, please. What if he kills my parents? I'm gonna feel terrible. Well, we've had a long, 
exhausting evening. Yes. Did Michael get any offers? You know? Yeah. Oh, he, the LA Times interviewed him. All right. <laughs> we uh, wound down with mom and dad, and then I decided to do something that I thought was very generous. Oh, I have a surprise for you. Wow. I'm giving you my gift bag. Oh, okay. Let's open it. Oh, oh, Here. Sight unseen. I didn't know if there was a diamond necklace in there. I didn't know. And I said, Michael, this is part of a celebrity experience. Just take a gift bag. Hey. What's that? Oh, my God. What is it? Oh, what? Roberto Cavalli. Yeah, it's a huge designer. Oh. I have to keep it. Yeah. You don't want to give it to one of your friends? No, they won't wear that. No. Uh, I will. Let's see. What does it say? I probably won't use any of this stuff. You should just keep it. We kept saying, well, just take it. Just, you can give it away to somebody. You never know. He's like, mm, I don't want it. Oh, yeah. Well, maybe his mom could use it. Uh, Mike, you're going to be a big hit. For the play Man, we got you clean from hand all this crap. Body slush. Oh, come on. You don't want the swim cap. I don't swim. Did you want So you're bag? just taking a bag of vodka? Uh, I don't even think I could travel with that. Well, do you want the bag? The bag's nice. No, you can. Yeah. I'll never use it, believe me. I'll take this and the bubble bath. That's cool. Okay. What a boss. So. Best thing is the vodka. <laughs> Mother! <laughs> now we're going to bed. No, yeah. no more things. Fine. Yeah. Don't leave the door open. You're like nudists. Yeah. Don't cruise online, Michael, please. I don't want anyone coming over here at 3 in the morning with drugs. Not even for sex? Oh, all right. One person. All right. I was expecting someone yeah. who would be absolutely thrilled Someone like the gays that she, that she hangs with. <laughs> Michael was kind of like beyond it or above yeah. it or something yeah. like that. Well, all I know is the difference in a Cleveland gay yeah. and a uh, California yeah, gay, yeah, yeah. worlds apart, worlds apart. He's very sweet, he couldn't be nicer. Very nice. He's so young though. He doesn't even know who Barney was. This Barney happened way before this <laughs> time. He's too young time. for Barney. Yeah. Where's the money coming from? You know, he told his parents that he won a contest. He won a contest. So I don't know what's like a worse lie, that or that he bid $60,000. Come on, that was sweet. What if he kills my parents? I'm going to feel terrible. <laughs> no, I'm not sleeping. He didn't murder us in our sleep, and he actually did send the money to eBay. So I guess I should pull out all the stops for him. This is Michael, by the way. Hi, Hi Michael. Hi, Michael. <laughs> and Michael gets the works, whatever he wants. I'm just trying to give him a real, like, Hollywood celebrity experience. I mean, obviously I'm doing stuff that I don't normally do. I was really trying to make it, like, something he could go home and brag about. It feels really LA, like, they even gave massages to the dogs. <laughs> She's having a chef come over and cook for us, and a whole bunch of her friends are coming over. It just seems so unreal that you have like somebody come to your house to cook for you, but it's LA. <laughs> I just want Michael to feel like we um, threw a party for him, which we did. It was completely for him. So she's making a real big buffet. Oh, jeez. So you guys better eat a lot. Oh, God. Meats, yeah. fruits, right. bagel. Can you All put right. on something presentable? You like hobos. Well, this is our well, that was our question. Our... Should we get fresh? Yes. All right, then. Well, okay. no, we wanted to talk to you. We just fresh talk. No, you hit no. all call. Hey, can everybody hear me? You have to and press talk hear. down when you talk, and yeah. then you let go. Then when you want to talk, you have to hold it down. Hello, we're testing the monitor. Uh, then when you're done. Testing the monitor. Oh, hello, we're testing the intercom. <laughs> no, you never hit monitor. Oh, all right, you never you, hit We monitor. all can hear you talking all, all over right, the house. On, monitor gonna... means we can hear you. It's like a this baby monitor. Really good baby. A chance. But oh, I think you should... about three things there. Well, I don't we think don't you should to, ever never, use this. We're never going to Because every time it. you use it, we all just hear everything. Okay. We'll be dressed, we'll be upstairs. Okay. Yeah. All right. But for Christ's sake, and don't go up touch. there and say, we're not hungry. We will not. Eat like horses. It's your fault. What do you mean? Because you convince them they can use the intercom. I you know my dad's gonna be pressing every I never, button. I never convinced them. They just. You had to want to have a. Le I can't believe you said let's have a lesson. What about the uh, TV? When are we gonna finish that? Oh god. Uh, we're just gonna hear feedback in the house now. Kathy, Kathy, are you there? Yeah. yeah. I'm not doing this right. We can all hear you. Talk. The press talk. Kathy. Yes. We didn't get your answer, Kathy. Yes. Yeah. Kathy. Yeah. 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 It was just fun.
funny. Like, I really thought Michael would have moments of, of saying, you know, oh my gosh, I can't even imagine this. I didn't even know people lived this way. Because I'm thinking, this is pretty fancy. I've never had a chef before. And he didn't like hardly any of the food. And I think most yeah. of the food that he had while he was here, I think, well, anybody, yeah. much less a gay, would love it. Kyle, Hi, Kyle. Nice behold Michael, the auction winner. Hey, Michael. Eric. All the he hasn't really expressed being excited to meet the gays. He hasn't said, oh my God, girl, bring me those gays. Bring it, girl. He never called me girl once. That was weird. Michael, will you greet your fans, please? Oh, meet you. What's a 20-year-old doing spending thousands of dollars to fly across the country to hang out with a celebrity and then acting like whatever? It's every day in his book, you know? But wait, you have to tell him your favorite celebrity of all time if you could meet anyone besides me. I'm Jerry Hallowell. Which, which, which spice? She's like twinkie. Ginger. 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 Oh, <laughs> redheads. So I just think it's funny. You're going to spend five grand to go spend the weekend with someone when really oh, you want to be with Jerry Hallowell. Oh. You know, all weekend I wished I was Jerry Hallowell. I wanted to go get the British flag bathing suit outfit, some big platform boots, and a tiara. <laughs> LA's a big town. And it's basically like all gossip about what's going on and everything. What about poor Cheryl Crow catching cancer from that Lance Armstrong? I know. <laughs> she was always too good for him. I always felt like yeah. he rides a bicycle. <laughs> Very career oriented out here. Everything's career, career, career. <laughs> Are you guys leaving already? Yeah, we're leaving. Well, well, do we offend you? Uh, well, we haven't heard, but we know the offense is coming. <laughs> Um, it's nice Bye, to meet Michael. you, and I hope you had a real Michael. good time. Nice yeah. See you again, maybe. Yeah. Yeah. Next year. Yeah. Now, next year it's going to cost more. Oh. <laughs> he didn't really seem to have a very good time. He seemed kind of bored, and he wanted to leave. And it's still sketchy where he got the money. I personally think he stole it from his elderly father after perhaps he gave him a Rohypnol. I don't know. Hey, where's he going? Is he leaving without us? Bye, Michael. Michael! Goodbye. I was saying goodbye? Yeah, I can hope so. Oh. Thank you so much. Thank you. You're such a sweetheart. I'm so I'm so grateful that you were such a sweetheart. Oh, well. Like, it's... instead of, you know, it could have been weird or... Yeah, it could have been, been, like, a... psycho crazy. Yes, you know? <laughs> yes. Thank you for not killing Any of her you? or me or our dogs. <laughs> In or... our sleep. Oh, Her yeah. parents. <laughs> Even though they kind of have it coming. Yeah. All right, no. well, I hope you have lots of good stories and have yes, fun. Yes, it was an awesome, awesome weekend. Thank you. Good. I'm going to give you an awkward hug. Okay. <laughs> it was nice meeting you. All right. All right. Thanks. Safe flight and everything. Thanks. All right. You too. Bye. Bye. Chance, are you going to? Don't take Chance. Come here, Chance. I can't believe you tried to say Chance. Mm -hmm. The ultimate insult. Now, what did you steal? Where's Pom? Oh, wait, wait. Let's check the shampoos. Because there's no way he didn't take some of those. All right. What are you doing here? <laughs> what? It sounds bad, but I really want an iPod. I don't have an iPod. It turns out my friend Adam made a sarcastic joke saying that I had a stack of iPods somewhere in a closet, and I think Michael thought that was serious. Oh, I don't think I said. Oh. In that room? No. Oh. <laughs> That's an empty box for my iPod. Oh. Matt thinks that I should go get a brand new video iPod, no matter what it costs, fill it with Jerry Hallowell songs and Jerry Hallowell obscure videos and just ship it to him. You know, maybe Nicole Kidman has a stack of iPods. Maybe Paris Hilton has a room full of iPod shuffles. I don't. Jessica, send Michael a shuffle. She'll send it out. I'm never gonna be like nude on the cover of Vanity Fair with Kate Winslet. Yeah, nobody gives a shit. But I am doing an article for The Star. Perhaps you've heard of The Star magazine. It's a very, it's an excellent periodical. It's kind of like Atlantic Monthly. Anyway. So I came up with this idea called Lose 10 Pounds with Kathy, and now I have to f lose 10 pounds in 40 days. When you're on the D-list, you gotta hustle for a little publicity. My latest scheme involves the ultimate sacrifice, giving up junk food. Well, I'm not losing any weight. I feel fat as a house, and I think it's your fault, Bobby. What? My yeah, fault. Yeah, that's right, because we work out at least once a month, and I haven't lost any weight. At least once a month, exactly. <laughs> I'm a realist. I will never be in Vanity Fair or in style. The star, those are my peeps. You know, if I can be in the star, in touch, Us Weekly, Inquirer, National Examiner, Globe, 
high school paper. That's more my crowd. Well, I suggested healthy choices, lots of protein, right. vegetables, fruits, so lots of protein, water. So by protein, in and out burger. Yeah, not so good. Vegetables, french fries, and fruit would be Dutch apple pie. Right, Chance? Yeah. Star is coming today to take some pictures of Fat Kathy and pictures of me fake working out and wacky pictures of me with junk food and stuff because it's all going bye-bye. And then they'll come back when I'm the new felt model that I was meant to be. First of all, I think you should know that um, there are some pictures of me on the internet where my pants are pulled down because as part of my act, sometimes I pull my pants down. Mm -hmm. If that doesn't qualify me for Star is Not Normal, I don't know what you people See, want. You didn't do it in real life, though. You weren't walking down the street. And... <laughs> okay. All right. I think we can make this happen now. Finally. Come on. Star's Finally. not normal? Finally? <laughs> Come on, people. What does it take? She can start a whole new trend. Nicole Richie just wears her sunglasses crooked, and she stars not normal. So this is... I just got weighed at the doctor, and I was 132. And I thought that was bad enough. But no, it turns out I'm 138. Okay. So here's the thing. I have fat pants, medium pants, and skinny pants. I have three entire wardrobes. That's what I really want to be doing right there. <laughs> this is called Downward Dog. Right. Okay, you ready? <laughs> okay, what else do you want to get? The kitchen. I'm dying Let's go. to see the kitchen. No. Oh, oh bye. All right, hold on. Hold your horses. There's plenty of shitty food for you to throw out. Bad? No. 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 But come on, people. Where's the cookie dough? Oh, I don't have any cookie dough. Look to your right, Bobby. Jessica, <laughs> whose side are you on? I did know I had all that bad food, and I enjoyed that I had all that bad food. It's enjoyable bad food. I miss it. It's much worse than losing a family member. Much worse. Coming up next. I think there's a chance Matt is poisoning me. A very good chance. To let him hear me. performed in Afghanistan in 2002, and now I'm going to Iraq. And so, yes, I'm a giver. No, I'm only going to Iraq because I hear that Tikrit Four Seasons is gorgeous, um, especially the presidential. I'm very concerned about putting on a great show for the troops. So I roped in Carrie Turner from JAG and Mike McDonald from Mad TV, a couple of my old groundling pals. We open with a clip package. And what I'm really liking is, I'm wondering if, we, if you guys want to include like a little Jag, a little Mad TV. Sure. And then I was thinking about 20 minutes of the improvs with them. They like to hear names of their superiors. Right, right. Maybe we can bring a bit of their home to them. Oh, for sure. You know? I think as often as possible. And, and Matt's going to walk through the base with the sandwich board. There you Big go. Big show tonight. There you go. Eight o'clock. <laughs> Why not? Bring an insurgent. How many times? <laughs> get in two. Twofer. <laughs> Twofer. <laughs> Twofer. I was just trying to think how long we all, we've known each other a long, like I've known you since probably 1989. And yeah. a casting gal just died recently that, oh yeah, cancer? Cancer. But you know, I have a theory, if you, if you don't tell you you have cancer, you don't die of it. That is the most scientific ridiculous reason yeah, I have ever. That is the most sound huh. scientific. Because think about it, every <laughs> cancer story you hear is like, well, yeah, they told them they had six mm -hmm. months and they died. Six, it's true. Six months later. Well, I heard that the people um, in Thailand who were not told about the tsunami. It didn't happen. <laughs> yeah, right. One of my characters I do is um, a Persian tow truck driver. G give us a little sec. Something, something. Uh, what would you like? Let's I'll see. start the conversation. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> and then you would say, I am not an Arab. <laughs> so probably what will happen is the that first night, I'll just try a bunch of stuff and see what works. Right. What's scary is I could do all this material the first night and none of it could work. Then I'm screwed. So I'm, I'm definitely, ner I'm way more nervous about that than any danger factor. Do we know like where we would be well, in Iraq? They won't say, they won't, for security reasons, they won't tell us, but it looks like Balad would be one since the curfew was enforced. No Americans are leaving the base at all, so there's not, no more convoys, nothing. Which is kind of cool for us because that's a captive audience. Right. Yeah. Right. Hey, are you guys going to a convoy? We're doing our last bit. Oh, those f***ing convoys. <laughs> Typical. You know that I'm terrified of flying. <laughs> well, the funny thing about Mike McDonald is he's not worried about being in Baghdad. He's worried about the flight. Is I'm, I'm afraid just... I'm going to be like, you know, talking to some troops who, whatever, they put their lives on the line yeah. for real. And mine's like, 
I had a very rough landing with Blackhawk. That'd be horrible. Well, you will get used to Blackhawks. What's fun is you'll go along and they fly really low to the ground in case somebody's out there trying to shoot you. What, the, then you the can Black Ox? jump out? I think I probably lost like a pound or something. But I feel like I've been starving. Like an eating disorder specialist should be putting me on entertainment tonight saying, Kathy Griffin is anorexic and she had to be hospitalized. Broccoli and guacamole, that is a crime. It should be nice salty fried chips. So seeing her like struggle with what she's eating and everything has kind of been interesting. I, she's, uh, it's, it's kind of going to her brain a little bit. I think she's losing her mind a little bit. Are you sick to your stomach yes, from broccoli? Yes, broccoli makes me really sick. Well, then why'd you eat it? Because you won't listen. I, so somehow I forced you to eat the broccoli. When was the last time your body digested something like raw broccoli? Oh, I don't that. I can't, uh, I can't eat broccoli. That's it. I'm like an athlete. My body is trained and conditioned to accept chunk food and process it properly. Now I've thrown everything into a tizzy. It's all gone to shit. Stop <laughs> laughing at me. <laughs> because of what made you sick? Eating the healthiest thing you've ever eaten. That one. Hurts. Do you think you're poisoning me? <laughs> I do. I just ate the whole plate of it. I saw that movie Gaslight. You're like Klaus von Bülow. Mm-hmm. Oh, my parents are loving. That's it? You're going in? Do you see the light? You get me a bunch of tongues. Mm hmm I think there's a chance Matt is poisoning me. A very good chance. Don't let him near me. Who? You know me? Nothing. We put your ear to my stomach and hear the noise. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> it sounds like a ship at sea. I have the perfect storm in my stomach. Mm -hmm. Your stomach's like, what the f It's used to ice cream and potato chips, and now... I tried to warn everybody, nobody listened. Broccoli is a killer. I think it's second only to heart disease. For killing Americans. If I'm gonna survive this diet, I need professional help. Hi, I bet you didn't think nutritionists made house calls. No, thank you. The simplest approach. Yeah. You eat foods just the way nature provides them to you. Ugh, that sounds terrible. No, really, this is this is. Have you ever met nature? They don't add salt to anything. If man makes it, don't eat it, you know? <laughs> that guy needs a cookie more than I need to be fucked tonight. You tell me which is more important. Just so you know, I'm like a child of the 70s, grew up in Hamburger Helper and McDonald's, and mm. unfortunately, never, like my whole life, really, I've never been a healthy eater. Well, I have no bone marrow left at all. Mm. They're hollow shells. Well, I was going to say, then, you know, the opportunity for improvement is great, then. Yes, I can only you improve. Know, to you. He you makes no kinds of sense. I am getting increasingly bitter at watching others eat what I want to eat, which is everything. When I see my parents eating what they want, I'm filled with bitterness, envy, and jealousy. We will just pour the wine, Margaret. I think it's time. Ah. Uh. If nothing else, when you have the wine, it makes the rest of it a little bit easier. Here's to, uh... Ah. See, Dad, this is better than any... On that other stuff I eat. See, that rot, so dirty, rotten pizza yeah. and everything yeah. else. Oh, man, those hamburgers. Uh, oh, hey! Hey! No, so the three of them on salads. Yes. And you and, and I what are waiting, you guys eat? We're waiting for the meat and potatoes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, oh, nice. oh, oh, who wants oh, that? Oh, you don't like that. Yeah. Well, I will. Let me tell you something. This diet is temporary, and I can't wait to be off it. And the bad thing is I'm, I'm making this long list of foods I'm going to have the 41st day of my diet. I'm thinking I'm going to have garlic fries, chocolate mousse, cake, deep dish pizza, fettuccine alfredo, and that's just breakfast. Tell Matt what you said to Dad one day about your looks and getting wrinkles. I said, gee whiz, you know, my hair, my hair's white now, the red is all gone, and wrinkles. And I probably could, yeah. And instead of saying, you know, oh, you look as beautiful as ever, or whatever, 
He says, Meg, you know, you gave it a great run, great try. Oh. So he gave Which I thought. It, so. Mom, you look very, very beautiful. Do you know your blood type? You should learn it. I know. In case there's an emergency. So he takes your blood type and he tells you what your ancestors were. Ooh. Some are farmers. Who's this guy? Wow. The nutritionist. <laughs> oh. But I told him my ancestors were alcoholics. <laughs> I said, do you know that I have parents? Who, oh, eat, who eat whatever they want. And I said, and they will not die. <laughs> I said, they are so old, you cannot get them to die. <laughs> so I said, if you want to know if I come from hunters, yeah. I don't. Well, I come from old they, people know? who eat potato balls, and nothing ever I bad can. happens to them. And nacho cheese out of a can. Yeah, but oh. you know what? It's burritos from 7-Eleven. I'm going to have some more wine. Coming up. I am going to go perform in Iraq. God yes. almighty. You're an ace infidel. You're a female. There's a civil whip going on. Matt and I are going to go to my mom and dad's, and we have a little surprise for them that Matt and I are going to go to Iraq and perform there. We should tell them just so when we show up in one of those videos and I'm wearing a hood, they know it's not a bit, that they know I've truly been kidnapped. Hello. We're going to tell them something that's going to make them nervous. So I have arranged that they get two free cases of Echo Damani, which is their favorite wine. Yeah. What is this? Here's the thing. I know how to get to my parents. It's not love. It's not achievement. It's booze. I know yeah. you're not going to drink it. I'm not suggesting. Oh, God, no. no. Maybe no. one. Maybe you'll give it to charity. Yeah. So speaking of charity. I am going to go perform in Iraq. There's a civil war going on. But it's not the final war, it's a civil war. Oh, the base. Big deal. Oh, yeah. I think that is the most insane thing. thing if I what about her patriotism? And what about America? I thought Bill O'Reilly, your big boyfriend. Let Bill O'Reilly go. Finally, some, somebody is going to go on, and actually yeah. stand up for her country. And it's insane? That uh, isn't standing uh, up for your country. Let guys go. That is let male comics totally go. insane. Right now, that country is so nuts. Yeah. That's They're why they need to laugh more other. than ever. Man. And you're an ace infidel. You're a female. Yes. I'm an oh, ace infidel. God, yes. Almighty. They'll meet you at the airstrip. Mm. I'm going to go and I'm going to try to talk some sense into Muqtada al Sadr. Oh, yeah. yeah. And like every place where we're going, there's a secure landing strip where It'll you... It'll be fine in the event that we are captured by insurgents. Mm -hmm. What can we count on you guys paying? Well, mm. how, how about the 9025? You're gonna give up what? the- What? We go you're back gonna give up the condo? Speaking? Oh, if you ransom, you'll probably kill you. So you think that <laughs> so we'll an Iraqi is gonna want place. a condo in West Hollywood? Well, you never know. <laughs> One tip to give you. Oh. You're okay. never supposed to look- Look him in the eye. In the eye. Never. So it antagonizes them. You want some good advice? You're flying go. to London. Yeah. Stay, Stay in, London. in London. Keep cool. You will crowded. love yeah. it. Yeah. You will absolutely there are a lot of soldiers in London, adore you know, it. American soldiers. You can you see can all the plays. Them. You can see all the plays. And they'll in understand London. you in London. Oh, we right. gotta go. We gotta get fitted for body armor. Yeah, we gotta get our Kevlar vests on. All right, guys. All we'll right. see you. Take care. See you before we go. Today we're here checking up on Kathy. It's two weeks since we started this great experiment, and uh, we're gonna see how our progress is. Let's do 132. Okay. <laughs> Six pounds. All right, that's good. That's amazing. Six okay. pounds in 14 days. Okay. Anytime a celebrity lets you into the world of food is extremely rare. Snapper, yuck. But with Kathy, it's been an open book. I want the star, the star readers to be, be along with me on this journey. Okay. And so I want to know, I want them to know if I can do it, anyone can. If Anna Nicole Smith and I can lose weight, believe me, you can too. She cheated though. She had. Turns like... out the star apparently has two other celebrities that are doing diet stories that are more famous. So I'm behind Paris Hilton, who I don't know what she's going to lose, except more brain cells. So I'm third on the list. And now they're going to maybe run the, sh the story in a few months. Well, I can't right. wait to see you again in two weeks. Thanks. All right. Good Thank you. you. Come with me to work out, buddy. Oh, seriously? Yeah, are you kidding? I'll come over. I don't mean that. I watch Oprah every day. Oh, okay. Yeah. Like, I'm watching Oprah, you're watching Oprah. There's no reason we shouldn't be right. side by side on treadmills sweating. Perfect. Sweating Oprah. Do you know when this is going to run? I asked Tina, I said, you know, can you give me a hard date? She said, probably not. 
we could run it as early as March 20th. Or the two pages week. now and then two pages at the end is what you're saying, is what the... I don't think we're going to run another story immediately after this one. You're saying like not this week's but next week's you know, I actually haven't been in any of those meetings that have okay. been about like when it's going to run. Okay. I never heard any solid dates at all. Okay. So. The star is like a guy that I slept with too soon. You know, I slept with the star on the first date and now they're like, oh, good old Kath. You know, I can make a booty call to her anytime. And now I'm trying to get a ring from the star. And they're like, yeah, we f***ed you. Today we're at the doctor's office and we're getting our inoculations to go to Iraq. I'm excited to get going. I know a lot of people do it to help the troops and to be patriotic Americans. I'm going over there to lose five pounds. Help on out. What? I hope to be hit on a lot. I'm gonna milk it, I'm gonna flirt. I'm gonna talk a lot about their big gun. Is that an M16? You're just glad to see me. Oh, hey, Dr. You? Gordon. Hello. How's everything? Good, how are you? How are you? You looking terrific. Thank you, so are you. 100 pounds. Mm -hmm. And you're going to uh, Iraq. Mm -hmm. That's Iraq. wonderful. I, I congratulate you. That's you wonderful. wanna come? Not me. Oh, okay. <laughs> And you said you're going over there looking for uh, weapons of mass destruction. Is that what you're going for? Yeah. You need some shots. Uh, and which, some good drugs. And some good drugs. No, Martin, come on. I'm not screwing around about the drugs. Give me the good <laughs> stuff. I don't mean Cipro. I mean, if, what fun drugs do you have? We don't do fun drugs. Oxycontin? Rush Limbaugh loves it. Those are only for the Republicans. <laughs> I would love a tank of nitrous. Doctor, I guess I've just been served. I can't even get one tank of nitrous. Is that really what you want, is compressed gas in Iraq? <laughs> and what does this one do? The meningococcal vaccine, which they say Don't you speak Yiddish to me. When are you leaving? Tonight, 7 p.m. flight. <laughs> Matt just fainted. You're pouring blood out of your arm. <laughs> Matt's biggest fear is that I'm going to get into an altercation in Kuwait City. Allah Akbar my ass, you sexist pig. Do you want body makeup? I want to crawl under some abayas and see if they really do wear Versace under that. Because you know the Middle Eastern women love to brag. We love our abaya. We are in Versace underneath. Great. Okay. okay. Thank you all so right. much. Thank you. Pleasure. Have a great trip. And we will. It's a great thing you're doing for the troops. Oh, all right. We'll okay. see you afterwards. Okay. Thank I mean, you. Maybe we won't. But <laughs> okay. never the problem is that he doesn't give us the uh, good, good drugs. The good we stuff. didn't get good drugs, and I'm pissed about that. Which means I have to get them on the streets of Baghdad from child drug dealers. And I hope he can sleep tonight because of that. Coming up, our last together picture together. Oh, God, yeah. don't start. Yeah, yeah. And we always thought Dad was going to go first. Oh, honey. And now I'm going to go a hero. Yeah, yeah. An American hero. Well, I guess this is it. Next stop, Iraq. My parents are here to say goodbye, and I hope my mother doesn't just throw herself on the hood of the limo. What? Okay, oh. go. Oh, look. Oh, our last together picture together. Oh, God, yeah, yeah. don't start. Yeah, yeah. And we always thought Dad was going to go first. Oh, honey. And now I'm going to go a hero. Yeah, yeah. An American hero. Everybody has to watch yeah. their back. Eyes all over the, your back. You said not to make eye contact. You said never make eye contact with a, a man from the Middle East. I'm going to make as much eye contact as I can. I'm going against my mother's advice. I'm going to look every guy in the eye and tell him to suck it. OK, we're going to go. Oh, you're leaving already? Yes. Yeah, 3.30. Oh, we got to go. Right. We're supposed to take and leave at 3. Jeez, oh, Mary and St. Joseph. Good luck. OK, we're going to call you Saturday morning at 7 in the morning. Yeah, no yeah. Chances. Well, chances. Well, not come dead. Not come dead, kid. No nope. chances. I don't want okay. any problems. Ma, what are you doing? I don't want you. Mom. Ever since I saw you, Sariani, wow. Joyce said, boy. George Clooney did this too? <laughs> Damn that Clooney. George. We gotta go. I know, I'm ready. Okay. okay. Bye, doggies. Bye, Chance. Bye, Papa. I love you. Remember, if I die, I want Dominic Dunn to deliver the eulogy. Oh, yeah. I'm sure it'll be fine. Oh, be oh you kids keep me young. It'll be a lot of fun. Okay. Yeah, it'll be real fun. Fine, Matt. Take care we'll now. Okay. Take care, uh, guys. Uh, Kathy? Allah Akbar. Allah Akbar. Going to Iraq. It's got to be easier than doing the red carpet with Star. Next on My Life on the D-List. We're here in Kuwait, and we have a show tonight at the base camp. This is way harder of an audience. Are there any women that just want to watch Must Love Dogs on a loop? We are flying over a country that we're in the middle of a war with. I don't even know if there's seatbelts. Uh, it's my first day in Iraq. 
What a shithole. Um, There's a don't ask, don't pa- tell policy with it's your cat. It's magenta. It's All right, I'm, I'm sorry, sorry. I cannot believe that I'm in one of Saddam's palaces and that I don't want to change palaces. I'm a little worried Kathy might begin to think she's royalty. Yeah, it appears that uh, we had a couple of incoming rockets. Previously on My Life on the D-List. For all the conservatives that want to judge me, uh, I'm going to be in Tikrit in three weeks. Where the f*** are you going to be? When I got the opportunity to go and perform for the troops in Iraq, right away I started thinking, all right, how am I going to get them laughing? Captain Jesse, I'm not going to like start my show by saying where my gaze at or anything. That might not be a good idea. Uh, Jesse, you know it's 2006. In the event that we are captured by insurgents, what can we count on you guys paying? Well, um, so I roped in Carrie Turner from JAG and Mike McDonald from Mad TV. You know that I'm terrified of flying. Remember, if I die, I want Dominic Dunn to deliver the eulogy. Kathy, Allah Akbar. Allah Akbar. Okay, here's the thing. Get out of my way, you A-list boys. My Prada shoes are as good as yours. this administration. I feel like I don't believe anything anymore. I feel like they're all lying all the time. Bush's approval rating is 36%. That was that's so much lower than it ever was during the Monica days. Remember the innocence of Monica? Remember when all we had was a little jizz on a dress? Oh. The innocence. Oh. If I could have that dress back, I would. I swear to God, I'd blow Clinton myself. Just get him the secret I hate this administration. But so what? Doesn't make me un-American. I support the troops 110% and I'm honored to be able to go over there and perform for them. And Rush Limbaugh can disagree with me all he wants. He's supposed to be in jail anyway. So it's taken about nine months to get the army to let us go over and entertain the troops in Iraq and we're finally on our way. So you excited? Yeah, I'm nervous. I'm just nervous about the performances. The soldiers have had such a difficult time in Iraq, I want to do anything to make them laugh. So if that means changing my material, maybe taking out obscure celebrity references, I will do it. It's going to be a challenge. Fortunately, Carrie Turner from JAG and Mike McDonald from Mad TV are coming with me over to Iraq. And you know, okay, fine. I'm not Bob Hope and they're not the Andrews sisters. But apparently, hardly any entertainers want to go to Iraq, so they just have to settle for us. So we'll be gone for seven days. First, we have a layover in London, and then we go to Kuwait. Kuwait is like a holding area or an entry point for Iraq. Then, if the army says it's safe enough, we go to Tikrit. And after that, we go to Baghdad, where we're going to have our biggest show of the tour. This is uh, the first time I've ever done anything for the troops, and it's definitely my first time in a combat zone. Kathy basically relies on tricking people into doing things. She'll say something like, hey, you want to go somewhere? And then you go, okay, that sounds fun. And then she'll say, okay, the somewhere is a rack. Kathy called and said, I'm headed to Iraq. And when she said, let's go, I just jumped at the chance. Well, Kuwait is our ally, because of course we saved their asses from Saddam in the first Gulf War. It's a very Western-friendly country in the Middle East, so we can travel freely when we're there. It's a peaceful, friendly, smelly nation. What the f*** am I doing here? We've just spent about a day traveling, flying, Often on planes, in and out of airports. Do you want to open a window? If you can. Oh, it stinks. Yeah, I know. That's why they don't have the windows in. This whole country smells. We're tired. We've been traveling now for, we figured, like 31 or 32 hours, and we're kind of at the end of our rope. I feel like I have a film on me of filth. I want to shower and have some hummus. I got to do your hair, too. Yeah. We have a show tonight at the base camp in Kuwait 
for the troops and a tour and a meet and greet. It's a packed day and night. Our first show is at a base where the troops stop for a day or two on their way to R&R. &R. So it'll kind of be like performing at a bus station where everyone has somewhere else they need to be. It's all transients here, other than like 800 of us that live here full time. Oh, it's like LA. I know. It is. Everyone People living in the freeway. Peers. So we never know what you're going to get for an audience. <laughs> okay. Literally. That's all right. Good, but, um, they, they, they'll probably come in a Nazis? little bit late. No, I mean, you bad, really make it sound like it could be anybody. <laughs> so the base commander told me that there's a chance no one can come to the show tonight. So now I have to just walk around a base in Kuwait and try to drum up an audience. It's not so different from L.A. Hello there. Hi, I'm Kathy. Hi. It's so nice to meet you. Hi, how are you? Are you guys coming tonight? Hi. How are you? I'm Kathy. Nice to meet you. Who <laughs> made it? Right there. So nice to meet you. No. Okay. Uh, yeah. Knock knock. Aslan Lake across. This is like NORAD. I would like to go to DEF CON 5. Aslan Lake and fellas. So every time we greet someone who's from here, should we say Aslan Lake? Will that endear me to them? They like know we're full of shit, right? If we say something. Okay. It's a little bit like saying gracias to your busboy at home. And, and, and then them going like, I speak English ass. <laughs> Are you guys coming tonight? Uh, I'm thinking about it. Yeah, yeah, that, I know. I like how you like it. And they probably not. Assalamu alaikum. Hey, this is what All right, let's see what they mean when they say lockdown. So they took us to a tent which they call lockdown, which is where they hold soldiers on their way home to clear customs. This is like an internment camp. <laughs> it's my first chance to try my act on the troops. Can I sit here? Yeah, don't see why not. Thanks. OK, hi, everybody. Hello, lockdown. Hey. The canceled television show Jack, and we have Mike McDonald from Mad TV. We have Kathy Griffin, who's a comedian. Suddenly, Susan, Sweet. the winner of the mole. Kathy, you want to come up? Uh, how are you guys doing? You ready to go home? Uh, can you speak English? Uh, all right, so we're going to go to Iraq tomorrow, which I hear is a worse hole than this. So I congratulate all of you. And, <laughs> got insulted, I insulted Iraq. I'm sorry, I love it. I love the malls, I love the people. Oh, I could get a second home there, it's so gorgeous. Um, right out the gate, I started bombing. I got booed on my first joke. So you guys are in lockdown, which is like your prisoners. It's like your prisoners, you're locked out. Let's face it, this isn't my typical audience. They've come from the front lines of Iraq. They're exhausted, of course they just want to go home. Oh, I can feel them slipping through my fingers. Are there any women that just want to watch Must Love Dogs on a loop? Um, anyway, uh, I don't really get the whole lockdown process. Explain to me, why, why can't you go anywhere? What, here, what's your name? Bias. Bias? Why can't you go anywhere? Do you guys all have some diseases? I don't know. Scurvy? No. The gout? I don't know. Have you had your shots? No, yeah. As a comic, I don't really like to go into the audience. It's kind of a sign you're desperate. But here's the thing, I am desperate. What are you going to miss most about the beautiful country of Iraq? Nothing. It sucks, right? Roger. How come I was an ass when I said it sucks, but you're just adorable? I'm just good that way. Who do you think is the cutest guy here in this row? <laughs> Baez? Yeah, he's hot. All right. You guys watch Mad TV, right? Yeah! She was gonna make me do that, uh, which is the weirdest way to make a living is to put on a blonde wig, rouge, lipstick, and then act like a baby. So you think you guys get it hard? <laughs> How fair is this? 
I just want to give the guys a laugh. All Mike has to do is get up there and twist around like a six-year-old girl, and they're going crazy for him. Really, really or as hell. Everything that you guys do for us, so thank you so much. All right, let's be honest. I tanked at the lockdown. All right, I got to change my material a little bit. But you know what? I'm going to make them laugh. That's all I care about. That's the most important thing. Plus, the Army put all these posters around saying that they would be exploding with laughter. The Army might want to get a new PR person. Okay. Then we go from there. Do we want to we go into Dr. Phil? You want to intro me as Dr. Phil? We have a yeah. special. Okay, so Kathy will intro. Okay. And then you girls yeah. will come out swinging. That's 10 pieces. I, I think we're That's really plenty. good. That's plenty. It's well. almost showtime, and it's my second chance to get the troops Thank laughing. You. And I'm just really afraid I'm out of my element here. Now I'm like rethinking what should I do, what should I not do, what's appropriate. After I basically bit it at the lockdown, but I'm determined to get them. And I will be out there for like three hours if I don't. Just sweating and bombing. I don't care. We're supposed to introduce you now. Let's go, baby. Let's start the show. So in the end, a lot of the troops did show up and come to our show, which was great. Okay, first of all, um, I have a joke about I got shot on the way here. I was on the plane with Dick Cheney. But we'll do that joke later. Um, let's talk some about celebrities, shall we? Because that's kind of my thing. to admit. I'm not saying that you watch Oprah on purpose, but will you admit that sometimes Oprah is on TV? Yeah, yeah it doesn't mean you're gay. Relax, all right? It does not make you gay. Now, let me ask you this. Do guys still want to f*** Britney? Edgy. No? Yeah, no? Okay. So Larry King is like 200 years old now, right? And by the way, whenever they show him with the young wife, I seriously need a bucket to vomit in. It's so sick. All right? And he doesn't know who anybody is. He's like, what? Who? Where? What happened? Where? Why? Suzanne Summers on line two. So I tested the waters with my celebrity material, and it went okay, but I've yet to really crack the code to see what makes the troops laugh. All right, let's start the rest of the show. Are you guys ready for some improvs? Because I think you are. Carrie Turner and Mike McDonald and I used to do improv together at the Groundlings. Chief Master Sergeant Smith, are you here? But I haven't done this in years. It's gonna be like riding a bicycle where someone slashed the tires and the road's super bumpy and the seat hurts already, my private parts. Ladies and gentlemen, we have a visit from Dr. Phil McGraw! Pumpkin Nuts, Texas, where I'm from. Uh, now, you're a very respected man here on, on the, the base, but I have to tell you, you've gotten yourself into some trouble. Um, there are a couple of ladies here who both have their eye on the same man, and they're here to, to confront you right here, right now. Ladies, why don't you come on out? because of Chief Master Sergeant Smith. Now, did you just mumble that because you couldn't quite remember all the words? Chief, Chief Master Sergeant. At least Smith. that's what he made me call him last night. You said you was at the pool hall with the boys last night. Now I'm so mad I could just spit. But don't forget, I, I, I came over to see you later. <gasps> I see he's married, he's got a wedding ring, but I know that what? For, what? for me it means nothing. What? <laughs> Why not slap myself, Dr. Phil? Why? Why? I, it just, it seems to me like a moment of clarity. <laughs> That's my show. Good night, everybody. It was great to get through the first show. Thanks so much. Enjoy the rest of your night. You did a great job. We all have a better sense now of what the troops want to see, and I am happy to give it to them. I've been seeing here for two hours now, and I uh, got this uh, poster from the stage, and I'm gonna have them sign it. Don't be shy. Come on in. 
I shouldn't have had Oreos and spinach before I <laughs> and Whenever a celebrity or side to come over here and um, shake a hand or give a hug or take a picture, I think what it does for these guys is it lets them know that they're not forgotten. And if nothing else, they're just coming to show their support. Thank you, guys. You are my cousin's, like, hero. And to you, I'm just Clark Kent. I'm sorry. <laughs> hero? <laughs> hero. <laughs> Yes. Everyone that came up just said how happy they were to have somebody, something from home come to them. And he, there was one guy that came up and he just whispered, I've had a really, really bad day. And it really means a lot that you guys made me laugh for the first time in a long time. And that was why we were here. A lot of them came to see me and also waited for an autograph because they had nothing better to do. Let's face it, you know, it's smelly and sandy. And even getting an autographed picture for me is probably better than inhaling another cup full of sand. That's gonna be my next special title. Funnier than a cup full of sand. Ready to party? Um, I need the reclinable seat. I'm a very nervous flyer. We are flying over a country that we're in the middle of a war with. Oh, gonna go down. Yeah. <laughs> We're at the hotel in Kuwait and it's seven in the morning. Things in Iraq are just stable enough now that the army has given us final clearance to go over there. So this could be my last good meal for a while. Well, like when we go to Iraq, I don't think I can get mango yogurt, which is delicious, by the way. Assalamu alaikum. Uh, this hotel is definitely amazing compared to probably where we're gonna be staying in Iraq. But it's, a, it's kind of a shitty hotel, I'm not gonna lie. It's kind of a sucky. <clears throat> If you can just get the mural, which if you pan down, it's a kind of a sweet story of a village. Um, people going about their business, women who can't show their faces, ending in men buying guns. Today is what we've all been waiting for. We're going to Iraq, heading into a war zone. Now, I did ask Jessica if she wanted to join us. And without even thinking twice, she said, I'm not going. I don't care if you fire me, but I'm not going to Iraq. I do think Kathy's crazy to go to Iraq. More power to her for going, I just wouldn't do it. Today's flight is uh, by an Air Force C-130 cargo aircraft. And we're gonna fly there, it's called Spiker Base, which is in the area of Tikrit. I hear that this plane, they say it flies really low. <laughs> Why? They it's also will execute a combat landing. And which is diving into the ground and then pulling up for the last second. Nervous pills. You know, we notice some jinking and maneuvering as we get close to the airport there. That's kind of standard procedure for the Air Force pilots. I mean, if you don't take your nervous pills, what happens to you? I could cry. I could cry and get, um... <laughs> Do you again? Um, again, Matt. Well, for starters, I'm a very nervous flyer. On a first-class trip to New York, I typically have a couple of glasses of wine and a couple of Kleenexes and just a small panic attack. And by the way, like a lot of people think, I'd love to see you cry. It'd be so fun. It's the saddest thing you've ever seen, and it will embarrass all of you. You'll all be embarrassed. Make sure you get that. I'm embarrassed hearing about it. I have to look away just when you're talking. Now. When we get to Iraq, everything's going to change. We're going to need protective vests and helmets, security, armed vehicles. Is there any, anything I'm doing incorrect? I'm sure there is. From what I understand, we are flying in a plane that has a number and a letter, which I think is C-130. Put my head on this Kevlar. My hand. And we're going to, um, oh yeah, over a country that we're having, a, we're in, in the middle of a war with. And um, I don't even know if there's seatbelts. I'm just gonna try and um, look brave and not puss out. Ready to party? Um, I need the reclinable seat, and I would like hot peanuts. Um, the movie should be Must Love Dogs. And wake me up for breakfast. Over in the air, three alarm bells, something's wrong with the plane. Six alarm bells after that, something's really wrong with the plane. One long alarm bell after that, so shit. You're gonna go down. Standard crash procedure, put your head between your legs. Um, Bring for the best. Again, hopefully everything works out.
love to Mike. He hates flying. He's flown 30 hours to the Middle East. He looked a little anxious on the flight. Now he's flying military into a war zone. So he's been invited up to the cockpit with Carrie. They said it would calm him down a little bit, and that way he could actually see the missiles coming. Something about being in the cockpit and seeing what the pilots are actually doing that gives you a sense of control. Being up there was unbelievable. I lost my fear. Decent. We're gonna go from about 21, 23,000 to the ground in about seven minutes, so it's gonna come real quick. Make sure you guys can clear your ears now. The first thing we're gonna do in Iraq is we're gonna go to a medical clinic and visit the wounded soldiers. Also, I may assist in some surgeries. I don't know what's going to happen. What can we do? Can we spread any cheer? Oh, can definitely. we make anybody laugh? By all means, please do. That's okay. The board is all Hi. Hi. I'm Kathy. How are you doing? Hi, I'm Kathy. <laughs> all right, where do we? Where? Where does the humiliation begin? I don't know. You got to put them on. You got to film it. All right. Yes. <laughs> what kind of a sick hospital are you people running? You have to send the cast down. All right. <laughs> I love pink. I'm not afraid of it. There's a don't ask, don't tell policy with it's your cast. Magenta. It's All right. I, I'm sorry. Sorry. This is like when I started my porn career. It reminds me of that. <laughs> you know the early films. <laughs> Hi, I'm Kathy. Hi. So this, I guess, this means you're missing our show tonight. I can take a hint. Where are you from, Wayne? Sorry. <laughs> the day before we arrived in Tikrit, there was a mortar that went off outside one of the chow halls, and someone who worked in administration, really a computer guy, he was walking to a meal with his fiance and a friend of theirs. And a rocket went off, killed his fiance, killed his friend, and injured him. Hearing that story is moving because, number one, you don't think it can happen on the base, and it's such an innocent thing just to be walking to a meal. The fact that this happens on a daily basis in Iraq, and these men and women go on somehow. I don't know how they do it. Ready to go back to Already? You should give this time. Because you don't know what to do with this. Return to duty. You want to get in there? Other things to do. You have fun that way. People to take care of. I was fascinated that he wanted to return to duty. After everything he's been through, he just wants to get back to work. So you're watching wrestling. <laughs> you can't watch Oprah. I mean, come on. That's... Might have some contacts for you. <laughs> Did I make you sicker? I just made you sicker. Excellent. You're having a relapse. <laughs> I definitely use humor to, to get through everything, but it's weird when you don't know how someone else uses humor, or maybe he just doesn't feel like laughing, or maybe he doesn't think I'm funny. I mean, definitely I was apprehensive about, you know, don't upset him in any way. If anything, just just make him laugh. Are they giving you some good drugs at least? Take care of yourself, feel better. Okay. You're like Rush Limbaugh at this point. Wow. He giggled a little bit. I felt like I had an out-of-body experience because they all had the same attitude, which was they definitely did, they didn't want to be pitied. They didn't want to be coddled. I just felt like my job was to sit there and just listen to them tell their story. Bye, take care. The more I'm in an actual war zone, the more it's just ugly. 
It's not cool. It's not a Toby Keith song. It's not opening up a can of whoop ass. It's just horrible. I don't know. Is it really worth losing so many of our own? you guys when we went to Afghanistan and now she's addicted to these these tours just like I am after seeing the soldiers in the infirmary today I'm even more motivated to give the best performance I can I mean you always want to make the audience laugh of course but these people have really been through hell and I want to give them a laugh probably more than for any audience I've ever performed for so you guys help me welcome her she loves you like I love you this is Kathy Griffin you guys come on get her hand. shows I'll just come out and say where are my gays at but not tonight that's really <laughs> how about where are my infidels Woo! any infidels in the hizzy okay Woo! all right so she's definitely changing her act as she goes along she's really amazing at being able to adapt what she's talking about to get the best last what these guys think is funny is totally different than a drag show in LA or a gay reception in Houston or whatever it is she's doing I love coming here, I love meeting you guys. And when I say guys, I mean men and women. And here's the other thing, I don't think the women should be females. How come the men get to be men and the women are females? It's men and women. Women, where are you, ladies? <laughs> All right, shut the f up, you bitches. No. <laughs> He's, he's only seven years old because, um, you know, would you like to meet your new recruit, Stuart? <laughs> Stuart, Stuart, welcome, welcome to the, uh, the army, or oh, airborne, air assault. Let me do it. Please let him do it. He's very sensitive, Stuart. In the, in the armed services. What would you like to say to the enemy? Uh, I'm gonna kick ass and take names. Yes, I believe him. Hey, everybody, look what I can do. <laughs> All right, Stuart, give it up for Mike McDonald. Hey, everybody, thanks very much for the warm welcome and thank you for having us here. So the first uh, scene that we're going to do is something called A to Z. What happens is every line of dialogue that we say is going to have to begin with successive letters of the alphabet. But if we make a mistake, um, we need a punishment. What will our punishment be? Push-ups. OK. So we'll do, we'll do um, any right, Someone that... just said kill them. I think that's a little extreme. We'll do the push-ups. I'm not happy about it, but we'll do the damn push-ups. All we need now is, um, what's a, an activity that you would be doing kind of commonly in the base? Master <laughs> What's your name? Jordan. Jordan likes to masturbate, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> something, something a little cleaner. We promise we'll make it dirty. Playing card. You said playing cards. I got playing cards. That's great. So, all right, so we're playing cards, and now um, all we need is the letter of the alphabet. T. T. I heard T. Okay, we'll start with T. We'll go all the way around the alphabet to the letter T again. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, here we go. <clears throat> Ten of diamonds. <laughs> this is an ugly hand. Oh, ugly oh. hand.
looking down at the faces and just watching them giggle for a quick second, just for them to completely forget where they are and forget that, you know, they miss their family or forget that maybe part of their troop has been killed. For a quick second, that doesn't matter. And if I can do that for two seconds or be with a group of people who can make that happen, I don't know if it gets any better than that. Damn it, ace deuce. Easy. <laughs> F you really like to do push-ups. Gee, nice mouth. Hey, uh, you guys want to masturbate later? I'm gonna join Jordan. Jordan is uh, the best one on the whole base, I hear. Yeah, kicks ass. Like he's almost a professional. Focus on the cards. Quiet, I think I hear Jordan. <laughs> Run! <laughs> thank you all very much, you guys. We love you all. Thanks so much, you guys! Thank you, thank you, thank you! I thought the show was highly inappropriate and hilarious. It was exactly what the soldiers needed. Thank you so much. Thanks for coming. Thank Hi. Thanks, Dan. Of course. Always be fun. Uh, you want... Face with the possibility. Easy, right? Oh. It's not hey, how are you? Come on. I'm good. Thanks for um, bringing our show to a screeching halt. <laughs> oh, the reason I yelled the masturbation line out was it was just spur of the moment thing. It seemed like uh, a lot of us troops don't have a lot of things to do over here. And it was just something to do past the time. <laughs> oh, did we do a picture? Or are, we, are we doing a picture or not? I didn't know why you were hopping. Hey, oh, I was hey man, how are you? Okay, well, how are you? you weren't masturbating. Oh, no, not yet. <laughs> not yet. That's the way you know. I love you. Gotcha, keep it a rest. Oh, thanks. Everything was funny all the way through the show. It was non-stop laughs all the way through. I'm going to remember this for the rest of my life. This is probably one of the best things I've had since I've been over here, if not the best. Good. You got it before I came? All right. Yesterday, I lost a good friend of mine out here in this war, and um, I was very heartbroken. I haven't slept in two days, and so to have her come out for two, two hours, however long the show was, I completely forgot about everything that's kept me up for the last couple of days upset, and, uh, and I really had a good time. We've had a lot of rocket attacks over the last couple of days, and we've had some tragedy, but, um, you know, a lot of soldiers have been really heartbroken, so, um, you know, I think a lot of people needed the, their spirits lifted after something hit so close to home. We love you all. Thanks so much, you guys. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So today we fly to Baghdad for the final leg of the tour, and there's been a lot of insurgent activity, of course, and rocket attacks, so we need to be even more careful. I realize that there are inherent dangers in, uh, in coming over and doing this, so I first of all want to say thank you very, very much for, uh, you know, for putting your lives and your personal safety at risk to do this uh, for my brothers and sisters in arms. Chief Pace talked to us about incoming mortar fire, um, wearing the Kevlar jackets, wearing the helmet. The, uh, the worst things that happen in Iraq or you've, some of the things you've seen on the news, car bombs, uh, roadside bombs, um, rocket attacks, mortar attacks. If you hear a whistling sound, the best thing you can do is basically get down low to the ground at that point. It's scary enough for us to imagine being attacked, but the soldiers have to deal with it on a daily basis, which is pretty incredible when you think about it. Thank you for coming over here and doing this, and uh, I really look forward to, uh, to a great show. Even though Baghdad is going to be more dangerous than any place we've been so far, I can't wait to get there. Because tonight, I get to sleep in one of Saddam's palaces. That's right, I said palace.
Sir, this is an airport road, is it? Yes, ma'am, it is. Do you like answering obvious questions? <laughs> They're fun, aren't they? The more obvious, the better. Once you land in Baghdad, you get into an armored vehicle and you drive along the notorious airport road, which I believe is the most dangerous road in the world. At that point, you just gotta sit back and relax and play spot the insurgent. So there's an insurgent on the right, be careful. <laughs> I can tell he's got there's bad There's an attitude. insurgent crossing uh, sign. <laughs> are, we, are we in the Sunni Triangle being in Baghdad? Oh, it's, a, it's a big area, but yes, we're also. We are in sorry, yes. So yes. we're in the Sunni Triangle? We're technically in the Sunni Triangle. We would like to leave it and go someplace safer. <laughs> so if you could drop us off at the mall. I want to get a cute shirt at Forever 21. <laughs> Kathy bought a burka. She needs to return. It's a different size. It's too tight. And I like it more flowy. So I can choke myself when I swim. <laughs> Yeah. What's the food like, Anthony? It's actually pretty good. They have a variety of things. So, uh, I mean, what about for a real picky, real <laughs> horrible rats like Kathy? Uh, it's enough to almost come at everybody. <laughs> we shall see about that, Anthony. He's almost challenging you to find something wrong with me. Uh, <laughs> unless you've flown in Wolfgang Puck, I'm not going to be happy. <laughs> Even in Iraq, I have to be on a diet. Which, in some ways, is easier because the food is, by and large, horrible there. You may not know this, but the Army has its own energy bar called the Hua Bar, and it's hua -rific. Oh, these Hua Bars are delicious. I could eat them all day. So I have to be hospitalized for food poisoning. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, pretend you're doing a Hua Bar commercial to camera. Okay, okay. It's Hua, the bar that looks like pressed feces, but it's protein in a pinch. If the insurgents are chasing you down, you look at them, you go, Hua, you have to buy this Hua bar, and then... Thank you very much. What's your Hua call you? <laughs> Shoot. I can't believe I didn't get you the did, gig. You, well, you didn't have an out. Well, who the hell else is auditioning? It's you and Vicki Lewis. <laughs> <laughs> what about Kathy Lee Gifford? Uh, she's too big. <laughs> 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 This is really nice. We're gonna stay in a good place. The, the place we're staying actually has some of the original furniture left. Oh my. I can't believe we're staying in one of Saddam's palaces tonight. I hope he's expecting us because you do not want to just drop in on a dictator without calling ahead. <laughs> Coming up, I'm in Saddam's palace. It's a lot of marble. It's marble-tastic. I'm nervous about this show being outside, you know? Is it? Welcome to Ahmad Palace. It was built in the 90s after the Iran-Iraq war. Come on in. The foyer to Saddam's palace was very nice. Almost as nice as my house, but not as feng shui. So this is his last palace. He, he, had, he has eight presidential palaces. He was only here probably six or eight times during, from the time it was built. This palace was a military palace. And throughout there, you see his symbols. This will eventually t become the the people's. This will be one of their palaces. It'll be like Graceland. This will be, us. but you know, or Dollywood. But they pointed out, yeah. <laughs> but that's Saddam Hussein's initials in the top. Oh. Now he did. He thinks he's pretty special because he goes all the way to the top. Yeah. But at the very top, Allah, Allah's the greatest. God's oh, the greatest. Okay. So he did he's realize second only to he's Allah. second only to Allah. Okay. Yeah. So I'm in the Al Fa Palace. It's a lot of marble, and I think the people at the Venetian are going to be jealous. It's marble tastic. I would love to redo this whole place. First of all, I would gut it. And not with a, you know, a bomb. I mean, I would just have people dig stuff out. But I would gut it and I would want it more minimal. Um, hardwood floors, for sure, because that always ups the value of a palace. And also, here's the thing. No more freestanding sinks. That's so five years ago. It's about counter space. And that's what I would say to Saddam and other, the other Mrs. Husseins as well. What time is turnout service? Uh, yeah, we don't really offer that here. <laughs> what? I'm a little worried that Kathy might begin to think she's royalty. Uh, welcome to Mar-a-Lago. Oh. <laughs> it's our 
I cannot believe that I'm in one of Saddam's palaces. And that I don't want to change palaces. Because usually when I go to a hotel, I'll often change rooms till I get one with the best view. What with your encounter in the sheets? The sheets are of the half a million brick right now. Very high. I think this is a fine palace. It's an excellent palace for me. And uh, it definitely feels like, you know, being part of some weird page of history. Do you think this is the very first time someone, um, a husband has done his wife's hair in Saddam's palace? Yes. It's really funny to me that Matt is doing my hair at a Saddam Hussein uh, palace. And it's an interesting fact is that Saddam used to do all his wife's hair. That's what I, that's what I think, too. That's what I, Kathy told me. <laughs> I think all men do their wives' hair. I think it's just a dirty little secret, and I'm waiting for Oprah to tackle it. <laughs> it's been an amazing experience being here. At first, I had all the normal worries. Mm. Kuwait smells bad. The food is bad. But pretty petty compared to what the soldiers experience. It kind of puts things in perspective. Plastic makeup bag. Tonight's our biggest show yet, and of course I want to give the soldiers a great farewell performance. Things have really been heating up in Baghdad. There have been a lot of rocket attacks and bombings. So I just want to take their minds off it for a little while. All right, so what else do you need? Um, <clears throat> I need my camouflage pants, um, socks. A part of it is I'm nervous about this show being outside, you know? Is it? Yeah, it's just, I'm just nervous to be having like hardcore sweating. Well, the base was attacked by a, a rocket attack, or at least two rockets. Like, what are you gonna do? Do you wanna cancel the tour? was attacked by a, a rocket attack. It sounded like a couple, at least two rockets onto the base. How close do you figure it was? We think about one to two kilometers away. Okay. Told Kathy about what just happened as well. Did you hear it? I did hear it, I thought it was a door slamming. A soldier ran into my room and he just said, uh, ma'am, are you okay? And I said, yeah, why? And he said, uh, just so you know, those rockets were outgoing. And I said, oh, so when they go out, they go kaboom? And I just thought it was funny that he just told what was obviously a lie, but to make me feel better, which was nice. And uh, from what I'm, I've been told, the impact that in the area where nothing significant, significant was damaged and nobody was hurt. So okay. was hurt. Well, that's good. I'm like Kathy, I thought it was a door slam. It sounded like a metal door, like a really big, like wham. I'm like, somebody was m mad when they left or something. I don't know what you thought it was. I completely thought it was something bad. I think it made them more aware of this really is a combat environment, that the enemy is very real, and that he does have one mission to try to kill somebody, any American that he can. Are you nervous now? No, because... Like, what are you going to do? That's like getting hit by lightning. I mean, the odds probably well, not exactly. Go going into a war zone isn't really like walking down the street right. in the rain. It's not like it's something you can avoid. If it's going to be the random morons who are on the side of the road lighting a fuse off under a rocket, and then it ends up where it ends up. But what are you going to do? If it looks like another attack is imminent, then we can go to the bunkers and we can put on our helmets. Do you want to cancel the tour? Talk of more rocket attacks in Baghdad, and our biggest show of the tour might get canceled. Unfortunately, uh, my arrival here was a big day for the insurgency. I guess they have heard my Gwyneth Paltrow jokes and don't appreciate them. Being in the war zone was kind of a dream compared to dealing with my niece Claire and my nephew JP. What's the matter? Did hammer make you sick? No, I'm sick because I looked at your face. <gasps> oh! <laughs> it was supposed to be lose 10 pounds with Kathy. Now it's 12. As I'm stepping on the scale, I'm just thinking, okay, come on, let's let that little knob thing go down. Previously on My Life on the D-List, I've gone off to war. 
I've been traveling across Iraq for a week performing for the troops. Hi, how are you? My first show was a total bomb. Are there any women that just want to watch Muscle of Dogs on a loop? Finally, I figured out how to make them laugh. Hey, uh, you guys want to masturbate later? <laughs> but just as we started having fun, the reality of war kicked in. I'm tired of it. The base was attacked by a, a rocket. Do you want to cancel the tour? Okay, here's the thing. Get out of my way, you A-list boys. My Prada shoes are as good as yours. Yeah. I work twice as hard to get half as far as you. Cause I ain't no ass to kiss right. when you're living life on the D-list. We've come to Baghdad to do a big show for the troops. Get back here! It's the third anniversary of the war, and there's clearly no danger of peace busting out anytime soon. Oh. Unfortunately, uh, my arrival here was a big day for the insurgency. I guess they have heard my Gwyneth Paltrow jokes and don't appreciate them. <laughs> so they've decided to uh, fight back. Oh. The insurgents have fired rockets onto the base where I'm staying, along with my fellow performers, Mike McDonald and Carrie Turner. The base was attacked by a, a rocket attack. It was a random shot, didn't hit anything, and nobody was hurt. Did you hear it? I did hear it. I thought it was a door slamming. Do you want to cancel the tour? No. There's no way we're backing out of tonight's show. These soldiers get shot at and bombed every day. They're living on probably the most dangerous place on Earth. No one deserves a laugh more than they do. Have you been here since the uh, rocket? Oh, it was here. So do they know what happened? Mike and Carrie and I have been honing our act across Iraq all week. There are rumors of more rocket attacks, and the Army wants to cancel the show. But over 5,000 troops, our biggest audience yet, have been waiting hours for us. We are determined to go on. There was just thousands of people standing in the dirt in the night with their guns and their armor. I just wanted to make them happy. That's all I wanted to do. Hey, how are you doing? As a compromise, we're going to perform in the dark until they think it's safe to put the lights on. You guys, please welcome Kathy Griffin! How are you guys doing tonight? You did the hula, unprompted. I love it. By the way, I just want to say, what a hole. Can't we have a war in, like, St. Lucia or someplace nice next time? What the fuck? Light. I love it. This is actually our last show, and we're like all welled up and shit about it because this has been so great. I really, really appreciate how nice you guys are. I've had a lot of excitement. They let me stay in a private room, which is fancy and stuff. Although I'm gonna be honest, I was nervous about just sleeping in the bed. I'm nervous. I just didn't want to get like those weird like Iraqi crabs. I don't know. I figured they'd be like fucked up crabs with like veils and shit and holding a bazaar and. My vagina has seen enough combat, okay? I don't need... I don't need that shit. I'm sorry. Um, are you guys ready to keep going? Let's bring out somebody else. You know me from seven seasons of Mad TV. Mike McDonald! I believe you may know one of his characters named... Ladies and gentlemen, recruit just out of basic he is only seven years old Stuart so so Stuart tell me how'd you do in basic training how'd that go for you get away oh. <laughs> yeah, um, how quickly can you put your weapon together uh, like <laughs> that's an increment of time I understand it's military um, for uh, PDQ Pretty damn quick. PDQ, okay. I'm sure some of you may have a question for Stuart. Would you have sex with Kathy Griffin? Would you have sex with, with Kathy Griffin, Stuart? For um, hazard pay. <laughs> For you guys, if you don't mind, um, we're gonna just uh, make some stuff up. If you have ever seen like the Drew Carey show, whose line is it anyway? Where they make it up? We're gonna do that. Carrie Turner's coming and joining us. I I'm gonna be the producer of a new, brand new morning show, 
And Kathy and Mike are going to be the host and hostess of this morning show. So what I need, first of all, is what city is it located in? Houston. It's a Houston morning show. And the name of this fun new morning show, not, never been seen before, is? It's Kiss My Ass. Kiss My Ass Houston. I Kiss believe. My Ass Houston. Okay. When you're improvising with people who have never done it, like when we're bringing the troops up, you want to try to set them up so that no matter what they say, they get a big hand or they get a laugh. Uh, mess sergeant. Mess sergeant? Mess sergeant. Master sergeant. Oh, I thought you were in the mess hall. I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be pretty honest. I thought you said messy sergeant. <laughs> now, Cuddlebutt, uh, what's your favorite meal here at the chow hall? What do you eat? Because you got a fine, manly figure on yourself. <laughs> you, do, do you, do you I'd ever... like to have my fine, manly figure on yourself. <laughs> Woo! It's been a week of sleep deprivation, crappy food, and insurgent bombing. But tonight, we gave our biggest, rowdiest show of the tour. Thank you, thank you, thank you, guys! I love you guys! I don't know how they deal with the constant threat of being attacked, but tonight, seeing them laugh just for a little while... Wow, thank you! It was quite a thrill. I think it takes a lot of courage and uh, really big hearts for people to come over here and entertain us. It's our last night with the troops, and all I want to do is hang out with them. If they're willing to stand in line and wait, then I'm happy to meet each and every one of them. Hi, Desiree. 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 You did, Kathy Griffin. You signed your name on it. I really appreciate everybody that comes over here. Oh, that's so nice. What's your name? Hey, Will. Will. They're doing an amazing job. They're strong people, earnest people. They're like... Kids. I mean, they're teenagers. Gorgeous. <laughs> Just like you, Ben. Thanks, man. Thank you, Ben. And what's so different is I'm used to seeing teenagers on television and they're the snotty kids from the OC or the kids from Laguna Beach. And then when you see these 18-year-olds, this is a little different 18-year-old. This isn't Misha Barton getting her shop on. You know, you see this sort of uh, old soul looks on their faces and they've been through everything. Would you like a, a cheerleading pyramid next? Yeah. And flares going out of my ass? Yeah. You know, it seems like the majority of the soldiers who are actually there do want to be there. But also, it's illegal for them to say otherwise. They can't even make a joke about the president because it's illegal for them to say anything bad about the commander-in-chief. So we don't really know how they feel. Hey, Drew. Drew. Ready? Yep. yep. Okay. What's your name? Three hours later, I think I've personally met every single member of the armed forces. It's been a very exhausting but very rewarding experience. Oh, and one guy gave me his number and asked me out. Should I call him? Yeah, call him, see if he wants to swing. Our tour of duty is over, and I feel really lucky that I get to go home, but I feel guilty because our troops are stuck here fighting and dying in Iraq. It's really hard to go home. You come over here and you feel high as a kite. You feel like you're doing something and, and giving back. What I got out of the whole trip was just a uh, first-hand look at, at really, truly amazing people to sacrifice their lives and livelihood the way that they do, and to see, actually see it and, and meet them. This is very humbling. It was such a great feeling to perform for the troops. Let me tell you something. I've never felt more attractive. That is my new demographic. Guys who hardly ever see women at all. I never felt sexier, more beautiful. And they really did treat me like an A-lister. Well, this is way nicer than Saddam's Palace. <sighs> Iraq was an amazing experience, but I'm not gonna lie, I am happy to get back to my cushy D-list life. Hey, Kathy, I got 
got the Star Magazine for you. I'm back from the war and a week of crappy army food. All I can think about is eating. I think it's centerfold. <laughs> I'm finally a centerfold. <laughs> You're centerfold. But I can't indulge because one of my ongoing publicity stunts is a series of articles I'm doing for the Star Magazine where I have to lose weight. <laughs> about a month ago, the Star came over and weighed me to record the start of my diet. Now there are pictures of me as a heifer on newsstands everywhere. You want to kill them to airbrush? Just a little. One to two pounds a week for a total of 12 pounds. It was supposed to be 10 pounds. And they've gone and up the ante on me. <laughs> it was supposed to be lose 10 pounds with Kathy. Now it's 12. Well, it's what the public wants. The star is coming back in a few days to see if I've actually lost any weight. God, thanks. Even worse than diet hell, I'm about to face family hell. Hello? So a couple months ago, my brother asked me if I could watch his kids for the weekend. I'm not worried. That's what I paid Jessica for. I'm going to LAX to pick up Claire and JP, Kathy's niece and nephew. I think she's pretty nervous. She has no idea how to entertain them. Kathy's like me with kids. We don't know what to do with them. We don't understand it. We don't want kids of our own. Matt, can I count on you to not ditch me when the kids are here? <clears throat> what do you mean? What do you think I mean? You going down on the computer playing fantasy sports. I'm going to do stuff with the kids, but I, I don't know really what to do with them. Now let's run through all the things that are appropriate to talk about around them. Uh, I'm not good for children. I'm not appropriate. I swear all the time. I talk about all the bad topics. I'm gonna have the kind of talks with them that their own parents don't have the balls right. to have. Donna Summer told me that the Lord should wash my mouth out with soap. Donna Summer, who sang Bad Girls. Hi, I'm sorry I'm bothering you, and I was like insisting you call me right away. To welcome the kids to LA, I've arranged a big surprise for my niece. I've used my D-list connections to get Talon, one of the hunks from MTV's Laguna Beach, to come over today. I don't know anything about him or that show. What do you got? He was one of the heartthrobs that all the girls went after. Okay, and is he like a, he goes to clubs and he goes to mood and... He likes to have a good time, yeah. I don't want him doing anything perverted with my niece, that's all I know. <laughs> Fair enough. I will crack him in his adorable mouth. <laughs> Thanks for the help. Good luck, Kathy. Bye. What happens if one of the kids makes a mess or something? In my house? Ooh, I, I'm sorry, Aunt Kathy, I broke the door downstairs. Oh, God. We don't know what we're gonna do. We gotta hide the remote. Coming up, I don't like children. To me, they're like aliens. So, did your hamburger make you sick? No, I'm sick because I looked at your face. <gasps> Snap. <laughs> My niece and nephew are here for the weekend. It's time to act like I like kids. Welcome, man, Kathy's. Hi! Claire, you look so beautiful and glamorous. I know, I'm just gonna hold on. I love it. Hi! Hi! Hi, Johnny. Hey, what happened to your forehead? What? What happened to your forehead? I ran into like a wall. You, you what? I, to me, they're like aliens. Like, they may as well have antenna. I'm supposed to be off this weekend, but now I'm fetching lunch for Kathy's family. Kathy's just a fish out of water. Claire's easy to talk to because she's 15, you know. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what Kathy and JP have to talk about. Do you have a girlfriend? No. So how old are you? 16. And how old are you? 11. Interesting. I knew it was between 13 and 16, and I knew it was between 9 and 11. Come on. Who's a good aunt? 16, so have you had sex yet? <laughs> oh, I swear to God, if you do, I'm going to kill you. Turn lesbian and just make life easier for me? No. How would that make life easier? What about you? Yeah. Are you gay? Maybe. Oh, sweet. So what drugs are they selling in your schools these days? Ecstasy? No. Ecstasy? I haven't e? seen any Crystal of that yet. Crystal meth? Ludes? Crystal? Yeah. Wait, what's Ludes? It's a 70s thing. Yeah. Now, what happens when the pusher man comes up to you in science class? That doesn't happen. That's never happened to me. No, I'm not buying class. it. How, are you getting along with others? 
Yeah. Are you in a gang? How are your testicles? <laughs> cancer or no cancer? <sighs> have you checked them? You gotta check once a day. <laughs> Do I have to tell your kids everything? Once check your balls day? once a day. <laughs> what? I don't like to talk about that. You don't want to talk about your balls? <laughs> Not cancer. You know, God balls. made them. Let's eat. Hello. Great. Cheeseburgers are here, and everyone gets to eat them but me, because I'm doing this damn article for the Star Magazine where I'm trying to be Nicole Richie. This diet sucks. I'm starving, and I'm very obsessed with everyone else's food. What is that? Ground turkey. I'm really craving as much cheese, but combined with bread products as possible. I'd like cheese sticks and grilled cheese, cheese balls, cheese fritters, cheese pie, and also a cheese dough stack. Now, I don't know what that is, but it sounds good. Now, do you like have a bedtime that we need to adhere to? Oh yeah, what's your bedtime? Oh, we don't have a bedtime. Yeah. And is there any <laughs> limit of, of money I can give you guys? No limit. No limit. Okay, so it's just endless money and no bedtime. It's like the Laguna yes. Beach. What's your favorite kind of beer? Since I'm Irish, test, since I'm Irish, I'd have to say Guinness. That was a test, Johnny. <laughs> and you failed. Dark. You're not supposed to know beers. Claire, what's your yeah. favorite beer? What Isn't brands it? are there? I don't know. I don't drink, Claire, and I don't approve of people who do. Johnny. I'm looking right at you, you booze hound. <sighs> What's the matter, did your hamburger make you sick? Because it was too delicious? No, I'm sick because I looked at your face. <gasps> oh, snap. <laughs> you gonna snap? Clearly there's no pleasing Johnny. So I'm turning my attention to Claire. The kid from Laguna Beach is here to surprise her and probably give her crabs. Kathy, how's it going? Sorry. Hi, Kathy, nice to meet you. Thanks for doing this. No worries. My niece's name is Claire. Claire and JP, right? Yeah. It's all about Claire. Claire. You're in love with her. I love her. I already love her. Okay. Come on, come on, come on. She doesn't know I'm here. No. Nice. Are you done with this? Hey, Claire. Yeah. Claire. Hi. He's like, hi, what's up? I'm like, what What do you mean, what's up? Like, you're here, like, right next to me. So where are you from? I'm from Chicago. Have a seat, you want something to drink? <laughs> when Talon came in, she was really happy. I could tell she was, like, screaming, like, ah, in her mind. Like, oh my God, it's Talon! Now what does this say? Chairman. Frank Sinatra's chairman of the board. How old are you? 19. Why do you know about Frank Sinatra? Because like my family's like, in the mafia? Yeah. Claire, you cannot marry into this family. <laughs> they have ties. That was my whole life plan, Kathy. Gosh. It's okay, I can wait All a couple right. of years. So no. what's life like been after the show? Um, well, I've been working a lot. Um, I'm doing, I do a couple movies that are coming out. What does that mean? Porn? Gay porn? Gay porn. That's the money telling? Gay soft porn, so. I've been in the studio, too. So. Oh, no, you're not putting out some shitty rap album, are you? No, like K-Fed. No. Do you party with K-Fed? No. Have you met him? Yeah. Claire, no. I say no to this one. <laughs> I say this one's bad news. <laughs> now, do you know that you have reached out to the Midwest? Because Claire lives in Chicago, Illinois. I was in Charleston, West Virginia the other day, and that was pretty crazy. You dumbass, that's the South. Oh. Helen, <laughs> oh my God. Claire, I'm not going to say he's slow. I'm going to say learning disabled. So, Talon, tell us about your day. What happens in a, a day in your life? Day in my life. Wake up at seven lately. Get high? No, no. You, you're acting like you're high, Talon. I'm so Get tired. Get it together. You want to know you're, an, you're a role model. I got, I got a pussycat doll up at seven o'clock in the morning, put her clothes on, threw her into a limb, into a tour bus, sent her off. This is my nightmare. <laughs> you <laughs> bragging about your sexual conquest with a pussycat doll. No, Talon. No, no, she's just my friend. She's a good friend of mine. She's just. With yeah. benefits? I saw that on MTV. I don't want you to do that, Claire. Friends with benefits. You gotta call up like five people now and tell them it's over. Thank you. <laughs> Gay porn is gonna be your fortune talent. Oh, Trust me, I'm... I've been in this business a long time. If I found out his address, God help him, because I will be there taking pictures. All right, sweetie, thanks a lot. All right, y'all. I see a spinoff of Laguna Beach with me and Talon, just called Mommy and Junior, and it's like a May-December type of thing. 
and I show him a thing or two about a thing or two. That's the commercial for it. It's been a long day, and my work still isn't done. Did you take a Vicodin, Kathy? I did, I took some Vicodin, some Xanax. Claire's insisting on giving me a tennis lesson. So fine, I'll go so she can burn off a few hormones and I'll burn off a few calories. Now you just stick your wrist out. Johnny, ball boy. All right. Oh! Jesus! You got, you got it over! Kathy's kind of bad at this, but for a beginner, she's good. And oh. like Clara said, she's better than most little kids. Tennis doesn't make sense, here's why. The other person is trying to hit the ball where you can't hit it. And yet you want to hit the ball. That makes no sense to me. They should rethink it. I honestly heard something crack. Kathy did very well, I think. I'm a prodigy. I'm 26 years old and I've never really played hard like this before. <laughs> No Claire. What? No comment. Just, okay. Come up if you need anything. Hey, good night. Oh. It's exhausting being a parent. All I can say is that rock was much easier. That is not unlike the struggle within me between good and evil that goes on all day. Coming up. Oh. All right, that's it. If my parents don't come and take these children soon, I'm going to kill them. I'm skipping out on the kids this morning so I can share my insights on the war with the American people. I didn't want to go on any of the conservative talk shows, so I decided to go on Air America. Next up on Politically Direct, David Bender talks with Kathy Griffin on Air America. Welcome to the program. My first guest makes me laugh, and I'm delighted that she's joining us today. Kathy Griffin is just back from visiting our troops in Iraq. Kathy Griffin, welcome to the program. Well, tell me about this experience. It's a hard thing to work in a war zone. This is not yes. a place for comedy. Funny thing is, you know, my material already is inappropriate just because they don't really care that Gwyneth Paltrow names her kids Apple and Moses, but they so. love dick jokes, and I'm going to give them their dick jokes. <laughs> That's not Dick Cheney. Oh, here's the thing. Mm -hmm. I could make Dick Cheney jokes, but not Bush jokes. Interesting. And they really liked when I made fun of the way that we have a vice president who just shoots people in the face. <laughs> so now you went there for a week, as I understand it. You went right. first to Kuwait? Yeah, went to Kuwait first and went into Iraq. Went to Tikrit. You know, I just would make fun of how horrible it is because it's horrible at Tikrit. Were you kept from going out? You were very uh, constrained. Most journalists say this. Yeah. They can't really go into areas where people are living. You didn't get to meet Iraqis. Actually, the only time I got to meet Iraqis was in the base in Baghdad. Iraqis that just live in Baghdad, and that's their day job as they come work there. And they were very adamant about not being taped. One guy actually said to me, you cannot tape me for anything because when I go back home to Baghdad, and then he made the symbol of having his throat cut. Mm. And I thought, you know, usually when we make that symbol, we're kidding. In his case, he really could uh, get decapitated when he goes home Ooh. that night. So, it, it, you know, it's just such a brutal environment. Sure. I got to ask you, uh, you're known for gay-friendly humor. Oh, yes. Uh, don't ask, don't tell. I would say that it's much, much more hostile than don't ask, don't tell. Mm -hmm. I would say that your safety is in danger if you're out. Did you encounter any gay soldiers, even quietly? I, I found my Baghdad gay. Mm. And I was so happy because I was looking and looking. And what happened was I was doing a very long meet and greet. And this guy came up. He's, they all walk around with the M16s, right, strapped around them at all times. And so he kind of shifts it. And then just before he walks away, he shifts it to the back. And he goes, ooh, girl, this weapon is heavy. And I went, oh, and he winked and walked away. Gone into the crowd. But I was very grateful that, that we spoke gay for a moment because I speak fluent gay. You do. And it was nice to have someone speak my language. <laughs> Kathy Griffin, thank you for joining us on Politically Direct. Thank you. And thank, thank you for you. what you're doing, actually. Oh, it it's really, fun. It means a lot. I've gotten politics off my chest, so now it's back to Claire and JP. To ensure my status as favorite aunt, I've had Jessica buy them gifts. 
I'm gonna buy their love. I've gotten them presents. Presents that I know my brother doesn't want them to have. <gasps> Kids in. No way. Oh, you guys know that silly string, right? Yeah. Yeah, of course. What is it? I thought you got it for it. I did. Ooh, cute. So why'd you say, what is it? What is it? Because I didn't technically They're choose it. Give me that, I'll set it up. Here, John, you can have this too. No, it's all right. It's loaded. Here she, you're in Kathy. Just, can just, just pick one place. Don't but do don't it all over. Don't aim it at the sofa. And don't aim it at my head. If this gets all over, I'm gonna kill you, Matt. I blame you. Oh my God. Cool. John. Oh, I never should have given him those toys. Say hello to my little friend. JP is a wild banshee. When I look at JP, he morphs into like where he's got like a headdress on and he's breathing fire and he's running on a treadmill and he's breaking something. Oh my God. Don't point that thing at me. Come here. I'm gonna get you even more ticked off. I didn't buy it. I don't like children. I think they're selfish. If I accidentally got pregnant, I would definitely have the baby and then give the baby to Jessica. Oh, God. God willing, I don't have an egg left. All right, that's it. <laughs> Oh, God. A lot of women must want to give him back. I can't believe my mom kept me. I'm going to hide it, seriously, because he's going to... Can I put control. it in the safe? It's going in the safe. Johnny and a machine gun that shoots silly string. The longer you're here, the more things go in the safe. Hey Jess, let's go over this because okay. I know you're you're the same way shopping I am, which is not heard of half the. Right. Shit. All right, so yes. I'm not an onion fan. Are you willing to do it without do onions? It with the, yeah. Claire is a big disappointment. She's nothing like me. She's caring, nurturing, and she actually wants to cook dinner. Garlic skins on. Oh man, you can't come with me. <laughs> That's just the produce department, right? Oh, yeah. No, ricotta cheese is, is that refrigerated? Oh. Ricotta is uh, refrigerated. And like, is it powdery like or is it like, yeah. it's like cottage it's cheese? cottage cheese. cheese. Yeah. Fresh mozzarella. Can, I, can we go together and hold hands? What's the, what's the mozzarella? Is that powder or a stick or what is that? Uh, sure. Mozzarella Shred. will just be in the oh, cheese. Will it be like a plastic bag? Yeah. yeah. Like, Jessica, you're supposed to keep these problems away from me. I don't want to hear how you figure it out. I want to hear Mrs. Kathy, it's done. What a diva. Mrs. Kathy, it is done. <laughs> I'm all scared. I'm like, can I just take this with me? Oh yeah, take it. Do it. If JP breaks anything, if Claire's caught having sex downstairs, those would be bad, bad things. Because um, Kathy loves her house so much, I don't know which would be worse, actually. JP's an active little kid. He's got a lot of energy. I think Kathy's going to be worn out. What are you doing tonight? What was happening? <laughs> no, no, you stay here. <laughs> Kathy, of course she was a kid, um, but I mean, she doesn't know how to handle him like a parent would. Oh, no. <laughs> Did she get scared? <laughs> now try. Johnny, stop it. You can't cover the dog door with the garbage can. <laughs> and you do not be mean to the dogs. Don't. Real parent like really cares about you and just doesn't like flatter you with presents. Kathy does that a lot, like today. Oh God, don't break the elevator. My parents can never come over again. Johnny likes to break things. Where are buttons that I can push? And I don't mean metaphorically. I mean, he really wants to push every button in the house. Thank you. Johnny. Uh-huh. What are you doing? Jessica! What happened? Johnny's not helping. Johnny's not helping. How'd your hair get wet? Yeah, well, how'd your hair get wet? <laughs> oh my God, you did not fall in the pool. What are you doing today? Um, I've got therapy till midnight. <laughs> Jessica, you made that up on the spot. <laughs> the point is during it. I just to keep the oxygen going. Johnny, like, made himself scarce whenever he had to actually do anything. Oh, great. So is it time yet or not? It's sort of, and I, as usual, just watch everybody and judge them. <laughs> as long as you keep stirring it and stuff, 
You're letting oxygen into it and you're cooling it off. I'm off so in two minutes. What? <laughs> Are you actually going by the oven clock? I am. Okay, we have two minutes left. Make I'm it count. Sorry. Make it work. If we were a family, then Claire was the mom. Johnny, can you get some ice, please? No, I'm too busy. And Matt was the dad because Johnny and I didn't help at all. Johnny, quit touching stuff and asking what it is. <laughs> oh my God, what's happening? What is it? All right, let's all right, we should be serving it. Is that spoon that's out there already? Okay. Mmm. No one touched the glass. Okay. Because it will hurt. It's very difficult for me to look at Claire's pasta casserole and not eat the whole thing and kick her out of the house. It's not personal. I just want everyone to leave so I can eat that entire pan of pasta. But, you know, I got my big weigh-in coming up, so. Do you have a migraine? Yeah, looking at your face. Oh my God, again with oh the face. Oh God, I swear to God. <laughs> I'm gonna put a fork in his throat when he sleeps. Just eat, I'm full. Did you at least well, why would it? that be a reason to stop eating? Because I looked at your face. Did you at least sleep? <laughs> it is a bloodbath in here. You know if I ever fight back, you're dead. Yeah. Like, you're not even in the game. Oh, I hope there's like a lot of fog tonight. So I don't oh, have I to see your me. face. I love people. <laughs> oh, you got too bad. <laughs> Here's the thing. If I had kids myself, I'd be I'd be on the news because I would have I would have like left them somewhere. Now, if I drove you like five miles away and dropped you off, do you think you could find your way back home? Or I would have like been one of those women that like gives the kid to her sister and then their whole lives they think they're the sister's kid. And then I tell them when they're like 40. Coming up. Oh. I'm starving and I'm crankier than normal. Okay, ready? Yeah. I am so nervous about this way in. Hi, Baka. Hi, hi. What is this I see? Oh, I, you ran into a wall. Yeah. I think Claire and JP had a lot of fun this weekend. But if my parents don't come get them, I'm going to kill them. It's for the dessert. Where are the waffles and sausage? No, it's a pa Claire made pasta, delicious pasta. Oh, this was a late breakfast or lunch or what? Lunch. Oh, I'm, I'm leaving. Lunch. I'm going to IHOP and get something. Dad. Oh, Papa. I don't know who's more exhausting, my parents or my niece and nephew. This weekend taught me that boarding school is a, the way to go. And I say younger. Don't send them when they're five. Send them the first time they poop in their pants. Johnny has a question from the floor. You know how Italy looks like a boot, like mm -hmm. a fashion boot? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I bet it's Gucci. Possible. All right. Oh, gosh, I never even thought of that, John. That's yeah. pretty darn smart. Well, this was very, mm. very wonderful. She was uh, slaving over that all the time. I know. Yeah. I know. We're not used to this. Ma, I'm exhausted from having these kids. Oh. I'm exhausted. You, you gotta take these kids. <laughs> I was a much, much better child than this, right? I think they learned a lot from spending time with me and Matt. I think Claire learned that it's okay to have sex with Talon from Laguna Beach. I think JP has learned to ignore authority. And let me tell you something, when they capture him for being something like the Unabomber, I'm not gonna be one of those people that say, oh, I didn't see it coming, he was a nice guy. I'm gonna say, yeah, I've seen him with the silly string gun. Okay. Bye again, Bye, guys. Bye. 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 I'll see you next time. Kids are hard. Why does everybody want to have them? Everybody hold on for dear life. There you go. No. Bye. You want a comedy notebook? Yeah. Did you bring that? Mm -hmm. Bye, be safe. Bye. Playing parent to my niece and nephew has made me feel a little too much like a soccer mom. So to get my edge back, I booked a show in Sin City. We're in Las Vegas, Nevada, where I am headlining at the Sun Coast, which is, well, it's not exactly on the Strip. It's in Summerlin. It's more prestigious than being on the Strip, they tell me. And tonight, I'm going to try out my Iraq material for the first time, and I'm really nervous. Hi! Welcome to Santa Ana. Some friends have come to wish me well in what is my Las Vegas debut. Tonight's the first time I'm gonna do um, my Iraq material, so I'm gonna try to make my trip to Iraq funny. So I don't know. Vegas is very conservative. Remember poor Linda yeah. Ronstadt? They walked her out for yeah. saying something nice about Michael Moore. So I don't know, we could all just get kicked out on our asses tonight. Regulate. <laughs> it may not be funny at all, I don't know. It might just be weird or intense, but at the very least, I I'm hoping to be compelling. 
Okay, Iraq. I thought I would read the, um, I'm so nervous. Can we do it? Like read the language restrictions. Okay. I don't know if I can make it funny. I don't know if they're gonna care. I was gonna do the joke I did in Iraq about how there was a rocket attack and then I realized it was just Dick Cheney shooting one of his hunting buddies. I'm anxious to try it out, but I'm also nervous. Oh, I wanted to talk about the three veiled chicks at the Kuwait airport and uh -huh. how they were like three Paris Hiltons, but we're- Well, do you want to set it up at all that like there's not that many Kuwaitis, but everybody who is born a Kuwaiti is no, born into money? I don't okay. feel like that that's, I mean, that's interesting, but I feel like the funny part is seeing three veiled Paris Hiltons. Right. Hot. I'm ready to go. Well, you couldn't be prettier. <laughs> I guess. I can't imagine that they're going to see very many other comedians who are going to talk about their trip to Iraq. So I'm bringing that to the table. Ladies and gentlemen, give it up for hilarious Kathy Griffin! When you're on the D-list, sometimes you just introduce yourself. I used to do it where I would try to change my voice. Now I just commit to it. I'm against the war. I'm sorry. Go ahead, turn on me, but hear me out. And by the way, sir, who just booed, guess where the f I was three weeks ago? Baghdad. So suck it. I, I was waiting for Bill O'Reilly to come over. Huh, he never uh, made it. Anyway, um, we land in Kuwait and go to the Kuwait airport. And I just want to say, one of the reasons that I'm against the war is, I'm telling you, the culture is so different. I just feel like we have no place there. The minute I see the veiled women, I'm fucking pissed off. Like, the minute I see them, I just want to go around, like, castrating guys. But yeah, I can't. That's not that practical. Anyway, so in Baghdad, you're not going to believe where we got to stay. Saddam's palace. I swear to God, there's something so liberating about being an American woman and sleeping in Saddam's palace. It was so like, I just wanted to like vote. Like I didn't want to do everything a woman. I was, I was just walking around like having my period on the floor. F you. Nobody tells me what I can. I'm an American woman. F you. I've returned to LA for an even bigger performance. I thought it was lose 10 pounds with you. Were. No, it's 12. <laughs> uh oh, the pressure. Yeah. At any moment, Star Magazine will arrive to interview and weigh me. I haven't had water since yesterday, or food. You can't drink a little bit of water? I'm dehydrated. No, I think if I drink one sip, I gain two pounds. <laughs> All right. All right, so here's the plan. Okay. Let's plan the um, post weigh in meal. <laughs> <You're>... <laughs> Which I have been thinking about for 48 hours nonstop. <laughs> All right. All right, so here's what I'm thinking. Okay. I've been really craving Porto's potato balls. Get me two potato balls. Just two? Yeah, because I'm also going to have you get me a Cuban sandwich. Oh, okay. I am exhausted. I'm dehydrated. I'm starving. I'm thirsty. Mostly I'm cranky. Oh, no way. Okay, did anybody have one of these? Okay, I don't care if someone has the olives or the fruit medley, but I want the creme brulee chocolates by Godiva. This is what those skinny girls must feel all the time. No wonder they're getting into fights at nightclubs. I should have some gum. Can I have some gum? Do you have some? How's my hair look for the star? Beautiful. I have a new perspective on all those girls, on Lindsay and Nicole and Mary Kate. Those girls are just hungry. So this is how Nicole Richie feels all day. They gotta feel it, right? Like, Nicole Richie, wherever she is right now, in her size, 18 months, outfit that she's wearing, she's gotta be cranky. Welcome to the most nerve-wracking day of my life. <laughs> right on cue, Whitney, my publicist, shows up with the team from The Star. How are you? Hey, Whitney. Yo, nice. Hi. Welcome to the most nerve-wracking day of my life. I was surprised, because she's really tiny. This is Bobby, my trainer. Hi. I'm Susie from Star. She can attest to the fact that I really do work out sometimes. Yeah. Yes. I'm here to see how she did on her program. If she doesn't make it, I'm going to smack her. No, I'm sorry. <laughs> no. Let's talk about your, you and your ass. Okay, <laughs> let's go. How to make my ass hotter. Yes, I, I'm loving it. You walked up in front of me on the stairs. I was, yeah. <laughs> it's pretty sweet. So now, whose body are you kind of emulating? Well, I, I really am not able to, to emulate any bodies in the star except the old Kirstie Alley pictures, and I miss them. 
<laughs> I miss those old Kirstie days. I know, the good old days. Her at in and out Burger, just red-handed, like looking at the photographer. Just all, all full of just shame. Just all busted. Yeah, <laughs> I really, really miss it. Nothing thrills the American public more than when a hottie falls from grace. Oh, it's great. Oh, my God. It is like a hug. But I, I also like it. it when a beast gets really hot. Oh, yeah. I root for the beasts. Yeah. Yeah. Me too. Right on. Who's a hot beast? I, I was a, um, a beast in college. No. It's the truth. I don't believe you. Oh, my God. Such a beast. A land monster. In fact, I was telling my friend recently, I was always really, really thin. Now it's, now it's about me. We're going to shift it onto me. <laughs> Thank you. I'm not sure Susie's deal. I noticed right away she wasn't recording the conversation. Her tape recorder wasn't on. She didn't even have one out. And reporters always take out that mini cassette and put it on. So I think when, when really thin people gain weight, they have like reverse anorexia. Can't. She was really neurotic too. She was like talking about her own bulimia. So I had that going on. So I was wearing a belly shirt. because She's skinny and sometimes she thinks she's too skinny and sometimes she doesn't know. And this guy comes up to me. And, and then I was like, oh, my interview is in the way of her talking about herself. Just like relentlessly, like wow. just, yeah. And then I went and whipped silently. It was, I, I learned a lot about her. Let's do Let's the way in, because I'm really, yes, I don't know okay. why I want to do it, because I'm so afraid oh, of yeah. being humiliated. Oh, God. Okay, what I, I'll put it to what I did weigh, which is 138, right? This is it. My final weigh in for my Star Magazine article. Okay. All right. Drum roll. Here we go. All right. Okay, you ready? Yeah. As I'm stepping on the scale, I'm just thinking, okay, come on, let's let that little knob thing go down. Come on, knock it down. I started out at 138. The article says 12 pounds, so as long as I'm 126 with clothes on, I'm golden. That's right. 134. Right. Nice. 130. Nice. 126. Oh, Keep going. 122. 121. Yay. 17 pounds. That's good, right? Yes. <laughs> I'm really excited because it was lower than I hoped. And I knew that if it was 126, then that means I would have lost the 12 pounds. And it was 121, so I lost 17 pounds. Come on out. Okay. A month ago, I could barely fit into these jeans. Now I feel like Ashley Olsen. Wow. So these are the pants. What size are these? I don't even know. Yeah, let's check it out. Well, they're 20 B Euro sizes. I'm looking at your butt. <laughs> just says just Cavalli. Okay. Okay. But nice butt, nonetheless. In an ideal world, I would love to be friends with Kathy Griffin, but I think I would be aiming like way out of my social stratosphere, you know? So I wouldn't dare go in that direction. But I feel like Kathy and I could have some sort of, you know, dynamic sexual spark. And I thought she felt like it too. <laughs> and could you pass on my number to her, maybe? No? Okay, sorry. Well, hopefully Kathy won't put the pounds back on. She seems to be motivated to keep this weight. Um, and so I hope she stays with what she's been doing. I may not be a chef, but I have a recipe of my own. I call it cake soup. You take two pieces of hot chocolate cake and you put them in a mixer with a pint of vanilla ice cream. And then you eat it at the counter. Good. I can't stop. I need to stop. Don't you look it's at me disgusting. like that. Next on my life on the D list. You know I can't ever turn down work. So I end up doing corporate gigs where they don't really know who I am. It's not my crowd. Kathy. Kathy, right? Yeah. That's Kathy Lee Kippard. <laughs> Once you see the gay guy bend over and blow himself, I'm done. That was a little bit over the top. On the home front, I have a puppy problem. If Pom Pom eats one more thing, I'm going to bite her. As a last resort, I've brought in a specialist with some very cutting edge ideas. <laughs> Hi, we're here. I found a new way to please my parents, and it's not booze. Oh my god, where did you get this? Uh, Bill O'Reilly, take a look at your demographic. Yeah! Kiss my ass, Iraq! Previously on My Life on the D-List. Goodbye, everybody! Being in a war zone was kind
kind of a dream compared to dealing with my niece, Claire, and my nephew, JP. Oh my God. What's the matter, did your hamburger make you sick? No, I'm sick because I looked at your face. <gasps> <laughs> it was supposed to be lose 10 pounds with Kathy. Now it's 12. I started out at 138. That's 134. Right. 130. Right. 126. Oh, 121. Yes! Okay, here's the thing. Get out of my way, you A-list boars. My Prada shoes are as good as yours. so much to cover. First of all, let me just say this. Moses? <laughs> Paltrow names the other kid Moses? Are you kidding me? How old is he in rehab? 10? 11? Does no one remember the cruelty of the schoolyard? Hey Moses, where are your tablets? I mean, come on, I can hear it now. Can I pull your beard? Oh, he's four. He doesn't have a beard yet. He's just named Moses. That's so up. Thank you, you guys have been When you're in show business, people assume you're making a ton of cash. And your biggest problem is which accountant to trust with all your millions. Not for this D-lister. Oh no, Team Griffin is in business. Do you have the paperwork and stuff? Yeah. That was on the My staff paper. works round the clock to keep the machine running. And by staff, I mean Matt and Jessica. I gotta keep earning. I gotta pay the IRS half, agents, publicists, lawyers, upkeep of the house, the dogs. And I have to pay Jessica her salary of $15,000 a week. She told me that was the going rate. What phone calls you had to make, so I gotta call our real estate attorney. I've gotta feed the beast. Make the monthly nut. And if you think it's not a business, just watch. In Beaver Creek, I have a corporate. That means a corporation has hired me to perform at their party. You know, I can't ever turn down work. So if you meet my quote, I'm there. Speak of the devil! I'm very motivated by money, and I found that money makes you happy. So the old adage is wrong. I'm happier with money than I was in my studio apartment for seven years. Hi, how are you? You are taller. A company called FTI has hired me. I don't know what they do. The F is for financial, that's all I know. Corporate crowds are very different. People in the audience, and when I say people, I mean middle-aged, straight white men, my nightmare demographic. They don't know exactly what I do. I'm about as nervous as I've ever been. What time is it? Uh, it's 8.35. <sighs> All right, I gotta change. The worst case scenario is I go out and they don't like what they see. Then flop sweat begins. My bangs stick to my forehead, and then I get the sweat on the top of my lip, like a mustache of sweat, and sometimes it will drip from my nose down over my lip. And then, of course, the ultimate, which is the butt crack sweat. That's when you're afraid to turn around because you might actually have like an oval-shaped spot on your ass crack. How do you feel about going down and scope out at the rim right now? What do you want me to look for? Just see like how many people are in there, what they're like, are they rowdy, what the age is, what they're dressed like. Right. The corporate events never really turn out that well. The audience is supposedly 70% Republican. The people who are in the corporations are stuffy, kind of older guys who haven't really heard of anything that she talks about. It's not my crowd, meaning they're not coming to see me. So it's not people who bought tickets knowing that they were going to come to see me. I've never seen uh, or Kathy Griffin or, or whatever. Kathy somebody. I didn't even know there was going to be comedy. <laughs> Sorry. Never heard of her. I've never seen her before. Same. Kathy. Kathy, right. Thank you. She's the, was the redhead that was on the show with the tall woman. No, and it'll be fun. I, it's always fun to meet a famous person. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's really hard because you know in the first three minutes. If it's going well, then great. But if it's not, then um, you're like stuck there sweating the whole time. I thought it was Regis's wife, but I, 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 I guess I'm wrong about that. That's Kathy Lee Kipper. <laughs> Let's go. Okay. Hi. Hi, how are you? 
Please laugh at everything I say. I will. Thank you. This one has not specific language restrictions. They just said not to be too crude. So that's always hard for me because I like being crude and I love swearing. She can't do any political stuff or she'll piss them all off. It's always tricky to not mix in too much Jesus because that's the same crowd, the same crowd that doesn't want to hear the F word, doesn't want to hear you malign Jesus. Hi, how are you? But see, what I don't get is like, is fisting bad? Maybe barebacking is bad. So there's a lot of words like that that aren't technically swear words, but might make them uncomfortable. It's in here, right? Yeah. Okay. Please join me in welcoming the hilarious Miss Kathy Griffin. Before I could do my stand-up, I had to hand out awards at their so-called Oscars party. The first Oscars party I'd ever been to without a single gay guy. Oh, are you ready for the awards? Yes, let's right. get them out. The first one is most likely to get hurt. Most likely to get yeah. hurt. Joe, come on up! Oh. I do like when the corporate guys come up and they're not used to being on stage, and it's always fun to see who's uncomfortable, who grabs my mic, who grabs my ass. My wife's not here, so this is all right. You just get through it. I didn't know I was going to win. So it's enough of an honor just to be nominated. It's, it's just an honor to be with you. And how do you... Hi. <laughs> Finally, it's time for me to just do my regular set. Well, a regular set as I can do without bad-mouthing Jesus. All right, so first of all, I don't get Cirque du Soleil. And I know, I'm sure you guys love it. I know that she stands alone. I don't get it. I don't like it. I don't want to see a French-Canadian clown spend 20 minutes slowly rolling a beach ball across the stage while saying, ay, ay, ay. I don't know if that's a joke in French. I don't know what that is. Ay, ay, ay. Shut up with your big shoes. And I don't get it. Okay, the contortionists are very impressive, but to me, once you see the gay guy bend over and blow himself, I'm done. That's a show, it's a showstopper. Don't get me wrong, it's a showstopper. Tell me if I cross the line, I do not want to. All right, later on I'm gonna get some more of my like, blue material, but now I'm just doing my family show. This, is, this one's for the children, it's for the children. Which is kind of ironic, because I hate kids. Now, hear me out, I know that sounds harsh, but here's the thing, I don't like babies because they're so selfish, right? A baby never asks how my day is going. It's me, 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 I'm a baby, whatever. The minute an 18 month old asks me if I had a good audition, then maybe I'll change my tune. All right, that's it for me, you guys. Thank you so much, you've been lovely. Thank you. Thank you, Griffin, ladies and I think for this crowd, that was a little over the top. About the gay guy who, uh, you know, bent over, uh, gave himself a blow job. That was, uh, that was a little bit over the top. Sort of funny, but it said a lot of bad words for me. <laughs> and I didn't really like that she didn't like kids, because I'm a kid, and I love kids. My show is R-rated. And as far as I knew, I was performing to a room full of adults. Not so. Matt said that someone did have to usher their 10-year-old girl out, to which I say, you know, you should have done it sooner. What the hell? Okay, and you know what? There's kid time and there's mommy and daddy time. And wherever I go is not kid time. I've played in front of kids before. It's awful. I have nothing to say to them. But... Um, why do you like kids? <laughs> oh, it's a joke. I like kids. Especially when they're as nice as you. Bad enough I gotta kiss up to all these corporate guys. Now I gotta kowtow to the kids, too. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> well, what's up with that little kid? <sighs> While Kathy is away, which is a lot, it's my job to manage the business on the home front. It's not easy, especially when you have to deal with out-of-control dogs. Pom-pom! Chancy! The dogs are not behaving. They won't come when they're called, and treats and food don't lure them in. Come and get it! There they are. Not a care in the world. Pom Pom had explosive diarrhea in my office the other day. And that was fun for me to clean up. I do think Pom Pom needs a trainer and quickly. 
because obviously she won't listen to me. I don't think the dog situation is going to get any better. I really think Kathy needs to get us some help. Chance, pom -pom. I'm going to the Triton Hotel in San Francisco with my gay visionary Mike Nielsen and his associate Belinda. I do have good taste, I just can't do anything. And by good taste, I mean you guys just do everything. We're designing a suite in the hotel which will be named in my honor. Now I tried to get them to name the entire hotel in my honor, but apparently they're sticking with Triton. Hello. Hi, how are you? Great, thanks. This isn't a paying gig, but I hear that San Francisco is really starting to catch on with the gays. So it's an investment. We've only got a week to get the room ready because I'm having a local gay superfan spend the very first night in the Kathy Griffin suite with his friends. Hey, Brian. How's everything going? Dave says hello. I talked to him oh, last good, night. Oh, good, good. Hi, I'm Brian, Brian Fenway. Hi, Mike. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Are you ready to see your room? <laughs> yes, I can't wait. Okay. So we're going okay. right in here. <sighs> the biggest problems are it's small. But I know Mike, and he's so talented, so he's going to make it nice. It needs work. A lot of work. We have seven days to have a suite. A little rush job for you, maybe? We'd like to tear it down and make it bigger, but we have to work with what we have. <laughs> more room. So. Kathy wants a more spacious room, so I don't know how we pull that off. but We'll figure it out. We want to do this in a week. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> we talked about this. You know, not two days. Cool. All right. See you guys. Excellent. The Kathy Griffin suite was more of a room. It wasn't in good shape, I'm gonna be honest. This particular suite, uh, I believe it has been Graham Nash, uh, Judy Blue Eyes suite uh, for several years. Prior to that, uh, I think it was the Joe Boxer suite. The Joe Boxer suite? So it used to be named after men's underpants? And then a washed up rock and roller? I'm going back to LA. Mike and Belinda can deal with this. All right, you guys, I'll see you next week. Bye, Kathy. Bye. I can't wait. We'll have a lot of consultation calls. Have fun! <laughs> I'd say 90% of the people that check in, when they're given the key to the Kathy Griffin suite, are gonna go, oh, she's so annoying. But then when they walk in, the room isn't as annoying as I am. I'm more annoying than the room I'm in. Thanks, Gina. You're welcome, have a safe flight. Okay, have a good one. Bye-bye. Coming up. <sighs> she's supposed to shoot us. My two dogs are very different, so there's Chance, who's a real watchdog, and he's really faithful, and he'll rip your throat out if he you thinks you're gonna threaten me, and he wants to please you. And then there's Pom Pom, and she's like my 13-year-old daughter. Like, basically, Pom Pom's inner monologue is, when I am 18, I am so out of here. <laughs> like, she's the rebel, she's like untrainable. Okay, she kind of rolls her eyes when I walk in the room. <laughs> Did you see this? <gasps> How is she chewing more as she gets older? She's supposed to chew less. Well, I think all these, uh, these chew toys that we give her. I agree, I think that's a really bad call. So I'm supposed to be relaxing in between gigs, but turns out now I have to deal with Pom Pom and her chewing problem. Some day off. This is all new. This is all new, I'm telling you. I remember seeing cardboard, but there's the wooden parts new. Oh, I can't take it. So I gave Jessica a simple task. Get a dog trainer to my door now. So Jessica found a top-notch dog trainer. She's a German disciplinarian, and like a BMW, she does not come cheap. Hi. Hey, oh my God. So I'm Kathy. How are you, Kathy? Hi, how are you? Hi, I'm Matt. This is Pom Pom, and uh -huh. she's our eight-month-old. Okay. Here's Pom Pom's handiwork. Oh, yeah. Basically, there's really only two things that I really care about. Uh -huh. The sofa. Yeah. And the other thing is that neither one of them come when we call. Mm -hmm. But if they're... Perfect timing. The dog door. Just after the German dog trainer arrives, Pom Pom disappears. She's a sneaky little bitch. Pom Pom's gone now. That's, uh -huh. Well, come and let's go see where she went. Pom Pom! See, she goes up to the white house. Oh. Pom Pom! For the first time since we've had her, runs back in the house. 
<laughs> okay, wait a minute. Squirrel, we can. What did she respond to in what you just did? Pretend you're a squirrel and big, you know. <laughs> That'll do it, you know. That makes sense. If you're crazy. Or if it's really bad, dropping on the floor and pretending you're a dead beetle, like beetle dying, that like, <laughs> that kind of thing will also work. Pom Pom, come here. Here, Pom Pom. So I lay down the floor and pretend to be a dying beetle, or my interpretation as an artist. Ah, beetle dying! Help, 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 <laughs> My dying beetle was way better than Renata's. All right. Thank you so well, thank much. Thank you so much. much. We'll practice, I promise. Good. Bye, Bye. Renata. Bye. Thanks. Bye. My schedule is very full. Some jobs I'm proud of, some I'm not. Most I'm not. The point is I have a full schedule and that makes me feel important. Designer Mike finished the Kathy Griffin suite right on time. So now I'm back in San Francisco to make sure everything is perfect for my super fan before he checks in for the night. Oh, this is incredible. This is <laughs> off the hook. Seeing a redesigned hotel suite, nothing better. Pittsburgh Steelers winning the Super Bowl, the Kathy Griffin suite. Right. Hey, Brian. Yeah. How's the room doing? Pretty good. Have you seen it? Maybe. <gasps> Are they done yet? Maybe not, maybe. Well, done is relative. That is relative. <laughs> Mike! Hey. How are you? Hey, Good Matt. to see you, Mike. How are you? Good. Good. Can you see it? Can you see it? Yes. Yes, you can see Come it. Come on. I'm getting with anticipation. Thanks, Matt. It's the sixth floor, right? It's the Kathy Griffin floor. <gasps> oh! Hey. Mike, this is insane. Oh my god. The Fratezi sheets are like gorgeous. And? I mean, are you dying? Yeah. The room looks amazing. Mike is amazing. If you don't already have a gay visionary, I highly recommend picking one up. <laughs> yes! Thank you. Oh my god. Thank you. Oh my god. So everything is ready for Mike Sullivan to come tonight. He's a super fan of mine who's been emailing me for years. I'm counting on him to spread the good gay word all over town. Have you jumped in the bed yet? No, I don't want to mess it up because when the gays come, I want it to be perfect. You know oh, how they well, are. That's what it has to be perfect. When are, the, when are the gays coming? The gays are coming at a quarter to six. Okay, okay. I think that this room is good enough for the gays. And the gays can be tough customers, especially the San Francisco gays, because they know their design stuff. And this room would please any gay anywhere. Hi, good, how are you? Some water? Sure. So, I'm guessing Mike will be the really sensitive, artistic type of gay guy. Probably kind of shy. I hope there's lots of bitchy furniture and loud music. Dancing people, I don't know. A DJ, can we get a DJ in there? I know he'll treat my suite with the highest degree of gay respect. And I think we're just gonna get really wasted and piss off everyone in the hotel. Hey! Hi! How are you? How are you? Good to see you. You look fabulous. Hi, Matt, hey, Mike. How are you? you look amazing. How are you? Good to see you. Good to see you as well. Great. Boys. Oh, hi. Hi. Hey. You. Hello. Hello. Nice you. What's your Thank name? Thank you. Angelo. Angelo. <laughs> nice to meet you. This is designer Mike, who did the room. I'm a little, I'm a little bit clamped. <laughs> like I'm sweating, like a Guatemalan oh, whore in here. Just up. schwitzing all over. So guys, <laughs> you're spending the night here. I think he wants no. to stay the night with us, is why he's uh, yeah. Mike, don't do it. They're a bad crowd, I can tell. They're a bad influence. <laughs> the These gays are from the wrong side of the gay tracks. <laughs> so here's the thing, is when we come to LA, like Matt? we should hang up. You're not coming within 20 feet of her. Really? Oh my oh, god, Matt! You're all getting along so much! You let Lance Bass on your couch and we can't watch TV with you? I feel like he's kind of not so happy right now. No, he's very shy. Too many gays. Yeah, he's, gay. he's reached his gay ceiling. And <laughs> he's also very shy. Now that he's lost the weight, he's a hot item. I know, that's why I, I feel like he's... You, you know, the gays are so shallow, you didn't want him when he was big. No, now y'all want him. No. Matt can't stand Mike Sullivan. I could tell Matt was doing that thing where he was fantasizing, punching him in the head. I could see it in his face, like he was 
He was actually picturing like his fist drawing back, connecting with Mike's face, Mike's head exploding and his guts going all over the wall, and me like going, no, why? And Matt like just laughing and jumping up and down. Okay. Well, you are going to be so knocked out when you see the room he did. I wish, is there, is there a DJ in there? Him? There should be a DJ. But I might get really f***ing wasted tonight. This evening is a disaster. Now I got to play host to these guys in my suite? Look, every so often you get yourself a bad gay. I'm sorry, they can't all be Clay Aiken. Hey, let's go upstairs. Oh, oh I'm excited. <laughs> yeah. Okay, let's go. <laughs> I love it. George. I don't Just mind if I do. Come on. I think you should get in the bed, Kevin. <laughs> they're, they're Italian. So they're Italian. It it's Italian linen. It's okay. They never even said to Mike, like, oh my gosh, what a great job, or how did you come up with this color? I mean, I've never seen gay guys so disinterested in design in my life. They'd be nice and sweet for a minute, and then it would be, girl, you need to rethink that outfit. Kathy, I love you, but the camel toe has got to go. What? <laughs> <laughs> that was the straw that broke the camel toe's back. I cannot get out of this room fast enough. All right, boys, enjoy the sweets. Thank you. You know my dream is to just have Aniston live not even a day in my life, 10 minutes. 10 minutes with Aniston just standing there and Mike Sullivan telling her she has a camel toe. 10 minutes. She's crying by minute three. Bye, you guys. Bye, bye. Have you. fun tonight. Bye. I gotta tell you, I was nervous when I left the room because I really felt that they were extremely disrespectful. Uh -huh. Cute. She is not cute like She's this. Cute in this. <laughs> <shit. laughs> like here's this beautiful brand new white bedding, and I thought, you know, don't like sit on there with your shoes, and don't bring the food on the bed, and don't be spilling stuff. And they were like teenagers, where you wouldn't leave a bunch of teenagers in some beautiful room that you just redone. Oh, you're coming. I guess everyone's invited. <laughs> I heard that they got kicked out that night. Coming up, I'm trying to train my dog Pom Pom not to run away. You think we can get Jessica to put on a rat costume and fire a gun and scare her? Did she want her job? This is where I draw the line of being an assistant. So Renata sent me an email. She sent you an email? Renata is the crazy German dog trainer who's trying to train my dog Pom Pom not to run away. Hello, Kathy, Matt, Jessica, and Chance. What about Pom Pom? She's not allowed to hear. I hope she doesn't mind that we talk about her behind her back. But she obviously does need help. <laughs> Here are some of the problems we talked about. Running away. There are four things that will stop Pom Pom from running away. One of which is to scare the living daylights out of her if she does get off the property. And then she suggests a man dressed as a gigantic rat outfit firing a gun in the air, for example. So she has to leave the property, and then you scare her by firing a gun into the air. Well, that would have been good last night when she kept going under the fence. It would have been good to have if someone dressed a it as a giant rat shooting a gun. Do you think we could get Jessica to put on a rat costume and fire a gun and scare her? Does she want her job? Hey, Jess. Yeah. Can you come up for a sec? Sure. Okay. Um, I have an unusual request. What? This is from Renata, the dog trainer. And one of the suggestions she has is to have someone dressed in a gigantic rat costume <laughs> oh, firing a gun in the air. Where are you going to find a rat costume? eBay. <laughs> That's where she kept her job. All right, let me know how it's going. Bum, bum. This is where I draw the line of being an assistant. I don't plan on buying a rat costume. I don't plan on making one. I don't plan on researching it. As I said, I'm gonna pretend like they're kidding. All right, I'm getting the vibe that Jessica doesn't want to put on the rat suit. Fine, I'll concede. Although I hear that Andy Dick makes his assistants dress up in rat suits, and then he f***s them. I think I should do it. No, nah, you can't get up Jessica? Kevin? Will you come here for a sec? I can't bring myself to make you go get a rat outfit and sit on the hill and shoot a gun. Okay. But will you find me one? Yeah. A sexy, ratty, but scary, really scary. Okay. I'd like it in 48 hours. Thank you. <laughs> I can't take all the dog drama. So I'm meeting with two of my girlfriends for lunch. 
You're hugely successful in stand-up, so you can barely go on a vacation, but where right. were you going to oh, go? Oh, yeah, yeah, um, Actually, I was thinking of going to Thailand. <gasps> really? Really? For the young boys? Yes, for the young 14-year-old <laughs> boys that I will be having the dirty sex with. <laughs> Caroline Ray and Rachel True are both actresses. Caroline had her own show, and she's on The Biggest Loser, and she's a comedian. Rachel is on that show Half and Half. She's one of the halves on Half and Half, and I love those girls. Now, have you started the new season yet? No. Next when week. do you start? Next week. <gasps> For Biggest Loser. And how long do they have to lose the weight? Yeah, how long do they have to lose the weight? Two months? No. It's got to be more than that, right? 14 weeks. Oh, 14 weeks. I was like, weeks, why couldn't right. I post a show like, you know how like Alex Trebek does four seasons in a week? I have to actually do the real-time show. Oh, why is that? They're, you know, right. they're losing they're right. actually losing right. the weight. Right. I'm like, wow, that looks you. awful. I can't believe anyone really thought that's what I wanted. I know. <laughs> I know. I was like, that is so healthy. Can I have a little of that? Awful. You're not going to eat yes. the whole thing, right? No, I'm certainly not. Well, good. Because it, so it looks yeah, terrible, but it looks like something I should eat. Are you just eating super healthy these days? Like, I'm trying to do this. This is hilarious. As I go what? right for her potato. Go for it. I do Weight Watchers on Tuesdays and Fridays, and then Ooh. I try and do alternate things. Even, you know. <laughs> she just lost a bunch of weight. I'm trying to reach out to women because my whole life is Matt and gay guys. So I thought, you know, I should have some chick friends. Because Every so often, I want to talk to someone with a vagina. Do you want to have a baby think, with this guy? Yeah. yeah. No, a there's they have a sonogram up there like every week. I call it VTV. <laughs> I'm like, what's going on up there now? Did hey, let's check out my kidney. <laughs> yes. Maybe you didn't finish your cactus. I know, yum. Well, have a good time rocking the Brea improv. OK, could you be more miniaturized? I'm like, oh, when did you become I'm very Shetland excited. Tiny, tiny, tiny. You are tiny. Yeah, I'm like Nicole Richie, but funnier. <laughs> All right, let's go, girls. All right. Every, anyone is like Nicole Richie, but funnier. <laughs> oh, that's right. That's not that much of a badge of honor. <laughs> Follow the road. Today, I'm off to be a judge on the NBC show Last Comic Standing. It's not a big money gig or anything, but in this business, you gotta keep your face on network television. Just ask Seacrest. Hi, where do I go? Hi, Captain, very nice. This is my husband, Matt. This gig involves me watching an endless stream of comedians who are trying to get moved on to the next round. Who cares about a paycheck? I've got the power. The power to judge people who will someday make more money than I do. What? Okay. Flowers? What can I you got me. Hello, Kathy. Hi. I'm Kyle Edgington. I'm your co-executive producer. Oh, then you can explain all this to me. Yeah. So, Gary, Tim, and I yes. are going to watch 20 comics. You're going to watch 20 comics. Do, do how many minutes, minutes each? They do three minutes each. We all know comics don't do three minutes. They're well, all going to go know. over okay, so they get and everything. Two minutes, and then they get a little on the on the prompter. It yeah. says one minute remaining. Well, that wouldn't stop me. I'd need more than that. Well, after 30 seconds, I'd need a hook. it counts down when they turn the mic on. You know, you've got three minutes to work out whether they're funny or not. Translation, along with two other judges, I watch the comedians and try to pick the funniest. Or the least not funniest. There are three very important people I'd like to introduce you to tonight. Our celebrity talent scouts. They're going to help us decide which comics will move on tonight and which ones will be appearing next week on Deal or No Deal. The other panelists are Tim Meadows and Gary Marshall. And I don't like to say who's on the D-list. I think it's better if they say it. Let me just say that if they asked me, I would tell them that they were on the A-list. Our comics are ready to go, so let's get started. I assume Matt will be on his stupid PSP the whole time. It's cartoon football. My best friend is a heterosexual professional figure skating instructor. I know, I might as well be saying I have a unicorn at home. I, of course, respect comedians. I respect how difficult that situation was. But I really was surprised at the lack of originality. What inspires you to write stuff? A lot of relationship stuff, family, like my mom's booby fell out of her tank top at my parent-teacher conference. Perfect. Yeah. After a while, right, you, you see them being funny, but they're all being funny in the same way, and you're really looking for that person that's gonna jump out. Why are you always late for work? <laughs> Bitch, cause it makes the day go faster. <laughs> I was like, wait a minute here, fellas, there's a misunderstanding. I'm, I'm not drunk, I have cerebral palsy. 
They were like, that's a pretty big word for a drunk ass. Well, Josh, everybody loves you, obviously. So Hi. what inspired you to do stand-up, of all things? I didn't think I had a choice, really. <laughs> what am I going to do? Be a traffic cop? <laughs> I've been in this building for about 10 hours, and that's just the first set. So they let me go backstage and freshen up a little. It's really interesting seeing everybody's act and seeing them do their act for three minutes, which is so difficult. I could never do that. Roz obviously will get moved on, and the biker guy, and um, the guy with cerebral palsy. Oh, yeah, the guy with cerebral palsy. He's in. Are you kidding? He's probably going to win. Now, you know, I think he's amping up the cerebral palsy. Because I thought in his interview, he kind of had a miraculous recovery. But for the act, <laughs> he's more palsified. Look how pretty your hair is. Coming up, I'll talk to another chance. Ooh. There's got to be a better way to get a dog inside. Bad girl! Bad girl, Go on, Bad girl! Did you find your phone? Yes, that's oh, my car. Good. I've been judging NBC's last comic standing for so long, Matt has to recurl my hair. Hey. Yeah. One cool thing about doing a long and boring gig like last comic standing is that you run into some great characters like John Melendez from The Tonight Show. John is here to mentor some of the comics. I got canned from the red carpet. Why? Seacrest. One word. Seacrest. Why did you get canned because of the secret? <laughs> well, not because of the secret, but no, I got I just got canned because I was I don't know too uh, abrasive. Inappropriate, inappropriate. I can't imagine. I know they're wrong. They're crazy. See. So, this is your husband. Yeah, this is Matt. Any kids on the uh, you know horizon? No, God no. Why not? Because I don't. First of all, I can't ruin my figure. It's my fortune. You know, with my calendar work. But you don't want to have like the posters. Some, you don't want to pass all this on yeah, to someone like pass else. Pass all this comedy and beauty to your child. No, my parents are like my kids. <laughs> I'm your, I'm after your parents. I'm your third kid. I'd be a terrible. Don't parent. they ruin vacations for you when you go on a vacation and you got kids there? And I don't like when I'm at the Four Seasons and there's kids. Kids are fun. What what what, what are you, Satan? I mean, we're Satan. We're Satan loves, like. I enjoy the whole thing. I mean, I'm Puerto Rican. I want ten kids. <laughs> Oh, this, I'm gonna play this at their Sweet Sixteen party. Oh, they never. That's my hair. He just could have totally messed up your hair. <laughs> oh, is your hair done? Yes, John. My hair is done professionally. Thank you. <laughs> now it's back to 20 more hours of judging and fake laughing at their jokes. You seem very polished to me. Have you been do doing stand-up for a while? Yes, I have been doing stand-up for a while. Clubs. Clubs, colleges, prisons, whatever. <laughs> America, here they are, the first five finalists. And the winners were the angry black chick, the hot chick, the older guy, the Brooklyn guy, and the guy with cerebral palsy, who I still think might have been faking it. Let's give a big round of applause to our celebrity talent scouts tonight, Gary Marshall, <laughs> Kathy Griffin, Tim Meadows. I'm just glad it's over. It's money in the bank, but I've been here for so long that my hourly rate is now the biggest joke of the show. She's ready to go home. She's done with us. So I'm out. I don't care if they say I'm excused or not. I gotta go. Kathy? Yeah? I have your rat costume. Oh! My crazy dog trainer, Renata, wants me to scare my dog, Pom Pom, by standing in a rat suit in the yard and firing guns in the air. I wish I was making this up. It took some finding, but I got it. What do you got? I, well, I got some guns. What is this? It, All right. Oh, that'll hold it in place yeah. on your head. All right. Now, you know I can't see. <laughs> but is it's, this that's because it's incorrect, yes. Yes. Oh. A, <laughs> a real class I'm act. so glad Scared? that you are doing this and not me. It's <laughs> like something really <laughs> creepy is coming, and I'm excited. I hope we're not as proud of us. Because how many times has she written that letter? Mm -hmm. And how many times have people really gotten the rat costume? <laughs> yeah. I'm just pissed that there isn't some product tie-in where I'm like, oh, I'm gonna get 50 free rat costumes for this. Okay, now how do my firearms work? Because that's key. Squeeze this trigger. Squeeze one. 
but don't squeeze it. I'm not locked, but it's that one? Yeah. Okay, so there's that one. It's important though that she doesn't see me going to my post. Right. Then so I'm gonna let Pom Pom loose, and we're gonna, I'm gonna get her to run outside. Okay. And then when she comes around, I think you should start shooting and yelling at her. Okay. <laughs> Jessica, you do know that I'm still your boss and an authority figure. Jessica, your last chance, are you sure you don't wanna do this? I just don't have it in me, I'm sorry. I'll talk to you later, Chance. I, I um, tripped on one of my claws. <laughs> All right, so where is she going? Go, like around here, right? Yeah, why don't you just hold on to that post right there? Okay. Because you'll so, be behind this tree. Okay. It's not really, you can't really hide up here. All right. Okay, I'm ready. Good? Yeah. Come on. <laughs> Chance. Chancey, sit. Good boy. Come on. Good girl. Well, this is a disaster. <laughs> She's gonna come out here now, like once an hour, to see if the fun crazy, the crazy lady. Crazy lady with the <laughs> that's what she should have when she comes inside. I'm gonna go down here for one second. Okay. Sit. And you didn't want to do this. I didn't want to do it. But you did a fantastic job of it. No, if I ever did that to you when you came in in the morning, what would you do? I would pee, right? Right where yeah, I was Yeah, she didn't even pee. <laughs> yeah, let me uh, get your rat hat for you. There's got to be a better way to get a dog inside. I mean, they like the sounds of those guns. Next time I do it, real guns. It's, I think it's the wrong costume. It certainly wasn't my performance. <laughs> Here in the Double Tree in Santa Monica, teaching a class for the learning annex called If I Can Do Stand Up, Anyone Can. Which isn't entirely true. The class should be called If I Can Get Paid to Teach This Crap, Anyone Can. If I can do it, so can you. That's the title of your show. <laughs> so I duped my old friend Ralph Garman from K Rock into hosting this class. And the learning annex lady was telling me there's going to be a lot of show business types in the audience. That's not true. It's going to be homeless people and other people that just have too much time on their hands. They want to hear from you how you started. They want to get out from under the pier where they've been all day in this rain, and they just want some peace and quiet for two hours. <laughs> Should we feed them? Is there a soup kitchen portion of the show? Yes, there is. <laughs> They're all just going to come to Can the you just room. ladle out the minestrone? Because really, that's all they want. Mm -hmm. Just give them some minestrone and send them on their way. <laughs> Do you guys want to take a break halfway through, or you want to go straight through? Yeah, that's that's totally up to you. Are you kidding? If we take a break, they go back under the bridge. So here we go again, once more into the breach. Hi. Good evening. Welcome to the Learning Annex. Please welcome Kathy Griffin. I don't know really what happened. I've never been to one of these. I meant to come to the crochet class last month, but I missed it. I am expecting uh, Obviously, people who want to do stand up, people who don't want to do stand up but are just coming to see if I'm entertaining, and some homeless people that want to get in out of the rain. Just a show of hands, how many people came here tonight with hopes of being stand up comedians? Or are. Or are stand up comedians. Because I can tell some of the ones that are, like, uh, I'm not hoping. <laughs> All right, let's talk about your start. Oh my gosh. Well, I'm from Chicago, and so I grew up with Second City, thinking that was like the be all and end all. And I moved to LA, and I heard that there was this place similar to Second City. So I went by myself, and I sat in the front row, and then afterwards, I was just fascinated. I thought, wow, how do you get into this? And so I walked backstage, just bold as brass, backstage, and I went up to who I thought was the funniest person in the show. And I said, I'm sorry to bother you, but I just think you're terrific, and I really want to do this someday. Can you please tell me how you got to do this? And he was so patient with me, and I spent about 20 minutes with him, and that man's name was Phil Hartman. Mm. Okay, here comes one of those inside the actor's studio moments when a priceless piece of inspiration is passed on by an artist. And when I say artist, I mean me. 
My mom comes home one day and she's like, Kath, guess what? We ran into Stephanie Powers. And I'm picturing my insane mother with her babushka going up to Stephanie Powers during a break from heart to heart and asking for advice. And good old Stephanie Powers turned to my mother and she said, tell your daughter, never turn down work. Take everything. And I have modeled my career after Stephanie Powers. Have you always been good with the money? Mm. Did you blow through like your first season of Suddenly Susan Money on I'm like really crack or something? I'm really good with money. I have really good financial advice too. First of all, I'm frugal. That's key. So let people call you cheap all day. Who gives a <laughs> Right? My friends, you're so cheap. Yeah, I have a three million dollar house. Suck my <laughs> <laughs> You know, be serious with your money. It's very, very serious. If you're a woman, it's so gonna go away any minute. You never know. I mean, I'm 31 and a half and still... <laughs> I could lose the parts soon. And you know what I don't buy into? I really don't like when artists are like, I'm an artist, I don't, I don't do the business part. I don't think about that. You're an idiot, learn it. Learn how to balance your checkbook, get an IRA account, get a pension, save your money. Like, yeah, it's very much part of your job. Coming up. Hey Snake, how are you? I actually felt good that I can reach out to the insane community, because that's a demographic I haven't really tapped into yet. We'll start the Q&A with Kathy. Feel free to come on up and uh, take the oh, mic. Shit. I'm teaching a class at the Learning Addicts about how to get started doing stand-up. The crowd can't get enough of me. Uh, for us that are beginning to do stand-up comedy, what's the best way to be spontaneous and uh, create scenes, stories, and jokes like right on the spot? Don't censor yourself. You know, people say, oh, this might be offensive. Oh, I shouldn't swear. Oh, I shouldn't talk about my mom. What if she gets mad at me? I've beaten down my poor family. They don't, they're just like, oh, we don't know what she's gonna, you know, my poor parents are like, oh, they're just so over it. But I, I think when somebody isn't quick, it's because there's something in their head saying, oh, don't say that, you better not say that, better not do that. Just get it all, blurt it all out. All right, thanks. Sure. Thanks. The audience is pretty much what I figured it would be. Lots of students with a healthy sprinkling of crazy. Hey. Hi. Hi. Thank you. Kathy I'm here, I'm from New Jersey. Oh, hello. And then there was a guy named Snake. Snake looked like he had done some time. And he looked at me with an intensity that you would only get from a John Hinckley. Hey, Snake, how are you? Pretty good. Good. I was wondering, uh, what's the biggest break you got in the business, and how come you went to the D-list, and, and what year was it? <laughs> when exactly did you get on the D-list? Celebrity Mole. Yeah, do you celebrity consider you celebrity mole? I did the Celebrity Mole, that was it. I was on the D-list, there was no going back. You're there for life. God bless you. Thanks. Cynthia Reader. Been... There was a woman who had a lot of questions about if I feel safe in my own home. Thank What's you. What I'm scared about is what if you reveal too much about yourself someone wants to kill you or something? I don't know. You know I, mean? <laughs> <laughs> I think that this was the perfect cross section of my fans. I'm Rocky from Burbank. I actually felt good that I can reach out to the insane community because that's a demographic I haven't really tapped into yet. I like that. <laughs> Here's the thing. I'm on the D list for life, but I do live in an A list house. Come on, Chance. Let me tell you, I earned it the hard way. A listers like Julia Roberts make millions just showing up on the set and smiling. Smiling doesn't work for me. I have to work for a living. Good girl. I'll do anything for a paycheck. Anything. Make me an offer. Good. Anyway. Next on My Life on the D-List. Come on, if you take it off, I'll take mine off. I had fun the minute I saw the Fab Five. You just crossed the line, people. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. I mean, the Courvoisier is especially. What did they say? Yes. Bill O'Reilly, Larry King, Rush Limbaugh. I would marry Bill. Bill O'Reilly, we oh, knew it! I don't know about the actual act, but I'd love to be extremely friendly with Princess Diane. <laughs> Olympic skater Johnny Weir and I happen to be in Vegas at the same time. Wait, don't let go! <laughs> she gets it. She gets me. He's really cute. He grabbed my ass, too. Everyone out of my way! People. I'm performing in someone's kitchen, so I'm now competing with a mixing bowl. Ladies and gentlemen, Kathy Griffin. On my life on the D list. My mom calls Bill O'Reilly her boyfriend. I don't know who's more exhausting, my parents or my niece and nephew. Have you had sex yet? Dying. What are you doing? Ma, I'm exhausted. You gotta take these kids. I said, you know that I have parents who, oh, live. who eat whatever they want, and I said, and they will not die. Dan, come here. 
Chance and Pom Pom are the worst behaved dogs, but they love the German dog trainer. <laughs> the difference in a Cleveland gay and a uh, California yeah, gay yeah, yeah. worlds apart. Okay, here's the thing. Get out of my way, you A-list boys. My Prada shoes are as good as yours. Parents are always there for me. Hi, we're here. Okay. Your favorite company. Hello. Hi, hon. I love just doing little things for them that they never appreciate. Can we serve ourselves? Or? Yeah, please do. I have a bizarre and unhealthy need to continue to seek their approval. I like approval. I have a little something for my mother. If this doesn't get our attention, nothing will. I have a surprise for you. I am afraid to even give it to you because it disgusts me. Yeah. I don't know how you can live with yourself. Yeah, and your mother. Jeez, I'm gonna be in hey. tears pretty soon. Hey. Is, well, oh. first was, oh my God, where did you get this? Oh God Almighty! Oh, oh all right. <laughs> oh <wow>. no, <laughs> Bill. Hi, Bill. Don't forget, Kathy. The Bill guy's on the. Bill is looking out for me. Yeah. I think he might want to put a loofah. You no, know where? No, I think the. Hotel. All right, if what I were you. What was that word? He wants to put a loofah. You know where? <laughs> it's real sensual. <laughs> Sometimes he gets carried away. Like certain people do oh, and gee. say things. That You're not comparing me to Bill O'Reilly, <laughs> I hope. That's, I will treasure this. Course. This is gone in the living room. Oh, so I'll you're see. actually building a Bill O'Reilly shrine? I'll see. Uh, Bill O'Reilly, take yeah. a look at your demographic. Yeah. <laughs> I'm the demographic, but they also have another word yeah. there. I want to put a loofah on your No, Kathy! That should keep him on a leash for a while. I'm holding back on a really big surprise, but I'll save that for later. First, I have to go back on the road, flying from one shit gig to another. I gotta earn a buck. First stop, Vegas. A great place to bring you down to tacky D-list reality. But it is a city where dreams come true. Hello? Hello. <laughs> Johnny, is that you? Olympic skater Johnny Weir and I happened to be in Vegas at the same time. He wanted to meet me, so I was very honored. And he's going to give me a skating lesson. Do you want me to bring you a costume? No, and if you do, I'm not putting it on, so don't even think about it. <laughs> but I mean, okay, okay, okay. you're not going to like do lifts and shit, right? Oh, no, 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 I'm just going to teach you like the basics. He made a statement about me in the press that ran worldwide. Because he didn't win any medals, his friend called him and said, now you're a D-list celebrity. And he said, oh, great, now I'm Kathy Griffin. I guess it was kind of a bitchy thing to say, but I was just so happy to have my name in the paper that I told Jessica to send him flowers. Johnny. You look so pretty. Hi, gorgeous. I have a little bit of fame, and uh, Kathy's always going on about how she's D-list, and she has to stay at Motel 6s and things like that. And I was like, wow. Me too, and, and that's all I meant by saying, you know, I'm in the same league as Kathy Griffin. Do you guys know who Johnny Weir? Yep. Well, give him a hand. He's in love with you, for God's sake. Come on. <laughs> Show some goddamn respect. Are you sure these are girl skates? They're very manly. Yeah, they're black. Manly. Don't you have anything with a heel? Do you have? <laughs> like a low heel a pump? No, a stiletto. Okay. A stiletto pump. Yeah. Stiletto skate. Hector, you Jesus, I'd like circulation. Hector. Ow, Hector. Hector. Ow, Hector. Hector. Now, what if we just sat here and talked about your day? <laughs> Come on, Daddy. Ah! Oh, that goes. It's exciting. OK, let's go fast. Easy, easy, tiger. Oh, Charlie, help me. Help. It's my first lift. OK, you can't let me go. You promise? Don't use your toe picks too much. Think about pushing right through there. My, my, the ball of my foot. Yes. I balled my way to the middle. Yes. <laughs> Woo! How come you get to use your toe pick and I can't? Because I'm a three-time national champion at oh. this. Oh. Look at her go. Oh, yeah. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Don't look at me. Stop it. Don't use your butt. You're good. You're like. A liver sausage in a wig. Johnny! You're going like, the main thing she needs to work on are probably her, her grace. She skates a little bit like a boy or a monkey. You just gotta skate like a lady. Your way is hard for me. But. Uh -huh. Don't pick your feet up. And attitude. <laughs> <laughs> you are such a queen. Left and back. Left and back. Why 
Seriously, why can't we just have fun like this? Isn't this romantic? This is I have a crush on you. No, you don't. Yes, I do. Mm -mm. Now, who are you most friends with on the Olympic team? Tatiana Tatiana. She won the Paris. Right. She's, She's the, the one that um, he dropped her on the lift last year and she hit her face. She came back and won this year. They were amazing. But at the Olympics, I wasn't very nice. I, I wasn't loving people. Why is that? Because I was aggressive because I'm a D-list celebrity. <sighs> Thank Left. God, baby. Right. We are the salt of the earth, baby. Now, Johnny, let me ask you about the interview you did. Did you mean to hurt me? No, 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 no. <laughs> it sounded mean, but it wasn't really mean, right? You like no, me, right? I love you. Okay, good. I feel like we're definitely in a D-list crew together. What does my head do? You lit up my head. Okay, now grab my wrist. She gets it. She gets me. I'll see. Microphone is my favorite part. Go ahead, and then we'll do three Z's. Now push left and right and left and right. Oh, Johnny, you perv! Sorry, I was scared she was gonna go down. Oh my God, get a room. <laughs> Jessica kind of upstaged me because she had a romantic twirl moment with Johnny because she's so petite that he just picked her up. Can't you do that do to jump. me, please? I only and then I was determined that he was going to pick my ass up, too. Hi. Oh. <laughs> so he moaned and groaned, almost dropped me. But let me tell you something, if I go down, I'm taking it with me. I'm not just breaking my head. I'll snap him like a twig. God. I think he's really cute. He is. He grabbed my ass, too. <laughs> I love her, and I'll always support her no matter what she says about me, so... But now she's, she's on the right path. Young talent. It's protocol to curtsy to your coach. Oh. And Jessica, for... get in here. Hi. Yeah, yeah. Stop laughing and curtsy. Curtsy. Yeah, you do that. Don't hold on to me. You gotta do your own curtsy. Yes. And now you're my D-list coach. So. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Vegas is the city that never sleeps, but I don't have time for partying. I've got an early morning date with the Fab Five. We're somewhere in suburban Vegas, and I'm gonna do an episode of Queer Eye for the Straight Guy, and um, they're redoing a magician comedian, and they want me to give them some advice. Get your shoes on and get in this trailer. <laughs> I have fun the minute I saw the Fab Five. Come on in and have a Pabst Blue Ribbon. Come on, come on, honey. So how long does your makeup process usually take? 45. Days, wow. usually. Minute. I don't have a lot of gay male jeans, but I can talk trash with the best queens in the world. So I think he's banging one of the pussycat dolls, because he said he had been with... Stop trying to touch my Hey, what you're happened? creating a hostile work environment, <laughs> so stop that. Jessica, do you have a boyfriend? Yes. Because Damien's location. good to go. He is good hot. Good to go. Jeez. What about he's hot Greek, and he's got this fantastic this hair. Too. So wait, the crew is all hot straight guys? We How'd don't like them. Yeah. We don't like the gays. They're too unreliable and emotional. <laughs> We've been waiting for you. They cry you know, a lot. They cry, they cry. Every time you try to change their hair, they cry. No, our, we have Look, I'll show you. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Do you get the lesbians? You? I'm fighting to get the lesbians, which, as you know, are very tough customers. If you don't have them every minute, they're bored. Okay. The boys will kind of go with you on the journey. Because right. they're drunk. Right. So the lesbians, the lesbians are drunk. Like, what? No, That's they have the problem. kids. So right. The lesbians are like, what do you got now? Right. All right, well, let's move on. Okay. They're wearing a Birkenstock. Yeah. Because they've got to they've they've got 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 cock the tub. It, organize a home. protest. Exactly. Write a manifesto. Right. Cook a vegan pie. Hold on. Not a vegan pie. What is the what first is segment it? you guys are doing? I think Carson and I will be in the house with Tom. We okay. will. Well, I'm arriving with the straight Jacob. guy, coming back to his like, newly rejuvenated home. I'm in gay heaven. This is my gay dream come true to be with the boys. Look yeah, who we found. This is Hi. Matt. Oh, no. Matt's the one of the hot painter guys. Hi, Kitty. He, he wants yeah. to get a picture with you. Is that okay? Of course, okay, let's do it. Take it. Matt, Ready? take your shirt off for this shot. <laughs> yeah, take your shirt off. <laughs> no, really. Please. So, I will. It no, come looks on. Like he's come on, if you take it, it off, I'll take mine off. Okay. All right, come on. Come on. You, you take your off and I'll take hers. Oh my gosh, I'll help you. I'll be here with my thing. There we go. Good job, Kitty. We're going to get a good picture. Yeah. That's fantastic. I took my shirt off because Carson suggested it. I can't even say he dared me, because he didn't. Well, actually, he suggested that the other guy take his shirt off, and then I... Well, I was going for a laugh. Try hitchhiking. Try hitchhiking. <laughs> <laughs> Show <laughs> some legs! <laughs> she just has to get to soccer practice. I, I think the locals just thought I was 
like a homeless hooker, disturbed, maybe a little down on my luck. <laughs> Hi! How are you? God, there's children! What happened to your arm? I hope your arm's better soon. Okay, oh, bye. Oh, God, injured children? Bye. That was all right. I got children. I think you just crossed a line, people. <laughs> Put your blouse on, you what? pussy. You, you told me to take it off. God, you're no. a war. Well, that was fun. Now it's time for me to put my rack away and tape the show. And we're making over a guy who has a lounge act, like a magic act and a stand-up comedian, which is why Jay wanted to invite her because she was gonna give him some tips on comedy. Yeah, basically he's a daytime performer. We're trying to make him a primetime headliner. He has a pink dog that's in his act and he's dyed this poor thing hot pink. Hi, Goodness. Gidget. I will be bringing Gidget in and I'm a surprise guest. I'm not a big little dog person. You're a good girl. Like I felt like it knew that it had, had its fur dyed and didn't like the color. Girl. Chance would kill that dog. He would slowly approach the dog like, hey, I'm just big fluffy Chance. No need to worry about it. And then he would just gut it. And Pom Pom would be like, can I have the tail? Today, we spent the entire day teaching you to improve your act. My favorite dog isn't here, and I'm kind of freaked out. Who's that? Gidget. I have to go find Gidget. Where's the Gidget? Gidget. I think I left Gidget outside. Gidget! Oh, there's Gidget! I have Gidget! Oh, oh Gidget! God. Kathy Griffin! Oh Max <laughs> Kathy Griffin! Hi! Max Hi. Hi. What a pleasure. You give it up for Max Clever! Yeah. Ready, I got something in my brand new shoes. Crap. Let's see what I got. Oh, look at that. Oh, a bottle opener. Fell out of my shoe, no big deal. On the other hand, pulling a nice cold bottle of beer out of your shoe. Oh, oh, where did it do that? That is. Wow. Pag, can you teach my shoe how to do that? Oh, oh my God. Oh, oh, the beer that keeps coming. I'm so sorry about that. Oh. It's kind of like that President Clinton. I got to clean this up. Oh. Still a little puddle there? Oh, my God. That's not a puddle. You know what that is? That's a poodle. Yeah. That's a do. All right, I, I have a few thoughts. May I share? Please. I would like your references to be a little more updated. Like, a Clinton joke, eh, a little tough. Yeah. You know, it was hard to give him advice because, you know, he's doing his act in his living room, for God's sakes. I feel mm. like you should either almost become a kid's act and be so squeaky clean that you'll get booked like crazy, <laughs> or I actually think you should go the other direction and be really raunchy. And that would be your hook. Uh, thank you for thank having you. me Yay. in your home. Yeah. Those guys are thank totally you. my gays. I would be honored to have them as my gays and uh, if they'll have me. I hope Part we're her gays. gays. Oh my God, we're like the alpha gays. Yeah. I hope so. Bye. 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 Coming up. Everybody hungry? Yeah. There's pretty much no job I won't take. Flop, flop, fizz, fizz. Are you with uh, Uncle Sauce or are you with? Who are you with? Ouch. Let's face it, it sucks getting up at three in the morning. It's exhausting in Vegas, of all places. You know, it's hard to go to bed early in Vegas. It's gonna be a long day. So I'm doing this gig for Alka-Seltzer. You know, plop, plop, fizz, fizz, like my career. Alka-Seltzer is holding a huge buffet to promote their 75th anniversary. And I'm hosting it and promoting it via satellite. Can somebody get me a footstool? I'll be doing hours and hours of interviews, hitting the Alka-Seltzer talking points to every rinky-dink station in the country. Joining us live from Sin City, comedian and actress Kathy Griffin. I'm here in the Vegas Hilton, and the good people at Alka-Seltzer to celebrate their 75th anniversary are putting on the largest buffet in world history. They've got 500 different dishes. They've even flown someone in from the Guinness Book of World Records to verify it. We've got 24 chefs that have been working 24 hours around the clock. They're just like stumbling around putting sauces on things. It's great. <laughs> and you yourself will eat it all. I'm gonna eat most of it. So I start to get really hungry and I'm thinking I'm in this giant kitchen and they've made ooh, 600 different dishes or something. What's that? The pizzas? Are you making pizzas? Hey. Hi. Pizza, yeah, the pizza are already out on the walk. On the walk? On Do the you walk. have any leftovers? Well, these are cold. Pasta salad? I want some, I wanted a hot pizza. Is that chicken? Yeah, that's chicken, but they cold. This is leftover, we didn't eat. Pizza hut? <laughs> You're kidding. They ended up sending out for Pizza Hut. 
which is bad airport pizza. I don't eat Pizza Hut. That poor woman is taken so personally, I can't bring my, she's like, pizza. I'm like, there's pickled ham. Hut, hut. I'm at the world's biggest buffet in history. It's going in a record book and I can't get a lunch. I mean, they even have fried alligator. They have everything here. You should be here, Brad. I miss you. You're kidding me. No, fried I, alligator? I, I'm very serious about my food. I was very excited to read that you and Matt reconciled. That yes. is so cool. That I know. awesome. Oh, he's not getting away from me. I'm going to actually put a low jack on his ankle, so I'll really know where he is. That's wonderful. We're like Pam Anderson and Tommy Lee. You don't know what yeah. we're doing. <laughs> we're going to, we'll probably swing. Right. You know, with, with Nicole in Paris. Right. Are you the new poster girl for acid indigestion? Yes. <laughs> Sometimes I like to make people laugh so much that they feel sick and they have to take Alka-Seltzer. Everybody hungry? Yeah. Afterwards, if you need some Alka-Seltzer, I don't know if you are aware of that, but there is a presence of Alka-Seltzer. You probably can't tell because there's no signs or anything. Hit the line, you ready? One, two, three. Plop, plop, fizz, fizz. Oh, what a relief it is. For the right amount of money, not only would I do a diarrhea campaign, I would actually let them film it shooting out my ass. For the right amount. I have class. Okay, can you say and spell your name? Kathy Griffin, K-A-T-H-Y, G-R-I-F-F-I-N. Okay, and can you tell me your title here for this event? Are you with uh, Alka-Seltzer or are you with, who are you with? Ouch. <laughs> That's life on the D-list, baby. One of the local affiliates didn't know who I was at all, standing in front of a sign that said, hosted by Kathy Griffin. I think you guys know where we're going for, right? The Guinness Book of World Records. And here to tell us about it is from Guinness, Nadine Corsi. She flew all the way here from England. So Nadine, tell us how we did. Uh, hi, everybody. I'm very pleased to announce that Alka-Seltzer have won the uh, Guinness World Record for the largest buffet. You're part of history. Give it up for Chef George. He's been working his butt off. Bernie, would you like to tell us any more fun facts about Alka-Seltzer? I just want to say, if anyone needs Alka-Seltzer after today's, Bernie, today's I was kidding. Dozen moment, <laughs> Bernie, feel free. will you stop, Bernie? I would say that this was a typical week on the D-list. I'm going to catch the last flight back to L.A. I can't wait to tell Mom and Dad my big surprise. I've managed to hustle a big luxury getaway for all of us. For free, of course. It's great to take them for this weekend after Iraq because my mom really didn't want me to go. She didn't think it was safe. And so this is a way for me to show her, you know, relax. Matt and I are safe and sound. Let's have some wine. All right, a week from Monday, I am taking you on an all expense paid trip to the St. Regis Monarch Beach. Oh, wonder. A week from when? No, I'll tell you. <laughs> I'll tell you you what. have plans? Yes. Did you make a deal already? What? Well, we were going to go to Palm Springs. We have the presidential suite. I have this weird codependent problem where I like to do nice stuff for my parents, and yet I always have to talk them into it. I don't know how to act in a $3,000 a night. How do you act? Grateful. Oh, that sounds wonderful. No, you don't appreciate anything. <laughs> I should just buy them booze and pills. That's all they want. They're like a Jacqueline Suzanne novel. I just want to know where exactly would you be staying in Palm Springs? Probably at a Motel 6 or something Is like that. Is that $3,000 a night? No, I don't well, think so. Well, you can so. get the whole motel for about that kind of money. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yes. Now, do you guys want two beds or one bed? Well, we like well, we the like two. two. What about the fire? Well, the fire, well. And the romance. No, well, I don't know. Well, the fire and the romance, we wave at each other. <laughs> Everything is fine, Kat. All okay. right. All right. I'm thinking of doing a dog fashion show because my career hasn't sunk low enough yet. Hey, Maddie. Yeah. Can you come up regarding yeah. pause for style? <laughs> what? Hello? Hello? Who's this? Yeah. Are you a tape or a live person? Pardon me? Oh, you're a live person? Guess what? I'm recording you for my reality show. Are you? Yeah. It's the old switcheroo, baby. It's a telemarketer who said this call may, may be recorded. I'm recording you. A snap! Let's go with the pitch, baby. Let's hear it. With the Buckle Up for Safety campaign, consisting of school literature and publications to encourage the use of seat belts. Who cares about safety? Boring! <laughs> yeah, this is a different call, isn't it? Uh-huh. I'd like to have someone with your arm. Yeah, 
That's right, the telemarketer hung up on me. She asked what you were on. <laughs> Bravo. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna be honest. I don't know what Pause for Style is or who it benefits. It is to raise money for the Animal Medical Center, which is based in New York. They get celebrities such as yourself to come with your pooches, and then you guys dress up with matching outfits. When you're on the D-list, the Pause for Style invite is a very common thing that comes across your desk. So um, I got an email about being in a doggy fashion show, and I was glad they weren't referring to me, and I said, sign me up. Amy? Yeah. Hi. We're so excited to have you on board. I'm, I'm looking forward to it. It's going to be so much fun. The dogs aren't going to know what hit them. I know, but they're going to love it. So tell me what other celebrities are going to be there. I'm, I'm, I'm on pins and needles. All right, well, you're one of the top ones, so just know that. Oh, sh You're a bigger name. So we have Carmen Electra. Oh, good. Tori Spelling. Oh. Uh, Charlie O'Connell. Crystal Hunt from The Guiding Light. Uh-huh. Deborah Gibson. Nice. Not Debbie, don't confuse Debra. Me. It's Debra. Jonathan with Nikki from Dare the Kid and Jerry Maguire, all grown up now. Sweet. Trista Sutter, the original Bachelorette. Yeah, look, you had me a lip Nikki. You could have stopped there as far as I'm concerned. Okay. <laughs> Jonathan with Nikki has a pit bull mix. Well, he has to. Huh? He has to. Yeah, okay. Why does he have to? Because I'm sure he gets his ass kicked about once a week. <laughs> Mine are just big, floppy pound dogs. Oh, great. We love that. And they have cute outfits? I, I believe that one of them has a tutu and one of them has a tuxedo. Oh, perfect. All right. Well, I look forward to seeing you. Okay, you too. Bye. Bye. Okay, that, that list is pitiful, right? Carmen Electra's going to pull out. You got out. both right Trista now. and Charlie O'Connell? <laughs> what if Chance gets into a fight with Lil Nicky? <sighs> Let's talk about you wearing a tux. I love the pocket. What's he gonna carry? Condoms and kibble? Yes. She won't stop staring at herself in the mirror. She's all She's waiting. come a long way from the streets. That's still a place that my mom and dad would stay. Yeah. This is my parents' hometown. Good thing they're not here. I think the gig I'm doing tonight would give them a heart attack. Matt and I are in Chicago because I'm performing in someone's house. And it's a cooking contest for gender pack. I think it's people cooking for the betterment of he, she is, and she, he is. It's people that don't want you to tell them what their gender is. They'll decide. And also maybe they're undecided at this moment. Well, I'm anxious to see the guys who own the house, what their story is. Guys. Girls, I don't know. People. Okay. So they probably don't want to be considered gay, right? No, I think that it's not about being gay, it's about just being not tied down to one gender. Okay. <laughs> this is Jeff Grinspoon, John Foley. Show me everything. I'm just done seeing everything. How long is you, have you guys lived here, Jeff? Two years. Okay, great. God! Was it like this done? I built the house. Wow. These are two rich power gays. That had to be a four or five million dollar house. Who's got the cash, you or John? That's a very personal question. Exactly. How much and who's got it? <laughs> if you tell me your bra size, oh, I, I will tell you. 32D. I just wanted to make sure you were in sync with what was going on. Yes, give me the whole rundown. Ricky's going to talk a little bit about our work and the organization. And then. Um, now, you know, I will be making fun of the organization. We really hope that you will. Yes, good. We count on it. Good. God, I love this bathroom. All right, so, so our next here. house. I got dirt. I got dirt for you. What, what, what? Tell me. Ricky is having knocked up uh, um, Gina. What? Yeah. What are you talking about? It's mind blowing. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Ricky? <laughs> wait, which one's Gina? The one who gave us the cards and the, the two who are just sitting up the stairs talking. They're together. What? Yeah. Wait, Ricky's a dude or a woman? He or? doesn't want to play right. your so games. So what's Gina? Gina doesn't want to play your games either. She's not a man or a woman. They're having a baby together. Adopting. She's pregnant. It turns out that Ricky and Gina are not labeled as men or women. They're just Ricky and Gina. Now, I want to know if Ricky is a new no, gender. Gina's like, a, I'm a Ricky. Gina's a woman. But, they, but she doesn't, but he said, they're Ricky just Ricky and Gina. Right, Ricky doesn't Well, Gina doesn't want to be labeled either. Why do you have to put them in a box? Because I need to fit my mind around it somehow. All right. A very difficult time for a trans person. I'm now having hot flashes and getting called sir, which is the, <laughs> the worst of all possible worlds. But the, the, the good news is I'm finally morphing into the 
woman my mother always wanted me to marry. But um, <laughs> Gender Pack is the national gender rights group. One of the things we do is, is track hate crimes. In the last 10 years, more than 50 kids have been murdered because of their gender identity or gender expression. That's about one every two months. That's Often when you do a charity gig, you are turning down other work, so you're usually compensated in some way. But I'm there for the uh, non-gen, trans-gen, non sh Hello, gay people and people who don't want to be put in a box. <laughs> I am going to have my vagina reassigned. Um, I'm not sure what I'm just, I'm actually just going to get a younger one. I'm going to have the vagina of Britney Spears when I'm done. Well, not that one. Um, that one's been through some shit. Anyway, I don't know who you two are blowing besides each other, but there's a lot of money going around this house. A lot of money. You start them young, you teach them not to kill each other, not to beat each other up. Let somebody have a d or a vagina, who cares anymore? Right. And uh, I, if I could have both, I really would. I just, <laughs> uh, I could <laughs> myself, it would be heaven. Um, <laughs> all right, let's start, shall we? There are two teams of celebrity chefs. Team A, Dan Smith and Steve McDonough, the Hardy Boys from the Food Network. And then the other team. And team B is Karen Greeson and Shelly Young. Yeah. Excuse me, I'm sorry, I have to stop you. Um, I think there's some corruption in the judging panel. Um, Patrick just said, she has cute hair, I'm voting for her. The Hardy Boys are gonna go first. I don't even know what this is. What the hell is this? They have to use every single thing in the bag. So they have 30 minutes to do everything. The cocktail, the appetizer, the main course, and the dessert. They've already mixed inappropriate things. There's spotted dick in with fruit, salad that's in an ice cream cup. Yeah, I'm making a bread pudding that's gonna go into the ugly fruit shell, and then I'm gonna bake it. Kathy's doing the dishes. What? I don't think she's ever seen a faucet. All right, that's good. Right here. We're flatlining, get them salt. Spoon! This is really D-list. I'm performing in someone's kitchen, so I'm now competing with a mixing bowl. Oh my God! Yay! Yay! Yeah. Oh. Really good. Bravo! Okay, everybody, they are ready to begin their half hour. I'm ready for the night to end. I don't care what happens. I don't care who makes what fabulous concoction. Awesome. Good. Mm. Wow. Girls are B, boys are A. But no right. gender favoritism. No, no, outside and not defining. No one's defined. How great they were. They were so great, and it was staggering, so it was and it was really impressive. Everything tasted amazing. You lost. I didn't tell him. Whatever he is. Yeah. Fabulous. Isn't he great? That's why he can't be my ex-husband. Because if I can't have him, no one can. No, I couldn't find you. I thought you were like outside the bathroom. There's but then this one gay guy kept coming up to me saying how great you were and that you've been with them all night. Was he drunk wearing a jacket? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> He's, uh, I'm seeing him now. I really like Ricky. I thought he, she was really smart. He had the gender reassignment surgery. Vagina or a dick? Cut the balls off. Wow. And I'm a dick. Ooh, he's wearing man's clothing. If you're gonna cut your dick off, wear a dress. It's great to be back in LA. Just in time for the dogs and I to get fitted for our fashion show. I swear to God, if Pom Pom's outfit looks better than mine, I will kill that bitch. Hello. Hello. How are you, honey? Good to see you. Good to see you. Hey, 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 hey. Guys. Hey, Matt, how's Hello, it going? How are Good you? to see you again. Oh, come hi, on Matt. in, come on in. Hey, Ellie. Leo, be nice. Hey, John, Chance and Pom Pom are going to be yeah. models. Yeah. A pretty girl <laughs> is like a melody. Oh. Who's a pretty girl? My <laughs> God. Oh, my. Look at the way she's walking. Oh, pretty girl. Oh, Pom Pom. Pretty Pom Pom. You're beautiful. You're pretty. Look at her tail. She's all proud of herself. <laughs> she sure. <gasps> she just did a runway. She did a perfect runway. Well, he's a rugged kind of a guy. He's got a pocket he for cigars. He does. Yes. Tinkerbell who? 
Tavo, I can see your tail beneath your skirt. I love the pocket. What's you gonna carry in there? Gonna, wallet? I don't know, you can put something in there. <laughs> Condoms and kibble. Good girl, Pom Pom. This is very um, Loretta Young, the big collar. Well, Pom Pom sees herself as a young Loretta Young <laughs> in your teen years. Okay, back to Kathy. Are yeah. we happy with her fitting? Kathy yeah. who? Does anybody? <laughs> oh, that's right, it's your show. It's the same dress that I wore to the costume designer's ball. That dress was made for me, so I feel very A-list about that. And I'm wearing it in a dog show. Yay! Ladies and gentlemen, wearing the beautiful design of Mona Tillier, Kathy Griffin. <laughs> They're not stepping on my dress. She won't stop staring at herself in the mirror. What are you doing? Why is she acting like that? <laughs> Ollie, don't indulge her. <laughs> She's so vain. You look so pretty. She's so vain you as it do. is. She's all She's lady. come a long way from the streets. She has. Coming up. Oh, oh. I mean, the Kavosi is a special. What did they say? Yes. Bill O'Reilly, Larry King, and Rush Limbaugh. I would marry Bill. Bill oh. We're going to a fancy resort, the St. Regis Monarch Beach. We're going to have two days of relaxation. Well, we're going to have two days. We're all in one oh, room geez. together. And Joyce, oh, oh. Joyce is in a rollout bed in your room. There yeah. goes the family. Hey, Joyce, it's Kathy. Are you up by any chance? It's 20 yeah. to... Hey! Yeah, hi. Hi, so are you coming today? Oh, yeah, I'm packing. Oh, excellent. Yeah. And you know Matt is coming totally separately with the dogs. Okay, I was wondering how you were all going to squeeze into the car. So that was my sister Joyce, and she's going to join us. Joyce likes the fancy, like I do. I like a good restaurant. I'm, as my mother would call me, I'm high and mighty. You want a valley park? Yeah. No, Mom, I want to park about two miles away and save the fire dogs. Walk. It's the dog's first five-star resort. Oh, hi, sweetie. Yeah. First of many, I hope. I'm William. I'm going to be your butler today. Hi, William. Nice How to meet you, you, madam. Nice How to meet you. are you? Well, take us. We're dying to see it. <gasps> oh, I love the fireplace. Hey. See? <gasps> Chocolate covered strawberries. I don't mind if I do. It's just like home. Oh, yes. I hope you're. I hope you're not offended that there's alcohol. We're going to like this. It's bigger than mine, maybe. Rooms to the right, sir. No, <laughs> let's open up one of the cavassiers and, and start oh. talking. Okay. Oh, wow, well, that was quick. Oh, the Griffins will be at each other's throats, but in like sort of a jokey, sarcastic way. That's how we fight. Our words are our daggers. Oh, cavassier. Gee, this is really not right. We were starting right. to drink right away. Kathy, I, I really shouldn't be having this. Ooh, 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 ooh. I mean, the Courvoisier is especially... What did they say? Yes. <laughs> oh, this is gorgeous. Now, Marge, watch yourself. I will? Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Omelette. Oh, sir, yes. I went ahead and ordered it with American cheeses. That's order. fine, that's fine. There's a butler assigned to the room, and that's not making anyone comfortable. Least of all the butler. And I don't think mom and dad will be able to relax. You guys, I'm gonna say goodbye to William because I think we can fend for ourselves, right? I think right, so. Yeah. I, yes. I think so. They're happy to have anyone wait on them unless it's that person's job. Already mom has nixed everything nice that they've offered. By the way, mom, you know those massages are like $160 a piece. I know. Well, that doesn't mean that I have to, you know, do something I don't want to do just because it's expensive or whatever. That's why I, I do things. I have a lot of integrity. You I'm know, you're person. your own person. I have no integrity. I like expensive mm. things. It's it's good to, to take it easy, don't Him? you? Mm. No man will ever touch it my is. body. <laughs> <laughs> Outside Yeah, of close your mouth. That's gross. Do you hear that? That's the sound of no griffins. They're all off somewhere else. It's quiet and peaceful. I like that. Happy hour, Dad. Is it happy hour? And Manny Petty's. I didn't Slot. come over here just to drink and all. <laughs> <laughs> come on, Time Dad. Time for your pedicure, manicure, Dad. Manicure, pedicure. What do we want? You're getting a Let's pedicure. Go, Dad. To do what? To get a manicure and pedicure. You're getting I thought that was off. No, no, you're getting your pedicure. Come on, the whole team is here. You gotta get your robe on. Yeah, get your robe on. Robe to get a pedicure. It's relaxing. Yeah. yeah. It's real relaxing. Come on. Take your socks and your pants off. Are you a team player or not? Uh, you're all talking about take my socks and my pants off. <laughs> 
Well, oh, you done what you said? Socks Sleeve, off. Socks off. Socks off. Yeah, but if you want to take your pants off, that's your choice. Socks off? Yeah. All right. I thought you better with the socks on because it kind of... Well, they can't cut your toenails with your socks Mom? on. Girl, take your time. Oh, yeah. Wow. See, I'm telling you, these are great. Pedicures are great. She wants to know if mom has any issues. <laughs> <laughs> How long do you have? You mean just on my feet or all over? Uh, yeah. well, it's just, no, you don't want mm -hmm. massages. It's a problem. No, the problem is, as a big guy, they always want to pound me, uh -huh. and and I'm soft and sensitive. What? what Masseurs have... uh -huh. want to beat the crap out of me. Dad, you feel pretty? Uh, I, I yes, I do. I do. You look pretty. <laughs> They still smell? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I think I'll have a sample of wine, maybe? For all we know, we may never meet again. Ah. Well, thanks to Kathy. <laughs> it's off. Kath, I'm going to tip them, OK? All right, all right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. My dad turns to me and says, should I tip him? And I said, sure. And he says, what do you think? Well, thank you so much. Uh, not at all. So I remember thinking, hey, Dad, good for you. 50 bucks, that's a lot. Wait, here's a hoot and May we always... Uh, this is to a great time, you guys. That's right. Uh, wonderful treat. Wonderful. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. It really Interesting, is. Mom, because last night you were saying it was a nightmare. No. All right, now, Dad, did you tip the manicure pedicure girls? Five dollars each. They were out there for three hours. I thought this meant a hundred. And five bucks? Well, I thought they get paid and this is extra. How much is that per hour? I think the pedicures no, are No, like I'm not 65. paying their salary. It works out to like 60 cents per person per hour. <laughs> also, Dad, your feet. She should have gotten like a 40% tip. They should have gotten hundred bucks. What? Yeah, you gave them a 2% tip. <laughs> they came to the room. That's not our problem. <laughs> <laughs> You're talking to your mother. An $80 tip means like a week at the Hilton. $80? Oh, a week at the Hilton. Well, anytime you get over about 20, 30 bucks, you're somebody. You can get a 79 Pontiac in decent shape for that I, kind of money. I thought my little girl and I got along real well. I bet they were anticipating a big tip because they saw me and they know I'm a spender. Here's the thing about my dad. He's really not cheap at all. The problem is my parents still think everything costs what it did during the Depression. Bread we could save for coffee with butter. But by tomorrow, it'll be all hard. Yeah, oh, wait, let me see. Look at what a crime. <laughs> oh, I can't stand What are you guys fighting What's you're the matter? Her. I can't What? Stand. She's all this you're food throwing the out away. She's I'm almost in tears. I'm going crazy. Do you know people are starving? Yeah, the manicurist <laughs> and the pedicurist. So what is this game? I have lists of three people, and out of the three people that I list, you have to decide which one you would marry, which one you would bang, and which one you would kill. Bang? Like have, have sex, sex with. with. Okay, so you ready? Bill O'Reilly, Larry King, Rush Limbaugh. Oh, God! Okay, all right, first of all, I'm gonna bang O'Reilly. <laughs> Why? Because I think he's the youngest. I know, like, he's adventurous. He yeah. might put a, a falafel on my padal. Yeah. Okay, oh, your padal? Yeah. Marry Larry King because he's the closest to death. <laughs> okay. And then gleefully kill Rush Limbaugh. Oh, All right, geez. Joyce, so, what about you? Bill O'Reilly, Larry King, and Rush Limbaugh. Kill, kill, kill. I'd marry Limbaugh. Why? 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 I think we, 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 we're both in the same world. We both <laughs> have the same values in life. And I'm, I'm oh, you're both addicted to painkillers. Yes. Yeah. I would marry Bill. Bill O'Reilly, we do it. We he's Sadly, she'd marry Come Bill. Come on. Irish. Even after the loofah. Oh. Well, no, the loofah thing would be out. Well, yeah. you can't put conditions on well, it. Well, I would put conditions. It's like Dad. Oh, you have I, to marry him for the whole package. Well, you can't just no, choose I'd the sex. hide the loofahs then all the time, or I'd right. throw them away. I, I, oh God, it makes me sick to even <laughs> say it. I, bang, <laughs> a Larry King. Oh God. I like how my parents always act like, "Oh my gosh, what does that word mean?" You know, the minute the door closes. God damn it, you fucking kids are driving me less. Because I wasn't born swearing. All right, I learned from the masters. I don't know about the actual act, but I'd love to be extremely friendly with Princess Diane. She's uh, dead. She's dead. No, I know what I mean. We're just picking, aren't we picking people? Like, sure, I didn't know it was dead or alive. But oh, I didn't. Yeah, yeah. All right. I just think she'd be a great 
dates, friends, sport, go someplace with. I she just, is a good just sport. To be I, I look at the depth of women. <laughs> it was pretty sweet when my dad showed us true colors. I just want to hold her hand. She's so sweet. So we should have played Mary Kill Handhold. Good night, guys. Have fun. Good night. Ever, thank you. Okay. It's really great to get everybody together and laugh. And, you know, we don't get a chance to see each other all together that much. So whenever we can, it's fun. That's not true. A lot of times it's a disaster, but this time was really fun. What do you like so far? Um, I like the noise. <laughs> what? <laughs> We're all real shy. I here. like the chaos. Coming up. Why am I in a ball gown? And you're like a biker. Lady, work with me! Jesus Christ! Pause for Style fashion show, where I'm going to be wearing a beautiful gown, and the dogs are also wearing outfits. I'm Kathy Griffin. Nice where can I go and get changed, etc. Uh, let me show you Press room. Right out the gate, it's a disaster. Nobody knows what's going on, and the dogs are all jacked up. Uh, yeah. Where can I go and get dressed with a little privacy in some room? The backstage area was a nightmare. I couldn't find, um, what's the word? Celebrities. How are you? I'm Kathy. Really so nice to meet you. How are you? Spelling was a no-show. Carmen Electra, a no-show. Then there are just a lot of people that I just didn't know who the hell they were. Who are you? I'll tell you who I knew. Lip Nikki. This is Edgar. Hey, Edgar. Hi, sweetie. So Edgar's seen some shit, right? Yeah. Edgar's seen like Tom Cruise and the Scientology weirdness. And yeah. Is Edgar a Scientologist? Well, you know, he kind of went through a little phase where, you know, he thought... For his career? Or, yeah, you know, for his career. Yeah, but I know. decided not to eventually. I know. I've done the same thing. Jonathan, that's not what you're wearing, is it? Yeah. Jonathan, get a tuxedo. I'm in a ball gown. How come everyone gets to be sort of comfortable? Why am I in a ball gown? And you're like a biker. All right, where, where should I change? But I need to get naked. Not out there. Is there a bathroom up here? I think so, yeah. Okay. Oh, thank you. I need it. It's my changing room. It's only downhill from here, and it's already the bottom of the hill. I'm there in a beautiful couture evening gown with tens of thousands of dollars of rented jewelry. Are you comfortable in your jeans and flip-flops? These kids today, they have no respect for a dog show. Where's your makeup, Chance? Where's your makeup? Can you put some on their buttholes? <laughs> That's where they need it. He doesn't have whiskers. With some mascara. It's okay, Chancey. Pack me up. Pretty girl. So it'll be like a general? Pom Pom kind of settled down because I think she's showing off how pretty she is. And Chance is very humiliated, so he's like withdrawn and afraid. Pom Pom has a dog cornered right now, so good luck, dog. What? It's me! Chance and Pom Pom are the worst behaved dogs by far at the whole event. They won't pose. Get them when you can. Lady, work with me! Jesus Christ! I can't take this! All righty! Oh, shit. I lost one. Wait, 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 come back! Hi, Chris. Hi, sweetie. How'd you get this shit? Gig? show. She's too big. Electra can't make it. Griffin showed in an evening gown and jewels. Kathy Griffin, ladies and gentlemen. That's life on the D-list. You keep going. Jessica? 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 <laughs>